I strongly tried to stop my girlfriend from going to North Myanmar to be a piglet, but he said I was just jealous of her bright future. He made a bowl of chicken soup with the poison diethylstilbestrol for dinner to thank me. Then he sold our marital home, maxed out my credit cards and online loans. He delivered it overnight to her so-called handsome and wealthy brother. Although I barely survived, when disaster struck, I had nothing left. I could only enter the game as a low-level player, and my body was eventually dismembered by a vagrant. Now that I have a second chance at life, if I show her any mercy, I am not worthy of being called a person. At this moment, Lu Ruyan is still incessantly talking about how outstanding brotherly is and how charming he is. I decisively interrupted Li Ji's generosity and told her to go find her brotherly, that's the end for us. For so many years, I have always been obedient, but the tone I used with him made her panic for a moment. I couldn't help but start to regret if I was too harsh, but she quickly dismissed any trace of regret. You've got it wrong, Su Chen. Do you dare to repeat what you just said? I just want to take some savings for investment. Let's deposit 1 million. It will double to 2 million tomorrow, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I ignored her for the moment and stared blankly at the air in front of me. Receive one point of regret from Lu Ruyan, the degree of regret is too mild, at the same time, gain one point of strength and deposit 10,000 yuan. Comprehend the skill of deliberate explosive punches, can only be used in self-defense when experiencing domestic violence and surveillance. Forceful proactive use, with a probability of losing everything and ending up in prison. This is a gift from rebirth, it seems that getting someone to regret will earn a reward, although it only made Lu Ruyan regret a tiny bit. At the same time, one can actually obtain an increase in physical attributes, as well as a large amount of financial gain. Moreover, the more heart-wrenching the regret of the other party, the better the reward for oneself. I chuckled, since you like that Ligu so much, then your wish shall be granted. I'll take you to Myanmar today to meet your lover, but it's just to break up. How can it be? You have to tell me everything you owe me from your past life. I suddenly spoke in an extremely gentle tone to Lu Ruyan, saying, I'm not against you managing finances. It's necessary for our future. I just don't trust this kind of private financial software. You should go to Myanmar to meet Li Gu and understand the situation. Really? Lu Ruyan trembled with excitement, finally able to go and meet Li Gu. She believes that with her charm, she can definitely win over Li Gu. Of course, I said with a smile, I'm busy with work here and can't go, but I can buy you a plane ticket. Have a good time there on your own. Darling, you're amazing. Lu Smoke excitedly hugged me, wanting to kiss me fervently. However, feeling nauseated, I pushed her away, recalling how she once fed herself poison with a fake smile. I foolishly thought she had a change of heart back then. Alright, I'll buy your plane ticket. By the way, what about the visa? Myanmar is not a visa-free country. No worries, I've already taken care of it. Lu Smoke is efficient. I teasingly looked at her, and Lu Smoke instantly regretted her lack of self-restraint, adding another point to her regret. My friend mentioned going to Myanmar for a trip, so I decided to go with her. Lu Smoke nervously explained, afraid that I would change my mind. Although I didn't show any suspicion, oh, that's great. You can leave today. Hurry up and pack your bags. To deepen her regret when she's duped, I added, be careful, northern Myanmar is a hotspot for telecom fraud. As I expected, Lu Smoke completely disregarded this warning, blinded by greed like a pig, never believing others' advice. Don't worry, don't worry. Lu Smoke impatiently dismissed my warning, I'm not a fool. Go to work now. All right. I give in. Suppressing the urge to burst into laughter, I calmly bought her the ticket. Okay, I'm off to work now. Watching my departing figure, Lu Ruyan's satisfied smile immediately turned into disdain. What an idiot, actually taking the initiative to buy me a ticket. When I arrive in Mianbei, you can go with your five-fingered girl. She's already started packing cosmetics. Muttering to herself. In this day and age, still considering one's loyalty as a virtue, she even posted a few moments on social media. Heading to Mianbei soon, I'll bring back local specialties for you all. Immediately, a bunch of advisory replies appeared below. Yet, Lu Ruyan's sunny plan remained resolute, tossing her phone aside, humming a tune. Meanwhile, as I left the house, the old man's radio on the street was broadcasting the news. The news reported NASA's latest observational results. A small asteroid the size of Mars has entered the solar system. Scientists simulated astronomical models and calculated that this asteroid will not impact Earth. Only I know the BS, what disasters and opportunities this asteroid will bring. Even the smartest scientists on Earth have failed to calculate the correct orbit of this asteroid. Everyone regrets not preparing in advance for the arrival of the new era. As I watched the news, a bold idea suddenly emerged in my mind, aiming to make Lu Ruyan regret, 
the perspective is too narrow, since causing regret brings rewards, then why not make all of humanity regret together? If one could predict the disaster brought by the asteroid before the world's attention, and make the whole world hear the prediction, then one would be seen as a crazy pseudoscientist, and the rumor monger would surely provoke worldwide condemnation. So when the disaster strikes, they will watch as the Earth's life disappears forever. Thinking of the missed opportunity and the once daring plan, one must also speak out to persuade them. Heavens, why am I so great? I can't help but smile with excitement. The moment when the asteroid intersects with Earth is at midnight on May 1st in the Gregorian calendar, there are still two months, giving oneself plenty of time to prepare for that plan. If I remember correctly, there will be an astronomy summit in half a month. The theme is the arrival of the asteroid and its impact on human life. This summit has invited two astronomy experts for a live broadcast throughout. If I can get to the scene, I can take the opportunity to express my thoughts in front of the camera. Based on past experiences of trial and error, I have quickly finalized an action plan in my mind. I don't have a scientific research background, so it's difficult to become a guest. But it's okay, the venue for the summit is at the Shunqing Observatory. I can apply to work there and sneak into the live broadcast location during the summit. Right at this moment, your phone rang, and Boss Ango asked you to hurry back to the company. There are some issues in the programming department that can't be solved. I thought about it, the timing of this phone call is perfect. I'll head over right away and take a taxi directly to the company. As I stepped into the office building, the boss immediately called out to me, Shawan, the client has made a new request. Come and handle it quickly. Familiar with the routine, I went straight to my workstation, packing up while muttering, Boss, you do know it's my day off today, right? Well, there's no way around it. The company needs you. I only have three days off in a year. Finally getting a break, and you want me to come back for overtime. The boss frowned, looking displeased. Su Chen, why do you have so much to say? Do you not want to work? I slammed the table in frustration. You make me do the work of three people but pay me half the salary of one. No vacation all year, no overtime pay, and you, old man, still have the nerve to scold me? In an instant, the entire company fell silent, with everyone casting admiring glances at me. What's wrong, Ngo? Did you win the lottery? Why are you so confident? But Ngu really speaks for the whole company. His words really gave everyone a wake-up call. Only the boss couldn't bear it. Su Chen, let me tell you, if you don't want to work, there are plenty of others who will. Fine, I quit. Boss, you're fired. It just so happens I've finished packing up. It was only then that everyone realized I had come back to the company just to pack up. Don't be angry, Ngu. The department manager, in a hurry, quickly came over to smooth things over. Guitar whispered to the boss's ear, Boss, there are several projects entirely under Su Chen's responsibility. When he leaves, many tasks need to be reassigned, and new people need to write the code. If we fail to deliver by the deadline, we will have to pay a large amount of liquidated damages, earning 50 points of regret from Qi Pengfei, slightly gaining 50 points of strength and depositing 500,000. Damn, I'm stunned by this sudden reward. Even Lao Pangzi cares more about himself than that seductive Lu Ruyan. Of course, Yunana, Lao Pangzi quickly put on a kind face and spoke gently. The pressure the company gives you is to train you young people. Don't just focus on money. Stop talking nonsense. Do you believe in the pie you've painted? Lao Pangzi couldn't hold back. Do you really think you're irreplaceable in this company? Really? I just don't want to buy into the pie you've painted. Let's meet at the labor arbitration. He suddenly shouted loudly, Su Chen, I'm telling you, if you dare to walk out that door, no company will hire you in the future. Is that so? Well, guess when the tax bureau will receive evidence of your tax evasion. Lao Pangzi's face changed drastically, you kid, don't offer a toast if you won't drink it. Do you really think labor arbitration can help you? Let me tell you, you won't get a penny of compensation from me. I smiled and raised my phone, which clearly displayed the recording interface. The threats from the argument with the fat guy just now have all been completely recorded, let's meet in court. Security, come back here. Security, smash his phone for me quickly. If something happens, I'll take responsibility. Received 120 points of regret from Qi Pengfei, of moderate intensity, and gained 120 points of agility at the same time. Deposited 1. 2 million. The fat guy is now deeply regretful, for his uncontrolled mouth just now. And I'm about to burst out laughing, boss, you are truly my lucky star, all in just 5 minutes. You've contributed 1. 7 million, my girlfriend doesn't love me as much as you do. But at this moment, the security guards surrounded us. I put away my phone, stretched my muscles, and the boss just contributed a full 50 points of strength to himself. 
Now my strength is more than double what it used to be, plus the 120 points of agility I just gained, I feel as light as a swallow. Knocking down more than 10 security guards is a piece of cake. You better not touch me, or you'll regret it later. The security guard swung the baton at me with all his might, but in my eyes, it was like an old lady doing Tai Chi. I held up the phone to record with one hand, and with the other hand, I gently twisted the baton. That security guard's forearm dislocated on the spot, screaming as he let go of the baton. To preserve evidence of my legitimate defense, I simply held the phone to record with one hand and faced the enemy with the other. There are a total of seven security guards, who have already taken down five of them. This time, they are smarter, no longer trying to steal the limelight from the Hulua brothers saving grandpa. Instead, they all rushed forward, one person hugged my waist, two people hugged my arms, and one person hugged my legs. The last one headed straight for the phone, just as the baton was about to fall on it. I raised my arm on the machine, the two security guards hugging my arms. I actually lifted them up with one hand to the sky. The security guards were also dumbfounded, what kind of strength is this? I didn't give them time to think, I slammed down with both hands, hitting the two who were hugging my legs and waist, causing all four to fall to the ground and not get up. As for the last one, his pants were wet, his legs were weak, and he knelt to the ground, obviously his mindset had collapsed. I patted his shoulder and walked past him. At the same time, a harvest prompt appeared above the security guard's heads, they regretted it greatly, if they had known this guy was so strong, why did they rush up to deliver themselves? In this wave, a total of 7 people contributed 45 points of strength to me, 20 points of agility, 12 points of snacks, and 770,000 in savings, and 77 points of regret points that I don't know what to do with. What surprised me was that as I walked out of the office, a large number of regret rewards suddenly appeared behind me. Most of those regret points came from female colleagues in the company. Only the boss, with a face as dark as the bottom of a pot, told me to sit down and even asked if I still wanted to work. Finally, I caught the elevator going down. I straightened my collar, smiled, and waved my phone at the old fatty, welcoming him to call the police. Stepping out of the office building, I felt refreshed. Today's gains were substantial. If only there was a stats panel. Just as I was thinking that, my attribute information appeared in my field of vision. Regret points balance, 240. Click here to participate in the points lottery. So points are used here. With anticipation, I pressed the lottery button, spending 100 regret points. You obtained an R-level reward, 0, 010 plus 5. I couldn't help but feel a bit disappointed, so I casually pressed the button again. Congratulations on receiving an S2-level reward. Basic ability, portable universe. Sounds pretty awesome. I closed my eyes and started to feel the newly acquired ability. It's a million square meters. Came at the right time. After the Great Era arrives, many plants will undergo a slight transformation, producing genius treasures that enhance strength, leading to extinction. Prices skyrocket to several hundred or even tens of thousands times the original. With nearly 3 million funds on hand, I should be able to stockpile a lot of treasures in advance. A ginseng plant over a hundred years old is currently valued at 600,000 in the market, but in two months, the price will rise to 6 billion. Current ginseng, regardless of age, at most just causes a nosebleed when consumed. But the hundred-year-old ginseng of the future can greatly enhance one's skills, just like the legendary elixir in martial arts novels. Moreover, this is a unique effect of ginseng over a hundred years old. Recently, a wealthy man who made his fortune through fraud was caught. He loved collecting antiques. Tomorrow, the assets of that fraudster will enter the foreclosure stage, and they can be auctioned online directly. I wonder what the wealthy man will feel when he realizes that the ginseng he hoarded has increased in value by 100 times after two months. Just two months before his death, he was caught and forced to sell all the ginseng. What will his feelings be like? With the plan settled, I whistled my way back home. By then, the room was already empty. Lou Ruyan had left long ago, carrying a huge suitcase. He tidied up his belongings neatly, saving me the trouble of calling a cleaner. Wherever you are, if you get hungry, grab a bite at the airport. I sent a threatening message in a caring tone, even transferring 100 yuan. But Lu Ruyan was already getting impatient at this point. He just wanted to cut ties with me quickly, so he accepted the transfer. Yet, he didn't reply at all. However, I wasn't angry at all. Instead, I laughed hysterically holding my phone on the bed. The more heartless he is now, the more he'll regret it later. When he arrives in northern Myanmar, handcuffed and enduring daily beatings, seeing this WeChat message will surely be amusing. Remember to eat. Be careful not to get sick from hunger. When you reach northern Myanmar, reply to me. Don't go to remote places, and don't walk with strangers. 
Be careful of scammers, keep your phone location on, so I can report to the police if anything happens. Did you hear me? Sweetheart, remember to contact me first if anything happens. I searched online for a collection of cheesy love phrases, I'm copying and pasting them into the chat box one by one. I know you're talkative, enough already, Li Ruyen, I can't stand your clinginess. He just replied to a message, interrupting my cheesy love phrase spree. I try to suppress the urge to burst into laughter, I'll send him a dozen messages every day from now on. I'll keep sending these 10,000 cheesy love phrases until the end, how can just a few shrimp fulfill my original intentions? However, at this moment, the phone rang, a slightly annoying voice sounded, long time no see, yun go, let's get together. Hearing the voice on the other end of the phone, I revealed a smile as if bathed in the spring breeze. Great, where are you? I'll be there right away. Vina International Hotel, p and &E Private Room, I also invited the homeroom teacher, many classmates are coming this time. So, I was the last one to know about the classmates gathering today. Ha, ah, didn't you forget in your busyness? We have so many classmates in our class. I smirked coldly, probably this kid didn't even think of inviting me after the aftermath, but, under the persuasion of the homeroom teacher or a classmate, I finally called myself. Alright, I'm on my way, I hung up the phone, went out directly, and called a car. Quickly arrived at the gathering location. Entering the private room, at this moment, I happened to hear classmates taking turns toasting the homeroom teacher. Those who are doing well naturally are quite enthusiastic, taking the initiative to stand up, reporting their current occupation and income, like reporting an ID card to the homeroom teacher. Among them, the initiator of the dinner, Shui Ran, was particularly excited. Thanks to the teacher's careful education, I was able to get into the university I desired. Now being successfully recruited by Bai Chao Company, getting an annual salary of 500k, let's raise a toast to teacher Zhang, everyone. Wow, I was wondering why there was a sudden idea for a class reunion. Turns out it was to show off their jobs. Pingin, you've come at the right time. Shui Ran greeted with a fake smile, brother, how have you been recently? I remember you used to work at a small internet factory, right? It's been alright, just resigned. The atmosphere suddenly became a bit awkward. But Shui Ran seemed to have negative emotional intelligence, bringing up sensitive topics, asking with a concerned look, what's going on? Can't keep up with the pace of work? Let me see if you're wearing a wig. If you're not bald, you programmers must not be working hard enough. Buck up, little bro. Facing the weird and sarcastic comments, I smiled faintly, it's doomsday already, what's the use of money? The room fell silent for a moment, then erupted into laughter. Anzi, you're really humorous. Just having a bit of a rough time, it's not the end of the world. Alright, Rangu and Z just lost his job and is feeling down. It's understandable that he's not in a good mood, so don't provoke him. Alright, and Z, please sit down. Don't provoke him. Finally, the homeroom teacher intervened to ease the situation, and everyone managed to contain their laughter. Each of them had flushed faces, but while they wanted to let me off, I wasn't planning to let them off. Not sewage, it's an asteroid, the one named Nian. Those classmates who don't often watch the news were puzzled by Nian, while some recalled the news. Are you talking about that Mars-sized rocky asteroid? Didn't scientists say it had no impact on Earth? The scientists miscalculated. So, did you calculate it correctly? You think you're smarter than those scientists? Shui Ran Yang raised an eyebrow mockingly. He was somewhat displeased with me, immediately diverting everyone's attention. He shifted the topic from boasting about salaries to discussing some little star, depriving him of the joy of flattery. But I actually nodded. Hmm, my calculations were indeed correct. At this point, I had piqued everyone's curiosity. The homeroom teacher looked towards a young man wearing glasses. Zhou Xiaodong, you studied astronomy in college, right? Zhou Xiaodong pushed his glasses up and proudly replied. In fact, the astronomy community has been studying this asteroid for a long time. Through spectroscopic analysis, we have already calculated the composition and density of the asteroid. So, is it dangerous? Shui Zhan quickly asked. First of all, its mass is far from enough to disrupt the gravitational balance of the solar system. We don't need to worry about a year becoming 500 days or 100 days. Secondly, it will quickly depart on the other side of Earth's orbit, with no possibility of colliding with Earth, or have any impact on the tidal forces on Earth. The talk of doomsday is likely a sensational rumor spread by some famous scientist to attract attention. Just listen to it as a joke, don't take it seriously. This is called professionalism, with Zhou Xiaodong's clear and logical explanation. I might look like a clown, but I just smiled. What if you miscalculated its mass and density? The calculation work was not done by me, but by Professor Sher Luo's team from the Chinese Academy of Sciences Astronomy Institute. 
Moreover, the calculation results are completely consistent with those of the NASA research team. Let me ask, when Professor Luo and NASA calculated the mass of the celestial body, did they refer to the Kepler's third law formula based on the solar system binary star system? Of course. What else could it be? Absolutely wrong. In fact, it was not captured by the sun's gravity at all. The main star it revolves around is actually in the central region of the Milky Way, not the so-called super black hole known as the Silver Star. Zhou Xiaodong firmly denies that only celestial bodies with sufficient mass can rotate around the Silver Star without being captured by the gravity of other large celestial bodies. And the volume of that small asteroid is only the size of Mars, during its flight, it did not cause any gravitational interference to other planets. This indicates that its mass is not large and it does not have the conditions to rotate around the silver star. Who says that orbiting around a star must have a large mass? What if its mass is zero? Zhou Xiaodong was initially stunned, shocked by this crazy assumption. But then he burst into laughter, saying that it's absurd. It's such a big lump, how could its mass be zero? Moreover, if its mass is zero, an object with zero mass would have infinite speed, moving at the speed of light within that celestial body. How do you explain its current speed? Don't you find it contradictory? Ha ha ha, I laughed along, but it was a sympathetic laugh. My goal has been achieved, so I won't continue explaining in vain. Let's end this hypocritical class reunion here. Of course, I won't leave quietly like this. I took out my phone directly, found a number in the bloodstained scene, and dialed it. Hello? Is this Baichao Pharmaceutical Company? On the other end of the phone was Shui Ran's immediate superior. Shui Ran felt a bit flustered upon hearing it was his proud workplace. Su Chen, what are you doing? He was afraid that Su Chen would cause trouble, say something bad to his leader, and affect his own future. But Su Chen completely ignored him. How many ginseng plants over a hundred years old does Baichao Company currently have in stock? I want them all. There was a moment of silence on the other end. Shui Ran burst into laughter on the spot, laughing uncontrollably. No, I'm not trying to argue with you. And Z, do you know how much a hundred-year-old ginseng plant costs? Su Chen still didn't respond to Shui Ran. After a brief inquiry on the phone, the manager on the other end answered seriously, Sir, we have limited stock of ginseng plants over a hundred years old, only four plants. Do you want to come and inspect them personally? I don't care about the quality, just make sure they are over a hundred years old. Give me an estimate, total price. Su Chen said directly. Approximately 2,400,000, sir. Got it, deliver them to Shangqing within three days, I will come to pick them up. Stop messing around, and Z. Shui Ran restrained his laughter, leaned in close to the phone and said, Brother Chang, I'm Shui Ran, who joined last week. Shui Ran? Yes, yes, Brother Chang, do you still remember me? I'm so touched. By the way, the person on the phone is my classmate, sorry, he has some mental issues, please don't take it seriously. Su Chen was getting a bit impatient with this guy. He kicked Shui Ran onto the chair. I'm buying something, what's it to you? Get lost. Shui Ran was stunned. People around him quickly advised, Su Chen, stop it. Shui Ran may be a bit aggressive, but you don't have to land yourself in jail just to show off. Quickly call back and apologize. Su Chen, there's no need to act impulsively for vanity. Stay calm. Su Chen was speechless. Why are you all talking so much? I just have a cold and wanted to buy some radishes to make soup. I was even thinking of getting some for you guys, but since you don't want any, forget it. The people around him were speechless too. 60,000 for a radish. Shui Ran sat aside and sneered, Su Chen, don't count on me to speak up for you later. Being stubborn will only bring you trouble. I'm telling you, you're in big trouble this time. Ah. Su Chen sighed and shrugged, Ranner, why do you bite the hand that feeds you? Can't you recognize a good person? Look at how pale you are, all hollowed out. Two of these four roots were actually bought for you. Ha. Huh? Shui Ran was completely dumbfounded by this. Bought for me? No. It can't be? Unfortunately, Ranner, you're different now, you're a big shot, earning five-sixths of a root of ginseng in a year. I guess you wouldn't even want these two roots of ginseng I bought for you. Su Chen looked regretful, forget it, forget it, since none of you want them, I'll just keep them for myself. Shui Ran's blood pressure shot up. 60,000 for one root. It's more than his annual salary for one root. He wouldn't really want to give them away, would he? No way. Shui Ran's current mood was one of desire. But his dignity prevented him from speaking up. Received 60 points of regret from Shui Ran, also gained 60 points of agility, and a deposit of 600,000. Hey! This fool is really regretting it now. Does he really think he's going to get it from me? Su Chen remained calm, continuing to look sincere and lost. 
Leaning on the table, he choked out, I recently won the lottery and wanted to share the joy with everyone, buy some ginseng to nourish your bodies. But I didn't expect you all to treat me like this. Damn it. This guy won the lottery? Heavens, have no eyes. The classmates around were so jealous they were almost in tears. How much did you win? Not much, just a few million. Just a few million. This guy is really asking for a beating. At this moment, those flatterers who were flattering Shui Ran realized that Shui Ran was nothing. While Shui Ran was working hard, Brother Yun was already overlooking all living beings at the end of his struggle. Obtained 30 points of regret from X Dong. Obtained 20 points of regret from X Lei. Obtained 150 points of regret from Meng Xiaoxue. Meng Xiaoxue? Oh, I remember now. I confessed to her in junior high and got rejected. Back then, I hadn't matured yet, was still very introverted, and unpopular. Now someone must be regretting it so much. Su Chen felt the rapid improvement of his physique with delight. And his bank balance had already soared to over 5 million. Truly my old classmates. You guys are really good people. So righteous. Where else can you find such great, such good people? Well, for ginseng roots might be a bit much, but I can finish them. As Su Chen spoke, he grabbed the corner of the table with one hand. Then, to the astonishment of everyone, he actually lifted the huge round table at the gathering with one hand. The entire table was steady, without any shaking of plates or drinks. Damn! Is he human? What kind of physique is this? Oh my god, if I had asked him to be my boyfriend on the spot. Su Chen put down the table, grinning, I recently met a master who can greatly enhance physique with hundred-year-old ginseng. I was going to give you all a portion, but since you look down on it, forget it. Everyone. Everyone present had a look of disbelief. Su Chen's arrival today had already shattered their worldviews a bit. Although his words sounded a bit like nonsense, just his physique. Just his physique alone was enough to make people envious to the point of distortion. And during this delay, the people from Baichao Company had already rushed to the restaurant in a hurry. Baichao Medicinal Herbs Company was a company specializing in the trade of medicinal herbs. Although it was a large company, a transaction of over 2 million was still a big deal. Moreover, in recent years, with the popularization of scientific knowledge, the high-end ginseng trading market had been in a slump for years. These 400-year-old ginseng roots had been sitting in Baichao Company's hands for a long time, unable to be sold. Finally encountering a big spender like Su Chen, Chang Chen definitely didn't want to let this fat sheep slip away. Adjusting his clothes, Chang Chen walked into the private room in the most perfect manner. Excuse me, I am Chang Chen from Baichao Company. Shang Gu, you really came. Shui Ran hurriedly greeted him. Xiao Ran, where is the gentleman who wants to buy ginseng? It's him. Shui Ran still had some disbelief in Su Chen's words at this moment. Although Su Chen had just shown off an enviable physique, he had previously spouted foolish words about the end of the world is coming. So the credibility of his words was also questionable. Mister, did you make the call? Yes. Su Chen lazily leaned back in his chair, extending a hand, appraisal certificate, contract. Cheng Chen was a bit puzzled, but his demeanor and professional ethics prevented him from being negligent. He immediately took out a document bag. Here are the appraisal report and contract you requested, but the original appraisal report is still stored in the headquarters, so this time I can only bring a copy. You can personally inspect the original when the delivery arrives. Hmm. Su Chen nodded indifferently, glanced at the appraisal report. It was a testing certificate from a reputable institution, with the names of several senior researchers, all of whom Su Chen remembered. These guys in later generations made a fortune overnight with their appraisal skills. It should be fine. No big deal. They can compensate if there's a mistake. It's illegal to deceive oneself with a fake appraisal report and the contract stipulates a tenfold compensation for falsification. Su Chen picked up a pen. After scanning the contract and confirming there were no pitfalls, he directly signed his name. Thank you for your review, so how should we pay the 800,000 deposit? Send me your company account details. Okay, sir. Su Chen opened his mobile banking app and made a few quick transactions. Cheng Chen answered a call, nodded, and a smile appeared on his face. The company has received your deposit, so I wish you a happy life. When the four ginseng plants arrive in the upper city, we will contact you immediately. Hmm. Su Chen nodded. At this moment, Shui Ran was completely petrified. Did he really buy it? Ah too. For a million item, did he really just buy it? Oh my, this guy probably hit the jackpot for real. So, is there anything else you want, sir? Yes, I still need many types of medicinal herbs. I will compile a list and send it to you when I return. Su Chen said. Understood. How should I contact you, sir? Just add me on WeChat. Such a simple way of contact. 
Cheng Chen thought Su Chen would have his secretary handle it. But what did it matter to him? This gentleman had already proven his financial strength, one could only say that people of high status had their own personalities. Cheng Chen quickly sent a friend request. With the transaction completed, Xue Ran, who was standing nearby, suddenly had a flash of insight and a smile appeared on his face. He suddenly realized he had witnessed the entire transaction, and Su Chen was his classmate. So when he returned to the company, he could say it was because of his introduction that Su Chen called by Chao Company to sell ginseng. By then, a reward in commission would definitely be inevitable. A transaction worth 2. 4 million. The commission might be tens of thousands. And maybe even a promotion in raise. By the way, just as Xue Ran was lost in his fantasies, Su Chen called out to Cheng Chen. Cheng Chen respectfully turned around, is there anything else I can help you with? I hope you know, when I buy things, I have absolutely no connection with this idiot named Xue Ran. Not only has he been making snide remarks on the side, but he has also been trying to obstruct the transaction. I hope you educate your staff properly. If I see him again next time, the rest of the transaction will be voided, and I will go to Dongxing Company for the deal. Xue Ran's head buzzed. Received 150 points of regret from Xue Ran. Also gained 150 strength and a deposit of 1. 5 million. Cheng Chen's heart skipped a beat. This gentleman was clearly a big client with great potential for transactions. He absolutely couldn't drive him to a competitor. A big client versus an employee who was unnecessary and only got in through connections, the choice was clear to Cheng Chen. Xue Ran, you don't need to come to work tomorrow. Xue Ran was struck as if by lightning. Chang. Chang Ge? What do you mean by that? Cheng Chen didn't explain. Su Chen left, and Cheng Chen followed Su Chen out, escorting him to the hotel entrance. Do you need a ride? Sure, on the way, I'll write you a procurement list first. Cheng Chen was overjoyed. He was about to present a procurement list. It seemed like a reward for himself. Just after cleanly firing Xue Ran, he was very satisfied. Obtained 300 points of regret from Xue Ran, and at the same time obtained Recruitment Crystal X1 and deposited 3 million. Ha! Huh? Something exploded. It seems that when regret points are obtained, there is a certain probability of replacing attribute rewards with items. Considering the marginal effect, the improvement of hundreds of attributes in the later stage will be very small, while the improvement of items will be relatively large, so replacing them with items should be a good thing. Recruitment Crystal. I wonder what it is used to recruit. Because he didn't know the effect, Su Qin did not use it immediately in public. Instead, he patiently wrote a procurement list for Cheng Chen. So many? When Cheng Chen saw the procurement list, his whole scalp went numb. He thought there wouldn't be much demand for private procurement. But when he saw the list, oh boy, the total price of this transaction is no less than that of a pharmaceutical factory. And all the items on the list are high-end rare goods that are over a hundred years old. You're getting excited too soon, Su Chen raised his eyebrows, this is only one-tenth. One. One-tenth? Sir, are you serious? Do I look like I'm joking? Cheng Chen excitedly covered his chest, afraid that his heart would be too hard and stop. Su Chen's goal is not big. He knows he can't monopolize all the medicinal materials. So as long as he buys 99%, it's fine. Do your best, buy as much as you can. So, sir, I'll go back and draft the procurement contract first. Because the quantity of procurement is too large, we also need to source from various cities, which will take some time, please understand. No rush, take your time. The asteroid will arrive on Earth in two months, as long as the funds are sufficient, the purchase can be completed in half a month. Sir, we have reached your destination. At this point, Su Chen also arrived at the next plan location with Cheng Chen's car, the Upper City Observatory. Saying goodbye to the people of Shanghai Pharmaceutical Company, Su Chen went straight to the office area of the observatory. I want to apply for a job. Which position? How about a tour guide? Because everything in the future is closely related to that asteroid, people are forced to learn a lot of astronomical knowledge. With Su Chen's knowledge reserve, being a tour guide should be more than enough. Tour guides need to answer visitors' questions frequently and have a certain understanding of the equipment in the museum. Try this test first. The HR manager handed Su Chen a test paper. Su Chen quickly finished it. Not bad accuracy. The manager nodded approvingly, in addition to knowledge reserve, the image of a tour guide is also very important. Hmm. You have no problem with that, so, welcome to join the Upper City Observatory. Things went much smoother than imagined. Come for an internship tomorrow, once you have a clear understanding of the equipment and history of the museum, you can start working. Okay. Su Chen was satisfied. The job at the observatory was also settled. He walked to the roadside and began to examine the recruitment crystal he had just obtained. 
Clicking on the crystal, the scene changed again. This time, he was not standing in the void of the universe, but in a beautiful forest. The crystal floated in front of Su Chen, emitting a beautiful and colorful light. Hint, the crystal is looking for the awakening lord around it. Awakening lord? Su Chen's heart suddenly tightened, and his hair stood on end. Could it be the kind of awakening lord from his memories? In the future, due to the special energy of the asteroid, besides medicinal herbs, some birds, beasts, insects, and fish have also awakened. The awakened animals are extremely rare, and they are born with extremely high talents, with cultivation speeds far exceeding those of humans. Among these creatures, there are also the most outstanding ones, known as awakening lords. Unfortunately, most of these awakening lords are not close to humans and generally choose to rule the mountains, guarding their territories and not getting involved in human conflicts. In the previous life, only a few lucky ones were favored by the awakening lords and fought alongside them. These few individuals became the world's top combat power and were honored guests of all forces. If recruiting crystals, recruiting awakened lords. Su Chen's goosebumps rose at the thought. It's so worth it to exchange this for 300 power points. Scan completed, current total number of awakened creatures on earth, 1, awakened creatures with lord talents, the only one in the world, and already awakened? WOC, the asteroid won't arrive for another two months, so it has almost no impact on earth now. Are monsters starting to awaken now? What a talent. Contract initiation, teleporting to contract location. The scene in front of Su Chen flickered rapidly again. Guided by the crystal, he arrived at the entrance of a cave. In the dark cave, a rotten stench emanated. Su Chen walked into the cave, the faint light of the crystal providing some visibility. He lowered his head and saw a dead fox. Flies covered the body of the dead fox, which should have been dead for a long time, its abdomen swollen, showing obvious signs of gigantism, with maggots crawling around its mouth and nose. Let me contract this? No. Su Chen closed his eyes and listened. With the blessing of the twelve-point spiritual sense, his perception was greatly enhanced. Soon, he keenly caught a faint whimpering sound in the cave. In a corner where a rock had collapsed, a small creature the size of a potato was curled up by the water, trembling. The little creature hadn't even opened its eyes yet, while its three siblings were already starving, only this little one was still holding on stubbornly. A starving fox cub. Hiss, could it be her? In the future era of sublimation, there was a legendary figure. The empress was known for her unparalleled beauty, strength, and ruthlessness, occupying a territory, not participating in conflicts, and never showing mercy to any enemy. She was the leader of all awakened creatures on earth, single-handedly putting awakened creatures on equal footing with the vast number of humans. And due to some early experiences, she harbored extreme hatred towards humans, never allowing any humans to enter her territory, and those who violated this rule would be killed without mercy. Please use the item to form a contract. A prompt box popped up, and Su Chen had an additional item in his hand, a small milk bottle. Su Chen wordlessly picked up the little creature and placed it in his palm. Sensing the warmth of his palm, the little creature instinctively rubbed its cheek against it. When the fox's cry was very pitiful, especially when it was just born, it was even more heart-wrenching, making people's hearts ache. Without delay, Su Chen directly stuffed the milk bottle into the little creature's mouth. Hint, the awakened creature's affinity towards you is full. Full already? The terrifying goddess empress, who harbored extreme hatred towards humans and killed anyone who entered her territory. Her affinity is already full? The awakened lord will forever remember your scent, recruitment completed, returning. Su Chen put the little creature and the milk bottle into the front pocket of his shirt, letting it suckle on its own. In a flash, he was back in his original position. Regardless of the future identity of the little creature, it was just a helpless little ball of fur for now. Su Chen also let go of his psychological burden treating it as just an extra mouth to feed. This pocket suits it quite well. Feeling reassured by the warmth in the pocket, the little creature fell asleep carefreely, lying belly up in the pocket. The milk bottle is empty. Can it drink so much? I wonder if I can exchange milk powder directly with regret points. Recruitment store open, can exchange development items in the recruitment store. Currently unlocked item, Supreme Spirit Body Cultivation Milk Powder, Applicable Age, Infancy. Dosage, 3 bottles daily. Price, 10 regret points. Effect, greatly enhanced spiritual sense aptitude, Su Chen sighed deeply. Why do I suddenly feel like a dad? Sleep, sleep, work tomorrow. As the sky darkened, Su Chen went straight home and lay down, tossing his shirt and the little creature beside his head. The next day when I woke up, I found that the little guy had crawled out of my shirt at some point and curled up next to my neck. What a clingy little thing. Received 100 points of regret from Zhao Mengyan, 
and also gained 100 points of spiritual awareness and deposited 1 million. Here it comes, seeing good news early in the morning, and this time it's directly rewarding the rarest spiritual awareness. Su Chan instantly felt awake. But why only 100 points? Su Chen opened his phone and found several missed calls and over 10 unread messages on WeChat, all from Zhao Mengyan. Looks like the show is starting. Su Chen opened WeChat to check. Su Chen, do you have money on hand? Can you transfer 500,000 to me? I've met Brotherly, the financial software is fine, transfer all your money over quickly. Hurry up. What the hell are you doing? Quickly transfer me the money. Su Chen, why aren't you answering my calls? Hurry up. We won't make money if we're late. Su Chen. Su Chen. Voice call not answered. Voice call not answered. Voice call not answered. Su Chen, if you see this, call me back quickly. It seems like they are almost peeing their pants over there. Su Chen, however, stretched lazily, went to the bathroom, ordered breakfast delivery, ate while watching videos, prepared a bottle of milk powder for the little guy, played a game, and then checked WeChat to reply to a message. What's wrong, dear? Why did you take so long to reply? I've met brotherly already. He said today is the last day for financial arrangements. Quickly transfer the money to me. Transfer as much as you have. Su Chen glanced at his account balance 8. 4 million. Transferring it all might scare you. But scaring you is even better. With a slight smile, he calmly said, All right, I'll transfer it to you later. Send me your bank card number. Received 50 points of regret from Zhao Mengyan. And also gained 50 strength and deposited 500,000. Ha, huh, regretting now? Do you know who treats you well? But why is the increase so little? Could it be that the warlords in the industrial park haven't made a move yet? Hmm, they probably haven't used any means on her, otherwise, the regret points wouldn't be so low. Alright, transfer to this card triple X. Hurry up and transfer, love you. Okay, I'll do it now. Su Chen checked the time, he woke up early and still had some time before work. So he took the bank card, brought the little fox, and set off to the bank to transfer money. Of course, whether they can receive it on the other end is another story. Two hours ago, in the Wa state of northern Myanmar, after a night of travel, flying over nearly 2,000 kilometers, Zhao Mengyan finally met Brother Li whom she had been longing for. But she didn't understand. Why was Brother Li accompanied by several burly men? Just as the two entered the hotel, several burly men blocked the door. And that Brother Li walked into the room with a strange smile. At this moment, Zhao Mengyan finally had time to size up this Brother Li. However, just like most online dating meetups, Zhao Mengyan was disappointed to find out. This brotherly was nothing like the person in the photos. In the photos, he was a fair-skinned and sunny young man, but in person, he was greasy, obese, and even severely balding, emitting an indescribable stench. Zhao Mengyan was so disappointed that she almost vomited, which is why she had a 100 regret points just now. Where's the money? Brotherly asked for money as soon as they met. Zhao Mengyan swallowed, thinking of the burly men at the door, she began to have a vague sense of foreboding. Fear slowly crept in. Brotherly, why are you in such a hurry? Zhao Mengyan used a coquettish tone, approached him. I came all this way to see you. Do you only care about money? Although the appearance and photos of this Ligu are worlds apart, Zhao Mengyan remembered his rich second generation identity and decisively gave him a mosaic in her mind, imagining the handsome guy from the photo sitting in front of her. Li Zhong, the so-called Ligu, looked at Zhao Mengyan with a wave of nausea. Zhao Mengyan despised him, and he couldn't help but feel disgusted by this woman. Clearly having a boyfriend and fooling around outside, she easily deceived him with a few random photos. This kind of fickle, bottomless woman, even Li Zhong considered her trash. However, for the money in her hands, more accurately, the money in her boyfriend's hands, Li Zhong still held his patience, showing a fake smile and said, I'm not in a hurry, but our fund is about to close for investment today. If you don't transfer the money today, it will be too late in the future. Ah. Uh, I'll call my boyfriend right away. This led to a pile of missed calls on Su Chen's phone. Unfortunately, Su Chen had already turned on the do not disturb mode while sleeping. No matter how many times she called, it was useless. Seeing Zhao Mengyan making calls for a long time without anyone answering, Li Zhong's gaze turned slightly cold. Well, there's nothing I can do. Don't blame me for not warning you. Wait. Wait for me. Let me try again. So Zhao Mengyan began frantically sending WeChat messages, leaving messages, and even calling her close friends and relatives, trying to wake up Su Chen. Unfortunately, Su Chen's do not disturb mode was on, and it was useless no matter who called. After an anxious operation and a long wait, two hours later, Su Chen finally replied to the message. Zhao Mengyan finally breathed a sigh of relief. I'll transfer it to you now. Looking at the message sent by Su Chen, Zhao Mengyan thought that although her boyfriend didn't have money, 
at least he was handsome and treated her well, so she had 50 points of regret. After a while, Su Chen sent another message. It was a screenshot of the account balance, asking, is this amount enough? Wah! What? Zhao Mengyan was dumbfounded. Did she read it wrong? Those are several zeros? Eight. Eight million four hundred thousand? When did Su Chen become so rich? Could it be that he is a hidden rich second generation? Obtained 300 points of regret from Zhao Mengyan, and at the same time gained 300 points of strength and a deposit of 3 million. From now on, Zhao Mengyan truly regretted it. Unfortunately, it was too late. I'm sorry, sir, this account has been flagged as a high-risk user, suspected of being an overseas fraudster. I can't help you with the transfer. The bank teller's response was perfect, in line with Su Chen's intentions. He sent the video he just took to Zhao Mengyan. Of course, to avoid retaliation against the teller, Su Chen did not capture the teller's face. Then he messaged, it's not that I don't want to transfer to you. The bank said no, it's a scam on the other end. You better run. Zhao Mengyan was dumbfounded when she received the message. Fraud? Li Gu is a scammer? How is that possible? Li Gu is a genuine rich second generation. Those luxury homes, luxury cars, she has seen them all in the photos. The watch he wears is worth millions. You're talking nonsense. How could Li Gu be a scammer? Are you making excuses again, trying to scam me with someone else? Seeing that she didn't believe him, Su Chen simply turned on the message do not disturb and said, I have to go to work, you better call the police and go home immediately. Then he turned off WeChat, ignoring how chaotic it was on the other end. Zhao Mengyan swallowed hard. Mechanically, she turned her head to look at the smiling Li Zhong. At this moment, Li Zhong opened a plastic bag and skillfully took out a white handkerchief. Zhao Mengyan nervously chuckled, Li Gu, my boyfriend, that loser, actually said you're a scammer, it's so funny, huh? Li Gu, what are you doing? Li Ah. Uh. A pungent towel was pressed against Zhao Mengyan's face. Before she could even scream for help, she lost consciousness. Remember the sun outside the window. Brother Li's playful voice echoed in Zhao Mengyan's ears, you won't see it again in the future. At this moment, Zhao Mengyan did not yet know that her hellish life in northern Myanmar had just begun. Received 500 points of regret from Zhao Mengyan, along with 500 strength and a deposit of 5 million. Today is another day full of 70,000. Su Chen walked out of the bank contentedly, enjoying the warm winter sunlight. In his pocket, the little guy stuck out his head, raised his two front paws, and stretched lazily in sync with Su Chen. It had not slept so soundly in a long time. Of course, neither had Su Chen. In a future world where strength reigns supreme, the weak live worse than pigs and dogs. Moreover, his body was destroyed by Zhao Mengyan's poison, enduring heart-wrenching pain day and night, unable to rest. Zhao Mengyan, this scourge, deserves any kind of death. Go back, don't come out, if others see you, they'll think I'm taking a dog to work. Extending a finger, Su Chen poked the little guy's head back into his pocket. It wouldn't be good if the leader saw it, affecting his grand plan of accumulating points. Just as he was hesitating whether to leave the little guy in his personal pocket universe, the little guy seemed to understand and obediently curled up at the bottom of the pocket, not making a sound. Well, he hadn't tested whether the storage space could hold living things, and there was nothing there, so it was better to keep it with him for peace of mind. Don't come out. Su Chen breathed a sigh of relief and headed to the observatory. Su Chen is here. The HR manager also saw Su Chen and shouted, Xiao Yao. Xiao Yao, come here. This is the new person I told you about. You take care of him today. Okay. Xiao Yao was a gentle voiced girl, petite and delicate, the kind who would cry for a long time if punched. As for looks, I never judge friends by their looks, anyway, the little guy in the pocket is cuter. Hello, I'm Nia Yao, the supervisor asked me to show you the work process. No problem. Su Chen wasn't prepared to work at the observatory for too long, after all, on the eve of Chinese New Year, people's lives would be completely overturned. And when he broke into the venue of the astronomical summit, he would definitely be fired immediately. However, in order to accumulate more regret points on that day, it was necessary to do well in these last few days, making it easier to blend into the astronomical summit. Our main responsibility is to explain the origins and background knowledge of the exhibits to visitors. However, we also have some more important responsibilities, such as protecting the exhibits from being damaged by visitors. As they were talking, the doors of the observatory opened. A group of elementary school students wearing red scars entered the museum, followed by their parents. It seemed to be a group visit organized by the school. As the little rascals rushed in, the quiet observatory immediately became deafening, with their unruly screams making Su Chen's eardrums ache. He was starting to regret applying for the job. Perhaps it would have been better to come a few days later, but by then the museum might not be hiring anymore. Oh well, 
endure it for the greater plan. Mia Ya was undoubtedly an excellent teacher, and in between explanations, she didn't forget to remind Su Chen of some work precautions. However, she seemed too easy to bully, to the point that even the little rascals began to ignore her. Children, please do not climb on the exhibits, come down quickly. It's too high there, very dangerous. At some point, a little brat had stealthily climbed to the top of the space shuttle model. And this kid even wanted to lift the cockpit cover of the model and crawl inside. Not only did his parents not care, they even encouraged him with a smile, sweetie, hurry up and sit inside, let mommy take a picture of you. Nya Yao's face turned pale with fright. She wasn't usually responsible for child visitors, so her mind went blank in this situation. The male guide who usually took care of child visitors had already resigned from exhaustion. Upon joining the company, Su Chen immediately took over the position of that male commentator. However, Su Chen had just started today, and Nya Yao did not believe that a newcomer could handle such a complex conflict. Nevertheless, she still held a glimmer of hope and subconsciously turned to look at Su Chen. To her surprise, Su Chen's face was beaming with a bright smile, already silently raising his phone and pressing the capture button. Regret points delivered right to the door, don't let them go to waste. Madam, sir, I need you to understand a fact, the exhibit your child is currently climbing is worth 4 million, there are fences and signs around reminding you that it is a restricted area, yet you personally helped your child climb over the fence. So, if your child falls and dies, our museum bears no responsibility, so please do not cause trouble later. How dare you speak like that? What do you mean by falling and dying? How could my son be so stupid as to fall and die? The parents of the child immediately turned dark. The model of the spacecraft is designed for simulation, with a smooth paint surface, making it easy to slip and fall. For the sake of your child's health and your wallets, it's best for you to get him down as soon as possible. I won't let him down. What can you do about it? The child's father sneered. We paid for the tickets. The child's mother also shouted sharply, we are gods. You just serve us gods well enough. Su Chen sighed deeply. His final ultimatum had been issued, and this was the path they had chosen for themselves. And these two individuals dared to be so arrogant in front of the camera, not realizing they had done anything wrong. Since the parents were inactive, deliberately causing harm to society, they shouldn't blame society for educating them. Su Chen narrowed his eyes slightly. An invisible force emerged in his mind, extending outward. This was the power he had just felt in the morning, learned when his spiritual attribute broke through 100 points. He could release an invisible force from his mind, touch objects from a distance, but the force was weak, basically just a greeting or a pat on the shoulder. However, the wicked will have their retribution, and Su Chen hadn't even had the chance to do anything yet. The child actually slipped on his own. At this moment, the child was smashing the cockpit of the model aircraft with his phone, already cracking the cockpit. He was about to move his foot to completely smash the cockpit when, he suddenly stepped into the air, losing his balance. Ah ah ah, the child let out an unusually piercing scream, rolling from the side of the model aircraft towards the ground. His head hit the ground first. Thud, a muffled sound, so loud that the entire noisy exhibition hall could hear it. Fresh blood flowed from the edge of the child's skull, forming a small red pool. The child's parents were first stunned for a moment. Then, ah 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 ah. The child's mother let out an even more piercing and ear-piercing scream. The child's father rushed out in a single step, breaking into the exhibition area to check on the child's condition. Unfortunately, there was still breath. But that was also good, Su Chen thought, otherwise he might lose his job. Facing the stunned child's parents, Su Chen spread his hands, showing no mercy, innocently saying, I already warned you, didn't I? Received 40 points of regret from Lai Lu, along with 40 points of strength and a deposit of 400,000. Received 30 points of regret from Long Tao, along with 30 points of agility and a deposit of 300,000. Is this level of regret enough? It's no wonder the child's parents, in their worldview, don't think they did anything wrong. Looks like they need a wake-up call. You two should go to the hospital first. As for the compensation for the damaged model aircraft, let's wait until the child's condition stabilizes before discussing it. You two should go home first, relax, and wait for the court summons. Upon hearing about compensation, the two finally fell silent, received 100 points, 100 strength, and a deposit of 1 million from Lu Run. Got 88 points, agility 88, deposit 880,000. Mama Bear immediately started making a scene, do you have a conscience? My child is injured and you still have the nerve to ask us for compensation? Exactly. It's clearly the fault of your observatory, why blame us common folks? It's unreasonable. Everyone, please help us seek justice. The two knelt down wailing, taking the initiative, and indeed attracted a group of parents who sympathized without knowing the situation. 
Seeing the surrounding crowd getting agitated, they began to criticize the observatory staff, Nia Yao trembled in fear. But out of a sense of responsibility as a senior, she still stood up, shielding Su Chen behind her, and tremblingly rebuked, it's clearly because you didn't stop them, they insisted on climbing the exhibits. We've been advising you for a long time, but you not only didn't listen, but also damaged the exhibits. Mama Bear put her hands on her hips, not even caring about her half-dead child, and immediately switched to a shrewish mode, it's clearly because of your lax supervision. Otherwise, could my child have gotten in there? And now you're here trying to shift the blame onto us common folks. It's unreasonable, Yu Miya was still too young, having just graduated from college two years ago, and had never encountered such shameless people, leaving her speechless with anger. But Su Chen was more experienced. In his past life, he had seen all kinds of shameless people. He calmly grabbed Nia Yao's shoulder, pulled her aside, raised his phone, connected to his tour guide's loudspeaker via Bluetooth, and hit play. His voice echoed throughout the exhibition area. The model of the spacecraft is designed for simulation, with a smooth paint surface that is easy to slip and fall on. For the health of your child and your wallets, it's best for you to get him down as soon as possible. This was Su Chen's voice, sincere and calm and attitude. Clearly he had already dutifully warned them before. I won't let him down. What can you do about it? Then came the voice of the bear child's father. We paid for the tickets. This was the voice of the bear child's mother. We are gods. You just serve us gods well. In an instant, everyone's gaze towards the bear parents changed. They had previously sympathized with the bear parents because they also had children and subconsciously stood on the side of the bear child. But after listening to the recording, anyone with a normal sense of justice knew that it was not the museum's fault at all. The exhibition area in the museum is separated by glass walls as high as 2 meters, yet you say the observatory's supervision is lax? If it weren't for your help, how did your bear child climb over the glass and get in? Did you raise a Spider-Man? The two's faces turned black. Indeed, they had helped the bear child climb over the wall. Although Su Chen's phone didn't capture that moment, the museum's surveillance cameras definitely did. If a real investigation were to be conducted, it would all be their responsibility. The observatory was truly not at fault at all. Got 110 points, strength 110, deposit 1. 1 million. Got 120 points, strength condensing pill, deposit 1. 2 million. Ha! Huh? Strength condensing pill? Something good again. With the ambulance arriving with sirens blaring, the commotion quickly subsided. Seeing that no one supported them, and even the people around were filming to condemn the bear child, the bear parents could only leave dejectedly covering their faces. Kid, well done, the HR manager patted Su Chen's shoulder with relief, you didn't panic when faced with a situation, you were clear-headed, and didn't back down. I like young people like you. You flatter me. Keep up the good work, I have high hopes for you. You're having high hopes too early. Su Chen continued to work with a smile, fortunately this job was very leisurely, and soon it was time for his break. During lunch break, he couldn't wait to go to the beef noodle restaurant outside the museum, ordered a bowl of beef noodles, and began to study the props. He had just obtained a strength condensing pill and didn't know what it was used for. With a light thought, he retrieved the newly acquired prop. Power condensation pill, used to break through the limit of mortal physique, can break through the current stage's power limit after use. Su Chen glanced at his own attribute interface. Power, effective value 500, reached the limit, total value 1050, effective after breakthrough, agility, spiritual perception, so that's how it is. Lately, there has been a serious bias, and all the attribute points extracted are strength, so the strength directly exploded. It seems that without a breakthrough, the limit of physique that an ordinary person can reach is 10 times the basic 500 points. However, Su Chen is already satisfied, after all, the day of arrival has not yet come, and he has not even started formal cultivation. He swallowed the power condensation pill in one gulp, and Su Chen suddenly felt his physical strength skyrocket. He tentatively pinched the edge of the bowl, and accidentally crushed it into porcelain powder. He could only silently apologize to the noodle shop owner and ordered two extra portions of beef as compensation. Of course, while filling his stomach, he did not forget to give the little fox a bottle of milk. Does this thing not need to pee? Su Chen secretly poked the little guys but with his finger. It was very dry. Maybe pretty girls don't need to poop. Just as he thought of this, a warm sensation spread in his chest. Boss, change the remaining two portions of beef to take out, I won't eat here. Fine, it looks like next time he'll have to carry a diaper in his pocket. He hurried home to change clothes, wash his hands, and also gave the little guy a bath. Next time, pee outside. Su Chen angrily pointed at the cat litter box and cat litter he had just bought. The little guy tilted its head, seeming to understand. 
Its eyes were still closed, so it lay in the cat litter, curiously sniffing around. Finally, it seemed to understand Su Chen's meaning, so it opened its mouth and took a big mouthful of cat litter. This is not food. Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit. Su Chen quickly grabbed the little guy's hind legs and shook it wildly. After cleaning up the mess, the little guy sat paralyzed in the pile of cat litter, looking pitiful. Ing facepalm. Keeping pets is so troublesome. Maybe it's better to stew it. No, this is the future empress, a thigh with unlimited potential, and it took a lot of effort to max out the favorability points. Dog system, is there any way to make this thing understand human language? Right, lottery. Su Chen looked at his regret points balance of 1412, a glimmer of hope ignited in his heart. Balance supports a 10 consecutive draw, with a guaranteed high grade, blue, reward for a 10 consecutive draw, do you want to do a 10 consecutive draw? Of course, he had to do a 10 consecutive draw. Su Chen clicked on the 10 consecutive draw, immediately regretted it. Damn, a 10 consecutive draw is definitely the biggest trap in this world. The guarantee was indeed a guarantee, but it was too much to have nothing but the guarantee. Nine dim death stars collided with Su Chen's body, transforming into 40 points of agility and 50 points of strength, while the last blue star turned into two droplet-like pearls, floating in front of Su Chen. Congratulations, you have successfully obtained the droplet of telepathy, Junior, which can allow any creature to have basic telepathy with you, allowing it to roughly understand your thoughts. Although the result is not a highly rare reward, at least something useful was drawn, which happened to solve his urgent need. Not bad, acceptable. Use the droplet of telepathy, Junior, choose me and this little guy. He silently issued the command to use it. The two droplets flew towards Su Chen and the little guy's foreheads, penetrating and merging. Ing? Remember, don't pee in my pocket next time. Su Chen repeated, if your stomach hurts, you can scratch me, and I will take you to the toilet. Ing the little guy still seemed to understand vaguely, not reacting, just making whimpering sounds. Su Chen, helpless, could only treat it as if it understood. There are three more chances to draw. Su Chen's gaze shifted to the draw button. He was hesitating whether to save up for a 10 consecutive draw. He always felt that the 10 consecutive draw was a bit of a pit. Is it a matter of luck? Either way, should I try a single draw? The finger hesitated and lightly touched it. Whoosh, a dazzling golden light burst into view. If I get another 10 in a row, I'll be a dog. Su Chen looked at the big treasure he had just drawn. Automatic cultivation method, legendary gold quality, with a very simple and crude effect below. Automatically cultivate and improve at all times. Automatic cultivation effect has been activated. Current ambient spiritual element concentration, operating technique, none, efficiency, increase by zero. One spiritual awareness per hour. Well, this thing seems to have come too early. It's not the day of arrival yet, the spiritual element concentration on earth is too low. Although automatic cultivation is a divine technique, it's not useful now. Detected that the surrounding spiritual element concentration is too low, the actual improvement brought by the reward value is far below the dignity that should be brought by the gold quality. Additional compensation gifts will be extracted soon. Can it be like this? This is too conscientious. Gift extraction completed. You have successfully obtained Heavenly Appraisal Technique, Primary. Heavenly Appraisal Technique, Primary Focus your gaze on an object to display detailed information about the object, can appraise items with primary potential and below. Su Chen tentatively looked at a vase in the room. This vase was bought by Zhao Meng Yin for several thousand, claiming to be a Qing Dynasty glass vase, which could be a family heirloom. Vertical glass vase, produced at Shangqing Glass Factory, production date 2013. Main component, silica, secondary component. Market valuation, 5 yuan, just this? Market valuation of 5 yuan? Zhao Meng Yan asked for 8,000 just to buy this thing? It's all a scam. Fortunately, the trouble was sent away. Not bad, with this move, I can go to the antique market in my spare time to pick up some bargains. It can be considered a blessing in disguise, at least he restarted once and had the opportunity to avoid future pitfalls. Seeing that the lunch break was almost over, Su Chen left for the observatory. Unexpectedly, he encountered an unexpected guest. Su Chen, are you crazy? You don't do a job that pays 8,000 a month, and you come to the observatory to be a tour guide? Su Chen looked at the other person, stunned. Can this appraisal technique also appraise living people? Name, Jiayuancha, social relationships related to you, elder sister Zhao Mengyan, motherly Zhao, Father Jiayu, backup Zhou Xiaodong, personality, snobbish, loves to take advantage, strength, agility, 25, spiritual awareness, height, weight, illness, skills, cultivation, please increase appraisal level, wow, strength 82, normal adult male is only 50, 
and she still asks me to open bottle caps for her normally? I'm asking you a question. Why are you standing there stupidly? My choice of work is my freedom. It has nothing to do with you. What do you want from me? Su Chen completely ignored this person. Zhao Mengyan is a seductress, and this person is at least a matchmaker. Relying on being Zhao Mengyan's younger sister, she borrows money from me every few days and never returns it. In addition, she often treats me as a free laborer, asking me to help move for free, repair computers for free, and treat her and her friends to free meals and drinks. If I refuse, she goes to Zhao Mengyan to cry and make a scene, and even goes to her parents to badmouth me, saying that her brother-in-law is not a good person. Her parents also take the opportunity to ask for a higher dowry amount. It can only be said that everyone in Zhao Mengyan's family is a piece of work. Of course it has to do with me. You are going to marry into our family, your income is closely related to my sister's happiness. Of course I have to look out for my sister. Su Chen is used to the logic of this family, and is no longer provoked, just speechless for a while, marry into your family? Does your family even deserve to use the term marry into? Zhao Yuancha furrowed her thick eyebrows. What are you talking about? What do you mean by undeserving? My parents have already discussed with my sister, when you two get married, the child will take our family name, and the house must be in my sister's name. Su Chen smiled, so I'm the last one to know about this? What, you disagree? If you disagree, then don't bother my sister anymore. Fine, I'll call off the engagement. I knew you didn't have the guts. Ha! Huh? One sentence made Zao Yuanka's CPU smoke. What's going on? Did her sister's husband, who was afraid of being separated from Zao Menjian, get possessed by someone else? Did he just mishear it? He must have misheard it. Su Chen, I'll give you one last chance, take back what you just said, apologize to me, and transfer 5,000 yuan, or I'll tell my parents. Uft, Su Chen couldn't hold back this time. Since the incident with the naughty kid during the day, he had developed a habit of recording audio and video when dealing with despicable people. This time was no different. So without saying a word, he saved the recording as evidence. And as a first step, he transferred 5,000 yuan to Zao Yuanka. You know your place. Zao Yuanka smugly pressed the receive button, thinking this move never failed. Just as she received the money, Su Chen made a call. 110. Hello? I want to report a case of extortion. Yes, 5,000 yuan, completed, the money has been transferred, the crime has occurred. Can it be filed now? Three years? Okay. Zao Yuanka was dumbfounded. She was taken to the police station in a police car, handed over the audio evidence to the police uncle, and also retrieved the 5,000 yuan she had been extorted by Zao Yuanka. Su Chen felt refreshed. After completing the case record, he casually waved to Zao Yuanka. Just stay honest in the detention room, oh, and eat less, don't bankrupt the place. Zao Yuanka was furious. How dare you detain me? I'll tell you. You're finished. I'll call my sister right now. Do as you please. Su Chen was indifferent. This time Zao Yuanka was really starting to panic. It's not easy to find someone like Su Chen, and her family was planning to squeeze a large sum of dowry money from him. If she ruined it, her family would definitely punish her. Although she was starting to panic, Zao Yuanka still refused to back down. Do you think you're some kind of treasure? Let me tell you. My sister has plenty of suitors. She doesn't need a loser like you. You still have time to apologize to me now, otherwise, oomph, you'll regret it. Su Chen didn't even turn his head, just waved his hand, don't worry, I'll go to your house tonight to call off the engagement. You. Hearing about calling off the engagement, Zao Yuanka got scared. Mainly because she was afraid of getting beaten at home. And being locked up in a detention center was really uncomfortable. Received 50 regret points from Zao Yuanka, also gained 50 agility and 500,000 in savings. Only 50 points, indeed this family has no sense of guilt, their values have gone astray. They should all be sent to Myanmar. I don't want to think about it. I'll go find some normal people to wash my eyes. Too much contact with these extreme types can lead to nightmares at night. Su Chen whistled his way back to the observatory, leaving Zao Yuanka in the detention center. Let me out. I didn't commit a crime. It was just a joke. He's my sister's husband. Zao Yuanka shouted frantically behind the iron bars. Unfortunately, the police had seen many people like her. The guard officer impatiently knocked on the iron bars, stop making noise, extortion of 5,000 yuan is enough to be prosecuted. If you're lucky, you'll be out in a year or two, if not, you'll get three years. Zao Yuanka's head buzzed. It wasn't until this moment that she realized the seriousness of the situation. Impossible. How can it be so serious? She screamed hysterically, it was only 5,000 yuan. And didn't I give it back to him? Not to mention he's my sister's husband. We were just joking. First of all, you press the receive button for the 5,000 yuan, 
indicating that the crime of extortion has occurred, it's a completed crime. The guard patiently explained, secondly, you did not voluntarily return the money, but it was confiscated by the police after you were caught red-handed. Zhao Yuancha suddenly understood. She realized why Su Chen transferred money to her first, then deliberately waited for her to confirm receipt before making this damn call. Isn't it too scheming? The punishment for a completed crime and an attempted crime is like night and day. For an attempt, she might just receive some criticism and education and be let go, but for a completed crime, it means she will really have to go to jail. Su Chen, you bastard, are you playing dirty tricks? Zhao Yuancha was shaking with anger. Shut up, it seems like you haven't realized your own mistake at all. Clearly, you were the one extorting money, yet here you are blaming others? I think giving you the maximum sentence of three years is lenient. Upon hearing the guard's words, Zhao Yuancha instantly deflated. She gritted her teeth unwillingly, but he's my brother-in-law. We were just joking. The guard raised an eyebrow, whether it's a joke or not, that's not for you to decide. Your brother-in-law must admit it was a joke, otherwise, you're guilty of extortion. Why should he have the final say? He is the victim. If you don't want to go to jail, you better beg for his forgiveness. Your fate is in his hands now. Zhao Yuancha sat dumbfounded in the detention area, unable to speak for a long time. She had to beg Su Chen? Ask her to beg Su Chen? She would never lower her head like that. I want to make a phone call. Let me make a call. I'm going to turn the tables on him. Zhao Yuancha angrily dialed the phone. First, she called Zhao Mengyan, but no one answered. She had to call home, quickly changing her aggressive tone to a tone full of grievance, sobbing as she said, Mom, I've been set up by that brat Su Chen on the other side. Su Chen didn't care about Zhao Yuancha's mental turmoil. He had already made all the preparations. Su Chen, the parents of those two troublemaking kids have complained about you. Nia Yao came to report, but you don't need to worry. The director has reviewed the surveillance footage, and you handled it well. You should receive a bonus this month. Su Chen smiled and nodded, not bothered by it. He didn't lack that bit of salary bonus. This job was just a stepping stone to infiltrate the summit. There was just one thing he hadn't figured out. How did Zhao Yuancha know he had joined the observatory? It wasn't until he saw a figure outside the observatory that Su Chen understood. Zhou Xiaodong? The other party didn't respond, pretending not to see Su Chen and hurriedly leaving. So that's how it was. When Zhao Yuancha was looking at Zhou Xiaodong's profile, she happened to see that he was this guy's backup plan. Zhou Xiaodong was also his classmate, the researcher who debated with him about the threat of asteroids at the last class reunion. He recognized himself, then informed Zhao Yuancha, which made sense. By the way, the second and third floors of the observatory are the research areas. It seems Zhou Xiaodong works here. Interesting. It seemed he could catch up with this old classmate when he had time. Back at his post, Su Chen continued to follow Nia Yao and listen to the lecture. Work at the observatory was sometimes leisurely, with hardly any visitors in the afternoon, so he confidently played with his phone until it was time to go off duty. Su Chen, wait. Just as he was about to step out of the observatory, a timid voice called out to Su Chen. Turning around, it was Nia Yao. Yes? I want to invite you to dinner, to thank you. For helping me out today. Nia Yao blushed and lowered her head. A meaningful glance was cast around. Among the staff at the observatory, Nia Yao was the most likable. Although she didn't have stunning looks or figure, she was petite and cute, with a sweet voice. Most importantly, she was knowledgeable and considerate, making her the object of admiration for the single young men at the observatory. This was the first time she had invited someone of the opposite sex to dinner, which inevitably made people feel a bit sour. Su Chen waved his hand, let's do it another day, I have something to do tonight. What do you have to do? Nia Yao asked nervously in a low voice. Su Chen smiled slightly, divorce. Sure enough, just after work, the parents of the dog sisters called. Su Chen, did you send Yuan Chayan? Dog mom Li Jiao's voice was cold. Yes. Why? Su Chen smiled. She didn't have the face to tell you herself? Extortion. Do you want to send Yuan Cha to jail for such a small matter? Are you crazy? Extortion is not a small matter. And I have evidence to prove that this is not her first time extorting money. The total amount extorted exceeds 100,000. You want Yuan Cha to sit in jail for three years for just 100,000? Are you out of your mind? No no no, three years is the sentence for 5,000 extortion, 100,000 is not that short. Then, how much is it? Li Jiao's voice trembled. Don't worry, I will actively provide evidence, ensure that the judge deals with it severely, at least eight years, you and your father-in-law can't run away. Li Jiao was speechless with gratitude. Seeing Li Jiao about to enter a hysterical state, dog dad Jiao Yu picked up the phone. 
Xiaowen, I think things can still be negotiated. We are all family. Why make it so awkward? Family? Would you say give me 5,000 or I'll XX to your family? Do you think this counts as family? Zhao Yu frowned slightly, wanting to say more, but Li Jiao snatched the phone away. I'm telling you Su Chen, go to the detention center now and bring Yuan Cha back, sign the settlement agreement for me. Otherwise, you will never see Zhao Meng Yan again in your life. Oh, is there such a good thing? Su Chen laughed, he didn't want to see that person again anyway. Oh, not really, if nothing unexpected happens, he should see her again. When he is strong enough, he will go and destroy the base in Myanmar, like a god descending to save her, then accidentally throw her to another base. Thrift is a virtue, even if it's garbage, it should be recycled until it's completely crushed. Hmm, he is really virtuous. On the other end of the phone, Li Jiao was once again at a loss for words. Hasn't this little lapdog always loved Zhao Mengyan to death? Before today, everyone who knew him and Zhao Mengyan thought that Su Chen would definitely be willing to die for Zhao Mengyan. His dedication and loyalty and relationships were seen by everyone, he was the perfect boyfriend. So Zhao Mengyan's family has always used this deep affection to profit, blackmailing Su Chen to pay more and more. But why isn't this threat working today? This caught Li Jiao off guard. They just realized that if Su Chen no longer sees Zhao Mengyan as his moonlight, they are nothing in his eyes. They no longer have the power to control Su Chen's actions. This huge gap made Li Jiao unable to accept it for a while. But then she smiled suddenly. She absolutely didn't believe that Su Chen would really cut ties with Zhao Mengyan. Li Jiao understood. This kid must be bluffing. He wants to regain his dignity and status, so he staged this act, pretending to be tough. In reality, he would never give up on Zhao Mengyan. Li Jiao would sooner believe that the national football team would win the championship than believe that Su Chen's love for Zhao Mengyan would disappear. This kid, daring to resist, daring to play tricks in front of her. Today, she will see how long he can keep up the act. Kid, you're finished, I'm telling you, you're finished. If you don't come up with 500,000 today, don't think this matter will be settled. What if I don't? Then we divorce. You are never allowed near my Meng Yen again. Li Jiao triumphantly brought out her ultimate move. In the eyes of Zhao Meng Yen's family, divorce must be the thing Su Chen fears most. Without a doubt. This move always works on him. Okay, let's divorce. Li Jiao and Zhao Yu thought they were hearing things. What did this kid just say? He agreed to divorce? How is that possible? It's a bluff. It must be a bluff. I'll be heading to your place right away. The marriage certificate and the engagement ceremony from before are ready. After saying that, Su Chen didn't wait for their response. He hung up the phone directly. Instead of going straight to Zhao's house, he went to the police station first. I want to report a case. What happened? My girlfriend went to Myanmar North, has been missing for a day, asked me to transfer 8 million before disappearing. The police officers exchanged a glance. Their expressions immediately turned serious. Keywords, Myanmar North, missing, transfer 8 million. Even a fool could instantly deduce the results. So what is your request? Help me find my girlfriend. Sir, please understand, if she has really reached Myanmar North. The police officer hesitated. I know, so I hope you can help me retrieve her chat records, let the truth be revealed. This was Su Chen's true purpose. Reporting a missing person case was just to obtain that woman's chat records. Of course, if it was just a disappearance, the police had no authority to request records from the company. So, in his conversation with Zhao Mengyan earlier, he deliberately sent a screenshot of a deposit 8 million. Zhao Mengyan asked him to transfer all the deposits. This matter instantly escalated into a telecommunications fraud involving 8 million overseas remittances, already a serious criminal case. Even if not for finding the person, the police had to stop Su Chun from impulsively transferring the money. That gave them a reason to retrieve the chat records. And Su Chen knew it all along. Zhao Mengyan's chat records were explosive. And he would make those records public within Zhao Mengyan's social circle. After several operations, the police successfully connected with the company and retrieved Zhao Mengyan's WeChat chat records. Well, when they opened it, even the experienced police officers couldn't hold back. Li Gu, do you think I'm cute? That dog is working overtime, Li Gu, I miss you so much, let's video chat, nude photo, video call for 1 hour and 3 minutes. Similar conversations happen almost every day. All of Zhao Mengyan's actions were exposed in public. Besides that, there were more. I asked that coward to top up a hundred thousand, he refused, saying it's a scam, he deserves to die. I really want to poison that waste and be with you, I've bought the poison, it's a slow-acting one that causes organ failure, won't be detected in an autopsy. Photo of poison, seeing this, even the police gasped in shock. Everyone looked at Su Chen with sympathy and concern, are you okay? Do you need to go to the hospital for a checkup? 
Su Chen looked sorrowful, I'm fine, let's clear this matter up first. Maybe you should take a break, or else I'm afraid you won't be able to handle the blow. Don't worry, I'm mentally prepared. It's better to see the true face of this venomous woman early. As a legendary epic injustice, the entire police station felt sorry for Su Chen, the unlucky guy. Before retrieving Zhao Mengyan and Li Ji's chat records, they first looked at Su Chen and Zhao Mengyan's chat records. Su Chen was so diligent. Whether it was birthdays, holidays, daily material, or emotional needs, he always took care of Zhao Mengyan in every aspect. Moreover, Zhao Mengyan didn't have a job, spent all day eating, drinking, and having fun, being lazy. While Su Chen not only bore the pressure of work, exhausted both physically and mentally every day, he would come home to be criticized by Zhao Mengyan for being useless and giving cheap gifts. Damn, he's still so handsome. The female officers in the station were inwardly shouting about the unfairness. How could such a perfect boyfriend be taken advantage of by a venomous woman like Zhao Mengyan? The young female officers surrounded him, comforting him softly, making coffee and offering their desserts to Su Chen. Thank you, I'm fine. Su Chen trembled all over, overwhelmed with grief, clutching his chest to prevent himself from bursting into laughter. Things continued to progress, and as more chat records were made public, all of Zhao Mengyan's dirty plans were exposed to the sunlight. Li Ge, I can't stand it anymore. This Valentine's Day, he only gave me a handbag worth 20,000 yuan. How can a poor loser like him deserve to have me? I want to elope with you, Li Gu. It seems that even the scammer Li Gu was speechless, not knowing how to reply for a while. After five minutes, he replied, Indeed, you deserve better. Come to Myanmar with me, I will show you the high society world. Zhao Meng Yen, Li Gu, wait for me, I can't be a vase with nothing. I need to have some economic capital before I can come to see you. I want to be an economically independent outstanding woman. Li Gu, oh, how are you going to be independent? Zhao Meng Yen, I will be economically independent once I drain all the money from that idiot Su Chen's wallet. Li Gu, thumbs up, you truly deserve it. The police officers were a bit unable to watch. An uncle patted Su Chen's shoulder and said, don't be sincere next time. Nowadays, sincerity cannot be exchanged for sincerity, it will only make people feel humiliated. Su Chen sighed, I have learned my lesson. If only I had understood this earlier. It's okay, your life journey is still long. Experience is gained from setbacks. Su Chen nodded with a bitter smile, wiped the wet corners of his eyes with a tissue. It was hard to hold back laughter, tears even came out. In short, after investigating the WeChat chat records, the situation was now very clear. Zhao Mengyan repeatedly extorted money from the victim in order to drain him and elope with the third party to Myanmar. After arriving in Myanmar, Zhao Mengyan conspired with the scammers in Myanmar to take advantage of the victim's loyalty and love, once again defrauding the victim of all his property, amounting to 8 million yuan. Moreover, the victim Su Chen was likely already poisoned and his life was in danger. This was a very serious case of fraud and murder. The suspect Zhao Mengyan had already fled to Myanmar in advance and her whereabouts were unknown. Of course, Zhao Mengyan herself might also be a victim of a scam. But at this moment, no one had any sympathy for this victim. Furthermore, this person was also suspected of committing a serious crime of murder and was already a criminal suspect. Wake up, don't send her money anymore in the future, the old police officer advised Su Chen, no matter what excuses she uses to ask you for money, don't give it to her anymore, it will only become her criminal fund. Okay, I got it. Su Chen nodded. Now go to the hospital to check your body, we still don't know if the suspect has carried out a murder plan. Considering that she has already fled to Myanmar, you may have already been affected, go to the hospital. Okay. I'll support you. I'll go. Make way, let me go first. Several female police officers volunteered to take Su Chen to the hospital. However, Su Chen looked wary, as if he had been shocked, and he backed away and refused. He was like a frightened bird that had been hurt, now suffering from a severe fear of women. That venomous woman deserves to die. Everyone couldn't help but think. By the way, can I make a copy of the chat records? I'm planning to sue for divorce, it should be used in court as evidence of infidelity after engagement. Su Chen, as the victim of the incident, had a legitimate demand to keep evidence for the lawsuit, so he quickly got what he wanted. After receiving the evidence, he held his head, weakly swaying. What's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? I'm fine. Su Chen avoided the support, and in the sympathetic eyes of everyone, he walked out of the police station unsteadily. His departing figure was desolate and lonely. Su Chen went directly to Zhao Mengyan's house after leaving the police station. Absurdly, when they heard Su Chen asking for the return of the betrothal gifts, that pair of irresponsible parents actually chose to refuse to open the door. Su Chen, who had come from afar to ask for a divorce, was given the cold shoulder. 
Xiaowen, calm down first, wait for Meng Yan to come back before we talk. What kind of ability is it to bully us old folks? Dad Dog persuaded. He he. Su Chen was not in a hurry to break the door. He just leisurely said, you'd better tear up the marriage certificate for me today, otherwise, if it goes to court, your old faces may have nowhere to hide. Su Chen, are you still a man? It's only natural for a man to spend money on a woman. You want to take back the dowry that was given? Have you no shame? Mom Dog hysterically shouted. Su Chen was used to the extreme behavior of this family, and he was completely calm, saying, first of all, men and women are independent individuals, and it is not natural for anyone to spend money on someone else. Women are capable of taking care of themselves and don't need to rely on handouts to live. The pressure that normal men bear is never less than any gender. Su Chen calmly replied, secondly, I have my reasons for requesting a divorce, and if you open the door, I can show you. If you don't want to see it, the lawyer in court will show it to everyone, and you may regret it then. You have the nerve to sue? Fine. Fine. If you dare to sue, I will let everyone see your stingy face. You even have the audacity to want the dowry money back. Disgusting. Shameless. Are you sure? I not only want you and everyone in Zhao Mingyan's circle to know your true colors, but I will also find reporters. Find internet celebrities to livestream. Let the whole world know what a stingy man you are. Uft, can't hold it in. Just now at the police station, she had been holding back laughter for a long time, and now her composure was gone. Some people in this world have such outdated and absurd thoughts. They never even consider self-reliance as a basic requirement for a human being, but believe they are entitled to be giant babies from birth. They even think it's natural and right. They are trapped in an information cocoon, thinking that everyone in the world will support their ideas. And Su Chen is seen as the miserly, uncouth outlier. Helpless. People like this are beyond help. Just like people like Zhao Mengyan, their understanding of independence has been completely distorted, thinking that sucking men's blood like parasites and being independent as long as they suck hard enough is enough. The truly outstanding individuals, such as the female emperors who safeguard a clan's peace, or those who fight on the front lines, or those who strive and research to advance society. And every truly independent woman who works diligently and self-sufficiently, have to be ashamed because of the actions of these parasites. Without getting rid of these pests, there is no justice in the world. In that case, you too can wait for the court summons. Su Chen smiled, remember to bring your reporters and internet celebrities, and publicize my ugly side. Truly looking forward to it. Zhao Yu, the dog dad, worked at an MCN company, managing internet celebrities and other projects, and held a significant management position. The internet celebrity accounts under his management had a total fan base of over 30 million. The exposure that mom dog Li Jiao mentioned about Su Chen should be related to leveraging this relationship. Sure enough, as soon as Su Chen left, the angry mom dog started to vent her anger at dog dad, you must handle this matter properly. Let your subordinates start hyping it up, creating momentum. I want the whole world to know the true face of this kid. Why not just let it go? Jiao Yu's three views were slightly more normal, but having developed a habit of being a bootlicker, he had become ingrained in his subservience to mom dog and could only meekly say, let's just not return the dowry, why bother with any hype? No, this kid dares to talk to me with such an attitude, he's gone too far. He needs to know the cost of resistance. Scare him properly, so he will behave like a dog in the future. I can also take this opportunity to ask for more dowry. Jiayu was speechless, but he was too weak to say anything, so he could only comply. Ange, did you really go through with the divorce last night? The next morning, as soon as Su Chan entered the observatory, a group of colleagues surrounded him with faces full of gossip. Why should I lie? Su Chen raised his eyebrows, thinking that these colleagues were quite friendly, indicating a good working atmosphere. It's not because of Nia Yao's broken engagement, right? Of course not. I've only known her for half a day. What do you take me for? Su Chen was speechless. Just then, Nia Yao had just entered the observatory and heard Su Chen's response clearly. She breathed a sigh of relief, feeling a bit of complicated relief as Su Chen's response last night was too easily misunderstood. She had just wanted to invite him out for a meal to express her gratitude, but he mentioned breaking off the engagement, which was strange. Nia Yao had no ulterior motives, she just wanted to show her gratitude and thank Su Chen for his excellent help. Are you free tonight? Nia Yao interrupted the gossiping crowd, asking with a serious expression. Su Chen glanced at his phone, I probably won't be. Because just now, Cheng Chen from the Bai Chao Medicinal Herbs Company had sent a message. A large batch of goods had arrived. In the future, the asteroid changed many things, people's social classes, lifestyles, and territorial limits. But the first thing it changed was the natural environment. 
When the New Year's bell rang, the asteroid happened to reach the center point between the Earth and the Moon, its strange nature directly disrupting the gravitational balance between the Earth and the Moon, completely destroying the existing tidal force system. The harsh climate led to widespread extinction of species, especially plants sensitive to temperature and humidity. Plants like the magnolia family, snow lotus, and lightleaf fern, whether cultivated or wild, perished in a massive cold wave. To make matters worse, these endangered precious plants later lost their ability to reproduce completely in the spiritual baptism. However, despite the loss of reproductive ability, they gained a powerful effect of enhancing their cultivation qualifications. Under various factors, since then, these plants have been promoted to divine objects, and each one's presence is bound to bring about a bloody storm, causing a frenzy of competition among people. These are some of the medicinal herbs on the list, I'll take a few pictures for you to see the quality. Su Chen looked at the herbal pictures sent by Chang Chen, feeling a myriad of emotions. In his past life, he had only seen these things in dreams, and never dared to think about them when awake. And now, they were easily accessible. It was as if he had returned to the time when Bitcoin was just invented, and no one realized its crazy potential for appreciation in the future. Even the appreciation of these herbs was much more exaggerated than Bitcoin. Have them all delivered to this address tonight, I'm working now and don't have time to pick them up. Su Chen replied. What business does Boss Su do? Cheng Chen curiously asked. As a tour guide. A tour guide can earn so much? I see, the boss is experiencing life, right? Something like that. Su Chen couldn't be bothered to explain further. Cheng Chen didn't ask much either, as he had no doubts about Su Chen's financial strength, and both sides had contracts to guarantee the transactions, so there was nothing to worry about. See you tonight. Su Chen was about to put away his phone and relax, but someone wouldn't let him have peace. You can still regret it now, your manuscript has been written and exposed, don't wait until you're ruined to cry and beg us, it will be too late then. The message was from Dog Mom, trying to pressure Su Chen with the help of Dog Dad's internet celebrity status. This is the final warning. Whatever you're doing, come and apologize to me now. Otherwise, get ready to face the consequences. Are you trying to cyber bully me? How considerate of you. Su Chen almost burst out laughing, wondering how to make his doomsday prophecy known to the world, and here Dog Dad and Dog Mom were voluntarily spending money to put him in the spotlight. Quite a stroke of luck. Full of gratitude, Su Chen typed in the reply box, hurry up, I don't believe you dare to publish it, trash. Dog Mom's blood pressure shot up when she saw the reply. At this point, she no longer wanted to leave any room for reconciliation. She just wanted to see Su Chen kneel in front of her and obediently offer up all his possessions, while begging her to spare him. How dare he provoke me? How dare he provoke me? It makes me so angry, post a video. Have your internet celebrities post a video. Expose him harshly for me. With the command from the dog mom, the dog dad had no choice but to comply. Soon, a pile of short essays were uploaded to various platforms. The titles of these short essays and videos were surprisingly uniform. This man is outrageous, actually threatening his girlfriend's parents to return the betrothal gifts. Shameless. The heat began to rise quickly. The efficiency of the dog mom and dad was high. Around noon, Su Chen heard the first discussion about himself. The man in this video. Why does he look so similar to that commentator over there? The first person to notice was a tourist who had no interest in the observatory and was just there to accompany his wife and children. He was sitting there scrolling through Douyin when he stumbled upon something interesting. Family members, who would have thought, I actually encountered an extreme man today. The tourist was not interested in the following discussions, but a familiar face in a photo caught his attention. Why does the person in this photo look so familiar? Because he's so handsome, I remembered this face, quite impressive. Oh, that tour guide. This extreme man actually threatened his girlfriend's parents to return the betrothal gifts while she was away. Look at the video my sister sent for help, this man is truly terrifying. You better tear up the marriage certificate now, or else you will regret it. The video came from the surveillance camera at Zhao Mengyan's house. Through selective editing and eerie background music, Su Chen was portrayed as a serial killer. Even his casual stroll in the hallway was filmed as if he was plotting a break-in. The comments section erupted, with people entering battle mode and destroying everything in the comments. Look, this is what men are like, all men are like this. Oh my god, this is so scary, call the police. Daily fear of men. Disgusting, why are there such disgusting men in this world? Videos that evoke emotions always quickly excite netizens, and soon hundreds of comments appeared below the video. Only a few people raised doubts, there are signs of editing in the video, suspicion of selective editing. Before the full video is released, don't rush to take sides, let the bullets fly for a while. 
However, in less than half a minute, they were bombarded by the army of commenters in battle mode. F asterisk CKU, the guy below is still defending him, shameless. The video is very clear, and you're still defending him here. It's obvious that he's a dangerous violent criminal. This kind of person should be arrested immediately, he clearly has violent tendencies, he's a menace even outside. It will be too late when he kills someone. A few rational comments were instantly drowned in a sea of saliva, and those who commented to protect their ancestors had to delete their comments, admitting defeat. The disappearance of dissenting voices allowed the fervent commenters to continue their march unimpeded. This kind of person should be doxxed and killed sooner. He has been doxxed, his name is Su Chen, graduated from. Previously worked at an internet company in Shangqing, recently resigned and went to work as a commentator at Shangqing Observatory. This dangerous individual actually worked at the Shangqing Observatory, I remember it's all children there, right? Shangqing Observatory? Our school was about to organize a visit there, how can we still dare to go now? I work at the hospital and admitted a child yesterday who is still in the ICU and may end up in a vegetative state. It said that the child was sent from the astronomical observatory in the upper city. Oh my god, it's so terrifying. Why hasn't the observatory fired him yet? Does anyone know the management of the observatory? Let's take action. Apart from this disaster, with the intentional promotion by several internet celebrities, the situation quickly escalated and spread rapidly across the entire internet. Even the leaders of the observatory soon got wind of the news. Su Chen, Lao Gao wants you to go to his office. The employees around looked at Su Chen with some strange looks, with a bit of curiosity, and fear. Remembering that Su Chen said he was going to divorce last night, this seemed to be an indirect admission of the incident in the video. Okay. Su Chen had anticipated that something like this would happen, so he calmly walked into the office of the HR manager, Lao Gao, received 50 points of regret from Gao Jianyu, and also gained 50 points of spiritual insight, and a deposit of 500,000. 50 points of spiritual insight. It actually exploded. Spiritual insight directly reached 164 points. Awesome. It seems that under public pressure, Lao Gao deeply regrets hiring him. This was quite an unexpected joy. Su Chen entered the office. Su Chen, someone told me that you went to divorce last night, is that true? Su Chen narrowed his eyes, someone reported it? Didn't Lao Gao see it himself on the video? Who is deliberately causing trouble? Yes. Su Chen admitted calmly. Take a look at this video, is that you in the video? Su Chen glanced at the carefully crafted online attack bulletins by the dog parents. It's me, but it's different from the actual situation, I have a recording. Hmm. Su Chen took out the recording and straightforwardly posted the original incident in the workgroup. He didn't want to be mistaken as a murderer for no reason. The situation became clear immediately, Su Chen remained calm throughout, it was the dog parent in the room who was hysterical, and that guy even said he would expose Su Chen, received 50 points of regret from Gao Zheni, and also gained 50 points of strength, and a deposit of 500,000. Oh, Lao Gao breathed a sigh of relief realizing that he had almost wrongly accused Su Chen, such an excellent guide, due to the video. He regretted it deeply. Tell me, why would you suddenly want a divorce? I couldn't bear it anymore, Su Chen said with a relieved smile. He showed the chat records he obtained from the police station to Lao Gao. After looking at it for a while, Lao Gao's eyes widened. Damn! Is this person still human if he doesn't divorce? Those damn media outlets are distorting the truth and spreading rumors all day long, worse than animals. He was furious, as if he had been hurt not by Su Chen, but by the scum woman. Su Chen shrugged, just had bad luck with people. Su Chen, don't worry. Lao Gao suddenly gave Su Chen a big hug. As long as I'm here, the observatory is on your side. Clearly, you are the victim, there's no reason to let you be maliciously attacked by those rumors. Su Chen was somewhat surprised. What about our observatory? Do you think our observatory relies on ticket sales for a living? Lao Gao laughed. The observatory is a non-profit organization, its main task is to carry out popular science work. The ticket money is negligible, and the observatory relies on government funding. If fewer people come, won't the government funding be affected? You don't need to worry, as long as I see it, there's no reason to let a victim be maliciously attacked. Debunking rumors is also part of our popular science work. It was unexpected that he wasn't fired, which surprised Su Chen. Is this the confidence of a secure job? But, you don't need to bother, I'll clarify it myself, Su Chen said calmly. Good. You've got courage. Things have come to this point, normal people would have fallen ill from anger, but you can still stand calmly in front of me, not making a fuss, I didn't misjudge you after all. Don't praise me anymore, I'm getting too full of myself. Ha ha. 
You are now a science popularizer. Debunking rumors is the most important part of science popularization work. Seize this opportunity to make a name for yourself. Once you become popular, you will be the online face of our museum. You have a good image, clear articulation, be a good science popularizer, maybe you can be as popular as teacher Tsang Mao in the future, then the whole museum will benefit from it, and you can even bring Lao Gao to fame. He he Su Chen was speechless. Wow, they were waiting for him here. Su Chen naturally wouldn't let those people slander him, but his voice alone was too weak, and it would be meaningless to counterattack rashly. So, he was waiting for the right moment. There is a seven-day law in communication studies. Generally, a matter only has about seven days from fermentation to conclusion on the internet, with the first 24 hours being the brewing period. Relevant news needs to spread and expand during this time, and the best fuel for spreading is anger. That's why short articles by boxers always quickly gain high popularity. Between 24 and 48 hours, various media will start to follow up, releasing further detailed information. This is also the period of the fastest outbreak of popularity, and most netizens come into contact with the hot news during this stage. That is the climax of the event, where the anger reaches its peak, and both sides, whether for or against, have the highest fighting spirit at this moment, both eager for the parties involved to come forward and settle the matter once and for all. That is the opportunity to step in. So there's no use rushing now, it's better to let the fire burn a little more. Su Chen, Lao Gao has given you a week off to lay low for a while. Thanks. But I just started working and already on leave? Is the museum so lenient? Just now, a few elementary schools called to cancel their group visit to the observatory, saying that parents had strong reactions. Is it starting already? In the internet age, the speed of self-media information dissemination is much faster than in the official media age. In just half a day, the online backlash has already started affecting offline activities. Hang in there. We are on your side. Su Chen's exposure of the misbehavior of the troublemaking kids and their parents yesterday was a relief for his colleagues. They had had enough of those troublemakers, and Su Chen had avenged them fiercely, so they already admired this new colleague. Moreover, this time, Su Chen had already released a clarification recording. Thank you. Su Chen smiled, not being polite, and went home with his bag. He went directly to the delivery point agreed upon with Cheng Chen. Unexpectedly, Cheng Chen had been waiting here early. Boss Su, why are you here so early? The company's gifts haven't been delivered yet. Something came up, so I got an early leave. What happened? Not because of those rumors, right? Boss Su, don't worry, netizen's memories only last seven days, and after seven days, no one cares about what you did. You are quite well informed, even you know about it? Su Chen raised an eyebrow. The company employees told me, after all, this is also part of the trading risk. But I don't care, I only care about how much the boss can buy, whether he has killed someone or not has nothing to do with me. You really have no bottom line. Su Chen laughed. Hee hee, so, boss, do you want to buy more things? First of all, I want to clarify that I have been wronged, I have a recording, and when I post it tomorrow, the truth will be revealed. Secondly, I can add another 5 million worth of goods, as long as you do me a favor. Upon hearing the words 5 million, Cheng Chen shuddered, standing up straight, boss, just tell me what to do. I just submitted a lawsuit to the Shangqing court, and I hope you can ensure that this trial is fair enough, with no one showing favoritism or cheating, and everything is done in a reasonable, legal, and transparent manner. That's too easy. You can rest assured, my nephew is in the Shangqing court, I will make sure to keep an eye on it for you. Good, let's open the box, I want to see the quality of the goods. The mental battle between dog parents is just post-dinner entertainment, stocking up supplies in advance to deal with the new era is the real deal. Su Chen opened and inspected each box, satisfied with the quality after checking one by one. Very good, this first transaction confirms the sincerity of your Bai Chao company. I will write you a new list later, continue to help me with the procurement. Boss, may I ask boldly, what are you planning to do with so many medicinal herbs? Cheng Chan really couldn't understand. Logically, if Su Chen is the boss of a pharmaceutical company, this kind of thing should be handled by the purchasing manager. If he is the purchasing manager himself, why not disclose the company's identity? Could it be that he wants to pocket the price difference in the procurement funds through information asymmetry? The company shouldn't be that foolish to not even send a supervisor. For personal use, Su Chen replied truthfully. Cheng Chen looked at the 400-year-old ginseng roots, three boxes of cultivated snow lotus, and various precious medicinal herbs in two large trucks in front of him, lost in thought. All right, unload the goods in this warehouse, and the next batch will also be delivered here. Su Chin rented this suburban warehouse specifically for receiving goods, and all the surveillance cameras inside had been removed. 
After all the goods were unloaded, Su Chen closed the warehouse door and stood alone inside. Bending down, he lightly touched each herb with his fingertips, silently activating his portable small world. All the touched herbs were quickly absorbed and appeared intact in the small world. Many of the herbs were in a fresh state, still in their pots, adding a touch of green to the small world. Finally, it's not a barren and silent look. The small world contained oxygen, carbon dioxide, an atmosphere, and distant stars providing light, ensuring the plant's survival. It was truly a perfect private garden. I wonder if the plants hiding here can survive the impending extinction wave. If they can survive, they might be able to sustainably develop in the future, and these herbs won't go extinct, allowing me to enjoy them. Satisfied with collecting all the herbs, Su Chen left the medicinal garden. Glancing at the time, it had been over 12 hours since Dog Dad's company released the news in the morning. He could sleep well tonight and strike back tomorrow morning. Back home, Su Chen hummed a tune while starting to edit the videos he wanted to post. Before editing, he made sure to feed the little one. The well-fed future empress became lively, climbing up and down Su Chen, licking and exploring him as if his body was a playground. Then, she urinated. What the heck? Didn't I buy you a litter box? Why are you still peeing on me? And didn't we establish a telepathic connection before, their litter box? Toilet. Not me. Su Chen was on the verge of collapse. Unable to bear it any longer, he stripped off his clothes and threw them into the washing machine, then immediately searched online for how to deal with a fox urinating everywhere. He quickly found the answer. Animals mark their territory or important people and objects by leaving behind their scent to avoid loss or being taken by other members of the same species. Su Chen gave up. Communication difficulties couldn't be stopped, and when this little one grew up, he would definitely make her face her own dark history. Sleep. Ignoring the raging storm outside, Su Chen lay peacefully in bed, letting things ferment. The video was ready, scheduled to be released at 6 o'clock the next morning. By then, the truth will be revealed, and someone is bound to suffer a tarnished reputation. The next morning, Su Chen was awakened by the sound of regret points being credited. Received 200 regret points from Zhao Mengyan. Received 300 regret points from Zhao Mengyan. Received 350 regret points from Zhao Mengyan. Oh, this darn thing is still alive? Two days of silence made me think you were dead. Turns out you were just saving your big move. Early in the morning, you contributed 850 points to yourself, equivalent to 8. 5 million in savings. Indeed, this guy is still the fattest, truly rich to the point of overflowing. I wonder what stage we are at now. Have you started pulling out your nails? When are you going to break your waist? Su Chen fantasized eagerly. Glancing at the phone, there were seven or eight unknown calls, all from Zhao Mengyan. No wonder there are so many regrets, probably finally realizing her situation, only now remembering who once desperately tried to stop her from jumping into the fire pit. Ha, it's too late. The phone rang again. Zhao Mengyan's anxious voice came through the receiver. Su Chen, where are you? I urgently need money, can you transfer eight million to me? I'll pay you back as soon as I get back. Su Chen raised his eyebrows, what do you need so much money for? The police said not to transfer money abroad. Financial management. I've said it a hundred times, financial management. Hurry and transfer it to me, if you miss today, there won't be another chance. On the other end of the phone, Zhao Mengyan's voice suddenly became a bit hysterical. Click, Su Chen clearly heard the sound of a gun being cocked on the other end of the phone. Received from Zhao Mengyan. 400 points. Hilarious, turns out she's got an AK pointed at her head, getting anxious. Su Chen opened the door took the luxury breakfast takeaway he had ordered last night, and sat in front of the computer, opening the new season of Rick and Morty, eating and watching at the same time. Then he slowly replied to Zhao Mengyan, the police warned me to be careful of telecommunications fraud, how can I be sure you are Zhao Mengyan and not an AI-generated voice? The phone number is mine. Phones can be cloned, scams are hard to guard against these days. I can send you a message on WeChat, I can video call you. Alright, call me, you have to prove you are you, otherwise I won't dare to send money. There are too many scammers these days, you have to be cautious. Okay, I'll call you right away. Soon, Zhao Mengyan's video call request came through. Su Chen clicked to accept. The video showed what looked like an ordinary small house, with Zhao Mengyan's hands and feet free, no signs of being tied up, and no traces of torture on her body. This disappointed Su Chen, but it also had its benefits. He quickly pressed the screen recording button. So, now I can confirm that you are Zhao Mengyan in person and that this WeChat account is indeed being used by you, with no possibility of being controlled by others or being stolen? Yes. I'm a hundred percent sure. Absolutely. My software security center has all the traces and records of logins, 
There is absolutely no history of account theft. Send me the records. All right, I'll send them to you now. Soon, Zhao Mengyan opened the login history of the Penguin Security Center. The three-year login history was all on the same phone, with no cases of account theft. But Su Chen still didn't relent. No, I still need to confirm that your phone has always been in your hands, never lent to anyone else, otherwise it could have been infected with viruses or used to send messages on your behalf. Are you done yet? How can I prove that? How to prove it is your business, but you must prove this first before I can send you the money, otherwise I can only treat you as a telecommunications fraud. You! Zhao Mengyan gritted her teeth in anger, I can't provide specific evidence for these things, but I can assure you that this WeChat account is absolutely only used by me. I have never lent my phone to anyone, nor has anyone used my phone to send messages externally. So, in these three years, it's impossible for someone to have your phone every day and use your account to send messages to others, right? Of course not. If that were the case, I would definitely notice. Why are you saying this? Alright, the above proofs were admitted by you personally. Now I need you to go out and go to a place with a lot of surveillance, preferably a shopping mall, and then take a walk inside. Why? I want to confirm that the person talking to me right now is Zhao Mengyan herself. She is aware of every detail of this conversation. And by walking around under the surveillance of the mall, leaving a trail of actions in front of multiple cameras. This way, as long as the mall surveillance is pulled out, it can prove that Zhao Mengyan is indeed in Myanmar at the moment and has gone to the mall. Why go through all this trouble? Can't you just transfer the money directly? No, because the transfer amount is too large, and if the recipient is not confirmed to be you, the police uncle will not let me transfer the money. And if it's just a video call, there is still the possibility of AI synthesis. Ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, I'll go, I'm going now. Zhao Mengyan collapsed. Fear made her not want to delay for a second, she just wanted to quickly follow what Li Gu said, deceive Su Chen out of 8 million, and then return to the country to regain her freedom. 8 million, that was the condition Li Gu promised her for release. It was her price for freedom. And at this moment, she could only pray for Su Chen to pay this 8 million for her. She absolutely did not want to end up like that. She also absolutely did not believe that with her charm, she would fall to that level. As long as Su Chen is willing to pay the ransom. Yes, that fool would definitely be willing to give money. He was completely obedient to her, never daring to go against her wishes. As long as she asked, he would definitely obediently give the money. Definitely. You wait, I'm going now. Under the threatening gazes of several people, Zhao Mengyan set off decisively. The person holding the AK didn't care. It wasn't difficult for Zhao Mengyan to take a walk under the mall. Anyway, Hua State was her own people. Even if she went to a public place, she would be under surveillance and couldn't escape. Telecom fraud is the official pillar industry of Hua State, with the backing of legitimate local warlords. Even the Hua State police are informants supported by the industrial park, Anyone who tries to escape or report to the police station will be sent back to the basement in seconds. It can be said that once you reach the territory of northern Myanmar, you can't come back alive. The video call temporarily ended, at this moment in northern Myanmar, Hua State, Zhao Mengyan, for her own freedom, began to frantically walk in circles in major shopping malls, leaving her footprints. She even copied a video of her footprints in the mall surveillance room and sent it to Su Chen. After doing all this, she gasped and returned to the darkroom pointed it by the AK, and dialed the video call again. Is it done now? Done, I will send the surveillance video you sent me to the bureau for analysis and testing in a while. If there are no traces of synthesis, I will transfer the money to you. Do we still need to wait for analysis and testing? Zhao Mengyan couldn't bear it anymore, are you going to give me the money or not? Do you still want to drag this out? After receiving the surveillance video, Su Chen sat up straight, paused the show he was watching. He suddenly smiled. Which one of us is not willing to let go? What's wrong? Are you going crazy? Zhao Mengyan was a little uneasy. She suddenly realized that something was not right. Su Chen had never spoken to her in this tone before. Take a look for yourself. See what your parents have done. Su Chen shared the video of the dog parents with Zhao Mengyan. Zhao Mengyan had just woken up from a coma half a day ago. Her phone was also being controlled. So she naturally didn't have time to watch videos. It wasn't until Su Chen shared it that she saw the mess the dog parents had caused. At that moment, she was completely dumbfounded. Her head was buzzing. Su Chen, what are you? What are you doing? Why did you go to find my parents? Why are you calling off the wedding? It's simple, I called the police. What? If my guess is correct, you should be under the control of the scammers from the Wa State now, with some idiot holding an AK pointing at your head. Zhao Mingyan's breath hitched, her heart starting to race at twice the speed. She mechanically glanced at the Burmese soldier holding the AK, trembling as she swallowed a mouthful of saliva. 
Bastard, you. Don't talk nonsense. Don't harm me. I guessed your situation from the moment you went missing, so I chose to call the police. To find you, the police retrieved the WeChat chat records. TSK TSK, do you need me to show them to you? Well, I'll send them over, it's been a while, you might have forgotten, let me help you remember. Those explosive late night quotes appeared in front of Zhao Mengyan once again. Li Gu, do you think I'm pretty? I asked that coward to charge a hundred thousand, but he refused, saying it was a scam. He deserves to die. I really want to poison that waste of space who's with you. I've already bought the poison, it's a slow acting one that causes organ failure, won't show up in an autopsy. Photo of the poison. Zhao Mengyan despairingly covered her eyes, collapsing on the ground. Zhao Mengyan, I warned you not to go, but you called me ignorant, jealous, useless. I gave you many chances, so many times. After Su Chen finished speaking, he hung up. He had already obtained what he needed. Just now, Zhao Mengyan had confirmed the authenticity of the WeChat chat records herself and presented the login history of the security center, proving that there was absolutely no third-party interference. Therefore, when it came to Pu Gongtang, the excuses of phone being taken away, virus infection sending messages were completely worthless. In addition, Zhao Mengyan's movements could confirm that she was currently in the Wa state. The person appearing in the phone call was indeed her, not a synthesized video. Cheating, aiding and scamming money, along with her parents' wise online bullying behavior, the judge knew exactly how to rule. This call record will be used as material for the next video. Su Chen leisurely took a big bite of crab roe bun, then saved the material. After doing all this, he didn't forget to take a photo of his sumptuous breakfast and send it to Zhao Mengyan. Well, she must be starving after being in a coma for so long. Let her see the picture to satisfy her cravings, maybe she won't even be able to see pictures in the future. Sigh, I am truly too kind. At this moment, Zhao Mengyan, looking at the food picture sent to her phone, her low blood pressure was cured, her blood vessels almost bursting from the rush. Her stomach rumbled like a drum. But at this moment, she completely ignored her hunger. Because the unlicensed doctor beside her had already come up, ready to draw blood for organ matching. Received 1,000 regret points from Zhao Mengyan, also received Star Map Fragment X1, and a bank deposit of 10 million. A full 1,000 points, it seems that under the threat of Gaia, that guy finally understands the taste of regret. Don't worry, we're not done yet. Su Chen satisfiedly opened the account notification, looking at the computer. There was a video he had made last night. The status bar showed, upload successful. In addition, Su Chen also opened the video page, clicked on share. One by one, he selected Zhao Mengyan, the dog parents, Zhao Yuancha, and all the people in his friend circle who knew Zhao Mengyan. Confirm share. This explosive video must be shared with all family and friends as soon as possible. Wait a minute. I still have a use. I can get money. I can definitely get it. In the basement of the Washington State Industrial Park at this moment, Zhao Mengyan struggled in fear, shrinking back against the wall. That guy is always so obedient to me, he would never want me to die. Are you sure? Are you sure he will still listen to you after seeing those chat records? Brotherly sneered, sharpening a knife in his hand, feeling doubtful. Definitely. Brotherly. Trust me one more time, I can definitely get the money. Definitely. It's just a little affair, we will reconcile. He's afraid of me getting angry, he behaves when I get mad. I'm curious, is he your pet dog? What? Or have you signed some kind of magical contract with him? Like in novels, where the slave must unconditionally obey the master's commands after signing. Zhao Mengyan awkwardly smiled, brotherly, you're really good at joking. Alright, since there isn't, tell me, why does he listen to you? Of course, it's because he cares about me, he loves me, that idiot is just too sentimental, he's too foolish. Are you sure he still cares about you now? Of course. He's just angry, that's all. Oh right. It's all my parents' fault, those two old farts had to cyberbully him, if it weren't for those two old farts, his anger would have subsided long ago. It's so annoying, I'm going to call my parents. Amid the speechless gazes of the surrounding henchmen, Zhao Mengyan dialed the phone of her dog parents. The dog parents were busy opening champagne at the moment. When our daughter comes back, she will definitely be satisfied with our actions. The dog mother proudly held up the red wine bot with the engagement ceremony money. We actually came up with such an excellent way to train the dog. We are geniuses. Indeed. The dog father flattered. An unruly son-in-law should be severely disciplined. Let him understand his position. Want to marry into our family, yet still dare to have a backbone. Watch how I crush all his bones today. Indeed, indeed. The dog father continued to agree. The dog mother was about to toast a few more words, when suddenly the phone rang. It turned out to be their precious money tree that they had lost contact with for several days. The dog mother quickly answered the phone, 
and immediately began scolding, where have you been, not answering calls or messages, you have no idea how troublesome that brat is. Luckily, we are more skilled and have trained him to be obedient. Zhao Mingyan's voice trembled at this moment, so angry that she wished she could fly back and personally strangle these two old farts. Your so-called training is just posting cyberbullying videos? Of course, that brat dared to mention breaking off the engagement. He even made our family return the engagement gifts, it's outrageous, why? Do you know you are killing me? Zhao Mengyan suddenly started hysterically screaming, the engagement gifts are just a few coins, do you know he has 8 million in his hands? A whole 8 million? My life-saving money? You two old farts won't be able to sell your bones for 8 million even if you grind them to dust. What? The information was too overwhelming, the dog parents were dumbfounded. They even directly ignored the information in Zhao Mengyan's words, life-saving money and only had one sentence in their heads. Su Chen can still squeeze out 8 million. Where did that brat get so much money? Aren't his parents deceased? If his parents are not deceased, and he lacked love in his early years, you wouldn't be able to easily control him in the palm of your hand. Could it be? His parents left him so much inheritance? Did he keep it a secret? I don't know, but he still has 8 million. I saw it with my own eyes. You two short-sighted old farts. Now, immediately, take down the cyberbullying video. Immediately. Take it down? It's been a whole day already. And this kind of topic that incites anger among netizens spreads at an unimaginable speed. Most of them do not have to face heavy work pressure, each of them has plenty of time to soak in it, so their combat power is amazing. They show unity and organization in chasing stars and topping the charts, crazily reposting and commenting, spreading the video from 1 to 10, 10 to 100. Even the dog parents did not expect that this topic would climb to the top of the hot search on major platforms in just one day. The whole internet is crazily condemning the cruel man in the video. What's the use of retracting the article now? The internet has a memory. It's too late, the dog mom frowned, those videos have long been widely known. Don't rush, the dog dad took the phone, since things have come to this point, retracting the article is impossible and useless. We might as well go all the way, add some fuel to the fire, let him die more thoroughly. When he is condemned by the whole world, unable to defend himself, he will naturally obediently listen to us. Zhao Mengyan's eyes lit up, Dad, you are so smart. We need to make that kid feel the pressure first, let him know how desperate it is to be cyberbullied. When everyone around him isolates him, his family and friends ostracize him, he will naturally reach his limit, kneel down and beg us for reconciliation. By then, we can help him clarify by posting videos as a condition, and squeeze him dry of his money. Genius. Dad, you are simply a genius. Hee <laughs> hee, this is the internet age, in the internet age, traffic is the most powerful weapon. No one can withstand this blade, especially not such a person like Su Chen. The plan was finalized by several people, all very happy. Zhao Meng Yen could temporarily breathe a sigh of relief for a few more days. The dog mom finished the champagne in her cup in one gulp. And at that moment, a notification popped up on the phones of the dog family. Su Chen has shared a video with you. The group opened the video. Su Chen on the screen was calm and composed, without any panic from being cyberbullied. Hello everyone, this is Su Chen the male protagonist of the divorce incident. I believe many of you have seen videos about me these days, starting to criticize without knowing the full story. Here I will provide a detailed account of the incident and police evidence, guaranteeing it to be more exciting than what you have seen before. Let's start with an appetizer, to make everyone happy. This is the cause of the incident, and also the reason why I decided to break off the engagement with my fiancé Zhao Mengyan. Below are the chat records. Su Chen did not miss any of Zhao Mengyan's explosive remarks. Whether it was cheating late at night, having a new chat invitation with rich second generation Li Gu, or insulting Su Chen behind his back, calling him a dog for spending money on her, or the evidence of Zhao Mengyan attempting to poison her fiancé and screenshots of the drugs. Su Chen didn't miss a single one. Damn. At this moment, in front of their phones, every onlooker who saw the chat records started to boil with excitement. Such explosive gossip, definitely worthy of being the top quality news of the year. If the WeChat chat records are true, the female party in the records is simply the worst of the worst, an absolute modern-day pan Jinlian without a doubt. And from Zhao Mengyan's chat records, it can be seen that the honest man who was given a green hat is definitely a dedicated and faithful young man, not to mention how handsome he is. How could there be such chat records? The dog dad stared blankly at Zhao Mengyan's remarks in the chat records, she actually dares to forge chat records. Damn it, playing this trick, I will sue her for defamation. He couldn't believe these were Zhao Mengyan's real words. In his eyes, Zhao Mengyan was the top-notch three-good student, a good girl, the most outstanding in the world, while Su Chen was just a pig waiting to be fed. 
But the dog mom trembled, as a member of the same kind, she knew Zhao Meng Yan better than the dog dad, and couldn't help but ask in a trembling voice, Meng Yan, what's the deal with this chat record? Zhao Meng Yan stuttered. Her head was buzzing now, completely losing her sanity. This, this is not me. This is all fabricated by Su Chen. Of course she wouldn't admit it. Absolutely cannot admit it, otherwise wouldn't it confirm her image as a modern Pan Jinlian? Yes. Just say that these pieces of evidence were fabricated by Su Chen. This way there might still be a chance to salvage the situation. That little beast has gone too far. How did I not realize how malicious he was before? Dog Dad raged, he is trying to use this opportunity to directly ruin your reputation and our family's innocence. I'm not done with him. Yes, Dad, quickly help me clarify, just say that these chat records are fabricated. You have a large following, no many internet celebrities, you can definitely shut him up. I'm going now, damn it, this bastard. Dog Dad's heart was in intense pain from anger, we only internet bullied him, and he actually wants to ruin your reputation. This ungrateful wretch. Exactly. Even if we internet bullied him, at most he would lose his life, but he actually released these things. What you're losing is your own reputation. Dog Mom also gritted her teeth in agreement, we won't rest until this is resolved. Yes, we won't rest until this is resolved. Hurry up and take action. I urgently need his 8 million, or if you can come up with 8 million, that works too. I really need this 8 million to save my life. Hello? Hello? Why did you hang up the phone? Damn it. Zhao Mengyan was dumbfounded. She was about to ask her family for help, but Dog Dad and Dog Mom hung up the phone as soon as she mentioned money. Damn it. These two old stubborn people. I'll pull out your oxygen tubes in the future. Zhao Mengyan muttered angrily. Li Ge, also known as Li Zhong, had his mouth wide open at this moment, the instant noodles in his hand frozen in midair. Today, he was sharp as a knife, his eyes wide open. Now he was even considering whether to tattoo Zhao Mengyan's whole family on his back. Satan seemed like a fool in front of them. It would be better to tattoo them instead of Satan. You guys are truly like dragons giving birth to dragons, and phoenixes giving birth to phoenixes. Li Gu gave Zhao Mengyan a thumbs up. Zhao Mengyan glanced around, reconsidered her situation, and instantly wilted like a quail, adopting a pitiful and weak posture, saying, Li Gu, Li Gu, rest assured, I will definitely come up with 8 million. I believe you, you are more ruthless than me. Li Zhong sighed. I am doing all this for you, how can you say such heartless words? Zhao Mengyan coquettishly approached. Li Zhong dodged like he was avoiding dog poop. He didn't want to provoke such a woman. He had seen all sides of Zhao Mengyan, so he didn't believe a word she said. Therefore, he had no interest in Zhao Mengyan's self-righteous beauty plan, he only cared about how much he could squeeze out from Zhao Mengyan, or rather, from her wealthy boyfriend. I'll give you three more days. If the money doesn't arrive in three days, you'll go serve clients, then be dismantled. Do you understand? Zhao Mengyan shuddered. Serve clients. She had heard about the treatment of those so-called hostesses. It was not like being a model in a club, dressed up and chosen by people, playing with clients, but being injected with drugs, then thrown directly into the barracks of soldiers, to be played with by a group of people in turn. When they came out, even if their intestines were turned inside out, it was considered light, it would be lucky to have half a life left. Thinking of this, Xiao Meng Yan felt a wave of fear, Li Gu with my charm, can I only do that kind of work? It's fine for me to be a dealer, right? Get lost. Do you think you're very beautiful? This sentence made Zhao Mengyan go into self-closure. All of Zhao Mengyan's confidence came from her beautiful fantasies about her charm. Su Chen's tenderness and care made her believe for a while that she was the most beautiful woman in the world, why else would Su Chen treat her so well? This made her always feel like she was losing out, that she deserved better. She always believed that her charm was her greatest weapon, the foundation of her survival. No matter what happens, as long as it's a man on the other side, she can rely on her female identity and charm to get through the difficulties. Until this moment, leaving Su Chen's side, leaving all the social circles of well-intentioned deception, she finally heard the most authentic evaluation of herself from outsiders. Contact the boys in the old Dongying, see if they like this cheap goods, if they don't like it, just take her to play with the military dogs, and you can even take some videos. Military dogs? Zhao Mengyan was struck by lightning. No, I don't want to be with dogs. I don't. The piercing screams echoed in the basement. Unfortunately, Li Zhong had already closed the iron gate and walked away. Terror Man cancels engagement 40 hours in. The next day at noon, with the bombshell released by Su Chen, the event finally exploded on the internet. As the chat records were exposed, public opinion quickly began to reverse. Normal people who had been besieged finally had the confidence to speak sensibly, and more and more supportive voices appeared, 
slapping XXN in the face in the comments section, leaving those radical XXN with their heads covered. They had to silently delete their previous insults to Su Chen to avoid being ridiculed by the constantly popping up mocking replies and appearing like clowns. However, not all XXN realized their mistakes. Only a few chose to delete their comments. More of them were unwilling to admit their mistakes and intensified the second wave of attacks. Who can prove that his chat records are true? Don't forget. He's the perverted murderer who blocked the door of two elderly people. How can you believe his word alone? It's ridiculous. These chat records must be forged. Forged chat records, and blocking the doors of two elderly people, oh my, this man is too terrifying. The combat power of XXN was far beyond that of normal people, they had more time, could unite and quickly form a large team. Using Zayamushu as their base, various conspiracy theories emerged. The speculations about Su Chen became increasingly bizarre, and some even began to speculate if he was the son of a high-ranking official. Now these chat records were being professionally whitewashed. This is too much bullying, Nia Yao angrily said. As Su Chen's colleague and senior, although she had been rejected twice by Su Chen for dinner invitations, she was not dissatisfied, but rather indignant for Su Chen. Also a user of Zayamushu, she stood on the opposite camp. How can you make baseless speculations and defame others like this? The official has not made a statement yet, and now you are drawing conclusions based on speculations, even exposing it to the person's workplace. Isn't this going too far? Sure enough, as soon as Nia Yao finished speaking, she was bombarded with insults. There's a traitor here. Curse her to death. Are you still a woman? How dare you speak up for such a dangerous and stinky man, you are disgusting. Such a man should be shot immediately, letting him live will eventually harm society. Aren't you the mistress of that stinky man? Why are you working so hard to defend him? Nia Yao was overwhelmed with anger, her eyes turning red. She replied defiantly, he clearly didn't do anything. Why do you have to speculate like that? The editing traces in the video are heavy, and the background music is deliberately guiding emotions, can't you see that? Soon Nya Yao understood. They really couldn't see it. The cognitive gap between people on the internet often made Nya Yao wonder if the person sitting across from her was really a living person, or an Ame Mountain Bandit monkey who accidentally stole a tourist's phone and learned how to type. It's too outrageous. How does it feel like entering the era of short videos, humans not only have not progressed with technology, but have regressed into single-celled idiots? Xiao Yao, what's wrong? A well-dressed man stood in Nye Yao's living room, skillfully adjusting his tie, and asked, Dad, have you heard of the divorce terror man? The mature man's movements paused, I know, what's wrong? I watched the first few internet celebrities who released the video, the company they signed with is Color Star, isn't that the company you work for? Yes, those people are indeed from our company. However, they are not under my jurisdiction, they are internet celebrities signed by Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu? The old man threatened in the video. Nya Yao Min keenly caught the trick in it. Are you saying that the video exposing Su Chen was sent by Xiao Yu? Yes, the reason he gave was using the current opposing emotions for marketing heat, and as you can see, it worked really well. The company gained over a million female fans this time, and the board of directors is going to praise him in the meeting today. This is outrageous. They want to praise him? Do you know that you are cyberbullying others? The company doesn't care about the life or death of a small person, Nya Haiyang sighed lightly, I advised against it, but my words were too light. I told you to leave that broken company long ago. If you want to do self-media, I can help you figure it out. Beside Nya Haiyang, a more upright woman stood in front of the dressing mirror with him, adjusting her military uniform. On her blue-gray shoulder epaulets, embroidered with golden pine branches and a quarter gold star. Online public opinion is a bomb. If you get involved, maybe one day I'll be set up, and you'll have to take off that epaulet. But I have to make a living. Nya Haiyang smiled. Nya Yaomin's mother rolled her eyes, did not join the conversation, and went straight to work. Nya Yaomin stopped her father. Dad, can you help me with something? Hmm, I want the truth to come out. Can you get the original version of the video sent by Zhao Yu, the unedited version? Nya Haiyang narrowed his eyes. He suddenly realized that this might be his chance. Zhao Yu used rumors to gain popularity, and if he could get the original video, he could use debunking to gain attention. He and Zhao Yu were already in a competitive relationship in the company, and Zhao Yu, by spreading rumors, had attracted a wave of traffic, putting him at a significant disadvantage in performance. Perhaps he could try to fight back through debunking. Although debunking certainly wouldn't attract as much attention as spreading rumors, at least it could make Xiao Yu less arrogant. Xiao Yu has an editor under him who I know well, I can ask him if he has the original video. If you find it, remember to show it to me first. Okay. In just half a day, 
Su Chen's backstage private messages were flooded by XXN. At the same time, the video also received a large number of report notifications. It was soon reported and taken down. Su Chen was puzzled, why weren't those videos spreading rumors about him reported? Instead, his clarification video was quickly silenced? Fortunately, the internet has a memory. At this time, various self-media have already saved their videos and reposted them. Various bloggers and influencers saw the opportunity and began to analyze the chat records and video editing techniques. This sudden online hot event, with the entry of various influencers, was finally pushed to the peak of its life cycle. Although Su Chen's video was deleted, countless people flocked to his account. Su Chen also took the opportunity to make an announcement and release a message. Tonight at 8 o'clock, live broadcast of the Lania Chaos Supercluster Virgo Supercluster Milky Way Galactic Armgold Beltort Cloud Popular Science of Intelligent Life Habits of Other Oort Cloud Life Forms Except the Third Planet from the Sun. As expected, all the replies below were? It seems that the old brother is finally unable to bear the blow and has completely lost it. Ah, originally a handsome guy, it's a shame that the scumbag woman should die. Hey handsome guy, do you want to consider seeing a doctor in the psychiatric department? Faced with these comments, Su Chen just smiled calmly without responding. Just keep leaking information by yourself, and by the eve of the Lunar New Year this year, the truth will be revealed. I really have to thank the dog dad and dog mom for their tireless promotion. If this wave of hype is managed well, with a few more plot twists, it can at least continue until the astronomical summit. Hey, the two elders have to work hard, don't let this hype die down. In order to avoid being stabbed by a black knife on the street and forced to counterattack and face a lawsuit, Su Chen decided to stay at home for a few days, not going out unless necessary, and enjoy a few days of eating takeout and watching dramas. Anyway, the new boss is generous, providing paid leave, so why not? Ding ding ding, the phone rang, it was an unfamiliar number. Su Chen, are you okay? It's Lao Gao from the observatory calling. I'm fine, just eating takeout, watching dramas, and doing astronomy popular science live broadcasts at night, nothing special. You don't have to rush with the popular science stuff, you can wait until you've sorted out your own matters. Don't stress yourself out too much and make yourself sick. The people at the observatory all thought Su Chen was forcing a smile and avoiding reality. After all, this poor young man had just experienced being cheated on and poisoned by his girlfriend, and then being cyberbullied by the unscrupulous girlfriend's parents. If it were someone with lower resilience, they might have already jumped off a building to prove their innocence. Fortunately, Su Chen cleverly left behind enough evidence, otherwise it would have been hard to defend himself. I'm really fine, I might add some personal touch to the popular science broadcast tonight, don't be surprised. It's only natural to add a personal touch, who can stay calm in the face of such things. Lao Gao thought Su Chen was trying to justify himself by adding a personal touch. Su Chen knew Lao Gao had misunderstood, but he didn't explain, it would be clear tonight anyway. Hopefully, his rigorous colleagues at the observatory wouldn't blacklist him. By the way, Uncle Gao, I heard that our observatory is going to hold an astronomical summit, is that right? How many days left? You're quite well informed, it's coming soon, the scheduled time is next week. Can I get a seat as an audience? If he could attend legally, Su Chen still wanted to avoid crashing in. After all, breaking in would land him in trouble. Well, it's not up to me to decide, Lao Gao looked embarrassed, but couldn't bear to refuse the pitiful creature in front of him, so he gritted his teeth and said, I'll try my best to get you a seat as an audience. Thank you then. Su Chen was satisfied. Then rest well, we won't disturb you for now. After expressing his condolences, Lao Gao hung up the phone. Su Chen then had time to sort out the spoils he had obtained earlier. Zhao Mengyan had earned a lot of points again this morning, including a super jackpot of 1000 points. Among the rewards was a unique reward, a star map fragment. Su Chen received the reward and held the star map fragment in his palm to examine it. It was a three-dimensional crystal with scattered glowing golden sands inside. These sands were irregularly arranged, but moved around a larger golden sand in a regular pattern. Star map. Are these sands the orbits of planets? The larger ones are stars, and the smaller ones are planets. Su Chen quickly understood how to observe the star map fragment. Among these sands, there was a blue sand that stood out. There was also an arrow in the crystal pointing to the blue sand, with a shape of a treasure chest drawn behind the arrow. It seemed that there was something there, a treasure trove that the fragment wanted to indicate. Alright, let me see who this little blue guy is. By observing the arrangement and trajectories of the planets, one could identify the coordinates of the star system represented by the star map. Hmm, there's a standard trinary star system here, too standard. If this is Alpha Centauri A, this is Alpha Centauri B, and this is Proxima Centauri. Then, extending the search according to relative positions. 
This blue planet, the sun? No, if this is the sun, where are the small planets in the solar system? Su Chen was a bit puzzled. He compared the astronomical knowledge he had learned in his past life with the three-dimensional star map drawn in modern times, the Oort cloud, a spherical cloud surrounding the solar system, and compared it with the locations in the fragments of the star map. The coordinates of the planets depicted in the star map were indeed very close to the positions of the Oort cloud planets observed by humans, especially the stars, many of which could be found for comparison. However, many planets were missing. Wait a minute. A bold conjecture flashed through Su Chen's mind. The appearance of Southgate 2 was 50 billion years ago, while the sun was 46 billion years ago, and the other planets in the solar system were captured by gravity 46 billion years later. If the star map does not depict the modern situation, but rather a time when the sun had just been born and the solar system had not yet formed, then it is possible for such a situation to appear in the fragments of the star map. In other words, the time of drawing this star map is about 46 billion years ago. This conjecture gave Su Chen goosebumps. Treasures hidden in the sun born 46 billion years ago? Oh my, would he have to dive into the sun himself? No. Su Chen suddenly noticed a subtle anomaly in the star map, which made his brain explode again. He just noticed that the so-called blue dot sun was actually more than five times larger than the nearby South Gate 2A. Although this blue dot looks very small on the star map, it is actually quite large compared to other stars. Yes, the sun cannot be so much larger than South Gate 2. South Gate 2's mass is 1. 1 times that of the sun. This situation is completely reversed. In other words, this star point does not represent the already born sun, but the predecessor of the sun, the solar disk, a large volume nebula formed by gas and dust. It is not only the predecessor of the sun but also the predecessor of the entire solar system. In that case, the specific treasure location represented by this blue dot may not necessarily be inside the sun. It could also be on any planet in the solar system, or even Earth. Maybe I can find it now. Su Chen stood up excitedly, eager to embark on a treasure hunt. This was a treasure map that he had obtained after reaching a thousand points in a single sweep, a precious opportunity that was hard to come by, and the reward was bound to be satisfying. Unfortunately, Su Chen soon sat back down dejectedly. There were too few clues. The star map only marked approximate locations, and he didn't even know what he was supposed to find with this fragment of the star map. Although he had an identification technique, it showed that it couldn't identify such advanced goods. This stingy thing, why didn't it even provide a little artificial intelligence assistant? Other systems naturally came with cute girl assistants, some even provided bed warming services, what about his? He had to figure it out himself. Annoying. Lottery. Fortunately, there was still a lottery system, which seemed quite user-friendly and always seemed to draw what he needed at the moment. With a casual single draw, the dazzling golden light that caught his eye made Su Chen stunned. Ha! Huh? A golden reward? Happiness came so suddenly that he didn't react for a moment. It wasn't until that planet collided with him, finally condensing into a ray of light in his hand, solidifying into a heavy object. Conk? What the heck? Congratulations on obtaining, Magical Conk. Introduction, why don't you ask the Magical Conk? Is this system also a fan of SpongeBob SquarePants? Or is SpongeBob SquarePants actually a documentary? So awkward. Su Chen picked up the conch, aimed at the opening, and asked, Magical conch, tell me, what is the treasure pointed to by this fragment of the star map? How many fragments are there in total? Is the treasure's current location on Earth? After asking the questions, Su Chen stared straight at the conch. One minute passed. Two minutes passed. Three minutes passed. The conch remained unresponsive. Su Chen felt like a fool. He should have known better. Only a conch answering questions would be unbelievable. This damn lottery was playing tricks on him. It must be jealous of the praise he gave the system in his mind just now. Ha! Huh? Wait a minute. A piece of paper suddenly slipped out of the conch's aperture. He quickly picked it up. Answer to question 1. The treasure pointed to by the star map is an information carrier, detailing a method to enhance the quality of life forms. Answer to question 2. There are a total of 7 pieces of treasure fragments. The star map serves as both a guide and a key. Only the owner of the star map fragments can unlock the corresponding treasure, and each star map fragment is unique and cannot be replicated. Answer to question 3, the current location of the treasure cannot be calculated, but the possibility of it existing on Earth cannot be denied. Note, when near the treasure, the star map will emit a bright light as a reminder, the closer the distance, the stronger the light, with the minimum luminous distance being one light year. The intensity levels are categorized as weak distance between one light year and zero. 0 1 light year, medium, 0. 
01 light year to 950 million kilometers, medium high brightness, 950 million kilometers to 950,000 kilometers, strong brightness, within 950,000 kilometers, the current status of the star map is, strong brightness, within 950,000 kilometers, within 950,000 kilometers, there are no other planets within this distance, it must really be on Earth, no, damn it. The distance between Earth and the Moon is around 400,000 kilometers, so within 950,000 kilometers also includes the Moon, it could be on the Moon, or floating in space. This is tricky. Where should he even start looking? Magical conch, magi. Click. Su Chen was about to ask another question, but the conch unexpectedly shattered, turning into a cloud of dust. It seems that the conch can only answer three questions at a time, and it doesn't necessarily know all the answers, for example, it didn't provide a specific answer to the third question. It's more like an instruction manual for the star map. One more, lottery. Su Chen was ready to draw another conch. Unfortunately, he couldn't draw it again even after using up all his points. However, he did draw a lot of spiritual insights, significantly increasing his spiritual power, which had reached 400 points. His perception range had also expanded to 40 meters, where even the slightest movement within 40 meters was under his control. Additionally, he had just drawn two strength breakthrough crystals and three agility breakthrough crystals. At this point, his maximum strength and agility had both reached 1500 points, 30 times the strength of an ordinary human. Twisting a tank barrel into a spiral with bare hands should be a piece of cake. This is perfect, after all, the world will be in chaos in a few days, and this strength and agility are enough to protect myself against firearms in the early stages. However, not fully understanding the star map was making him itch. It seemed that he would have to rely on himself to search slowly in the future. Such a prestigious treasure would definitely leave traces in the river of civilization, so he needed to pay more attention. As long as he had the star map as a key, he didn't have to worry about others getting to the treasure first. Putting away the star map, Su Chen continued to watch the drama. It's noon, should I order another lunch delivery? Burp, I don't feel like eating much. The breakfast was too sumptuous. Oh well, it doesn't matter, if he couldn't eat, he could just put it in his portable little world for preservation. When he drew the lottery just now, he even drew an expansion area for his portable little world. That area was in a state of time freeze, capable of keeping all objects in the state they were just placed in, and the space was large enough. It was perfect for preservation. Anyway, once New Year's Eve passes, it will be hard to get these again. I better stock up in advance, enough to last a lifetime. With that in mind, Su Chen decided not to order takeout and instead called various restaurants to book banquets. He had them delivered by the carload to the warehouse. Throughout the whole day, Su Chen completely ignored the exploding comments section and paid no attention to the public opinion on the internet. Just lying calmly in the warehouse, watching dramas all day. Can roughly guess how harsh the criticisms online are, and the dog parents must be planning some new dirty tricks, but Su Chen doesn't care at all. Having witnessed the brink of human civilization's extinction and the rise of powerful individuals in the future, looking up at the stars, naturally no longer concerned about trivial matters. So let them curse, who else can they find to argue with? Fishing around until dark, Su Chen slowly makes his way home. Climbing to the rooftop, he starts a live broadcast. With a slight smile, he points the camera towards the sky. Alright, as agreed, next I will introduce to you things you will encounter in the future, take notes, it will be useful. Useful? I think you have a serious illness. The barrage is speechless. What is this guy doing with the live broadcast? Isn't he here to clarify relationship issues for everyone? He has been described as a terrifying murderer by XXN. Ignoring the full screen of questions in the barrage, Suchin continues to explain on his own, let's start with the recent Titan 2, a moon completely covered in ice, with surface temperatures reaching minus 198 degrees, but there is liquid water below the surface. Through the interaction of liquid water and magma, a unique hexapod life form was born on Titan 2. We call this life form the subterranean corpse eater. Look, this guy is crazy. After being cyberbullied, he has started to speak incoherently, saying there are corpse eaters on Titan 2. This guy is so pitiful. Cyberbullying is harmful. Suchin's speech is too bizarre, making all the viewers in the live broadcast room doubt his mental state. At this moment, all the viewers can't help but wonder could he really have a mental problem? Could he really be forced to become a psychopathic killer in the video? To adapt to the unique environment of Titan 2, the subterranean corpse eater has evolved characteristics of high temperature resistance, low temperature resistance, and the ability to move quickly in water and soil. This is also their most terrifying aspect, they can hide in the soil like bobbit worms and suddenly attack passing creatures. 
Suchin continues on his own, this soil can be a beach, a swamp, or a small forest in a seaside park, or a salt marsh in a desert. Speechless, buddy, are you writing a novel? Are you taking this opportunity to promote your novel setting? Sounds scary, but a bit cliche, haven't these kinds of monsters been overused? Are you telling your ex story? Do you think everyone in your live broadcast wants to see this? Unfortunately, the barrage of comments completely fails to affect Suchin's rhythm of fabricating lies. So, how should we deal with these dangerous subterranean corpse eaters? He claps his hands, shines a flashlight on the wall of the rooftop, and takes out a chalk to draw and write. Careful viewers should have noticed, yes, all the locations I just mentioned are near saltwater pools. Because the underground ocean of Europa has a high salinity, the subterranean corpse eaters live in saltwater environments all year round and do not have the conditions to evolve to adapt to freshwater. So the best way to avoid them is to stay in the freshwater lake area and dig freshwater moats near the residential areas. Children's water guns can effectively kill them, but they need to hit the unprotected face. In addition, setting up freshwater traps, artificial rainfall, can effectively eliminate the subterranean corpse eaters in the area and force them back to the coastline. After writing down the words water gun, freshwater, swimming pool, rainfall on the wall, Suchin roughly sketches the appearance of the subterranean corpse eater. It is a long, six-legged creature covered with cilia, with those cilia being the source of their movement underground and in the ocean, while the six legs are their predatory weapons. Two large sickles at the mouth, combined with sharp four abdominal limbs, can quickly embrace the prey and poke a blood hole in the prey's body. For them, the most suitable and nutritious prey is humans. The cat director, who was about to go to sleep, reluctantly got up from the bed to start editing the new episode of Identifying Popular Internet Creatures videos. In the middle of the night, Lao Gao called. What nonsense are you blabbering about there? I understand you're not in a good mood, but science popularization is a serious job. You can't spread rumors in the name of science. What rumors did I spread? About the corpse-eating creatures on Titan, the imminent reversal of Earth's magnetic poles. You actually recognized those as rumors, impressive. Su Chen feigns surprise. Of course. Even a three-year-old wouldn't believe that nonsense, right? Exactly, even a three-year-old knows it's fake, so how can you call it spreading rumors? There's a group of people who believe they are from the M78 Nebula and claim to be beings of light. Is that not spreading rumors? Lao Gao was speechless. Moreover, when I explained about the subterranean corpse eaters, I also talked about the natural environment of Titan and the possibility of life. When discussing magnetic pole shifts, I also explained the relationship between pole shifts and solar activity, methods to identify bright celestial bodies in the sky. The exaggerated subterranean corpse eaters left a lasting impression, everyone knows such absurd things cannot exist. But while they were surprised and mocking me, they inadvertently absorbed those real points of knowledge, remembering the stark difference between the surface and internal temperatures of Titan, remembering that the brightest star in the sky is Venus, also known as the Morning Star. Isn't this science popularization? Lao Gao was dumbfounded. Can science popularization really use spreading rumors as a vehicle? Damn, Su Chin. The speed at which people spread rumors is much faster than the speed of debunking, which indeed serves the purpose of science popularization. But you underestimate the variability of humans. What if someone takes your rumors seriously? What if someone truly believes there are subterranean corpse eaters and starts moving inland? That would be great. Ha, huh? ah. Anyway, there's nothing in this world that can be perfect, right? It's better to spark interest in the stars and the sea, even if it's interest in rumors. This also helps in cultivating more aerospace talents, right? What? What twisted logic? Lao Gao wanted to retort angrily but found that what he said made some sense. Nowadays, who really pays attention to serious science popularization? Even the widely popular science blogger Tsang Mao relies on a humorous and curious approach to attract the first wave of attention, right? If he directly delved into a bunch of professional jargon, that wouldn't be science popularization, that would be a scientific lecture. Science popularization is for the general public, you have to get them interested first before moving on to the next step. At least Su Chen's using rumors for science popularization method was very successful. It's now trending in the top 10. Normal science popularization wouldn't have such a high level of engagement, it would have been buried in some corner a long time ago. Well, I guess I've been too harsh. You've been unfairly blamed by everyone, but instead of defending yourself through live broadcasts, you used the precious attention to promote science, advancing astronomical science by a big step. What a saint! In Lao Gao's eyes at that moment, Su Chen was practically glowing all over. Ah, uh, I'm not that noble. Besides, it's just a holiday. I'll continue tomorrow. You've worked hard, kid. Take care of yourself, don't let those online trolls get to you.
Lao Bao tacitly approved of Su Chen's approach of using rumors as a vehicle to enhance science popularization. Eventually, people will understand that there is no light in this world, no Ultraman in M78, and no one will save the Earth. By the way, Lao Gao added, the audience at the Astronomy Summit next week will be taken care of for you. Thanks. Alright, let's end it here. It's late at night, bye. Bye. Su Chen was content. Today's harvest was abundant, and the goal of spreading prophecies using the hype was achieved. When the lurking ghouls finally appear, you can harvest a large batch of regret points. In addition, Lao Gao brought good news, obtaining the legal qualification to attend the Astronomical Summit. At the Astronomical Summit, you can boost your reputation. However, after that, prison may not be far away. Spreading rumors for educational purposes is one thing, but openly spreading rumors at the Astronomical Summit to create panic changes the nature of the matter. So, before going to prison, stock up on enough supplies, buy all the appreciating medicinal materials you can get, and then comfortably wait for New Year's Eve. Early the next morning, Su Chen found a large number of messages on his phone again. They were sent by enthusiastic colleagues and some former colleagues, about the latest actions of Dog Dad and Dog Mom. They had produced a new video. Through a makeup artist, they first transformed themselves into extremely haggard elderly people, took off their expensive clothes and jewelry, and changed into worn-out clothes to gain sympathy from netizens. Then, they began tearfully accusing Su Chen in front of the camera. Su Chen, not only did you harm my daughter, but you also fabricated chat records. You are worse than a beast. Su Chen summarized the content of the new video by the two elderly people. The main ideas expressed were threefold. 1. The chat records are fake. 2. Zhao Mengyan was deceived by Su Chen to northern Myanmar, not by Li Gu as stated in the chat records. 3. It was reiterated that Su Chen is a cruel and brutal man who often extorts their family. Watching the two elderly people perform at an Oscar level in front of the camera, Su Chen almost burst out laughing. To help push his plan forward, the Zhao Mengyan family went all out. With such a generous gift, if he didn't graciously accept it, wouldn't it be a waste of their goodwill? However, after lying on the bed and laughing for a while, Su Chen carefully thought it over and realized, he didn't need to intervene in this matter at all. This wasn't an accusation, Dog Dad and Dog Mom were exposing themselves. Due to the authenticity of the chat records, there were authorities who could testify on his behalf, and there was an official seal behind the chat record document. So, Dog Dad and Dog Mom's actions didn't backfire on him at all, but on the entire bureaucratic system. It hit the credibility of the government institutions. Can they tolerate this? A family of clowns, knowing that the chat records are real, still stubbornly deny it, insisting on waiting for an official announcement. Wait, did Zhao Mengyan not tell those two that the chat records are real? Su Chen suddenly understood. With such absurd chat records, Zhao Mengyan would never admit it in front of Dog Dad. Moreover, she had no choice but to firmly claim that the chat records were fake, as it was the only way out. Dog Dad is finished, this time it's really over. Zhao Mengyan has truly reached a new level of deception. The first video sent by Dog Dad and Dog Mom was just maliciously edited, at most it was emotional manipulation. But the second video distorted facts and spread rumors and defamation. Emotional manipulation may be difficult to quantify, but spreading rumors and defamation is a criminal offense. Moreover, this incident has attracted public attention across the entire internet, inciting widespread opposition and causing extremely negative effects. It seems this family will reunite in prison. Understanding the situation, Su Chen quickly took advantage of this wave of popularity to start a live broadcast, without waiting until evening. Faced with overwhelming doubts and arrogant challenges, Su Chen completely ignored them. He cleared his throat and said, Today, we are going to talk about a friendly fungus that can survive in a vacuum. The barrage naturally erupted into whales. Who wants to hear about that? Who the hell cares about fungi? We're here to watch the drama, aren't we? No one cares about your damn imagination. We want to see you cry, go crazy, and hysterically refute. Escape if you want, you can't escape forever, scumbag. The things you did have been suspected of human trafficking and spreading rumors to insult others. You can wait to go to jail. XXN, because of the new video of the dog dad and dog mom in the morning, each seemed to be filled with ammunition and ran to Su Chen's live broadcast room to crazily comment. Su Chen didn't set any super administrators, nor did he ban them. He just watched the heat of the live broadcast room soar, and continued to say, remember the characteristics of these fungi well. Their spores have strong deworming properties and can deal with most insects, even insects as tall as 20 meters. The anchor is starting to talk nonsense again. 20 meters tall. Who is the insect after all? Ha, huh, there's no use in avoiding reality. I guess the police are already on their way. Everyone pay attention. 
Everyone pay attention. That poor old couple has also started a live broadcast. Let's go over and donate to them. Ha! Huh? Those two old folks have started live streaming to make money? Hilarious, live streaming at this critical moment today, there might be a good show to watch later. As expected by Su Chen. Just when the dog dad and dog mom were live streaming, an unexpected incident occurred. My daughter is so pitiful she is going to be deceived by scumbags again, and her reputation will be ruined by scumbags, why is she so pitiful? The dog mom was crying in front of the camera. This trick really worked, and many XXN and passersby who didn't know the truth chose to donate and support. There were even large donations in the tens of thousands. This made the dog dad and dog mom very happy. Just as the two were trying to control their expressions to prevent their image from collapsing due to the large donations, there was a knock on the door. Open the door. Who is it? Shangcheng Public Security Bureau. The two showed joy on their faces. Thinking that this situation was under control, they were just about to capture Su Chen on the live broadcast. You guys came at the perfect time. The dog mom opened the door warmly, and at the same time said repeatedly, we absolutely do not accept reconciliation. Please deal strictly with that jerk. The police smiled and took out handcuffs. They handcuffed the dog dad and dog mom. The dog dad and dog mom were dumbfounded. What are you doing? You are suspected of spreading rumors and causing extremely negative social impact, come with us. What? The dog dad struggled in anger, veins popping on his forehead, it was clearly him spreading rumors. Why are you arresting us? Don't you know who spread the rumors? Officer Liu was no longer polite, the two of you not only maliciously edited and cyber bullied others here, but also maliciously slandered the judicial authorities. I advise you to cooperate honestly. No. How is that possible? The dog dad was still in the dark at this moment, still believing that the chat records were fake, it was clearly you cooperating with that bastard to fabricate chat records. How could our daughter Xiao Yan say such things? We have evidence. What evidence do you have? Help. Everyone in the live broadcast room, help. Su Chin is colluding with the police to arrest people. There is no justice in this world. The dog dad and dog mom started wailing and howling at the camera, trying to pressure the officers present. The officers saw that the live broadcast was on, and they knew that if they didn't handle this matter properly, provide solid evidence, it might turn into a bigger credibility crisis. In a hurry, Officer Liu made a decision. This is the surveillance video when Su Chen came to our station to report the case, he was looking for Zhao Meng Yen, begging us to retrieve the chat records, our station's surveillance recorded the entire process. The dog dad stared blankly at the surveillance video, his head buzzing. The surveillance clearly recorded Su Chen reporting the case at the station, then calling the Penguin Company at the station, contacting the Penguin Company, and retrieving the chat records. Officer Liu also placed the evidence video in front of the camera and broadcasted it in the live broadcast room. For a moment, the live broadcast room fell silent. Everyone in our station can testify to the authenticity of those chat records, while you are defaming the judicial authorities, manipulating public opinion, and undermining our judicial justice. At the same time, extremely malicious online violence was directed at the parties involved. No, we did not engage in online violence. We only revealed the facts. Still trying to argue. Officer Liu could not bear it any longer and presented a second piece of evidence. It was the unedited version of the surveillance video in front of the home of the dog's parents released by Tsaishin Company. In the original version, Su Chen appeared perfectly normal, without the homicidal rage scene in the edited version. You maliciously edited the video, distorted the truth, and have now committed the crime of spreading rumors and defamation. Intentionally using so-called internet celebrities to spread rumors, causing extremely negative effects, and seriously hurting the feelings of netizens. You cannot escape imprisonment, it's only fair. Take them away. The dog's parents collapsed on the spot. It was only then that they realized they had hit a brick wall this time. Sitting in the oppressive interrogation room, the dog's parents finally understood the meaning of regret. It's not our fault. My daughter said it was fake. We didn't know it was fake. They were still trying to argue. Still trying to argue. Even if you were unaware of the chat records later on, the malicious editing in the beginning was done by you, right? That's not. That's the editor's fault. The two continued to evade responsibility. Well, the editor can't escape either. The editor who helped you is being interrogated next door. They made it clear that you were the masterminds. Liars. He's a liar. The interrogator had seen many people like this before and was not surprised. But it didn't matter, in the face of solid evidence, no matter how hard they tried to argue, it was useless. Perhaps the dog's father still held on to naive fantasies, thinking he might be innocent by not knowing, but the dog's mother had already planned an escape route. 
Seizing the opportunity during the interrogation, she put on a weak look, shed a few tears pitifully, and collapsed in front of the dog's father. What do we do? We can't stay here. Someone has to go out and seek revenge on that bastard. Someone has to take care of our daughter. This move never failed with the dog's father. The dog's mother knew exactly how to leverage her feminine advantage. Men in the 21st century have been taught from a young age to have a gentlemanly spirit, to always take care of weaker women, even if it means sacrificing themselves, this is a weakness engraved in their bones. They must be strong, responsible, and bear all financial expenses. After starting a family, they must bear the pressure of survival and take care of their family's emotions, not even allowed to cry when exhausted. This kind of indoctrination has successfully brainwashed several generations. The dog's father was one of them. He even found this sacrificial behavior romantic. Little did he know, in the eyes of the dog's mother, all his efforts were taken for granted, as if it were his duty. The other party was not moved at all, and would even consider him a controllable and useless person. At this moment, seeing the dog's mother shed tears, his gentlemanly demeanor deeply rooted in his bones, or perhaps the instinct to protect women and children engraved in his genes, began to operate frantically. With a firm resolve, he made a decision. It's all my fault, I shouldn't have released the video without confirming its authenticity. Blame me, the order to release the video was also given by me, it has nothing to do with you. Don't worry, you won't go to jail. As he said this, the dog's father completely forgot that it was the dog's mother who initially proposed the idea of online bullying Su Chen. The dog's mother knew exactly what to do at this moment, she pretended to be angry, how can you say that? Of course, we should stand together, how can I let you bear it alone? Xiao Jiao, listen to me. The dog's father firmly held Dream Zhao's shoulders, we can't go in together, and there's no need to. You have to stay outside, take care of our daughter. And, don't get into a fight with that guy Su Chen again, it's just 8 million, it's not ours to begin with. Upon hearing the dog's father's words, a hint of disdain appeared in Dream Zhao's eyes. This incompetent thing, because it never understood how to strive, that's why the family is so ordinary, working for decades and still not living the life of a wealthy wife. What do you mean the 8 million doesn't belong to us? Su Chen is our son-in-law. Even if he's an ex-son-in-law, his things are all ours. But dog mom knows, she shouldn't argue with dog dad at this time, lest he refuses to help her take the blame. So she whispered, I understand. Our daughter will remember your sacrifices. You can relax, I'll probably be out soon too. It's not a big deal, the board of directors will protect me. They were praising me this morning. Just as he finished speaking, Dog Dad received a phone call. You're fired. In an instant, Dog Dad felt like he was struck by lightning. Then, the interrogator's words hit him like a ton of bricks. Such a bad social impact, you're looking at a three-year sentence. Three years. Three years is enough to disconnect a person from the rapidly changing modern society, enough to completely eliminate someone from this fiercely competitive society. Dog Dad collapsed to the ground. He was finished. His life was over. Received 1100 points of regret from Zhao Yu, Dog Dad, also gained 1100 points of strength, and 11 million in savings. Thanks to the 1100 points rewarded by father-in-law. The boss is generous. However, only Dog Dad's points, not Dog Mom's points, which means, Dog Mom didn't face any punishment? Probably because the gullible Dog Dad took the blame for her. This works out perfectly, leaving Dog Mom outside to continue operating while he can maintain his popularity. The two elders are truly considerate. So if you encounter such a fungus, don't rush to destroy it, let it grow well, and use its spores to save your life at a critical moment. Of course, no one in the live broadcast room cared about what he was saying. I'm laughing to death, those two old folks were arrested on the spot, with solid evidence. The anchor is too calm, not even cracking a smile? Feels like the anchor has the attitude of a behind-the-scenes boss. No wonder the anchor is as steady as an old dog, walking straight, he's not worried about being slandered. But thanks to the anchor's quick thinking, preserving evidence, otherwise facing such online abuse, the consequences would be unimaginable. Boys should also protect themselves. It's best to carry a recording pen with you at all times, to avoid being set up and falsely accused. Where are the accusers? Why aren't they coming out to defend themselves? At this moment, they suddenly fell unusually silent. Of course, it was only for that moment. The reason they are who they are is because they simply don't care about the truth. They quickly regained their fighting spirit. Setting aside the facts, does the top guy have no faults at all in this situation? If he didn't treat Zhao Mengyan so well, making his girlfriend feel no sense of crisis, how could Zhao Mengyan have an affair? This person can even manipulate the police, I dare not imagine how much power he holds behind the scenes. Ha, huh, I grew up with Google, you bunch who grew up with Baidu, living in your self-proclaimed truth like leaks. 
Put the stuff here. Su Chen pointed to the warehouse. Recently, the trucks coming in and out of the warehouse have become more diverse, delivering medicine, vegetables, water, and even various large mechanical equipment. Several off-road vehicles, snowmobiles, and lifeboats have even been brought in. All thanks to the efforts of Dog Dad and Dog Mom. Dog Dad had just contributed over a thousand points, which Su Chen threw into the prize pool and drew a personal small universe upgrade crystal. The personal small universe upgraded from basic to intermediate, expanding its space area by a hundred times. It directly reached 100 square kilometers. At this rate of upgrading, Su Chen estimates that in the future, he might even be able to pack up the entire Earth. With a space of exactly 100 square kilometers, I can not only load all the survival supplies needed for the apocalypse, but even fit an aircraft carrier in there. If you encounter an opponent you can't beat in the future, you can even smash an aircraft carrier on his face and kill him. This huge portable universe has so much room for maneuver. In addition, gasoline, batteries, these basic energy sources, and the supplies needed for recreational activities cannot be overlooked. Speaking of recreational supplies, excuse me, is this 17, Upper City Old Street? Yes. Someone asked us to leave the goods here, it's Mr. Sue. That's me, hand it over to me. The driver's expression was strange, and there was still some admiration in his eyes as he looked at Su Chen. As a professional delivery person for adult products, the driver has seen all kinds of clients with extreme tastes. But it was the first time he had seen someone buy hundreds of silicone dolls in one go. Is he going to open a silicone harem? Or is he preparing to open a store? But all these dolls were purchased at retail price, and there is no profit margin for resale. Ha! Huh? Could it be? A doll nightclub? Su Chen remained calm, calmly watching the driver unload all the girls. Thanks, the next batch of goods will also be delivered here. There's more to come? Yes, as many as needed. The driver didn't ask further, just gave a thumbs up and silently got back into the car. Su Chen waved his hand and collected all the various beautiful girls into his portable world. This thing may look shameful, but it will be very useful in the future. Speaking of recreational supplies, one cannot ignore a premium currency that plays a crucial role in the future, silicone dolls. In a future world where resources are scarce and suspicion runs high, the danger of real human intimacy is extremely high. During procreation, both parties are naked and in a vulnerable state. At this time, it is difficult to resist sudden dangers or attacks from partners. Therefore, lifelike dolls have become essential commodities to meet these needs. After all, you never have to worry about a paper person betraying you. Moreover, with advanced modern technology, the lifelike appearance of these dolls makes them suitable for use even in combat situations. Of course, not for fighting directly. They are used as decoys to attract firepower. Go back and tell your boss that I need as many of these quality dolls as there are. Su Chen instructed the driver. The driver pondered, thinking that Su Chen might be planning to open a heavenly paradise with these dolls. He couldn't help but feel a dry mouth and whispered, Boss, can we offer a discount later? It's my first time seeing so many models. Offer a discount for what? Ha! Huh? Aren't you planning to open an experiential store? Experiential store? Ha! Huh, yes, an experiential store, opening on New Year's Day. Wishing the boss a prosperous business. Thanks for your kind words. After gathering today's batch of supplies, Su Chen went straight home. However, as soon as he arrived at the entrance of the residential area, he sensed a strange atmosphere. When did his neighborhood become so lively? Everyone, take a good look. This is the scumbag. A loud voice cursed, then couldn't help muttering softly, Damn, why is he so handsome? People had gathered on both sides of the road. Men and women. There were even sycophants and XXN. It seemed that his home address had been leaked, and it was no surprise that it was the work of that B asterisk TCH. Su Chen didn't want to deal with these idiots, so he raised his head and chest and moved forward without saying a word. Unfortunately, a muscular man, as strong as an iron tower, blocked his way. The man tensed his arm muscles, causing terrifying veins to bulge under his skin. You little trash, I see you only dare to bully the elderly and women, do you have the guts to face me one on one? Don't block my way, I'm in a hurry. Ha, huh, coward, are you scared now? You're a bully who preys on the weak. Before the man could finish his sentence, Su Chen grabbed his neck, silencing him completely. He was horrified to find that his feet were off the ground. The slender youth in front of him actually lifted him up with one hand. He weighed 230 pounds. I said I'm busy. With a casual flick, the troublemaker was thrown aside like trash. The display of strength was so powerful that the surrounding people took a few steps back in disbelief. They thought they had a chance to embarrass this bully who fears the strong, to expose his weakness in front of the strong man, 
but the situation turned out differently. Despite the stark difference in size, the power dynamic seemed to be reversed. It was not Su Chen who was lifted up like a little chicken, but the strong man. How is this possible? My brother. He's the city's martial arts runner-up. The muscle-bound man who was thrown aside looked bewildered. What happened? Unfortunately, Su Chen couldn't be bothered to say a word to these people, and had already headed straight home. Leaving a group of dumbfounded people standing there, unsure whether to delete the video just taken on their phones or to send it out to condemn Su Chen's dangerous violence. The situation did not unfold as they had expected. Everyone calm down. It was just a coincidence, my brother didn't perform well just now, right bro? Haha, ha, yeah. The martial arts runner-up Ouyang Jun awkwardly chuckled. Although he felt it was suspicious to be thrown out just now, he didn't want to lose face in front of women. So he convinced himself with a sense of luck that he had underestimated the opponent, his stance was unstable, and if they really fought, he would be knocked out by a single punch from the skinny guy. In free combat competitions, every 3 kilograms marked a threshold level, and the power gap between each level was comparable to the small realms in cultivation novels. It was almost impossible to lose in a cross-level battle, especially considering the several levels of weight difference between Su Chen and him. He should have easily dealt with Su Chen as if he were dealing with a baby. Being thrown out just now only proved that Su Chen's strength was indeed outstanding, but having strength alone was not enough, especially since his own strength was not lacking. Everyone go home first, tonight we'll discuss the plan in the group chat and see how to make this scumbag embarrass himself. Just embarrassing him is not enough, we must strip him of his dignity and make him fall from grace. Someone screamed. Don't worry, if justice is delayed, we will take matters into our own hands. Ouyang Badian clenched his fist with a righteous and stern expression, this is also the show our fans are eager to see, we must do it well. Ouyang Badian was a well-known video blogger across the internet. She had a representative work with over a hundred million views, titled three sentences that made a man spend 18,000 on me. In addition, she deliberately created a video of a hot pot restaurant being harassed, earning millions in revenue. Unfortunately, it was later exposed as staged, and all the money earned was fined. But this did not stop her from continuing to cause mischief. In her eyes, Su Chen was the next big breakthrough for her comeback. So she was determined to take matters into her own hands and make sure all the viewers saw the scumbag received the punishment he deserved. This was the unity and combat power of the awakened women of the 21st century, something those scumbags could never compare to. Everyone, retreat. Send someone to take care of the security in the monitoring room later, those old men are better taken care of, they go weak in the knees at the sight of women. Then we'll take the opportunity to shut down the surveillance in the neighborhood and go to his doorstep to throw feces in the middle of the night. Ah, this move is brilliant. Throw. We must throw. I'm really curious about his expression when he opens the door in the morning. The views will definitely break a million. Su Chen listens silently to the group of people conspiring loudly. His spiritual awareness had reached 400 points, and nothing escaped his senses within a 40 meter range. Those who thought their plans were hidden naturally fell into his ears. Do these lunatics not have jobs to go to? He was speechless. The official warning had already been issued, but these lunatics were still unwilling to believe the facts, each immersed in their own conspiracy theories. No one could wake up these pretending brain-dead people, as if they would explode on the spot if they opened their eyes to reality. It looks like we need to start setting up security now, otherwise they'll really have a hard time tomorrow. Su Chen busied himself. After finishing the arrangements, Su Chen stored all the belongings in the house into his personal pocket universe, not even leaving a single hair behind. Goodbye everyone. You stay here and compete with the air moving for Su Chen was as easy as pie, while ordinary people would need at least a few days to pack up and hire a moving company, he just snapped his fingers and stored everything in his personal space. Then he opened the window, took advantage of the dark night and strong wind, and leaped out. With an agility score of 1500, he moved as light and agile as a cat, stepping on the outer walls of the opposite building and his own building alternately, easily avoiding all surveillance to reach the rooftop. The high density of buildings in Su Chen's residential area provided him with a huge operating space. He leaped directly on the rooftop, avoiding all eyes on the ground. Phew an unprecedented high difficulty movement. But it felt great. Adrenaline was surging. Mastering the power gave him confidence in his actions, thus overcoming his fear of heights. The first time flying over the walls was a success. Leaping between the towering skyscrapers in the city, overlooking the dazzling neon lights of the upper city at night, Su Chen couldn't help but feel a bit grateful to these crazy people. If it weren't for their mischief, he probably wouldn't have been able to fly over the walls before the day of reckoning, and would have missed this last glimpse of prosperity. Late at night, several sneaky figures sneaked into the residential building where Su Chen lived. 
They carried buckets in their hands, emitting an unmistakable stench. The surveillance cameras in the neighborhood had already lost their function, including those in the elevator. However, just to be safe, they still cut off the power to Su Chen's house to avoid the surveillance cameras installed at the door. After confirming the operation was completed, these people stood in front of Su Chen's door. Ji Mei, go for it. The sewage poured out. Oh Yang Baidian looked satisfied at the battle video sent by Ji Mei in the WeChat group. This wave of sewage was all-encompassing, meticulously covering every corner of Su Chen's door. In order to achieve a perfect door-blocking strike, making Su Chen smell the indelible stench as soon as he dared to step out, they had to involve some neighbors. But in their eyes, the sacrifice of the neighbors was necessary, as they were unlucky enough to live on the same floor as the scumbag. Well done, generals. The actors who went out to splash sewage were respectfully called generals in the group. Once again, we made the scumbag pay the price, and ensured the rights of Jime. Our contributions will surely be recorded in the future history books. But make sure no traces are left, right? Confirmed. Ha, huh, I can't wait to see the scumbag's expression. I wonder if that guy is live streaming now. Open it and take a look. With that in mind, Ouyang Baidian opened Su Chen's live stream. Due to a few minutes delay in the live broadcast, Ouyang Baidian happened to see the exciting part. Several senior generals in the group were frantically pouring sewage at Su Chen's door. She was stunned for a moment. Did I open the wrong video? Why was the live stream showing several people vigorously splashing sewage? And the picture quality was extremely clear. Even the masks couldn't hide their important features. I must have opened the wrong video. No, wait, I didn't. After confirming multiple times that it was indeed Su Chen's live stream, Ouyang Baidian stood there in shock, swallowing hard. If those were not videos originally stored in her phone, but were actually being publicly broadcasted from Su Chen's live stream, what did that mean? Ouyang Baidian dropped her phone on the ground, with a crack, the screen shattered, turning pitch black. Is this, that guy's live stream? Soon, others also noticed something was off. Damn. Why were there figures in the scumbag's live stream where they were fighting? What the hell? Did he install surveillance at the door? No, it's not. We clearly turned off the power in his house. To prevent any mistakes, I turned off all the power switches in the building. They still haven't been turned back on. At this moment, the most collapsed mentality was still those generals on the scene. They opened their phones, opened Su Chen's live broadcast room, and saw their own figures. Many people subscribed to Su Chen's live broadcast room, and when they saw the notification message, they would directly open and watch, so the popularity of the live broadcast room was extremely high at this moment. The barrage was full of what the heck, what are they doing? Throwing feces at someone's door? Too brutal. These people are like dogs. Can this be called human? The general's heads buzzed for a moment, stunned. The lump in their skulls that didn't have a reliable potato-like CPU immediately burned out, and some generals who had completely lost their minds even walked towards that filthy door. Some people tried to find the location of the camera in the live broadcast room to prevent these cameras from continuing to expose their images. That person searched in the filth for a long time, following the live broadcast angle, and indeed found a camera in a semi-buried state. Enduring the nausea, they took it out and smashed it. But the screen flashed, instantly switching to another angle. There was not just one pinhole camera installed at Su Chen's door, in order to ensure capturing all the features of the perpetrator, he deliberately installed more than a dozen camera positions, scattered throughout the dark corners of the corridors. Some of them were hidden on the ceiling, completely out of reach for the generals. They were completely devastated this time. Unable to destroy the cameras, they wanted to destroy Su Chen. Some lost their minds, rushed to the door, smashing it fiercely while cursing, Come out! Beast! Come out! Now, they even exposed their voices. Some generals who still had a bit of sanity realized that they had to escape quickly, so without saying a word, they abandoned their companions and fled. Unfortunately, it was already too late. Su Chen, who was watching remotely, immediately reported to the police, and the night shift police officers from the nearby community quickly arrived, blocking the generals. However, the generals were now covered in filth, and the police dared not approach them. It was like Lu Bu reincarnated in a dung pit. Rolling around in a dung pit would be like a god descending to earth. Unsolvable. Completely unsolvable. Don't move. Ugh, don't move. Don't force us to use force. However, the generals had already lost their minds, struggling frantically, even trying to force their hands into the mouths of the police. Zzz smack, 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 the police had no choice but to use tasers. The powerful electric current made the shot generals fall to the ground, convulsing wildly. Damn, this is so disgusting. Ah, uh, I can't take it anymore. The police were on the verge of collapse, some even cursing in front of the live broadcast camera. 
But at this moment, everyone in the live broadcast room could understand this curse. Who could bear this? Why? Why? The general responsible for turning off the power was the most hysterical, as Su Chen's cameras were still functioning properly, making her the scapegoat. It's all your fault. You idiot. I shouldn't have brought you out. The other generals all turned their anger towards the general who turned off the power. I don't understand. I clearly turned off the power. I clearly turned off the power. You can't blame me. The general who turned off the power roared back. Unable to bear it, the police shouted, Do you know that there is something in this world called a backup battery? The generals instantly fell silent. Honestly, come with me to the station. Confess who the mastermind is. Don't make me use the stun gun again. Unless you want to roll around here like her. Under the threat of the taser gun, the generals finally gave up struggling. Instead, they resorted to the most powerful weapon in version T0, crying, and made a face of grievance and innocence. Unfortunately, the smell emanating from them now could not evoke sympathy from anyone else. Cry my foot. Let's go. Officer Lu shouted angrily. Soon, it was dawn, all the generals were punished, forcibly washed with high-pressure water guns, and awaited trial. And this incident immediately hit the hot search. Su Chen's doorstep was splashed with feces, and all the perpetrators were caught, of course, this hot search was translated by XXN as, Terror Man's doorstep was splashed with feces, and the warriors were arrested. However, Su Chen unexpectedly gained a third wave of super popularity due to the event. He once again dominated the screen. The mastermind behind the whole incident, Ouyang Badian, was so frightened that she couldn't sleep all night. She was afraid of being exposed as the mastermind by the generals. Fortunately, the generals did not expose her. But she couldn't just hide and play dead, otherwise, the others in the group would no longer acknowledge her leadership position. Gritting her teeth, Ouyang Badian typed out, We must seek revenge. Jimei, we must avenge the generals. Ouyang Badian frequented the Korean Megalia Forum, where Extreme XXN gathered. The XXN on the forum took pleasure in openly molesting boys, glorifying war, because many men died, and secretly filming men in changing rooms, to humiliate them online. They would even cook their aborted male babies in a pot and feed them to stray dogs in exchange for praise. There, Ouyang Badian believed was a beacon of progress. It was also a pioneer in Dongwan's service. The means of persecuting men provided on the forum were the action guide in Ouyang Baitian's daily life. She and the generals in the group believed they were fighting for rights and upholding justice. At this moment, she sent a message to her backup plan number one, Darling, something bad happened to me recently, and I'm not feeling good now. The other party transferred 8,888 yuan to you. Ouyang Badian happily accepted and said, Thank you, although I don't want your money, I feel a little better now. Then she sent a message to backup plan number two. Soon, she received another large sum of money. She skillfully used those ATMs in her friends list to earn her own justice fund. And she proudly posted the payment records in the group, receiving a wave of praise. Well done. These idiots only deserve to give us money. With this fund, we must seek revenge for the generals. Let's send a few people to stake out the scumbag's doorstep, Ouyang Badian said. I don't believe he can stay in the house without coming out, not eating or drinking. When he comes out, we'll have people follow him and shout in public that he molested someone on the street. This trick is brilliant. As long as the general shed a few tears, no one will care if he really molested someone. Even if it's fake, it has to be real. Even if we accidentally get caught on camera, we can say it's a misunderstanding, not a crime, and as long as there's no surveillance, he'll be ruined. If we stage a few more times, and more news comes out, even if it's fake, no one will believe him. They'll just think he's a repeat offender. Brilliant. Really brilliant. Ouyang Badian arranged the plan and sent people to stake out Su Chen's neighborhood. And at this moment, Su Chen was already lying in the five-star platinum hotel in the upper city, comfortably enjoying breakfast with a fox. I've almost stocked up on all the medicinal materials that can be hoarded, even the high-grade medicines in the auction have been bought by me. I've acquired over 50% of the earth's appreciating medicinal resources, the rest can only be slowly purchased from retail investors, there's no rush. I've temporarily stored 300 tons of fresh water, and I'll go to Hang City later to see if I can directly fit West Lake in. Various batteries, generators, fossil fuels, lithium mines, I've hoarded some, but the money is not enough, I haven't hoarded much, I have to continue to work hard. Obtained 100 points of regret from Dong Shushu. Obtained 120 points of regret from Li Jiakuan. Obtained. Last night, a total of four generals were caught, contributing a total of 500 points of regret for themselves. Just when I said there wasn't enough money, the money came. Thank you, generals. Please keep up the good work. Another dog dead fell, 
but unexpectedly attracted a group of new fighting power. That family is really my lucky star. Speaking of Zhao Mengyan, hasn't she been silenced today? Just mentioned Chao Chao, and then thought of that source of all evil, a message came to the phone. It was a video invitation from Zhao Mengyan. Su Chen, what do you want in the end? Do you have to force our whole family to death before you stop? The expected roar, after the dog dad and dog mom were arrested, this person should have completely lost her value, with no way out. She was anxious. However, Su Chen just asked back, what did I do? Zhao Mengyan choked on the spot. She recalled that the online public opinion was clearly caused by her parents, it was their choice to spread rumors and defame Su Chen, which ultimately led to their own downfall. Those chat records, also because she insisted on going to Myanmar, ended up being cheated, caught, and Su Chen had to call the police, which led to the exposure. Things have escalated to this point today, what did Su Chen do? No. Of course, Zhao Mengya cannot accept this logic. She will never admit her own mistakes. So it must be Su Chen's fault. If you obediently give me 8 million, if you don't go to my parents' house to cancel the marriage, if you can be more tolerant of me, believe me, it wouldn't be like this. Su Chen, it's all your fault. You are forcing our whole family to death. Su Chen showed the expression of an elderly person on the subway looking at his phone. It's too difficult. You have to take responsibility for the life and death of our whole family. We are all victims of you today. You won't even give me 8 million, you are not worthy of being a man at all. I'm sorry I couldn't be born as version T0. Su Chen sighed with his hands spread out. Su Chen, I'll give you one last chance, transfer 8 million to me, and I'll forget about this incident. I can forgive you, and we can reconcile. Su Chen. Seeing Su Chen silent, Zhao Mengyan thought he was seriously considering, so she immediately took the opportunity, do you remember the vows you made? You said you would love me forever, you said no matter what, you would love me. I'll give you another chance to keep your promise, the bank account number is 6x times x times x. Go transfer the money back now, and I'll forget all your mistakes these days. Su Chen covered his face. Sorry, I'm afraid of women. Afraid of what? How can you be so weak, are you still a man? Of course, these insults couldn't stir up any waves in Su Chen's heart. Looking at the faintly revealed AK gun barrel in the opponent's video, Su Chen felt like laughing. Since you have no regrets, then, I wish you a happy life with Li Gu in Myanmar. With that, Su Chen hung up the call, leaving Zhao Mengyan stunned in place. Why? Why didn't he listen to me? No, since he answered my call, he should love me. I know him, he must not want me to leave. He's pretending, he must be pretending. I can't be fooled by his pretense, once the precedent is set, he will be even more disobedient in the future. Zhao Mengyan muttered as if in a frenzy. Li Zhong next to her couldn't help but cover his face. This person is too much. How did he become so stupid and bad, even though he was once cherished in the palm of his hand? Because of the filter of the pure-hearted teenage love? Li Zhong really didn't want to waste any more time on Zhao Mengyan, so he took out a syringe directly. You seem to have not figured out the situation yet. The time I gave you is past. Li Gu, give me 10 more days. 10 days. I will definitely handle him. He he, 10 days? Li Gu smiled strangely. Do you know, people like you usually lose an arm and a leg by the second day. Keeping you around until now was just because of your boyfriend's 8 million. I will definitely get it. That idiot loves me. I know. Damn it, I'm fed up with your narcissism. Damn it, wasting so much of my time. Pa. It would be a bargain to throw you to the dogs. I think you should be made into a human pig. Put on display in a vase. Zhao Mengyan trembled in horror. Human pig, she knew what that was. Cut off the limbs of a living person, then dig out the eyes, cut off the ears, and pour scalding hot copper juice into all the holes herself, would be made into a human pig? Realizing the terrifying reality of the future, she suddenly became a little more sober. The instinct for survival drove her to pick up her phone like crazy, constantly sending messages to Su Chen, and repeatedly sending video calls. Finally, Su Chen replied to the message. Su Chen, actually, I don't have 8 million, the balance on the last bank card was fake. Zhao Mengyan felt like she was falling into an ice cellar. She crazily replied with curses, you liar, you bastard. You actually lied to me. You poor B asterisk starred. She cursed dozens of times, and Su Chen finally replied with a new message. It was a screenshot of the cumulative income on the bank card for this month. Then he said, not 8 million, it's 50 million. Received 1,000 points of regret from Zhao Mengyan, 1,000 points of agility, and 10 million in bank deposits. Well, now it's 60 million. Zhao Mengyan immediately slapped herself 10 times. Why was her mouth so foul? She never even dreamed that Su Chen could have 60 million, such a large number that Zhao Mengyan didn't dare to think about. 
In other words, Su Chen actually had the ability to easily rescue her. And her previous rant undoubtedly pushed Su Chen further away. Looking at the gun barrel so close, Zhao Mengyan's tone softened involuntarily. Darling, I know I was wrong. I know my attitude was bad. Can we talk about this when we get home? Can you lend me 8 million first, and I will definitely pay you back in the future? Lend? I believe in ghosts. How many times in the past have you said you would repay borrowed money? Su Chen simply turned on the do not disturb mode again. He had enough fun today and couldn't be bothered to reply to this person. Zhao Meng Yan was left staring blankly at the WeChat screen. Her fingers unconsciously swiped up, and before she knew it, she had scrolled to the chat before she went to Myanmar. Looking at the screen, Su Chen's caring concerns, and the somewhat cheesy words at the time, tears flowed like a spring. She didn't understand how her life had suddenly turned out like this. Why didn't he care about her anymore? She just cheated and wanted to poison him, that's all. Isn't that not poisoning him? Since he didn't die from poisoning, why blame me? Scumbag. Such a scumbag. Can't come up with the money, right? Okay, then let's follow the rules. Li Zhong snapped his fingers, and someone immediately came over with pliers. Let's pull out her teeth first. Zhao Mengyan widened her eyes in horror. No, no. Please. I know I was wrong. Please, brotherly. Brotherly. Ah, the screams echoed in the basement, just like the treatment Zhao Mengyan saw others endure. This time was no different. In that instant, she suddenly understood. She was not special at all. The reason she once thought she had the whole world, thought she was unique. That was because, in his eyes, she was once unique. But now, she was no longer special. Su Chen was preparing the topic he was going to present at the Astronomical Summit. He decided to ask seriously, not to deliberately conceal the truth, or make himself look foolish, to weaken the credibility of his words. If those scholars chose to believe in his words, and made some preparations in advance, perhaps the end of the world would be a little less cold. He would do his best, even though this effort was doomed to be in vain. Breaking news, last night, a Starlink satellite fell in Chukotka County, Russia, smashing a residential house. SpaceX demands Russia to return the fallen satellite debris, while Russia requests compensation for the economic losses caused by the satellite crash. The satellite crash incident has reportedly resulted in at least three fatalities and two serious injuries. The impact of the asteroid has already reached Earth, with its erratic gravitational characteristics disrupting the operation of orbital satellites. It won't be long before more satellite crash incidents occur, leading to all satellites falling to the ground. SpaceX, in order to stabilize its stock price, claims that the crash was caused by a new satellite secretly launched by Russia. SpaceX refuses to compensate Russia for the economic losses, stating that the collision was not a natural disaster and not a technical issue of SpaceX. This move successfully preserved SpaceX's stock price but also deprived humanity of the only opportunity to discover the abnormal gravitational force of the asteroid. SpaceX's CEO Musk was subsequently dubbed a criminal against civilization and was captured and publicly executed by the extremist organization ARC on the 12th year of the Day of Reckoning. This action earned ARC widespread support from the global population, making it one of the largest armed forces in the future. Returning to his thoughts, Su Chen glanced at the time and began today's nonsense live broadcast. Hello, everyone. Yesterday, we talked about a friendly fungus that can be used to evade insect enemies, discussing its usage and identification methods. Today, we will discuss the changes that would occur if the moon were permanently locked in the western hemisphere due to gravity. Censored. You know we want to hear about your doorstep being splattered with dung. Bro, please face reality, no one really cares about your nonsense brainwaves. Firstly, if the moon were permanently locked in the western hemisphere, the earth's oceans would lose tides, and all seawater would be attracted to the western hemisphere due to gravity, completely overturning the current ocean patterns. Canada, the United States, Mexico, Guatemala, Brazil, Chile, Argentina. All countries would be completely submerged by seawater, with South and North America sinking into the seabed, leaving only the Afro-Eurasian continent and Australia as habitable zones for humans. Urgent. I want to see the host open the door, see what the host's doorstep looks like, urgent. What happened next? Is the host in danger from the extremists? And because the oceans are gravity locked, water resources are concentrated in the western hemisphere. The central zone of the eastern hemisphere will become a desert, dividing the earth into three parts. One part is the ocean, one part is the desert in the central circle of the eastern hemisphere, and finally, the human gathering area and plant growth zone resembling a ring. This growth zone is located between 20 degrees west longitude and 160 degrees east longitude, circling the earth along the coastline, providing sufficient water supply for plant growth. Sounds a bit intriguing, doesn't it? Intriguing my foot. 
It's terrifying. I don't want to see that kind of world. Do you think it's possible that the host is actually a great prophet, and it's really possible for the moon to be fixed in the Western Hemisphere in the future? Absolutely impossible. You have to understand, the Earth rotates, and if the moon is fixed in the Western Hemisphere, it means the time for the moon to orbit the Earth once is the same as the time for the Earth to rotate once. The moon would have to speed up 30 times to turn a month into a day. At that speed, the moon would have long escaped Earth's gravitational pull and been flung away. The audience in the live stream unexpectedly began to seriously contemplate and discuss this. This surprised Suchin. Unfortunately, this kind of discussion only lasted for a moment. Soon, more XXN's insults overwhelmed the sound of urging Suchen to go out and shoot. Well, then I'll go out for a walk. Suchen had been cooped up in the house all day and was feeling a bit stuffy, so he was planning to go to the rooftop bar at the hotel for some fresh air. When they heard that Suchen was going out, the generals who were squatting at Su Chen's original residence instantly became alert. Oh Yang Beidi and immediately issued a combat readiness notice in the group. All generals, attention. The target is about to appear. Execute plan A immediately. At this moment, Oh Yang Beidi and was a bit excited. Thinking that as soon as Su Chen opened the door, he would be faced with the terrifying stench outside, she felt a sense of satisfaction. Although the generals were caught, their mission was still accomplished, and the goal of disgusting Su Chen was achieved. When he opened the door and walked through the filthy corridor, he would be completely engulfed by the terrifying stench. That stench, like his gender, was inherent and could never be washed away. Click, in the live broadcast room, Su Chen opened the door. Outside the door was a brightly lit corridor, with brown walls and neatly arranged rooms, exuding an understated and elegant style. The entire corridor was not spotless, but it was clean and refreshing, making people feel relaxed and happy. Cleaned up so quickly? The barrage was puzzled. Stupid. Obviously, the anchor is not at home. Oh Yang Baidian was struck by lightning. Su Chen is not at home? How is that possible? There have always been people watching at the entrance of his residential area. When did he slip away? Since he is not at home, doesn't that mean the sacrifices of the generals were meaningless? The whole group was dumbfounded. Su Chen, I saw a few strange perverts blocking my door yesterday, so I moved out overnight. And that house was rented. Poor landlord, luckily I installed surveillance cameras before leaving. Oh Yang Baidian was stunned. So, their grand sacrifice operation did not cause any harm to Su Chen at all? The generals felt dizzy. How could this person be so despicable? Obtained 85 points of regret from Oh Yang Baidian, and at the same time, obtained regret points from Li Jiakuan. Obtained regret points from Dong Shu Shu. Obtained. Wow, this sentence directly exploded with 700 points and also displayed the names of the members of the criminal organization. Su Chen silently noted down all the names. Arriving at the rooftop bar, he opened the live broadcast while enjoying the night view. Since there's nothing else to do, I'll talk a bit more today. Tide locking can be predicted in advance. First, the distance between the Earth and the Moon will shorten, the gravitational pull on the ground will decrease, and there will be a phenomenon of water flowing backward at night in plateau areas. The Moon will also appear larger. If such phenomena occur, students in the Americas should move eastward as soon as possible and bring as much food as possible. Because you will need to cross the muddy Atlantic salt marsh and embark on a long migration towards Africa and Eurasia to avoid being submerged underwater by surging tsunamis. Students in the central and southeastern parts of Eurasia should also move eastward, as we need to establish new habitats in the center of the Pacific Ocean at 160 degrees east longitude to avoid desertification in waterless areas. The anchor is getting scarier as he speaks. Doesn't that mean all the tall buildings we are constructing now will be doomed? Eventually, they will all be buried under yellow sand and become ancient city ruins. No, I just bought a new house. Su Chen took a sip of juniper berry gin, not letting the bartender do much, just adding some ice cubes to experience the unique aroma of juniper berry gin. He was drinking less and less of this liquor. Unfortunately, his constitution was too strong now and even strong liquor couldn't make him feel the slightest bit tipsy. The changes in the natural environment are beyond human control, or rather, we are too insignificant now, and our abilities are not enough to change the climate. So migration has become the only choice. Fortunately, this is just the anchor's nonsense. Our generation won't be able to catch up with this doomsday scenario, scientists have said that at least several billion years are needed for humanity to go extinct. Which scientist said that? Don't you know that any random gamma ray burst could wipe us out? You guys are talking as if the world is ending next year, stop scaring people, okay? I won't be able to sleep tonight. Su Chen doesn't care whether the audience can sleep or not. He is only responsible for stating the future facts. 
At this moment, in Ouyang Baitian's battle group, everyone is operating frantically. They are searching for photos of all the hotels in the upper city, comparing them with the background of Su Chen's live broadcast room, trying to locate Su Chen's whereabouts. Finally, after a frantic search, they finally pinpointed Su Chen's location. Upper City Connor Hotel? Platinum 5 Star? Wow, this has stumped everyone. To go up to the hotel requires a room card. If they want to continue tracking Su Chen, they have to book a room in this hotel. And this hotel costs 5,000 yuan per night. Their budget won't last long. No problem. I'll go find an ATM to book a room. Let him book a room here. Oh Yang Beatty and quickly found a solution. Upper City never lacks young masters, let alone those who are instinctively dominated, always wanting to show off in front of women. I'll get you in. Let's stick to the original plan. General, go straight to the bar and confront him. Just right, he's drinking, we can say he's acting recklessly after drinking. Perfect. The action plan is set, and the generals set off. They quickly arrived at their destination. Like well-trained special agents, the general in charge of the operation took a spare room card and swiftly headed to the top floor bar. Su Chen's live broadcast is still on, so they can immediately locate Su Chen. Live broadcast? He he. This time, you will be publicly humiliated. The general's strategy is simple. First, she came to the blind spot of Su Chen's camera, then when Su Chen raised his hand, she pressed her plump buttocks against him. Then she screamed, cried, attracting the attention of the people around. The method is simple and crude, but it works every time, countless men have fallen for this trick. Not far away, Su Chen is holding his phone, seemingly unaware of the impending danger. In the dimly lit bar, the general quietly approached. Crack, a sound seemed to come from the darkness, but the general didn't pay attention. She continued to approach Su Chen, closer and closer. Now, all she needed was a lunge forward to ruin Su Chen's reputation. However, thud, the general suddenly fell to the ground, convulsing all over, foaming at the mouth. Su Chen then stood up and walked over to her. What's wrong with her? Su Chen asked knowingly. Looks like she got electrocuted. Why is there a bare wire here? The general's exposed leg got caught on the bare wire, instantly electrocuting her, causing her to convulse and unable to move. Everyone, when dealing with someone who has been electrocuted, never touch them with your hands, you should do it like this. Bang! Su Chen picked up a stool and smacked the general, sending her rolling out and spinning on the ground. Then he breathed a sigh of relief, luckily we rescued her in time, she shouldn't be electrocuted to death now. He is truly a good person. As for why the insulation layer of that wire was damaged and appeared in front of the general's leg? Of course, it was just the general's bad luck, otherwise, could it be that Su Chen recognized the general's face in advance, used a knife to scrape off the insulation layer, deliberately placed the wire in front of the general's leg? What a joke, he has been honestly live broadcasting in front of the bar counter, all the viewers in the live broadcast room can testify. Manipulating objects with spiritual knowledge across space? Spiritual knowledge? What spiritual knowledge? We don't know about that. Hello, 120? Someone got electrocuted at the top floor bar of Upper City Connor Hotel. Su Chen even kindly helped dial the emergency number. I didn't expect such a sudden incident to happen. I hope this young lady can get through this difficult situation. Su Chen sighed lightly towards the live broadcast room. So, today's live broadcast ends here. See you all tomorrow. Su Chen closed the live broadcast. It seems that those extreme XXN have already found out his location and started to launch attacks. Sai, cyberbullying is harmful. He had no grudges against these people originally, but due to the rumors spread by some malicious individuals, he was pushed into a bizarre confrontation. He felt the need to refresh his mind by meeting some normal people. Su Chen? Are you okay? Just as he mentioned normal people, a normal person appeared. Su Chen was also surprised to meet a colleague here. Yao Jie? This was the top hotel in Upper City No. 1, and the fact that Nia Yao could appear here indicated that she was not just a commentator. My family is celebrating my grandma's birthday in the banquet hall, Nia Yao shrugged. I finished my speech, but I can't get along with the elders, so I came up here to take a walk. Nia Yao, your grandma is calling you. Whom? Who is this? What a coincidence. The man extended his hand to Su Chen, who shook it, and the man handed him a business card. Nia Haiyang, the operations manager of Color Star Company. Nia Haiyang? The name sounded familiar, but he couldn't recall where he had heard it before. However, Color Star? Su Chen was very familiar with this company's name. Wasn't this the company where Dog Dad Jiayu worked? Previously, Su Chen had been wondering why one of Dog Dad's editors suddenly made a mistake and leaked the unedited original video, which was then handed over to the police. Now it seemed that perhaps this person was pulling the strings behind the scenes. 
I apologize for Zhao Yu's mistake, but his personal actions do not represent our entire company. Nia Haiyang smiled. I have been following your live broadcasts and videos. Your handling of every situation is very impressive. Common times of crisis. I hope we can have the opportunity to cooperate in the future. Nia Haiyang always remembered Su Chen's calmness and casual attitude when facing online attacks, as if he were someone who had experienced life and death struggles. In his view, perhaps only someone who had faced the test of death could remain calm in such situations. He wasn't entirely wrong about this. It's just that it wasn't just a test of death. Cooperate? Sure, if there's a chance, help me share a few of my videos. I mean the recordings of the recent live broadcasts, about the subterranean ghouls, parasite fungi, and gravity locks. Mr. Su intends to switch to a science fiction story blogger? Yes, he he, part-time science popularizer. Impressive. Nia Haiyang highly praised Su Chen's operation of mixing rumors with science popularization. I'll have the company help you share them when you go back. Consider it a small compensation. I know it's far from enough. It's nothing. I'm not injured. So what compensation? He had already won. Nia Haiyang didn't mention the previous incident again. In his view, such a storm of cyberbullying could not have had no impact on a person, and Su Chen must have suppressed the pain and put on a brave face. This made him admire Su Chen's talent even more, thinking that it would be great if this kid were his employee. Nia Yao, go find your grandma, she has something good for you. Let's talk later. Okay. After bidding farewell to Nia Yao and her father, Su Chen yawned. Just as he was about to go back to his room to sleep, a memory from his past life suddenly flashed before him. Wait a minute. Nia Haiyang? Could he be the one from that time? After the moon stopped over the western hemisphere in the previous life, humanity began a great and arduous migration. The migration promoted exchanges between various regional powers, and many large organizations were formed during the migration process. Among them, there was an organization led by a severely disabled former Air Force female lieutenant general, whose organization had strong cohesion and combat power. The organization was called Xinhua and belonged to the lawful neutral camp, helping many refugees during the migration. The female lieutenant general had a husband with only one eye, named Nia Haiyang, and it is said that they once had a daughter. But their daughter died a month before the day of the attack, at a banquet celebrating the elders' birthdays. Skeleton A, the target's relatives have returned to the banquet hall, ready for action. Just as Nia Haiyang returned to the banquet hall, a hotel waiter quietly pressed the walkie-talkie by his ear. Received, will arrive at the shooting point immediately. This is a well-trained team of assassins, targeting the unsuspecting Air Force female Major General Du Mingyue at the birthday banquet, or more accurately, her relatives. In a recent multinational operation against an East Asian cult, the team commanded by Du Mingyue successfully defeated the private armed forces of the New Century cult and killed the cult leader on the spot. Not all cult members were killed on the spot, and the New Century cult did not have only that one stronghold. The surviving cult members were not discouraged by the attack, instead, they believed that the holy war had just begun, and casualties were a test from above. The gods said that only by winning this war could they prove their devotion. Du Mingyue, taste the bitterness of losing your family as well. The waiter pushed the meal cart into the banquet hall, steadily approaching the elderly birthday celebrant and Nia Yao in the center of the banquet hall. Upon reaching the designated spot, the waiter suddenly reached into his chest as if grabbing something hidden there. Du Mingyue saw the waiter's movement and instantly realized his malicious intent, but it was too late. Nia Yao was receiving a gift from her grandmother. Although it was her grandmother's birthday, her grandmother always insisted on giving the best gift to her granddaughter, as always. It was for this reason that Nia Yao was now standing in front of the gunman. The gunman grinned menacingly at the bewildered Nia Yao and pulled the trigger forcefully. Bang! The flash erupted from the gunman's chest, and because Nia Yao was petite, the bullet flew straight towards her forehead. No one could react to a gunshot at such close range, especially since Nia Yao had not received professional training. Nia Yao. No. Du Mingyue and Nia Haiyang were on the verge of tears. They could only watch helplessly as their daughter was shot dead by the gunman, unable to even shield her with their bodies. At that moment, they wished the attacker had targeted them instead of their daughter. Ping, a silver light shot passed Nia Yao at an imperceptible speed, and she did not see what it was, only hearing a crisp metallic impact. It was not until the silver shadow pinned the bullet into the wall that she realized it was a... A kitchen knife? Before Nia Yao could react, a figure appeared next to the gunman like a tiger pouncing on its prey, and the gunman did not even have time to turn his gun towards the new threat before a fist landed heavily on his chest. The punch seemed to embed the gun and his arm into his chest cavity, as if the gunman could feel his own beating heart and broken ribs. Then his body flew out like a cannonball, 
crashing heavily into the wall before sliding down limply. Attention! There's more than one attacker. Saving Ye Yao, Su Chen spoke up to remind the couple Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang. This reminder prompted them to immediately seek cover, without confirming where Nye Yao was injured, as most people were panicking and crouching down. Only two burly men dressed as waiters stood at a higher vantage point, maintaining an elevated view. Damn it, the plan has changed, let's go all out. There were two more attackers, one of them picking up a machine gun to prepare for a spray of bullets, while the other sprinted towards Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang. As it was a gathering of friends and family, Du Mingyue did not have security personnel or a gun with her, but she quickly decided on a counterattack strategy. Taking advantage of the dining table as cover, Du Mingyue approached the first assassin knocked down by Su Chen. She tore open the assassin's clothes and pulled out the sticky gun that was half buried in the assassin's chest. Foolish. This action exposed Du Mingyue completely in front of the machine gunner, without any cover. The machine gun was already loaded, while Du Mingyue still needed to turn around to aim. The machine gunner was 100% certain that he could turn her into a sieve before Du Mingyue fired. However, in the instant he reached for the trigger, a flash of silver lightning appeared again. Click, the machine gunner was stunned to find that his finger on the trigger had hooked onto nothing. He looked down. Where are my fingers? Bang! Before he could find his fingers, Du Mingyue had already aimed the gun with both hands. Despite the blood on the gun making it slippery, it did not affect the accuracy. Three shots in quick succession. Du Mingyue accurately left three blood holes in the machine gunner's chest and immediately turned the gun towards the last assassin. However, this time she dared not shoot. Because that assassin, with an arrogant grin, tore open his own coat, revealing rows of bombs inside. At this moment, the assassin was less than 10 meters away from Nya Haiyang and Nya Yao. With bombs on him and holding a detonator, it was impossible to determine whether it was a pressure-sensitive detonator or a push-button detonator. It was too dangerous to shoot recklessly but Du Mingyue seemed to have no other choice. At this moment, she could only gamble that the detonator in the assassin's hand was a push-button type and that she could accurately shoot him in the head without hitting the bombs. Hold on. Before she could shoot, a shadow flashed before Du Mingyue's eyes. That agile figure was no less than any special forces elite she had seen in the army. With agility 50 times that of an ordinary person, even the assassin could not see the arrival of that figure clearly, and his field of vision even dropped frames. The speed was just too fast, and in the blink of an eye, Su Chen had already rushed to the side of the assassin. Without hesitation, he threw an uppercut punch leveraging the momentum of his charge. Thud, the dull sound mixed with the cracking of the cervical vertebrae, and the thug instantly flew backward, smashing through the hotel glass and flying towards the sky. A flying knife followed closely, the metal dining knife pierced the detonator, sparking a tiny spark, which was enough to detonate the bomb. Boom, the thug turned into fireworks in the sky causing no harm to pedestrians on the ground. However, the shockwave from the explosion slightly affected the banquet hall, blowing the people inside in all directions. One or two unlucky ones had their arms pierced by glass shards, but it was not a big problem. The crisis was finally averted. Most of the people in the banquet hall were ordinary people who had never experienced such a dangerous life and death moment. Now that they had relaxed, they began to cry and wail. Su Chen couldn't stand the howling and crying, and the police support had already arrived at the scene, so he didn't need to stay any longer and turned to leave. Wait, do Mingyue hurry to catch up? What's wrong? You are too strong, which unit are you from? Do Mingyue naturally assumed that a warrior with such adaptability and strength must have come from a military unit. His performance in this sudden event definitely deserved a first-class merit, as he had saved the lives of everyone in the banquet hall. And the people in this banquet hall were all her own family and friends, so Su Chen had saved her whole family's lives. She owed him too much. I am from the M78 light camp, no need to thank me, I believe in light. Su Chen waved his hand lightly and left gracefully. Before leaving, he quietly removed the bullets from the wall-mounted dining knife and the tip of the knife. That move was a bit too supernatural and could attract unnecessary trouble, but his speed was too fast, and no one saw what had happened clearly. Do Mingyue? M78 light camp? Never heard of it? Nya Haiyang, on the other hand, realized that Su Chen was joking. Still in shock, he couldn't help but blurt out, This is the kid who was cyberbullied by our company. Ha! Huh? It's him? It's outrageous, isn't it? His excellence is beyond words. What do you think about having him as our son in law? I guarantee that my whole family will approve. You are overestimating your daughter. How can you say such harsh words in front of your daughter's father? Isn't Yao Yao excellent enough? Apparently not especially considering this kid's extremely tumultuous emotional experiences. He's likely to remain single for the rest of his life. Yao Yao can at most be friends with him. 
Du Mingyue hung his head in disappointment and had to console the relatives in the banquet hall. I have repaid the favor I owed you in this life. Su Chen returned to his room, smiling contentedly. In the past, that birthday banquet not only took away one of Nia Haiyang's eyes but also left the leader of the Xinhua organization, Du Mingyue, paralyzed from the waist down, and Nia Yadiao perished in the flames. After the New Year's Eve, both of them awakened powerful talents. If not for these severe old wounds limiting the development of Nia Haiyang and Du Mingyue, they might have even ranked among the top global powerhouses. Unfortunately, disaster struck, and the pain of losing their daughter became an indelible demon for both of them. In the end, on a dark night, they chose to end their suffering through suicide. During the Great Migration, Su Chen also received the Xinhua's favor, which allowed him to live a few more days, hence his lingering regret over their suicides. Now, he had finally made amends for that regret, and when they encountered the Xinhua again in the future, no one would owe anyone anything. Phew. Tomorrow, I'll receive the final batch of goods and prepare for the astronomy summit. Su Chen extended his index finger to rub the little fox's head. The meteorite was getting closer, and it was about time for the little guy to awaken, right? Time passed in the live broadcast, and it was already the day before the astronomy summit. That night, a bright band of light appeared in the sky. It looked like a luminous contrail cloud, sprinkling a dreamy mosaic of shattered gems, waiting on its orbit for someone to pick up and explore. The little fox sat on Su Chen's shoulder, curiously looking up at the starry tail. This is the planetary structure torn apart by external gravitational forces when a gaseous planet moves. Of course, that's NASA's understanding. The truth was, it intentionally left behind this passage. This excessively long tail linked every place it had traveled, connecting billions of light years it had traversed, indiscriminately throwing disasters and treasures of those regions onto the Earth's surface, regardless of whether the Earth was prepared. The little fox seemed completely clueless, which it was, so it just affectionately rubbed against Su Chen's chin. It opened its eyes much later than other newborn foxes, finally opening them the day before yesterday, with its upper and lower eyelids no longer stuck together. The first person it saw was Su Chen. Although mammals don't consider the first being they see as their mother, Su Chen's figure and face were imprinted in the little one's mind. It then firmly stuck to Su Chen, refusing to leave even half a step. It seems I'll have to take you with me even if I go to jail. Received 500 regret points from Zhao Mengyan, as well as a portable mini-universe expansion crystal, living area, and a deposit of 5 million. Oh, is it time to claim the monthly card again? Thanks to Zhao Mengyan's stable contribution of regret points with the monthly card, Su Chen clasped his hands together in gratitude for a second of divine gift, then directly used the portable mini-universe expansion crystal. Closing his eyes, he focused on the state of the space within him. This time, the expansion crystal only opened a small area, but this space was completely independent and not connected to Su Chen's warehouse for storing items. It was like a room, just over a hundred square meters, divided into two rooms, a living room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. It had ample oxygen, gravity similar to Earth, and air pressure equivalent to the planes. Living area? Truly. Fitting. The previous portable small universe can be roughly referred to as the time-stopped warehouse area and the primitive planting area with no living facilities or living space. Although the primitive planting area has sufficient oxygen, the air composition seems to have subtle differences from Earth, more suitable for plant respiration than animals. However, the living area is different. Here, there is air with a composition close to Earth, as well as supporting living facilities. I just don't know where the air here comes from, whether it will be exhausted. But occasionally used to store a little fox, it is enough. It's strange to say that newborn young animals should grow very fast, but the little fox has only just opened its eyes now, and its size has not changed at all. It is still the size of a palm that can be easily carried in a pocket or hidden in hair. It breathes the air here all year round without finishing it. You can stay here if you want. Su Chen took the little guy into the living area. Obviously, the little guy was not happy. Once Su Chen left, it would cry non-stop. Well, even Pikachu doesn't like poke balls. The living area had to be used as a temporary storage option, and most of the time this guy had to be carried in a pocket. Taking the little fox out of the living area, the little guy lightning fast hid in Su Chen's hair, only revealing the tip of its snowy white tail like a periscope to explore the surroundings. Su Chen shrugged. Ignoring this creature, Su Chen started the final live broadcast. As soon as the broadcast started, it caused a sensation again. Damn, are you a special forces king, streamer? So cool. Taking down three assassins barehanded. But you punched people so hard they flew away. It's too fake. I knew it was a movie shoot. How come so many people think it's real footage? The streamer's secretly shooting movies without telling us. What movie shoot? That's really footage. 
Su Chen was speechless, it seemed that the video of the hotel fight from the day before had leaked. He could only throw up his hands, I was scared that day, three people with guns rushed in, luckily I was an athlete. So you're an athlete, that makes sense. Last time a Siberian tiger pounced on me head on, I slid and sent him flying two stories high, stumbling away, because I'm an athlete. Last time the planet devourer invaded earth, luckily I'm an athlete, I punched him into atoms. Ha <laughs> ha, the invincible devourer uncle got taken out again. Su Chen smiled and started today's nonsense. You can look up now, tonight is the first time we've seen year, but not the last. On the night of New Year's Eve, the small asteroid will reach its closest point to Earth, which is the best viewing distance. But I don't recommend going out to watch, because it will be very cold. Of course it's cold in the dead of winter. Don't drink freshly boiled water directly, because it's very hot. The streamer is a master of nonsense literature. Su Chen didn't bother to explain further. When year arrives, people will understand that every word he said had a hidden meaning. This winter will be especially cold, here are some tips for keeping warm. Do we need you to teach us how to keep warm? Just wear more clothes and turn on the heater. Tip 1, do not enshrine deceased relatives at home. It's best to keep a distance from the memorial hall and cemetery, this will keep you warmer. Tip 2, if conditions allow, you can enshrine a statue of Xitagarbha Bodhisattva at home. Streamer, are you crazy? Everyone knows you absolutely cannot enshrine a statue of Xitagarbha Bodhisattva at home. Yes, we also have this saying. Xitagarbha Bodhisattva is the Bodhisattva in charge of hell. If you enshrine Xitagarbha Bodhisattva at home, what are you turning your home into? A pit. This streamer is too misleading. Suchin still didn't bother to explain, and continued, the last suggestion, seal the doors and windows with tape, if the room is too small, prepare an oxygen machine in advance at home. On the 1st and 15th of each month, even if you suffocate, don't go out at night or open the doors and windows. This one is much more important than the previous two. It's getting more and more ridiculous. Do you call this a popular science anchor? The anchor is getting more and more excessive. This is already in the realm of supernatural powers. Supernatural powers? No, that's just a form of life that we temporarily cannot understand, a kind of quantum biology. Before entering the electrical age, people also regarded thunder and lightning as the power of gods. The so-called supernatural powers are just things we cannot understand, and in the future, all of these can be explained. Furthermore, Su Chen continued to explain a lot of basic knowledge that will be used in the future. Is it an illusion? Why does the anchor seem a bit rushed today, speaking faster? It's not an illusion, the anchor is indeed talking a lot today. I haven't fully digested the previous segment and he's already talking about the next one. It feels like a farewell message. Once again, I kindly remind all students, when taking notes, remember to be comprehensive. Don't just take notes on what you think is useful. Otherwise, you may overlook the most important knowledge point. At night, ending the last day of live broadcast, Su Chun ordered another glass of gin and quietly sat in front of the bar. The experiences of these days have been magical. Originally, he thought he would have to wait until after the astronomical summit to become famous, but unexpectedly, due to some mysterious operations by dog parents, he has already trended several times ahead of schedule. It's difficult to become famous in the internet age, yet it's also simple. The difficulty lies in there being too many humans, and one's voice can easily be drowned out by the voices of the masses. But it's also simple, simple in that as long as there's gossip to consume, one will quickly be pushed to the forefront by the gossiping masses. But recently, there's just been too much gossip. Su Chen squinted his eyes, sensing a figure quietly approaching not far behind him. This is already the tenth general, all the previous generals have died halfway for inexplicable reasons, their actions interrupted. The current 10th general stands out as someone who doesn't believe in superstitions. He <laughs> he, I have already surveyed this place in advance, even had an electrician scout and inspected in advance, the cleaning lady also confirmed that there's no slippery water or banana peels on the ground, no poisonous snakes or scorpions, no sudden appearance of a brown bear or Siberian tiger, and the chandelier above absolutely cannot suddenly fall. The 10th general is full of confidence. No one has tampered with this place, this scumbag also doesn't have any accomplices lurking nearby. In the live camera, he didn't move at all, just sat obediently at the bar counter, it's impossible for him to have had time to set up the scene. You can't escape. Watch this time, I'll make you infamous. A hot buzz bang, a drone suddenly crashed through the glass and slammed into the general's forehead. Su Chen glanced at the general and couldn't help but sigh, youth is good, able to fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Another glass of gin, on the rocks. The bartender was already used to it. In his view, every night when Su Chen comes to drink, at least one unlucky female customer will be sacrificed, and a random item in the bar will be damaged. 
The owner is considering whether to put Su Chen on the blacklist, banning him from entering, otherwise the repair costs will be unbearable. Those who like Jin are indeed monsters. The bartender shook his head. In the distance, Ouyang Baidian, who once again planned this failed operation, looked like a madwoman. She had her hair in a messy bun, her eyes filled with resentment and dark circles. As an active member of the Megalia Forum, she had countless experiences of destroying male lives. She even planned an activity that caused an elementary school teacher to be embroiled in a scandal, leading to his downfall. Finally, she successfully forced him to commit suicide to prove his innocence. That was her proudest achievement, and she firmly believed she was ridding the world of a scourge. But this time, even if her feet were almost turned into pulp, she couldn't kick Su Chen, the ironclad. The generals seemed to be cursed, or perhaps this guy had some kind of unlucky aura. Whenever someone got within 10 meters of him, the generals would inexplicably fall flat on their faces. Ouyang Baidian was going crazy. She watched helplessly as the generals in the group lost their color one by one, and the enthusiastic fighters in the group became fewer and fewer. Anxiety, hatred, torment kept her awake at night, making her look haggard. She had to make Su Chin pay. A painful price. Just as she was racking her brains to devise a malicious plan, a figure that Ouyang Baidian had been thinking about for a long time suddenly appeared. First General of the Sky, Zhao Yuancha. I'm out of prison, my fellow fighters. Zhao Yuancha has been released on bail. Of course, as a suspect charged with fraud, her movements are still restricted, but she can temporarily leave prison. When the court's verdict comes out, if she is found guilty, she will have to go to prison. What's going on, Yuancha hasn't spoken these days, and everyone doesn't know you went in. It happened suddenly. Zhao Yuancha quickly typed on her phone, my phone was confiscated these days, and I don't know what's going on outside. My parents aren't answering my calls either. Didn't the person who bailed you out tell you? What's wrong? Your parents were also implicated and put in, now your mom has been released, and your dad has been sentenced as the mastermind, awaiting the court's verdict. Currently, it looks like at least three years of imprisonment. Zhao Yuancha almost crushed her phone. Why? Who did this? Her hands were trembling as she typed. At the same time, she looked up, her eyes almost spitting fire as she stared at the man in front of her. Why didn't you tell me? Zhou Xiaodong lowered his head timidly under her glare. I was afraid you'd be upset. Who did this? Su Chen, he came to your doorstep to ask for a divorce, and your parents edited the surveillance footage at the door. They edited it a bit too forcefully, and he was sent in on charges of spreading rumors. This bastard. Animal. How could he be so malicious? At this moment, Zhao Yuancha had no idea why Su Chen went to divorce, it was because of the trouble she caused that day. If she hadn't caused trouble, Su Chen might have forgotten about his parents. But it was she who reminded Su Chen that Zhao Mengyan's family had several animals running free, so Su Chen went to divorce and demanded the return of the betrothal gifts. Logically, it was she who sent his parents in, and they worsened their own sentence. Unfortunately, Zhao Yuancha never had self-awareness. She pushed all the blame onto Su Chen. I heard that kid recently made a fortune. Zhou Xiaodong began recounting what he heard at the last class reunion, Su Chen's extravagance that day left everyone speechless. Zhou Xiaodong was Su Chen's classmate and also Zhao Yuancha's lackey. Su Chen had found it unbelievable that the nearly 300-pound Zhao Yuancha had a lackey who was so devoted. This was not to discriminate against overweight individuals, but the suboptimal health status presented by excessively obese females made it difficult to arouse male sexual impulses. It was a selection instinct engraved in genes, and in conventional cases, there were more lackeys for slim, young, and green tea-like individuals. Later, Su Chen understood. Nowadays, anyone with a female could find someone to serve them. There were always people with heavier tastes. Zhou Xiaodong was one of those with heavier tastes. He had no resistance to the greasy fat. That kid not only bought a large amount of medicinal herbs like hundred-year-old ginseng, but also bought gasoline, batteries, and various other things piled up in the warehouse, with a total value of several tens of millions. How do you know? Shui Ran was very resentful after he messed up her work, and had been secretly inquiring about his situation. He bribed the warehouse manager, who gave him the information. This bastard has offended quite a few people. Truly a disaster, causing trouble everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. Zhou Xiaodong echoed repeatedly. Zhao Yuancha just couldn't understand. What is he buying those things for? Is he going to open a pharmaceutical factory? I don't know, that guy has been preaching about some doomsday theory lately. Maybe he's gone crazy, really believing that the end of the world is coming soon, and hoarding supplies like crazy. Is he insane? The world is so peaceful, it doesn't seem like the end of the world is near at all. Because of that small asteroid, there have been many foreign conspiracy theorists recently, also hoarding supplies. He might be just like those idiots. TSK. 
Zhao Yuancha fell into contemplation. Having once extorted a large sum of money from Su Chen and being crowned the first general in the group, she wasn't too stupid. Soon, she came up with a way to retaliate against Su Chen. Only a fool would put all his wealth into one warehouse, and even store a large amount of flammable and explosive materials in it. Hasn't he thought about what would happen if the warehouse caught fire and he lost everything? Zhou Xiaodong was shocked and quickly lowered his voice in fear, are you planning? Isn't that illegal? It's not illegal if no one knows about it. What, are you scared? Oh, I really misjudged you, I thought you were different from other men. I'm not. Men are most afraid of being told they can't do it, so Zhou Xiaodong hurriedly defended himself, I'm worried about you. Seeing the other party taking the bait, Zhao Yuancha began her performance. Ah, that bastard Su Chen has caused great suffering to our whole family, leading to our family's destruction. Such a bastard should not go unpunished, it's against justice. I don't want to make things difficult for you, you can go, I'll handle this myself, anyway, I might not necessarily get caught. As expected, Zhou Xiaodong looked worried. She could tell that Zhou Xiaodong was sincere towards her. So she had to make good use of this emotion. As for being moved? Heh, how could a sickle have pity on the chives? Xiaodong Gij, you should leave quickly. I'm glad to have known you in this lifetime, but unfortunately, I may never see you again. But, someone must punish those shameless bastards. Since heaven won't punish him, then let me do it. Even if it means death, I want this kind of scourge to pay the price. At this moment, Zhao Yuancha's face was shining with righteousness. It made Zhou Xiaodong dizzy for a moment, thinking that she was a kind, brave, and responsible girl. To protect her family, to eliminate the harm, she was even willing to take risks. Her soul was as beautiful as her appearance. Zhou Xiaodong's blood boiled. I'll go. Yuan Cha, you wait here, I'll go get him. Ah, how can this be? Xiaodong Ge, this is my mission. No, fool, how could I watch you jump into the fire? This kind of thing should be done by a man. I'll go. Zhao Yuancha tried to suppress the smile on her face. It's best to control these chauvinistic men, luckily most of the world's men are simple-minded fools. So she continued to act, squeezing out a few tears, sobbing, Xiaodong Ji, I can't, I can't let you go. This is clearly something I should do. Don't worry, just go home and wait. Zhou Xiaodong smiled confidently, and as you said, I might not necessarily get caught. After finishing this, I'll go hide in Myanmar for a while, don't worry, I'll be fine. Xiaodong Ji alright? Just go back and wait, don't go far, don't go far, wait for my victorious news. Zhou Xiaodong strode away like a heroic martyr. Zhao Yuancha cried for a while, then saw Zhou Xiaodong had gone far, so she calmly wiped her tears and played with her phone. Watch me perform, Su Chen is finished. Okay, unload the goods here. This was the last batch of goods ordered by Su Chen. He was not fixated on just Bai Chao Medicinal Materials Company. After the inventory of Bai Chao Medicinal Materials Company was sold out, he also contacted other medicinal material companies. Now, he had monopolized over 90% of the century-old ginseng, over 70% of cultivated snow lotus, and various rare medicinal materials with more than half of the total quantity. Done. Close the warehouse door, open all the crates, and search through each one. Soon, the warehouse was empty except for the crates. The items inside the crates had all been transferred to a personal pocket world, not even a leaf was left behind. Finally, I can comfortably lie down and enjoy my home. The supplies in my own storage space are enough to live for hundreds of years, enjoying the finest food, clean fresh water, and abundant entertainment wherever I go. Even on the moon, I can ensure the same comfort as at home, living extravagantly. Now, all that's left is a fortress as solid as a rock, to serve as my home base. However, the fortress has long been on the planning table, as soon as tomorrow passes, someone will naturally send a special car, escorted by a dozen well-trained armed personnel, to take me to that most secure fortress. Everything is progressing according to plan, but Su Chen never expected that there would be a big surprise waiting for him tonight. In the dead of night, Su Chen was awakened by a phone call. Boss Su. Hesitated the voice on the other end, something has happened. What? The warehouse is on fire. Su Chen was stunned for a moment, then almost burst out laughing. He had already purchased high value insurance. The lease of this warehouse, the insurance premium had long been included in the warehouse rent, it was mandatory. And at this moment, apart from the broken crates, there was nothing left in the warehouse, and everything inside had been burned to ashes and was unrecognizable. He would have no loss at all, and there was a good chance he would receive a huge compensation for free? Su Chen swore to the heavens that he absolutely did not intend to commit insurance fraud, but the insurance money was forced upon him, he had no choice. Which lucky star did this good deed? What about the things inside? Su Chen asked. The entire warehouse, everything has turned to ashes, there is nothing left. 
Who would do such a despicable thing? Su Chun angrily scolded. What are your warehouse security guards doing? Why are there so many cameras and yet someone can still set fire? When things are burned, you have to be angry, otherwise being too calm won't make sense. That bastard bribed the security guard, the guard didn't know he was coming in to set fire, so he let him in. Unexpectedly. Sorry boss Su, that person and the guard have been caught. The police are also here, do you want to come and see? Yes, I must see this. Let's see which lucky star it is. Zhou Shaodong? Su Chen looked in surprise at the disheveled arsonist in front of him. Through previous identification techniques on Zhao Yuancha, he had long known that Zhou Shaodong was the one with a unique taste for hot sheep. But he never expected him to go to such lengths for Zhao Yuancha. Ha, you have nothing left. Bastard, I have avenged Yuancha. Zhou Shaodong's expression was fanatical as he looked down on Su Chen with disdain. Su Chen rubbed his chin and petrified Zhou Shaodong with one sentence, Do you know what insurance is? The compensation amount is higher than the original value of the warehouse, thank you. Zhou Shaodong's brain froze. What made it even harder for him to accept was the next sentence, Did Zhao Yuancha not tell you that the intentional arson case involving tens of millions of assets is enough to eat a peanut, so she is absolutely impossible to accompany you, nor will she admit she was the mastermind. Are you surprised? Excited? Execution? No. This is impossible. You're lying to me. I just set a little fire. The fanaticism suddenly faded from Zhou Xiaodong's face, replaced by fear. He had always thought that even if he was caught for arson, at most he would be sentenced to a few years, and when he came out, he could still meet Zhao Yuancha and receive her gratitude and appreciation. In his imagined scenario, he had sacrificed so much for Zhao Yuancha, she would surely be moved and grateful, waiting for him to marry her. Little did he know, besides himself, he had not moved anyone and he would have to carry this regret to his death. Brother, you've already done your postgraduate studies and you're still so legally blind? Su Chen was speechless. Zhou Shaodong lowered his head in shame. The words of the police officer next to him almost felt like a death sentence to him. In your situation, you'll most likely have to take the blame, reveal the true mastermind, and provide evidence of their illegal activities unless. Unless what? Zhou Shaodong raised his head hopefully. Unless you can redeem yourself by confessing the real mastermind and presenting evidence of their crimes. Zhou Shaodong was torn between heaven and earth. He still held on to the fantasy of sacrificing himself for his loved one, believing it was only right. This sentiment was sure to move heaven and earth. No hope. Su Chen stretched lazily and yawned. You've all worked hard. I have important matters to attend to tomorrow, so I need to go rest. The insurance company was already conducting on-site investigations, and Su Chen didn't care much about whether or not he would be compensated. After all, he had already purchased everything he needed, and his personal space couldn't accommodate anymore. Insurance claims would take at least a few months to evaluate, and by then, that money wouldn't be of much use. I really have to thank you for this big fire. Su Chen patted Zhou Xiaodong's shoulder with a meaningful look. In fact, even if Zhou Xiaodong hadn't started the fire, Su Chen had plans to do so himself. After all, there were too many people who knew about his hoarded supplies, and if word got out, he could be targeted. It was better to burn it all down, destroy the evidence, and prevent anyone from targeting him. So, no matter how you looked at it, this big fire was a great thing for him. Another hidden danger solved. Gratitude. In short, it was gratitude. Gratitude to Zhao Mengyan's family, all of whom were good people. Without their plan, things wouldn't have gone so smoothly. Gratitude. Received 600 points of regret from Zhou Xiaodong, along with 600 strength and a deposit of 6 million. The Shangqing Astronomical Center was established in 2001, with its upper floor serving as the Shangqing Astronomical Data Analysis Center, making it the chosen venue for the summit. The Astronomy Summit had originally planned to invite two Nobel Prize winners to attend, one who made significant contributions in the field of gravitational waves in 2017 and another who released the first photo of the Milky Way's black hole in 2020. Unfortunately, both had prior commitments and couldn't make it. Although some of the most renowned figures in the industry didn't attend, the attendees at the Shangqing Astronomical Center were still top experts in the field, including the discoverer and namer of the minor planet Nian, Gan Shangji. This was enough to attract the attention of astronomy enthusiasts worldwide, especially those interested in Nian. The main purpose of this summit is to analyze the impact of the minor planet Nian on humanity as this is the first time in human history that we have come into such close contact with another minor planet. Half a year ago, various countries had already launched probes to analyze the gas composition on the minor planet. By now, there should be some feedback on the results, which will be shared and discussed at this summit. Once you're inside, don't talk nonsense. Lao Gao nervously glared at Su Chen. 
He had pulled some strings to get Su Chen a seat in the audience, and if Su Chen spread rumors on live broadcast, he would be in trouble. Gao, Su Chen took out a prepared reward and handed it to Lao Gao, don't open this box until New Year's Eve, and make sure not to lose it. What's this? Are you trying to bribe me? Lao Gao looked displeased. It's not a bribe. Just listen to me and keep it until New Year's Eve. I promise you won't regret it. Do you think you're Zhuge Lian? What kind of trick is this? Reluctantly, Lao Gao accepted it, thinking that if there were any valuable items inside, he would return them to Su Chen after the New Year. He believed that since the ticket was a gift to Su Chen, he didn't want any reward. But Su Chen didn't want to owe any favors, knowing that Lao Gao was in for a few stressful days. Hey, why are you giving me things at a time like this? Are you hiding something bad inside you? Lao Gao had a sense of foreboding. Don't worry, Su Chen smiled and walked into the venue, waving his hand to Lao Gao's back, you won't regret it. Received 100 points of regret from Gao Zheni. Lao Gao has already begun to regret. Upper City Observatory, Astronomy Summit Live Studio. So Mr. Gan Chongji, as the discoverer of the asteroid, why did you choose the word year to name it? I have explained this question many times. Asked this question again, the over 70-year-old Gan Chongji looked a bit helpless and tired. First of all, it is because it reaches its maximum perihelion time, according to calculations, it happens to be at the juncture of the old and new year, which is exactly at 2400 hours on the 30th day of the lunar new year. What else? Secondly, for the significance of the asteroid to all of humanity, it is like entering a new era. This is the first time that humanity has come into such close contact with another ancient planet. The mineral components we extract from the planet will help humanity gain a deeper understanding of the universe, even discover the origins of the universe and the Earth. It is said that the probes sent by various countries have all returned to Earth. How are the research results? This. Don Changji looked ashamed, unfortunately, all the probes malfunctioned and could not return. We underestimated the level of storm activity on the surface of the asteroid, which was much more severe than what the Webb Space Telescope observed, and our calculations were wrong. Have the reasons for the errors been found? Still looking. The Astronomy Summit has two stages. The first stage is where representatives from various countries freely exchange academic achievements. The second stage is the live interview and answering questions from the audience. The first stage has ended, and now it is the second stage. The studio's camera was cleverly positioned, with the camera facing the host and the asteroid's discoverer, academician Gan Chongji. And the year was suspended above the two of them in the night sky, also framed in the lens. The dreamy and magnificent long tail was captivating. Don Changji was a bit restrained, as a researcher accustomed to tranquility, he did not like crowded environments, nor did he like being in the spotlight of many people, being scrutinized. Especially when the host's questions were so uninteresting, he was already thinking of slipping away. The host also noticed Gan Changji's restlessness and quickly moved on to the next segment. Now we are entering the audience question segment, there is a little girl over there who has been raising her hand for a long time, let's have this audience member ask the first question. Mr. Gan Chongji, there is one thing we have been unable to understand, the Hubble Space Telescope was able to observe galaxies 129 to 134 billion light years away, which far exceeds the observation distance of the solar system. But we only discovered the planet year this year, and when it was discovered, it had already arrived in the solar system. Can you explain if it has any special properties that have evaded our observation? The answer is simple. Hearing another basic question, Gan Chongji forced a smile. The distance you provided is the data of the Hubble observing stars, because stars can provide a large amount of visible light and ultraviolet light, which are the wavelengths that Hubble can collect. But planets do not emit light, so observing planets can only be done using the transit method, that is, judging whether an asteroid has flown past it by changes in the star's brightness, but this method has many flaws. The latest Webb telescope can collect light in more wavelengths, with observation capabilities far superior to Hubble. It was only after the Webb Space Telescope was launched that humanity gained the ability to directly observe distant planets, and year was discovered in this way. Thank you for clarifying. Satisfied with the answer, the audience member sat back down. Then the host selected the second audience, the third, the fourth. The questions became more and more amateur, causing Gan Changji to gradually yawn and struggle to stay awake. Suddenly, a voice came from the audience, Mr. Don Changji, if an asteroid exceeds the Roche limit and is torn apart to form a ring around the Earth at its maximum approach, what impact would it have on the Earth? What a bizarre question. Don Changji raised his head speechlessly, finding this question even less professional than the previous ones. The host quickly intervened, Sir, please ask questions in order, this round of questioning has not started yet. Su Chen's arms were sore from being raised, 
but the host deliberately ignored him, pretending not to see. Su Chen strongly suspected that Lao Gao was afraid of him causing trouble and had arranged something with the host in advance. But he couldn't wait any longer, as the live broadcast would soon end. Mr. Gan Chongji, have you calculated the Roche limit of the asteroid? Su Chen ignored the host and continued to ask. Gan Chongji smiled, of course, we have calculated it. First of all, it is impossible for it to exceed its own Roche limit. Even at its closest point, it is 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. The Earth's gravity is simply not enough to capture it, let alone tear it apart. So, how do you determine its density? And how do you determine its mass? It's simple, we calculate the mass by the degree of disturbance to its orbit by Jupiter, and then calculate the density based on its size. What is the degree of disturbance? Almost zero, which means its mass is large, so it is not disturbed by Jupiter even when close to it. This allows us to estimate its minimum mass. Then, based on the minimum mass, we can calculate its minimum density, and from there, we can determine the minimum Roche limit at which it would be torn apart by Earth. So, it's all estimation, right? No one can give a definite answer, but my calculation method is definitely correct, and we can be absolutely sure that the Earth is safe. Don Chongji's response was firm and confident, stemming from his years of accumulated knowledge. He could take full responsibility for this answer, and bear all consequences if anything went wrong. Then here's a question, Su Chun chuckled, what if the mass of this celestial body is zero? After ha, the entire studio erupted in laughter, even the host who was trying to maintain composure couldn't hold back, except for two people. One was Su Chen. The other was Gan Chongji. Sir, pfft. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it, the host tried to regain her composure, but her voice still trembled with suppressed laughter. We all know that the mass of such a large celestial body cannot be zero, what you said goes against common sense. After all, it was a live broadcast, so her language remained restrained, without resorting to calling Su Chen crazy on the spot. Assuming the mass is zero, according to the universal law of gravity, the gravitational force it experiences would be zero, and it would not be disturbed by other planets. With zero mass but volume, its density would be infinitely small, and with infinitely small density, the Roche limit would be infinitely small meaning it would be torn apart at any moment. This idea was too crazy, and full of loopholes. The host immediately countered, so, according to what you're saying, such an object simply cannot exist. Its Roche limit is infinitely small, it should have been torn apart by any material long ago. It has not been torn apart because its mass is zero, it has not been affected by any external gravitational force, and the premise for being torn apart by gravity is being subject to gravity. This sounded like a paradox, not only against common sense, classical mechanics, but also against intelligence. Sir, the question you raised seems to no longer fall within the realm of astronomy, the host gently issued a warning, this is an astronomical venue, please do not ask irrelevant questions and disrupt the order. As the host's voice fell, Gan Chongji suddenly raised his head. While everyone was laughing wildly, Gan Chongji felt his drowsy brain suddenly filled with energy, immediately drawn to this crazy possibility. He liked those strange and crazy questions, even if they seemed foolish, as many new discoveries stemmed from breaking common sense with foolish thinking. People once found it hard to accept that there was no God in the world. Of course, liking aside, science is a rigorous discipline, and Gan Chongji had to refute the contradictions in Su Chen's words. Standing up, he responded with a sharp gaze, even if it is not affected by gravity, wouldn't it be hit by a meteorite during its flight? With zero density, it should disperse upon impact. And with zero mass, all its quantum particles scatter in all directions at infinite speed. Such a thing should not exist. Academician, you cannot view a group of quantum bodies with classical mechanics thinking, especially a group of quantum particles with infinitesimal mass, they are so small that they do not exist, so they will not collide with any existing matter. You yourself said they do not exist at all. If they do not exist, we should exclude them from consideration. Don Chongji seemed to end the debate with a single sentence. However, Su Chen just smiled slightly, those probes did not crash, did they? Don Chongji's eyes widened suddenly. That's not true at all, do not spread rumors. Don Chongji's expression suddenly became serious. The fact that the probes did not crash was the biggest secret tacitly acknowledged by the Global Space Agency. Yes, the statement that all probes crashed was nonsense. During the recent summit with representatives from other countries, all countries coincidentally claimed that the probes had crashed. At that moment, Don Chongji understood that he was not the only one encountering paranormal events. In fact, the probes had safely reached their destination long ago, but upon arrival, everyone was horrified to discover. The asteroid had disappeared. Yes, it was like entering a realistic 3D projection, where before landing, 
one could see a vividly huge planet, but upon landing, it turned out to be empty. The probe passed through without touching any substance. The space agency is currently investigating the cause of the failure, speculating that it was a coordinate positioning error caused by gravitational lensing, as gravitational lensing distorts the path of light, creating phenomena similar to mirages in space, leading the spacecraft astray. But, how did he know all this? Don Chongji's gaze became solemn. This news was top secret, for any country. Yet now, he had revealed it in a global broadcast. What was his purpose? Was he a spy for another country? To probe into the progress of Dong Heng's exploration? And to disrupt the information flow? However, Su Qin did not continue to dwell on this topic, but suddenly mentioned another seemingly unrelated matter. In 1952, the Palomar Sky Survey observed three strange stars, these three neighboring stars disappeared simultaneously within an hour, and the reason for their disappearance has yet to be found. The life cycle of stars is often measured in billions of years, so an hour is like a moment for a star's life cycle. Therefore, for three closely spaced stars to disappear simultaneously within an hour is a very terrifying thing. This implies that they were likely influenced by the same external force, causing them to extinguish simultaneously within an hour. The event in 1952 was probably a virtual shadow refracted by gravitational lensing, Gan Changji explained, in fact, it was just one star, but its light was distorted by gravity, so it was refracted into three. We just happened to witness the end of a star's life. What if it's not? Hmm. What do you think? Gan Changji asked. Su Chen pointed behind Gan Changji to the bright planet outside the window with a dreamy long tail. Gan Changji smiled, a planet cannot determine the life or death of a star. Unless it's not really a planet. Your imagination is good. But it's impossible, it's pseudoscientific thinking. This is indeed pseudoscientific thinking, even if Gan Changji calculates the answer in the future, no one will believe it. Until those three missing stars were thrown into the solar system. But you are aware of the messages sent back by the probes, you know that it's not a gravitational lens. Su Chen calmly stared into Gan Changji's eyes, if you want to know what it will bring to Earth, I can tell you, it will only bring regret. There's still time to prepare now, find its true position, the year beast fears firecrackers, firecrackers cannot kill the year, but can keep us safe for a year. Gan Chongji smiled, I don't take a break on New Year's Eve, and firecrackers are not allowed within the third ring road. Gan Chongji knew what Su Chen meant by firecrackers, but he had to play dumb. He absolutely could not admit in public that the probes had failed, as it would cause too much suspicion and panic. The camera turned to the live broadcast platform, no longer focusing on Su Chen. Without the protection of the camera, Su Chen knew they were going to take action. Because what he had said, about the truth of the probes, had crossed a red line. Stop your rumors immediately and come with us. Several police officers approached, grabbing Su Chen's arms from both sides. Su Chen smiled apologetically at the two. Sorry. With a swing of his arm, he pushed away the surrounding police officers and leaped from the audience seat straight onto the live broadcast platform. Ah! The host screamed in horror. But Su Chen didn't intend to harm her. He just stood in front of Gan Chongji. Tonight, three artificial satellites will fall, landing in Arizona, Mumbai, and London respectively. Two are SpaceX's Starlink satellites, and one is a telecommunications satellite. You should ask SpaceX for more detailed real data and reapply for the right to use the Webb telescope to locate its true position. Don't skimp on the firecrackers. You're crazy, Gan Chongji said, retreating in panic. I have no say, but you are different. You are its discoverer, your words carry enough weight. Help! Security! Police! Gan Chongji shouted as he ran away. Puff sizzle his body tingled, and Su Chen casually unplugged the wires of the taser gun on him. The police officers were stunned. Could a taser gun be resisted like this? What kind of monster is this? Puff 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 helpless, seven or eight electric shocks hit Su Chen instantly. He staggered slightly, but still walked steadily towards Gan Chongji. Gan Chongji had never experienced such a situation before thinking that a spy from an enemy country was coming to kill him, trembling and shrinking in a corner. Puff 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 puff, the camera gave one last shot of Su Chen, his body full of wires, looking like a hedgehog. His legs were a bit numb, kneeling half on the ground, but his gaze was still fixed on Gan Chongji's eyes. Remember. My words. And those. Lessons. Only then did the police dare to come over and handcuff him, unplug the wires of the taser gun, and escort him to the next stop. It was the most secure fortress in Su Chen's plan, ranked in the top 10 in the world for defense, the upper city maximum security prison. Name. Su Chen. Why are you here? Spreading rumors, disrupting social order, espionage. Espionage? Are you a spy? Asking questions in public that shouldn't be asked. TSK, fill in the contact information of your family and your medical history. 
No family, no medical history, no family to rely on, friends will do. In case something happens here, it's convenient to have someone to contact. No, it's not necessary. Are you sure? Then you might suffer in the future. The significance of having relatives is not only to help with procedures when a criminal falls seriously ill. More importantly, it is to ensure the quality of life for the criminal. Although some prisons have canteens, the consumption limit is restricted, and the variety of goods is limited, only selling some daily necessities. The food in prison is far from delicious, and if relatives and friends bring some delicious food, it can satisfy cravings. If there are no relatives or friends, being alone and lonely, one can only swallow their saliva. Furthermore, relatives and friends have another important role, connections. When a family member is imprisoned, relatives can often visit with gifts through connections, asking the guards to take care of them more. This can effectively reduce the chances of being bullied in prison and can also lead to lighter work during labor reform. But if you have no power or connections, and no relatives or friends outside to help, then I'm sorry, there are too many dirty and tiring tasks in this prison. Your prisoner number is 13667. Remember the location of your room. After being searched, changing into prisoner's clothing, and walking through the prison gates. All right, Su Chun can smile brightly, as if he hadn't been imprisoned but returned home. He briskly walked into his cell for repeat offenders, confirmed there was no surveillance in the room, and after seeing only one roommate, he comfortably lay down on the bed. He took out his phone from the storage space, placed a plate of snacks on his chest, and started reading a novel while eating. The roommate's eyes widened. What kind of titanium alloy relationship is this? Can you bring a phone into prison? Why can you bring a phone? Ha! Huh? Where is the phone? Su Chen countered. How could you bring a phone into prison? No, did he hallucinate? The cellmate rubbed his eyes in disbelief. No, he's not crazy. This guy is really playing with a phone. Can I borrow it for a bit? The cellmate swallowed hard. He hadn't seen a phone in a year, and now seeing one was like seeing his own father. His addiction flared up intensely. Kid, are you running a fever? So you won't lend it to me? It's really a hallucination, you need to see a doctor. Fine. I'll ask you again, will you lend it or not? The cellmate stood up menacingly, if you don't lend it to me, I'll report you, neither of us will be able to use it. Go ahead and report me. Su Chen didn't care at all. Guard. Guard. This kid brought a phone in. Guard, come quick. What's all this noise? The guard walked over impatiently, what are you yelling about? This kid was just searched, how could he have a phone? He does. Look at him. Hey, what the heck? The cellmate looked puzzled. At this moment, Su Chen didn't have a phone in his hand, and the plate and snacks that were on his chest were also gone. He's hiding it. Go search him. I swear I'm not lying. With the cellmate's earnest assurance, the guard suspiciously came in to search Su Chen's clothes and bedding. As expected, there was nothing. Are you asking for trouble? I can help you scratch that itch. The guard, who had wasted so much energy, exploded in anger. If you report false information again, I'll send you to solitary confinement. The cellmate's eyes widened, he was dumbfounded. It's impossible. This, this, this is impossible. He clearly saw it with his own eyes just now. The guard slammed the gate shut with a bang and walked away. The cellmate turned around. He saw Su Chen holding a large roast chicken in his left hand, a half-meter-long giant grilled squid in his right hand, and a tablet computer on his lap, enjoying his meal and watching a drama series. Oh damn. Guard, look at him. Look at him. This kid is too arrogant. He's even eating grilled squid. And he has a tablet computer. The cellmate frantically pounded on the bars. The guard, full of anger, walked over. What tablet computer? Where is it? Cellmate turned around. He began to feel like he was really going crazy. Even if you miss grilled squid and tablets so much, you can't slander people like this. Su Chen stood up and stretched lazily, walked over and patted his cellmate on the shoulder. Accept the transformation well, you will have all these things after you get out. Don't be too obsessed and drive yourself crazy. The cellmate was at a loss for words. He really saw it. The fragrance of grilled squid was still lingering in the air. But smell cannot be used as evidence. After all, any smell could appear in the cramped dormitory. Could it be that he really had a mental problem? This is my final warning to you. If you yell again, you will be sent to the dark room. The prison guard warned the cellmate sternly. The cellmate collapsed to the ground, watching the guard leave. Okay, I'm sorry. It seems like I really... Oh damn. The cellmate turned his head and saw a steaming hot pot on the small table in front of Su Chen, with stacks of beef and mutton slices, abalone, and sea cucumber by the side. This is too much. You are too much. The two meter tall man was furious, his eyes red, possibly from the spiciness. Guard. Guard. This guy is eating hot pot in the cell. Really? 
I guarantee it with my life. Unfortunately, the story of the boy who cried wolf only works twice. No matter what he guaranteed, the guard would never come again. He could only smell the strong aroma and swallow his saliva. The coli in his stomach seemed to be facing a catastrophe, roaring loudly. No, he couldn't bear it anymore. The cellmate, full of killing intent, stood up and walked towards Su Chen, trying to forcefully grab a pair of chopsticks for himself. He punched towards Su Chen's face, trying to knock him out with one move and enjoy this feast alone. Unfortunately, he overestimated his own strength. Su Chen easily caught his fist and gently pushed it back. The cellmate almost flew out, bang, hitting the wall and seeing stars. He looked at Su Chen in horror. What the hell? Has science disappeared? Is this the power of humans? Maybe he was having too many illusions, turning a mud truck into a person? Just then, the mud truck actually spoke. What's your name? You are not worthy to know my name. Pa. The cellmate tried to spit into the hot pot, but Su Chen picked up a piece of cardboard and flicked it, hitting him in the face. Then you are not worthy to eat this meal. Su Chen calmly picked up a piece of beef, rolled it vigorously in the pre-prepared sauce dish, then stuffed it into his mouth, chewing crisply. MMM. Crispy and not fishy. Chewy but not tough, just right. The cellmate was so angry that his little pearls were about to fall. What to do? He couldn't win in a fight, but he didn't want to back down. And there was that power. Ha ah, ha, he must have gone crazy, ha ah, ha, received 100 points of regret from cellmate Chen Dali. That night was destined to be a sleepless one for academician Gan Chongji. After the astronomical summit, he returned exhausted to the research institute, staring blankly at the pile of data in the institute. The image of Su Chen half kneeling on the ground in the last moment kept appearing in his mind, as if he was repeatedly locking eyes with the other party, feeling the sincerity in the other's eyes. He had a guess that he was unwilling to believe, speculating that the other's last moment of kneeling was not because of the current of the taser gun. If the other wanted to resist, he could even endure more taser guns. Rather than physical exhaustion, it seemed more like trust and entrustment. This made Gan Chongji's mind a mess, sinking into deep anxiety. Because if what the other said was true, then, he dared not imagine the consequences. Right. He said three satellites will fall tonight. No, I can't believe him. It's impossible. It's impossible for three satellites to fall on the same day. Don Chongji anxiously paced around the research institute. Just then, the computer in the research institute suddenly sounded an alarm. An unidentified object has been detected entering the atmosphere, expected to crash near Mumbai. Top trending topic across all platforms, Su Chen has gone crazy. Su Chen may not be a big star, but with continuous exposure, his popularity is no less than A-list celebrities. So his performance at the summit yesterday immediately ignited the entire internet. I thought that guy was joking during the live broadcast, didn't expect he was serious. That's really scary, could he be a cultist? Everyone, rest assured, the official statement has debunked it. The asteroid poses no danger. Yesterday, Master Sangmao uploaded a video debunking the rumors overnight, saying that things like subterranean ghouls are impossible, and scolded that guy for maliciously creating fear, even worse than those marketing accounts promoting water monkeys. What's the deal with that detector? Did the asteroid crash or was it not found? It did crash, astronomical agencies worldwide have issued statements debunking it, so rest assured, he's just a clown seeking attention. Su Chan made a big impact last night. A person running into the Astronomy Summit's live studio to promote conspiracy theories, only to be arrested on the spot, truly a sight to behold. All the science popularizers didn't miss out on this hot topic, once again spreading the word about Su Chen's actions, becoming a global headline news. This asteroid has brought out all sorts of weirdos, a few days ago that cult called New Century was using the asteroid as a talking point, saying the end of the world is near, and only by becoming a follower can one be saved. These bastards who create fear and disrupt social order should be shot on the spot. Exactly. Scared the hell out of me, couldn't sleep all night, waiting for those three satellites to fall. Did they fall? No. I waited all night, there was no news of any satellite crashing. That settles it, this guy is a lunatic. Gao Zhengi and Nia Yao looked grimly at the comments from netizens. This is too much. And that bastard. I told him not to cause trouble, but he just wouldn't listen. Gao Zhengi angrily smashed his thermos. Nye Yao sighed, he's caused a huge stir, angered the entire internet, my mom can't even step in to defend him directly, can only ask the prison to take care of him. Damn, the more I think about it, the angrier I get. Gao Zhengi gritted his teeth, I see it now, this kid had an agenda from the start when he went to the summit, I shouldn't have given him that ticket. It's not your fault, you couldn't have predicted this situation. Calm down, calm down, don't let it affect your health. After closing the comments, 
Gao Jinni's emotions calmed down a bit. I just don't understand, he doesn't seem like a fool, why would he ruin his own life like this? I don't know either. Could he be related to those cultists from New Century? Helping them expand their influence? That doesn't make sense, a few days ago, New Century's people attacked my mom, he helped fend off the thugs, so he shouldn't have any connection with New Century. Then was he coerced by the cultists? Coerced by who? His family died a long time ago, his girlfriend broke up with him long ago. Then it's strange. Gao Zhengyi and Nia Yao racked their brains but couldn't figure it out. Just then, Gao Zhengyi saw the gift Su Chen had given him. He couldn't help but want to open it and see what madness Su Chen had come up with. But considering the fact that the other party was already in jail, and his last request before going to jail was to open the box on New Year's Eve, Gao Zhengyi hesitated for a moment. Forget it, anyway, it's only a few days until New Year's, I'll open it then. In the blink of an eye, half a month remained until New Year's Eve. The panic caused by Su Chen had briefly led to a small-scale phenomenon of zero-cost purchases, but soon, with the strong debunking efforts from various media outlets, everyone also forgot about the incident, simply treating Su Chen as a clown. Isn't it all over now? Another beautiful day. There is no news of satellite falling, nor any abnormal climate, everything is running in an orderly manner except for the astronomical observatories of various countries. Don Chongji's sweat dripped down his back as he fell into the chair, unable to believe the data in front of him. This is the 26th satellite to fall in half a month, and we have not yet found the cause of any satellite falling. SpaceX is also unwilling to provide detailed satellite data records, or they cannot provide them. Why? Because when the satellite enters the atmosphere, they activate the emergency plan, directly launching missiles to destroy the satellite debris in the air, in order to prevent news of mass satellite falls from affecting the company's stock price. Without the satellite returning to the ground, it is naturally difficult to investigate. Damn it! Bastard! Short-sighted! It's not just SpaceX, after that man caused a scene in the live broadcast room, all countries have adopted the same emergency strategy to avoid too much news causing public panic. Therefore, only two satellites successfully fell back to the ground, and the news of these two satellite falls was successfully covered up. Don Chongji personally investigated those two satellites, so he knew that the data provided by the two satellites was completely insufficient. 26 satellites fell in half a month, covering all models, which is definitely not a coincidence or a design problem, there must be a force that people have not yet discovered. And this force has even invaded the Earth's satellite orbit. For the vast and boundless universe, such a distance is already as close as it gets, and the crisis is imminent. Yet, the governments of various countries are surprisingly calm about it. Jefferson, how is it on your end? Don Chongji helplessly made a video call to his overseas colleague. Ha ha ha, holding a half-empty bottle in his hand, his face flushed, and his mental state seemed somewhat abnormal. What's wrong with you? Chongji, I just met with the president and attended an emergency meeting. Guess what happened? They simply don't give a damn. The Treasury Department is unwilling to allocate funds to support this research, claiming it's a lie by NASA to embezzle funds. The Department of Homeland Security also doesn't believe us, thinking that SpaceX intentionally caused the satellite falls to create this disaster, actually to incite public panic and unrest. As for the president, that old Biden is simply a stupid idiot. Alzheimer's? He asked me what to do about his next term if this is a hoax? He doesn't give a damn about the end of the world. He only cares if he's sitting on the Iron Throne when the end of the world comes. Don Chongji helplessly smiled, calm down. I'm going to contact the media, the public has the right to know, we must tell them how serious the situation is. Even if it turns out to be a false alarm, I must make everyone aware of the potential disaster that may come. No, that's too risky. No, don't you understand? We are likely standing at the crossroads of a new century, your and my choices may well determine the future direction of all humanity. We have no other choice. Don Chongji stared blankly at the phone. Suddenly, there was a loud noise on the other end of the phone. FBI, open the door. The door broke open, and the screen immediately turned dark. Don Chongji stared blankly at the screen of the phone that had gone dark. Jefferson didn't have a chance to meet the media. I have to do something. After a long time, he trembled all over, I have to do something. But the data provided by the satellites is very limited, he can't calculate anything and he can't produce any favorable evidence to persuade politicians from various countries to take action. The satellites fell as scheduled, everything is developing as that man predicted. Right. That man. Gan Chongji suddenly stood up. Where is Su Chen? I want to see him. He is in the upper city maximum security prison, and he has been charged with espionage. According to the normal procedure, if you want to see him, you have to submit an application to the prison first, and the quickest approval can come in half a month 
the assistant whispered. We can't wait for half a month. Gan Chongji suddenly let out a hysterical roar. He pointed at the year in the sky, in half a month, the year will reach its maximum perigee. We know nothing about its actual nature, its composition, and the true Roche limit. No one knows what will happen then. The only person who might know now is Su Chen. Ah, uh, you are an academician, you shouldn't have to wait for half a month. I want to see him now. In the upper city's high security prison, a satisfied burp echoed in the cell, causing Chen Dali to cover his ears in pain. Chen Dali couldn't stand it anymore. If he went crazy, then so be it, isn't it just schizophrenia? But how could heaven be so cruel? Why did it make him have hallucinations of his cellmate eating hot pot, barbecue, steak, squirrel-shaped mandarin fish, Buddha jumps over the wall, raw fish, seafood hot pot, moose cake, lamb skewers, soaked bread, roasted suckling pig, roasted whole lamb, and so on, torturing him? Even if he wasn't crazy before, he would definitely go crazy under this half-month torture. He lifted his head and glanced at Su Chen sitting with his feet up in front of the computer, with a little fox on his head watching anime together. He reluctantly looked away. Yeah, his mental illness was getting worse and worse. Prisoner number 13667. Su Chen, come out. Oh, again? Putting away the computer, the little fox hid in his collar, and Su Chen followed the prison guard to the visiting room. These days, he had to undergo routine interrogations every day, always asking the same questions. How did you know the satellite would crash? Su Chen's answer was as usual, in a dream. Who sent you here? What is your purpose? I sent myself here, the purpose. Su Chen shrugged and raised his eyebrows, to improve your quality of life, and also to improve my quality of life. I advise you to be honest. Don't play smart. I don't need to explain anything to you, Su Chen lazily leaned back in his chair. Whether you believe me or not, I can still live well, but you won't be the same. When did you join the new century? I didn't join. Still trying to be clever. Believe what you want. Anyway, Su Chen had an attitude of not fearing the consequences, and the interrogator couldn't find out anything. He had no family, no weaknesses, and his life experiences showed no abnormalities. In the past half month, the investigation into him had made no progress at all. He seemed completely unaffected by the desolation of the prison. He even seemed to have gained some weight. It was absurd. Just as Su Chen's interrogation today was as unproductive as ever and was about to end soon, a figure pushed aside the interrogator and sat in front of Su Chen. Only then did Su Chen become interested. The academician has finally remembered me. We have investigated your background, and you have not systematically studied astronomy, nor have you worked in an astronomical research institution. How can I believe your conclusions? Don Changji stared solemnly at Su Chen. Su Chen shook his head, I'll say it again, I don't care, anyway, whether you believe it or not, I can still live a comfortable life. Don't you want to save this world? Then why would you rather endure the world's condemnation and imprison yourself? I don't want to. That's not right. Don Changji vetoed, you started laying the groundwork over a month ago, making yourself the center of attention and gaining entry to the astronomical summit. You are doing everything you can to spread the message. You are doing your best to save the future. Believe what you want. Su Chen didn't care about his image in the eyes of the world. For someone who had died and experienced multiple apocalyptic despair, the opinions of the world had no effect on him. I can help you, Gan Chongzhu said. The three satellites you predicted have all fallen. If you are willing to provide more data to help me prove the anomaly of the year, you can clear your name. You don't have to suffer here, and you will become a hero to all mankind. A hero? Ha, Su Chen looked sympathetically at the old man in front of him. You are a hero, but what is the cost of becoming a hero? Because of the failure to detect the danger of the asteroid in the early stages, the immense guilt turned Gan Chongji into a mad scientist after the asteroid's arrival. After years of painstaking research, he finally found the disaster flash pattern of the asteroid, calculating the time, location, and type of each arrival. The last time, he calculated that three stars would descend on the solar system, and the Earth would be kidnapped into a terrifying four-body system, as if in ancient times before he shot down the nine suns. Enduring endless scorching until someone could shoot down the sun, he immediately announced the prophecy and was publicly executed on charges of spreading alarmist rumors. Even if you don't want to be a hero, you still want us to know something, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here, Gan Chongji pleaded earnestly, Mr. Su, Chongji here. I beg you. He even knelt down. Don't, I can't bear it, and I was going to tell you anyway. You didn't ask just now. Su Chen was speechless, if you want to know something, just ask. How can I answer if you don't ask me? Sir, you said earlier that we can determine the true position of the year through satellite data, but most of the satellites have been destroyed by missiles, 
leaving only two satellites successfully landed. What should we do? What? Only two left? That didn't happen before. It seems that a small butterfly flapped its wings slightly, and its own announcement caused panic in society. To prevent the spread of emotions, all parties chose to directly shoot down the satellites. Don't panic, there is still a way. First, we need to know the cause of the satellite's fall. Yes, this has been a point where there has been no progress from all sides, Gan Shangji nodded repeatedly, no one knows why those satellites suddenly fell. Not all collisions are visible to the naked eye, and not all collisions leave traces. The atmosphere burns the small dents on the satellite's surface, polishing the entire surface of the satellite, leaving no trace. You mean, collisions? Don Changji exclaimed, and, collisions caused by small, dense matter like gravel? Lunar magnetic ash, Gan Changji gasped. As the Earth's defense shield, the interference of asteroids first affects the moon. The moon becomes magnetized, and some magnetic dust on the moon's surface flies towards the Earth at a speed of over 15 kilometers per second, reaching the Earth's atmosphere in just six hours. This is, this is too absurd, Su Chen's words sounded like a fantasy to any scientist, and if he hadn't predicted the fall of the satellites, Gan Chongji would have thought he was crazy. At this point in time, you should already be able to detect a large amount of lunar dust in the Earth's atmosphere. And this lunar dust is still in a highly magnetic state. This magnetism will react to the direction of the asteroid, detecting the concentration of lunar dust in the air, excluding the interference of the Earth's magnetic poles, the strongest concentration after the concentration around, is the real position of the asteroid. Then compare the degree of concentration decay in the surroundings, draw an angle, and you can determine its distance from the Earth. Then fire fireworks, conduct a no-dead angle airburst at a height of 100 kilometers above the asteroid, and the magnetic field anomaly caused by the airburst can delay the asteroid's planned progress. Damn it! Don Chongji trembled all over. This is too damn crazy. He must be crazy to come to this guy in front of him for help and believe in this crazy plan. This is staking his entire career, no, his entire life. It is possible that you have gone mad and cannot turn back. I will calculate now. If your theory is correct, I will immediately announce the results and apply for action. Go for it. 14 days later. New Year's Eve, 16 hours left until the arrival day. Name. Don Changji. What did you do to get in here? Spreading rumors, disrupting social order, espionage. Oh, isn't this the great scientist who discovered the year? How did you end up here with the other 500,000? Fill in the contact information of your family members and your medical history. Don Changji lowered his head and mechanically filled out the form. Accept the transformation well, start anew honestly. Do you hear me? Go! Take the great scientist to his cell. Don Changji, at this moment, looked as withered as a dead tree. Hello! Passing by Su Chen's cell door, Su Chen greeted him. Don Changji looked at Su Chen and suddenly burst into tears. I'm sorry. He collapsed in guilt, I failed. They, they don't believe me at all. Even though I have calculated everything, no one believes me, not a single one. No big deal. Su Chen picked his teeth, misfortune may be a blessing in disguise. Coming here is not a bad thing for you, but, the year, and our, our future. You can't bear that weight, and neither can I, no one can. Don Changji was taken away. Su Chen acted as if nothing had happened, lying down to play with his phone. Tonight is New Year's Eve. I wonder what the theme of the last spring festival gala in human history will be. Let's make dumplings together. In prison, inmates can celebrate New Year's Eve because they get a holiday starting from New Year's Eve until the third or fifth day of the Lunar New Year before returning to work. It's much more comfortable than being outside with the cattle and horses. On New Year's Eve, inmates can put up couplets and make dumplings under the organization of the prison guards. During the day, there are some performances, somewhat like a company annual meeting or a school party. Family members can also visit the prison during the new year to have a reunion meal together. Mom, Dad. Inmates gradually left their rooms, embraced their families, and headed to the cafeteria table. Even roommates like Chen Dali were kissing their girlfriends. Well, he won this round by a small margin. The strong New Year atmosphere permeated the prison, probably a mix of the aroma of meat filling in the steamer and the noisy crowd. When Su Chen was young, he hated these noises, finding them unbearably loud. Now, he looked at the sumptuous feast in front of him but couldn't bring himself to pick up his chopsticks. Ying the little fox, on the other hand, was busy. Its palm-sized body moved between the plates, sniffing at each dish, sometimes frowning, sometimes nodding. Finally, it came to its most satisfied dish, picked up the plate with its small mouth, and dragged it in front of Su Chen with effort. Ying, Ying, this aroma, just this one. Its expression seemed to convey this meaning. 
Su Chen couldn't help but smile, what you think is good, I may not necessarily like. The little fox had been weaned and could enjoy other foods. Su Chen simply tied a napkin around its neck, you eat by yourself. Ing. Alright, alright, I'll try it too. Sitting opposite each other across the table, one human and one fox. Hmm, this dish does seem really good. Luckily, he bought plenty at the time, should be enough to eat until he's full. Enjoying the New Year's Eve dinner with the fox, a staggering figure approached, sitting dejectedly in front of Su Chen. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I have let down your trust. Don Changji covered his face and cried in pain. Hey Su Chen waved his hand nonchalantly, handing Don Changji a pair of chopsticks. Don't be sad, I never trusted you anyway. No one can resolve this matter, relax your mindset, and just eat heartily. Don Changji is also a person who celebrates the new year. This scientist, who discovered a small asteroid and named it, is now isolated and estranged. His wife and daughter are extremely disappointed in him, as he has abandoned all his academic positions and shattered his reputation, even ranting and raving in public. It's strange, when a man is devoted to his career, his loved ones complain that he neglects his family. But when a man loses his career, he loses all value in the eyes of his loved ones. So, reincarnation is a skill. Damn love. Su Chen clinked glasses with Gan Chongji. Gan Chongji, who had never touched alcohol in his life, now drank it all in one go. It was getting dark. In February, it gets dark in the city by half past five, and after dark, the traces of the new year once again become clear. I found its location. Don Changji angrily slammed the table, I clearly found it. Its true location is on the far side of the moon, so close to us. But they just refuse to act. Of course, nuclear bombs are not meant to save the world. Memories from a past life had long made Su Chen understand that the possibility of uniting the world was even lower than the possibility of being Qin Shi Huang. They say since it was my plan, we should bear all the expenses for the nuclear bombs. How many years of brain congestion does it take to say such a thing? I guess they say you are using various countries, trying to monopolize the minerals on the small asteroid. Damn it, the earth is almost gone. The earth is almost gone. Yet they still harbor suspicions, still harbor suspicions. Meat eaters are contemptible, unable to plan for the future. This saying never gets old. Beasts, bastards, short-sighted fools, all useless. Ah, right, right. Su Chen just smiled and poured wine, who cares? Let's live our lives. Can we still live? Gan Chongji looked sad. Don't worry, you won't die, an object with zero mass won't directly smash the earth to pieces. The impact will come bit by bit, you'll easily live to 80. What kind of impact will there be? What impact? We'll know tonight, won't we? Gan Chongji's expression turned serious, then I can't drink tonight, I have to stay sober. Su Chin shook his wine glass, indicating he didn't care. The little fox dragged a wine glass over to clink with Su Chen, but Su Chen mercilessly took the glass away, tapped its head, little brat, no drinking for you. The little one ran off in grievance to nibble on the tablecloth. Your prison life seems quite comfortable. Can you even keep pets? Gan Chongji was surprised. They're not pets, Su Chen said seriously. All right, can you spoil it a bit? What do you think will happen tonight? Have you watched my live broadcast? Su Chen asked back. You mean those fanciful videos? Most of those videos have been banned, now removed from major video platforms, basically unsearchable. Su Chen said without faking. The things talked about in those videos could save lives at critical moments, yet they were banned like that. But some are being circulated privately, I've seen some of them. Are you saying who will appear tonight? Ghouls? That's impossible. Even if it really exists, how could it come from Saturn 2 to Earth? There are billions of kilometers between them. What do you think is behind the new year? Gan Changji was stunned. Then he shivered with a cold chill. You mean, those. Do you like watching meteor showers? Of course, it's a beautiful astronomical spectacle. You won't like it anymore in the future. Don Changji stared blankly at the sky. Sensing that prison guards were coming outside, Su Chen casually packed up the table and drinks. Both of you, come on, go to the activity room, get ready to watch the Spring Festival Gala. Watching the Spring Festival Gala is mandatory in some prisons, Su Chen understood it as the most brutal torture in the prison every year. Of course, for most prisoners, having a TV to watch is already good, so the atmosphere in the activity hall is quite cheerful. Su Chen saw his cellmate, and the moment the cellmate saw Su Chen, his face fell. I saw that person from the hallucination again. Chen Dali held his head in terror, don't come over. Help, he now thinks that Su Chen is entirely illusory. He has been checked many times in the medical room for his mental condition. But there was no issue. The doctors are starting to have problems with their mental health. Is it that pretty boy? 
Apart from Chen Dali, there is also a group of unfriendly Southeast Asian faces in the prison. These people are a gang of scammers, ruthless and considered the prison bullies. For some reason, they glanced at Su Chen. In addition, there is another group of criminals covered in religious tattoos, speaking slowly and methodically. They belong to the New Century sect, and even after being caught, they remain unrepentant, speaking nonsense. Their eyes often sweep over Su Chen, and the leader even bowed to Su Chen. It seems that they believe Su Chen's mental state is very close to theirs, so they treat Su Chen as one of their own. However, the end is not today. The leader of the sect said solemnly to Su Chen, Your prophecy is wrong, the end of the world is in the future, you must convert to my religion to reach the other side of the new century in the apocalypse. No thanks, bro. Su Chen pulled a small stool, gritted his teeth and sat in front of the TV, looking determined. He is prepared for the torture. Gan Chongji sat next to Su Chen, close to the window, his gaze fixed on the year in the sky. Good evening, fellow inmates, now let me deliver the New Year speech. The juvenile who performed the best in reducing his sentence last year stepped onto the stage to begin the positive energy speech before the party. Su Chen listened with relish. Then came the annual outstanding prison guard speech. Then the prison leaders. The prison cafeteria chef. Even the police dogs barked twice. They endured for a full two hours, enduring until the spring festival gala began, and then these people left the stage. Su Chen immediately realized that the happy time was over, and the torment began. Skits that were ten times more embarrassing than the speeches began to play on the screen, interspersed with things like e-commerce QR code red envelopes, completely unrelated to the people in the prison. Su Chen felt like he needed a ventilator. They endured for a full four hours, enduring until 11.59. Boom! Fireworks outside the window began to bloom. Because the prison is located in the suburbs, fireworks are allowed in the suburbs, so they can watch fireworks in the distance. The dazzling firelight illuminated the night sky, leaving trails of smoke in the sky, becoming more dreamlike under the contrast of the Diderot effect. The most dreamlike scene was after the fireworks exploded. Ha! Huh? What's that? Haven't been out for a few years, are the fireworks this advanced? A brilliant light streaked across the distant night sky. It's a meteor. A meteor shower. Someone cheered. So beautiful. Like a real-life version of the comet in your name. Then, the meteor streaked straight into the distant horizon, exploding with even more intense light. The distance was as bright as daylight. People who didn't understand were still cheering, counting down along with the host on the TV. The New Year's bell is about to ring, let's welcome the arrival of the New Year together. 10 and suddenly, the sky was filled with countless bright lights. 9 with each countdown number, the lights in the sky became even more intense. 8 those lights were getting closer, and Gan Chongji began to recall Su Chen's prophecy. 7, 6, 5, the lights in the sky were as dense as raindrops. And those were definitely not fireworks rising from the ground. 4, 3, 2 rumble, the earth shook, and the whole world began to tremble. 1, happy new year. The firelight reached the ground. The end of the world has come. Year of Jia Chen, the first day of the lunar new year. The first year of the new era, January 1st, 001. As 1300 million people shouted out the first countdown of the new year. Fireworks bloomed in the sky, a special delivery arrived simultaneously along the Pacific coast of the Eastern Hemisphere. Boom! The intense firelight bloomed across the surface of the Eastern Hemisphere, and within the firelight, it seemed as if shadows were flying into the sky with the force of the shockwave, then spreading across the ground like raindrops. Wow, Dad, what kind of fireworks are those? They're so beautiful. Gao Jingyi stared blankly at the scene in front of him. Forty years of life experience told him that this definitely wasn't fireworks. Fireworks don't just fall from the sky, at the very least, there should be a process of ascending. And they don't explode on the ground. Something's wrong. Ah Hong, lock the doors and windows. Take Xiao Luo too, to hide in the bathroom. Bring all the food in the house. The bathroom had water pipes, with reinforced load-bearing walls on all sides, relatively safer compared to other areas of the apartment building, but not by much. The immediate priority was to figure out the situation. Lao Gao decisively called a familiar friend at the Astronomical Observatory. We're not sure what. Static. Is going on. Our radio telescopes. Static. Haven't detected any meteor shower warnings. The remaining. Communication satellites are also malfunctioning. Communication is likely to be cut off soon. What the hell are you guys doing? Can't you see the Earth is being blasted into a sieve? Where's our CNMD? CNMD is not a curse word. It stands for Chinese National Missile Defense, the Eastern Empire's missile defense system. We can't guide. Can't launch. None of US can launch. Beep beep beep. Communication cut off. 
Fortunately, the fiber optic cables are underground, so the internet signal is not affected at this time, and the Spring Festival Gala is still playing happily for families. Just then, the screen of the Spring Festival Gala suddenly shook violently. Boom! A fireball crashed into the CCTV broadcasting building, precisely hitting the live broadcast scene of the Spring Festival Gala. The huge impact blasted all the hosts and celebrities into the ruins, and thick smoke billowed at the Spring Festival Gala scene. Amidst a series of coughs, the live camera stayed on the ruins of the broadcast room. The rubble seemed to be trembling. Something was buried underneath, trying to break free. Whoosh! Roar! The smoke was too thick for the camera to capture the true face of the guy under the stone, only the sound of heart-wrenching screams and screams could be heard from the Spring Festival Gala scene. There was not just one of those things in the smoke. No one knew what was happening in the smoke, only the sound of sharp teeth tearing flesh, bones being chewed finely, and increasingly faint screams. Bang! A piece of limb was thrown in front of the camera. It was the famous host Chen Binang, but at this point, he was left with only Ning. Two-thirds of him were missing. Tear! The director finally remembered to cut the scene, and the TV began to play a cheerful New Year special advertisement. Soon, the advertisement disappeared, turning into a news report. Audience friends, please note that our TV signal has been maliciously invaded by foreign hackers, deliberately broadcasting bloody and violent scenes. Please maintain independent thinking ability, do not spread rumors, seeing is not necessarily believing. Tonight, a magnificent Virgo meteor shower occurred, but this time the meteor shower's density is high, and some areas may be affected by secondary disasters. Please do not go out to watch, immediately take shelter in nearby buildings, close doors and windows, and wait for the meteor shower to end. This news was set to loop mode, and there were no more substantial updates. Gao Jingyi swallowed his saliva. Virgo meteor shower? This is a damn hoax. This is a curse. Boom. Just as he was about to go out to see what was happening outside, the residential building where Gao Zhengyi was suddenly shook violently. He looked out the window. It turned out that a small meteorite hit the balcony of the neighboring house. Hiss roar. A strange roar sounded next door, followed by sounds of struggle and screams. Roll. Get out. Roll. Gao Zhengyi remembered that a young couple lives next door. At this moment, the man was swinging a mop, shouting angrily, while the woman was screaming. Click dash suddenly, after a collision, both fell silent. In the darkness, only the sound of chewing could be heard. And that chewing sound was just a wall away from Gao Zhengyi. Gao Zhengyi gestured for his wife and daughter in the bathroom to keep quiet. Fortunately, both of them were sensible, tightly covering their mouths and making no sound. Gao Zhengyi slowly closed the lid of his laptop, turned off all the lights in the room, leaving only a bright flashlight in his hand. He wanted to pretend that there was no one in the house to avoid attracting the attention of whatever was next door. Strangely, even though Gao Zhenyi had turned off all the lights in the room, there was still a source of light flashing. Especially after turning off all the other lights, in the darkness, that small light source became particularly noticeable. Damn! What the hell? It was a box on the desk emitting light. Gao Zhenyi remembered, wasn't that the gift box Su Chen gave him before going to jail? This guy is playing tricks on me. Gao Zhenyi wanted to cry but found himself suddenly alert, no. Damn it. No. New Year's Eve, midnight, the closest point of the year, and the end of the world. In an instant, Gao Zhenyi felt as if he had been electrified, his hair standing on end, his scalp tingling. Could it be that everything he said was true? It was a prophecy. He was a true prophet. This was the end of the old era and the first day of the new era. While half the world was being slaughtered, a tiny spark that no one paid attention to was quietly flickering. Gao Xingyi tiptoed to the desk, quietly picked up the gift box Su Chen had given him, and hid under the desk. Holding his breath, he slowly opened the lid of the box at a snail's pace, afraid of making any noise and alerting the monster next door. This. This is. As the gift box gradually opened, the light inside shone brighter, illuminating the entire room. At the same time, a strong fragrance began to fill the air. Bang! Before Gao Xingyi could see clearly, there was a violent impact on the room door. Clang! Tear! A sharper claw than a sickle easily pierced the poor security door, starting to tear apart the last barrier in Gao Zhenyi's home. Gao Zhenyi could already see the monster's eyes through the gap. Emerald green, like fireflies in a graveyard. Thinking of the horrific scenes from the Spring Festival Gala on TV, Gao Zhenyi instantly felt despair, frozen in fear, unable to move a muscle. Clang! Tear! The monster seemed to be laughing. The door had been brutally torn open, revealing its complete triangular head and shark-like sharp teeth. Tear! The fragile security door couldn't resist the tremendous force. Completely destroyed. Gao Zhengyi dared not look, only holding onto the box tightly, holding his breath, motionless under the desk. 
The sound of the creature's footsteps was very fragmented, indicating that it had more than one foot. d d d d dash the fragmented sound lingered in the room. Fortunately, it seemed that the creature's vision was very poor, as even though Gao Xingyi couldn't suppress the light from the box's gap, it didn't attract the creature's attention. How did this creature navigate its way then? Gao Xingyi couldn't help but wonder. Soon he found out. Roar crack, suddenly, a piercing sound wave emanated from not far away from the office desk, causing all the glass in the room to shatter under this high-frequency sound wave. Immediately, a sharp spike pierced through the office desk, protruding just one centimeter from Gao Xingyi's head. If Gao Xingyi hadn't instinctively lowered his head to cover his ears due to the pain of the sound wave, his brain would have surely exploded. The terror of death had never been so intense. He rolled out from under the desk, clutching the gift box in his hand, and ran towards the direction away from his family, trying to lure the monster out of his home. But he overestimated his speed. Clatter 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 roar. A huge shadow descended from the darkness. Don't touch my dad. Get lost, hiss, the bathroom door was kicked open, followed by a strong jet of water spraying directly onto the monster's body. Something strange happened, the monster actually let out an extremely painful howl on the spot. The areas touched by the fresh water quickly swelled into huge blisters. It actually works? The girl exclaimed in joy, immediately increasing the water pressure, that guy named Su Chen is amazing. Thanks to his live broadcast. Ha! Huh? Gao Xingyi had always been disdainful of chaos and disorder, so he completely ignored Su Chen's live broadcast, not taking in a single word. After being reminded by his daughter, he remembered, Su Chen seemed to have mentioned a monster called the Subterranean Corpse Eater. Because it lived in high salt environments, under the influence of osmotic pressure, that kind of monster was most afraid of fresh water. Watch me deal with it. The girl excitedly aimed a fierce stream of water at the monster. But this also drew the monster's full attention to her. The girl did not notice that the monster, in its struggle, had already reached near the water pipe. Bang! Amidst the commotion, the water pipe burst. The girl stared dumbfounded at the water pipe that had run out of bullets in her hand, frozen in place. Meanwhile, the enraged monster had already raised its scythe and lunged towards her. No! Gao Zhengyi went crazy. There are three situations that can best stimulate a man's potential. The first is when he sees a beautiful woman, strength fueled by hormones. The second is during a team fight, strength fueled by adrenaline. The third is when saving his daughter, strength fueled by all of the above. In that moment, all possibilities flashed through Gao Zhengyi's mind, fear no longer interfering with his thoughts. He immediately realized that he absolutely could not defeat the monster in front of him. So the only hope was Su Chen, the only human prophet who predicted everything that happened today, but ended up in jail. If that's the case, perhaps he also predicted the situation he was about to face. Buzz, without hesitation, Gao Zhengyi opened the gift box. A beam of light burst forth. The monster's body froze in midair when the light swept over it, then lost balance and crashed into the wall with a bang. Inside the box was a plant, a plant that Gao Zhengyi seemed to have seen before, but now could not recognize at all. A pure white lotus flower, delicate and small, about the size of two thumbs, was now emitting a dreamlike radiance. There was also a note inside the box. Eat it all. Simple and clear. Although he was somewhat worried that once he ate it, the light suppressing the monster would disappear, Gao Zhengyi still unhesitatingly stuffed the snow lotus flower into his mouth. From that moment on, he decided to fully believe in all of Su Chen's seemingly unreasonable decisions. Mumble, swallowed in one gulp. He didn't know how to describe the taste, as if every cell in his body was being strengthened, old ailments accumulated over the years were rapidly recovering at the speed of light. It wasn't just about health. There was also a new surge of power. That power was like a dragon swimming within his body, gathering unparalleled strength wherever it went in the blood vessels. He could control the dragon as naturally as his own limbs, as if it was innate, without any hindrance. At this moment, without the radiance of the snow lotus suppressing them, the monsters temporarily regained their mobility. But Gao Zhengyi had a clear realization. He didn't need to fear this guy anymore. The six-legged giant monster once again swung its scythe. Get lost! Gao Zhengyi roared, venting all his anger with the roar, while controlling the dragon to coil around his blood vessels and deliver a full-force blow forward. Boom! In the upper city's maximum security prison, in the activity room. The activity room, which had just finished watching the spring festival gala, fell into dead silence. Someone slapped themselves. After all, he had never seen such a terrifying spring festival gala in all his years, and couldn't help but wonder if he was still asleep. Everyone, return to your cells immediately. Now. A loud air raid siren sounded in the prison, its sharp and piercing sound evoking human instinctual anxiety. What's happening? Selmay Chen Dali couldn't help but ask. 
I don't know, maybe an air raid, you all go back first. The prison guard pulled out his gun, put away your tricks, walk straight ahead, back to your rooms. No one is allowed out without a broadcast. The prisoners were somewhat dissatisfied, as the current situation was clearly abnormal. If they were still confined to their rooms, they wouldn't even have a chance to hide in the basement in the event of an air raid. However, the guns were in the hands of the guards, and at this tense moment, the guards had even taken off the safety, ready to shoot any disobedient troublemakers. The prisoners could only comply. Uncle Gon, come to my room. Su Chen didn't wait for Gon Changji's reaction, he had already grabbed his wrist and pulled him into his cell. This, aren't we supposed to go back to our own rooms? Gon Changji was very nervous, afraid of being caught breaking the rules and getting shot by the guards. Getting shot is better than going back, trust me. Gon Changji had long believed. It was precisely because he believed that he had lost his prideful career, lost his family, lost everything, and finally put on a prisoner's uniform, becoming neighbors with Su Chen. He didn't mind believing again. Fortunately, the guards were preoccupied, and at this moment, gunshots continued to ring out from the prison walls. The guards seemed to be shooting at something. What are they shooting at? Don't worry about it. Help me seal the windows. Su Chen pulled out a roll of duct tape. Roommate Chen Dali also returned to his room, looking somewhat puzzled at the third person who had appeared in the room, feeling that the old man seemed somewhat familiar. You're in the wrong room. He stared warily at Gan Shangji. It's your illusion. Su Chen said seriously. Chen Dali thought for a moment, and then thought again. He grinned, who cares, he was already crazy, let's go for it. Quick, seal the windows. Su Chen kicked the duct tape to Gan Shangji. Why? Tonight is the first day of the month. So what about the first day? Don Changji was puzzled. Have you forgotten? Every first and fifteenth. It will be very cold. Before the words had even finished, a humanoid object fell from outside the window to the ground. With a crisp sound, it shattered into pieces. The impact of the fall caused the humanoid object to shatter into pieces far away, with the fragments flying to the windowsill in front of Su Chan and Gan Changji. This, this is. Don Changji staggered back in horror. Those were not ordinary fragments. Those fragments were clearly various human body organs. Among them were fingers, hair still attached to the scalp, and even a piece of a hardened scrubbing tool. I told you it would be very cold. Su Chen used titanium alloy sheets to block the grill door, and sealed off all the grill doors and windows, ensuring that there was no gas exchange between inside and outside. He then brought out a statue of Xitagarbha Bodhisattva and placed it in the center of the room. Alright, next, cherish the time when we still have access to the internet. The subterranean ghouls forage at night and burrow underground during the day, and by then, some areas underground fiber optic cables will have been gnawed to pieces by them. All mobile signal communication base stations are connected by underground optical cables, like a vast underground spider web, covering the entire shallow layer of the earth. If the optical cable is cut off, the communication base station becomes an isolated island, and the internet is no longer interconnected. As for satellite signals, if the satellites fall, what signals will there be? Don Changju stared fearfully and curiously out the window. Outside the window, the gunfire was intense, with the prison watchtowers continuously erupting with dense and fierce flames, and the soldiers' heavy machine guns were firing at full throttle, using the impact of bullets to repel whatever was outside the prison wave after wave. What are they fighting against? The curiosity of being a scientist made Gan Changji eager to rush out and see. Buzz. Su Chen brightened his phone. The review systems of major short video platforms were either down or gone, but before dying, they did something significant, they removed the need for video reviews, allowing everyone's videos to be published without review. As a result, the most brutal reality of this world emerged before everyone. That's not a meteor. Let me repeat, that's not a meteor. If a fireball falls near you, do not hesitate, run away immediately. Head towards where there are no fireballs landing. Ah, uh, most of the footage captures the final moments of life. Opening the video app, all you see are scenes of life and death separation. When have civilized modern people ever witnessed such a cruel purgatory scene? The rapid spread of information allows all of humanity to clearly see every disaster happening on this planet. It also brings a name back into the public eye. Brothers and sisters, go find fresh water. I used fresh water to spray the monster according to Su Chen's method, and the monster ran away. Don't forget to seal the doors and windows, today is the first day of the month. People then remembered that seemingly a month before the beginning of the apocalypse, there was a man considered a madman who predicted everything that was happening today. However, at that time, no one took his words seriously. They even treated him as a crazy rumor monger harming society and locked him up in prison. Can't find Su Chen's video. His account has been banned too. 
Is there anyone kind enough to have saved his live broadcast video? Begging for Su Chan's live broadcast video. I can offer a set of rooms in the city in exchange. Begging for video backups. Willing to offer myself. Su Chen was completely banned initially. In order to eliminate the impact of his madness at the astronomical summit and to maintain social stability and avoid panic, it was as if Su Chen had never appeared on the internet. All traces of his existence were completely erased, and major communication apps even set up AI recognition. Once Su Chen's speech, name, or facial features were recognized in a video, that segment would be directly blocked and made unviewable. The dissemination channels were restricted, and even the cloud storage for videos was 404. What's even more terrifying is that this ban was not just a domestic decision. Just half a month before the asteroid landed, scientists began to pressure the government and top technology companies to take measures against the asteroid's impact. This behavior was considered treason, because following Su Chen's hints, scientists applied to set off fireworks on New Year's Eve. Fireworks had not been used since the end of World War II. Since then, the stockpile of fireworks had become the first guarantee of national security. To repel the year, almost all nuclear powers would have to deplete their reserves of fireworks. No president had the courage to make such a decision. It was not foolishness, but a decision made after weighing the pros and cons even if the fireworks stopped the asteroid, if the asteroid did not arrive, how would the people know that it was the fireworks that saved the world? Since the asteroid had not caused any impact, and nothing had happened, the actions of oneself and others in setting off fireworks would be criticized by political opponents as a waste of taxpayers' money and national resources. What about next year's elections? Would the voters thank themselves for saving the world? It's difficult. Not to mention, how to coordinate and confirm that each family is not hoarding fireworks, and how to confirm that this is not a spies conspiracy. Therefore, after some consideration, politicians generally choose the rule of survival within the system, doing nothing is better than making mistakes. After all, scientists cannot produce any clear and understandable evidence, all evidence seems like anti-scientific nonsense, and the uncertainty of whether the asteroid will have an impact is absolute. They absolutely cannot throw out fireworks for an uncertain threat and weaken their own defense forces. If there is really any impact, then wait until it happens. If it's too late, then everyone will die together, at least when you die, you are still a leader. In this way, all thoughts about the asteroid doomsday theory were deleted. The Doomsday Survival Guide released by Su Chen has disappeared from people's view at the speed of light and has been overwhelmed by new information, forgotten like other junk information. Until people face the imminent danger. Regret. It's already too late. Obtain regret points from. Obtain. Among the tens of billions of people who are regretting, there is an inconspicuous prompt message. The era begins, the function is about to be upgraded to the full version. The plan to make the whole world regret has succeeded. Looking at the crazy fluctuating balance of regret points, and the astronomical and still rising power and agility reserves, even Su Chen, who has always been calm, couldn't help but start to accelerate his heartbeat. With a global population of 8 billion, even excluding primitive tribes without internet in the rainforest, elderly people who don't use phones, workers too busy to watch videos, primitive fundamentalists who don't pay attention to internet news, and the general public who use the internet but don't follow the news. Just those who have watched their own videos and witnessed their own disruption of the astronomical summit are over 500 million, and this number is constantly increasing. Judging by the modern habit of watching videos for answers when in doubt, this number is enough to reach over 1 billion before the internet is cut off tomorrow, and then through word of mouth, it will eventually become common knowledge. If he could digest all the power, agility, spiritual awareness, and regret points provided by these people into real combat power, he could probably blast himself to the moon with a full stomach. Even feces could be compressed into nuclear fusion. Landing on the moon has never been so simple. This wave of gains can be said to be enough to last a lifetime. In one word, awesome. The era is coming, the function is about to be upgraded to the full version. Downloading complete update package. The system has been updated, but it does not affect the use of existing functions. Su Chen calmed down and did not rush to use the rapidly increasing points. In fact, even without the system, he was confident that he could rely on the accumulated resources to stay ahead in the future world and live a very comfortable life. It's just that since this thing is upgrading, why not wait and see what new features will be available after the upgrade? Maybe those features will require a lot of points. For now, he still needs to organize the treasures in his portable universe, and he doesn't have time or need to study the system, so let it upgrade slowly. Eat it. Su Chen took out a sparkling snow lotus flower, broke off a petal and stuffed it into the mouth of the little fox. He then casually swallowed the remaining half of the flower, like munching on a cucumber. 
Snow lotus flowers are used to refine the body, significantly removing metabolic impurities of carbon-based organisms, repairing genetic defects generated during the replication process, strengthening the body's affinity with spiritual sources, and restoring the infant-like growth potential of the body. The most direct manifestation of this effect after the arrival is the awakening of abilities and the enhancement of talents. Unprecedented comfort in the body made Su Chen couldn't help but sigh in the previous life, this thing could only be obtained by a very small number of super powerful beings, and now he actually hoarded a warehouse of it. It turns out that taking snow lotus flower is so comfortable, much more enjoyable than rewarding oneself. What about the little fox? Should it change? Su Chen stared at the young beast in the palm of his hand. It just made a whimpering sound, enjoying rubbing against Su Chen's palm, wriggling like a maggot. Change for me. No response. Did it eat too little? Forget it, this thing can't be forced, after all, it's only two months old. Su Chen stuffed the little guy in a whole snow lotus flower back into his pocket, letting it roll around in the pocket by itself. He then waited for the current flower to be digested completely before swallowing another one. Hmm. Snow lotus flower is the most perfect refining foundational herb. Owning half a ton of snow lotus flower, it can be said to be an unprecedented start, naturally wanting to make the foundation as perfect as possible. No need to rush into the next step. Dang 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 dash, the gunfire outside continued, but it was obviously much weaker than at the beginning. Fortunately, the morning star in the east had begun to shine. From February to September every year, the morning star appears around dawn, its appearance signifies the arrival of dawn. But before dawn is the darkest. Outside the window, the shattered cell phone of the prison guard suddenly lit up, inexplicably unlocking the screen. Clearly, there was no one operating it nearby, but the phone automatically played the classic ending song of the Spring Festival Gala, Unforgettable Tonight. In this melodious song, a layer of frost formed on the window. It should be noted that the upper city is subtropical, and the windows never frost. The song became more and more eerie in its continuous loop, the notes distorted and intermittent, becoming lower each time. If the song also had an uncanny valley effect, it would undoubtedly be like this now. Thud 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 dash at this moment, something began to knock on the window. WH. Who is it? Don Chongji asked in horror. Chongji? Open the door, come and kowtow to grandma for the new year. Grandma has prepared a big red envelope for you. On New Year's Day, paying New Year's respects. Paying New Year's respects is an important tradition that has been passed down for over a thousand years. People express respect and blessings to their elders by personally paying New Year's respects. On the first day of each year, people wear new clothes, dress neatly, step on the paper scraps of firecrackers, bring auspiciousness and gifts, and go around the streets and alleys to deliver New Year's greetings to family and friends in person. This is a rare moment of reunion, tired young men and women who wander outside will always gather together, old and young will sit at the same table again after a year. Of course, children don't care about the formalities of the adult world. Their eyes are only on those bright red paper bags. Inside are real money. Grandma loves Gan Changji the most. This kind of love will always be materialized in the red envelope, a thick stack plus a few candies he can't usually eat. So every time Gan Changji sees that black and white photo, his eyes will feel sour. But he knew Grandma wouldn't come through the window, let alone climb out of the incinerator to the prison to give him a red envelope. What is it outside? Gan Changji swallowed nervously, tiptoed to the window. The window was covered with frost making it impossible to see outside. He carefully exhaled hot air from his mouth, trying to melt the frost. But the moisture in his mouth only made the frost thicker. Exhaling won't work, you have to lick it with your tongue, Su Chen suggested. Don't think I haven't been to the north. Gan Chongji angrily saw through Su Chen's ill intentions, this temperature is no different from licking an iron rod. You actually know. Su Chen looked regretful. He thought he could see the scene of the great scientist's tongue sticking to the window, which would have great historical value if captured. What is it outside? Gan Chongji's strong curiosity made him feel uncomfortable all over. What did it say to you? It said it was my grandmother, asking me to pay a New Year's visit and giving me a red envelope. Gan Chang's voice trembled. Just treat it as your grandmother, it's almost the same. The sound of gunfire outside seemed to have diminished at some point. Less and less. Accompanied by the sound of heavy objects falling and glass-like shattering, the last machine gun on the watchtower also fell silent. Have the monsters been repelled? Someone in the next room cheered. Soon they realized something was wrong. Something was still banging on the windows. No, the guards have all been wiped out. Knowing that all the guards were gone and there was no one to stop their escape, the prisoners had no thoughts of escaping. Who would dare to go out now? Damn it, there's a gap in the gate. We're done for. The main entrance of the prison dormitory building was not completely sealed, leaving a slight gap. 
This allowed the cold air to slowly spread into the prison dormitory. Where the cold air spread, everything stood still, sharp ice crystals grew on the walls, inching forward, intending to engulf the entire dormitory corridor. With leaks in the ceiling vents that had not been sealed in time, a chill began to spread. Blankets. Use blankets to block the gaps. Don't leave your rooms. The prison intercom broadcasted. The prisoners acted quickly. Unfortunately, the blankets had limited blocking ability, and a small amount of cold air leaked into the dormitory from the corridor. The prisoners could only huddle back as much as possible, hiding in the corners away from the doors and windows. So, cold. Each room's prisoners huddled together for warmth, with the highest-ranking individuals in the depths and the lowest-ranking ones on the outside. Ah, the unlucky ones on the outer layer were already frozen to their buttocks, the gradual onset of pain and cold spreading from a certain part of their bodies made them keenly feel the process of their own death. Screams echoed from one room to another, heart-wrenching. The will to survive drove them to squeeze desperately towards the center of the group, but before long, they would regret this survival instinct. As a hint of dawn appeared outside the window, the advancing ice crystals halted. The sun became the supreme savior in the survivors' hearts at that moment, its light sweeping rapidly across the land, bringing unparalleled warmth. People had never realized how lovely this star could be. It's dawn. Ha, ah, it's dawn. Although they didn't know the reason, at that moment, most of the people in the prison dormitory were cheering and laughing. Except for those unlucky ones who were half-frozen, they would rather be dead, as their bodies were already half-frozen and necrotic, slowly dying in prolonged agony. Nevertheless, the unseen terror had temporarily retreated. The air still held a lingering chill, but compared to before, it was negligible. The sunlight shone, and the ice spikes that covered the corridors began to slowly melt. Are we safe now? Don Chong incredulously asked. Safe my foot, you're just my illusion, Shin Dali, lying carelessly on the bed, said indifferently, where did so much drama come from in an illusion? Indeed, we are temporarily safe, Su Chen said as he turned on his phone, unsurprisingly, the network signal was gone. It seemed that all the nearby base stations had been destroyed. What do we do next? Don Chong was at a loss. Whether you want to stay put or escape, those things only come out at night, not during the day. As he spoke, Su Chen took out a very old wireless radio receiver. He tuned the frequency, and a voice came through. Please stay at home, collect supplies in an orderly manner, and do not act without authorization. It was all nonsense that no one listened to, the zero-cost shopping would start at dawn, but not moving would lead to starvation, right? Su Chen wanted to hear disaster updates. At this point, even the media couldn't hide it anymore, especially the wireless radio stations, they had become the last voice connecting the world, so they no longer conceal anything meaningless. It's unfortunate to meet you all in this situation. Today's morning news has only one topic, the end of the world. The host gets straight to the point. There's no time to write a script, every sentence is improvised. We all encountered a terrifying disaster last night. The earth has become a hunting ground for some kind of monster. We are no longer at the top of the food chain, but have become prey. Casualties are still being counted in various regions. It is reported that most of the attacks occurred in coastal cities, while inland cities were not heavily damaged, only affected by the cold wave. According to what the host witnessed this morning, the death rate in the southeastern coastal areas exceeded 30% overnight. It is obvious that this time, the situation we are facing is much more serious than in 2020. But please do not panic, stay calm. As long as order does not collapse, civilization does not perish, we can face any difficulty. Please pause visiting friends and relatives, stock up on food reasonably. Hiss. In necessary situations, you can use your roommates as emergency food. A burst of noise came from the radio. What are you saying? How did you get in? He he he. Survive. Everyone. Survive. By any means necessary. This is the test of the new god. We are all citizens of the new century. The new century has arrived. Open the door. You bastards inside. Open the door of the studio. He 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 ha ha ha. Today is the first day of the new year. The host here wishes everyone a happy new year, full of unrest. Sizzle 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 whoosh, the radio connection was cut off. Su Chen didn't hear the disaster briefing, but happened to hear that the followers of the new century had taken over the radio station. Su Chen decided to no longer pay attention to the outside world's information. Finally back to this familiar era. Hiss, the smell of melted limbs and flesh mixed with intestines, it's just right. He opened the window and glanced outside, the melted bodies were staining the earth red, and the strong smell spread. Even the most heinous criminals had never seen such a scene, one by one couldn't help but lean against the wall and vomit wildly, intensifying the smell. Don Shongji covered his nose with his clothes, he decided to leave the prison in the chaos. 
I'm worried about my family. He said. What can you change by going? Don Changji was choked by a sentence, but still shook his head, for peace of mind. Goodbye. Su Chen was also ready to move. The cramped prison dormitory was not suitable for long-term living, so he planned to move to his true destination. It was the most luxurious area in the prison, and also the most fortified fortress in the entire prison, designed to deal with any situation before the arrival of the criminals, built according to the specifications of the last sanctuary. It was the warden's room. The room's glass on all four sides was military-grade bulletproof glass, the walls had steel interlayers, and the door was made of half a meter thick chrome alloy. It was enough to deal with any situation in the early stages of the apocalypse. After sending away Gan Shangji, Su Qin took advantage of the time when everyone was still immersed in fear and unable to think, and took the first step to the warden's room. Unfortunately, although the warden had hidden in the room at the first moment, he forgot to block the ventilation duct, so there were only seven or eight stiff bodies left in the room. Su Chen used his spiritual sense to remotely control the electric door button in the room. The door opened, he went in and searched the weapons and guns from the bodies, throwing them all into his personal universe. Then he began to clean up the scene, dragging the bodies out one by one. After cleaning up, he was ready to close the door. Wait! A group of people happened to run to the corner of the stairs, their eyes locked on the room where Su Chen was. Seeing Su Chen about to press the close button, they hurriedly shouted in fear to stop him. Su Chen waved to them, smiled slightly, no need to wait. Bang! With a light touch of his finger, the door closed tightly. Damn it! You bastard! And, percent hashtag. The first few people cursed in Southeast Asian languages with dirty words that outsiders couldn't understand. It's Su Chen. This beast. One of the Dongcheng people stomped in anger. This Dongcheng person was Zhou Xiaodong. Because of arson and the extremely heinous nature of his crimes, he was also locked up in the upper city maximum security prison. After entering prison, his tender and delicate appearance immediately made him a darling of some of his fellow inmates. Among them, this group of Southeast Asian scammers especially favored him, visiting Zhou Xiaodong's room frequently. Speaking of this group of scammers, they were not to be trifled with. Not long ago, Dongcheng took advantage of the chaotic international situation to crack down on a wave of scammers, capturing several notorious leaders and imprisoning them in the upper city prison. The biggest leader was named Lu Kochan, one of the three famous warlord families in northern Myanmar, the head of the Lu family, managing the entire underground industry in Kokong. In the Cambodian black market, the value of a heart is $119,000, a liver is $157,000, a kidney is $200,000, eyes $1,525, scalp $607, skull and teeth $1,200, shoulders $500. Coronary artery $1,525. If you earn enough money for me, you can buy yourself back. This was what he often said to the pigs. Life had no weight in his eyes, just walking dollars. Now, he was thinking about how many dollars Joe Shadong could fetch. Open the door. Bro, I have something good to show you. The person who burned down your warehouse. Lu Kochang sent his henchman to knock on the door, while he hugged Joe Shadong and hid in the distance. However, the door was too thick and the sound barely reached the room, they were not sure if Su Chen heard it. Open the door! The people shouted anxiously. They only knew about the existence of the warden's room through acquaintances in the prison. If more people found out and rushed to this place, they wouldn't be able to monopolize the room. Unfortunately, there was no response from inside. Damn it! Damn! Damn! The crowd anxiously kicked and pounded on the door. Open the door! If you don't open it, I'll chop you up! Su Chen calmly watched the fools through the monitor. After they kicked and struggled until they were exhausted, he picked up the intercom. Haven't eaten yet? Damn. Still mocking? The group's blood pressure shot up. Why was this person so despicable? Several henchmen unwillingly kicked and smashed the door again, smashing until they were completely exhausted. Just as they were about to rest, Su Chen picked up the intercom again. Is this all you've got? What the heck? Can this be tolerated? Another round of chaos ensued, they used tables, chairs, and even a sofa as a battering ram, but even the sofa was useless after being smashed. Finally, everyone was sweating profusely, exhausted and panting heavily. At that moment, they were shocked to find that the door was actually moving. The door opened. They tried to get up quickly, but found that their bodies were already powerless. They could only watch as Su Chen walked out slowly, took out a pistol from his pocket, gently pulled the trigger, click as he chambered around. The people's faces showed fear. What are you going to do? You. Bang. 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 After the loud bangs, there were only seven bodies on the ground. 
Even Zhou Xiaodong and Liu Kochang in the distance did not escape the gunfire, both were shot but not fatally. However, in this situation, being injured meant slow death, and everyone in the prison was in a panic, finding it difficult to receive effective treatment. The two staggered away, and Su Chen did not pursue. He just took out a white handkerchief, wiped the blood splatter from the gun barrel and his clothes, went back inside, and closed the door. Phew, finally back. The new era was doomsday for others, but for Su Chen, it was the most familiar home he had lived in for most of his life. Don Chongji escaped from prison with a large number of criminals. He found a car key on a dead prison guard, got into a car in the parking lot following a sound, and drove home. On the way to the city, Gan Chongji couldn't help but look up at the sky. With one glance, he forgot he was driving and almost hit a tree with the accelerator. That is. He stared at the white ribbon in the sky with fascination and fear. At first glance, it looked like an unusually large white cloud, but upon closer inspection, the long white cloud divided the sky in half. Gan Chongji's heart pounded. Ring of stars. Su Chen's prophecy hit once again. The year was torn apart, becoming a magnificent ring of stars suspended above the earth. This was the first time in human history that the ring of stars was observed from the planet's surface. The newborn ring of stars was exceptionally beautiful and spectacular, like a ribbon wrapped around the earth's waist by the hand of God. Originally, earth could not have such a beautiful sight because its mass was not enough to produce a ring of stars. However, due to the peculiar nature of the year, earthlings were fortunate to witness this astronomical miracle. But this doesn't make sense. Don Chongji's scalp tingled again. Under the influence of tidal forces, the ring of stars should condense above the equator of the planet. But this is the upper city, located at 30. 4 degrees north latitude, far from the equator. Why is the ring of stars appearing directly above here? A terrible speculation arose in Gan Chongji's mind. Instead of going home, he stepped on the accelerator and headed towards the upper city observatory. Lao Gao. Fuko pendulum. Is the Fuko pendulum and the observatory still moving? Gao Zhengyi was stunned. How did you get out? All the prison guards are dead. Show me the data of the Fuko pendulum quickly. Hurry. What's the use of you seeing it? Fine, take a look. The Fuko pendulum looked like a giant pendulum, hanging from the ceiling with a 67 meter long thin wire, with a heavy weight suspended at the bottom. Due to minimal friction at the top and a large weight at the bottom, a single push could keep it swinging for several days. According to human basic knowledge, under the influence of inertia, a pendulum should only move back and forth along a line, like a swing, no matter how long it swings, as long as there is no external force, it will not deviate left or right. However, in 1851, Foucault created this giant device and invited many scientists to observe it. Then, in front of everyone, the pendulum deviated. He proved that the Earth is constantly in a state of rotation, exerting a Coriolis force on the pendulum, disrupting its movement. The upper city is located at around 30. 4 degrees north latitude, and the Foucault pendulum would complete a full circle in about 47 hours, returning to its original starting point. It is not difficult to understand that this time would decrease as the latitude increases because the higher the latitude, the greater the angular velocity. When it reaches the South Pole, it will be exactly 24 hours. Damn it! Damn it! At this moment, Gan Chongji looked in horror at the data recorder next to the Fuko pendulum. A small recorder was installed next to the pendulum to monitor its swinging. Gan Chongji was reviewing the swinging records from last night. The speed at which the Fuko pendulum rotated was visibly slowing down. It had been 55 hours since it was last set in motion, but the pendulum had not completed a full circle back to its original point. This far exceeded the previous 47 hour cycle. This meant, Gao Jingyi swallowed hard, incredulously asking, has the latitude of the upper city decreased? It's probably not as simple as just decreasing. Don Chongji pointed to the data on the recorder, look, the deviation of the Foucault pendulum has returned to zero, this situation only occurs in one place. The equator, Gao Zhengyi exclaimed, do you know what you're saying? You're talking about a 30 degree shift in the Earth's magnetic pole and rotation direction. Do you know what kind of geological disaster this will bring? We've seen crazier things, except reality. Gao Zhengyi fell silent, looking at his hands. Yes. What could be impossible after experiencing even crazier things last night? Damn it, that kid got it all right. Could he be someone who traveled back from the future, or a prophet who can foresee the future? Gao Zhengyi sighed deeply. Even if he is a prophet, he can't save the damn ghost. Gan Chongji felt heavy-hearted. It's too late now. The year has turned into a ring of stars, and setting off fireworks at this distance will only poison ourselves. As for the deviation of the geomagnetic pole, all communications are cut off, and we can't take any measures. 
Gao Zhengyi patted Gan Chongji's shoulder. Just try to accept it, you've done your best. My best. Ha! Gan Chongji chuckled bitterly, unable to control his emotions in front of his old friend Gao Zhengyi. I can't accept it. Gan Chongji cried out in pain, why, why? It's like it's all been programmed, passing by billions of planets without stopping, and choosing Earth as the final destination. Why? Perhaps. There is some treasure on Earth that it is searching for? We knew. We knew all of this in advance, we could have changed it. Those people didn't have to die. Gan Chongji recalled the devastation on the way back. The upper city, once one of the most prosperous international metropolises, a symbol of youth and progress, now riddled with wounds. People on the streets were holding the limbs of their loved ones, crying. Most of them were ordinary workers who came here to pursue their dreams, with no roots, just wanting to pursue a better future. But the future shattered. They died too. Why? His voice hoarse from crying, tears tinged with red. Why? Simple scholars do not understand the complexities of the world, even the most intelligent minds cannot comprehend certain things. Gao Jinni embraced him, patting his old friend's back gently to comfort him. We are human, we can change the world with our subjective initiative, you have done your part. But we are only human, we must accept the fact that our abilities are limited. You don't have to blame yourself for this. I hate. I hate myself. I don't understand. I. Old gone. Gao Jinni's voice trembled. This is not the first failure in your life, don't let it crush you. I won't be crushed, what else can I do? What else can I do? Don Changji lost all his strength in despair. You can always recover, you always manage to recover. Remember back in university when you almost failed and were advised to drop out? But you caught up, you always managed to catch up. Don Changji fell silent. The two embraced each other in silence. And at that moment, an awkward voice came from the entrance of the observatory. Um. Did we come at a bad time? Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang, the husband and wife, looked awkwardly away. Their embrace was too affectionate. Nye Yao, fearing that the world would not be chaotic enough, immediately took out her phone and took a picture. Director Gao. 50 cents for the witness of your friendship. No bargaining. Gao Zhengyi couldn't help but smile and cry. Why are you here? Du Mingyue said seriously, putting on the Air Force Major General insignia on her shoulder, saluting, we're here to find Su Chen. Find Su Chen? Gan Chongji laughed bitterly, then you've come to the wrong place. You personally sent him to prison, and now you're here pretending to be clueless? Due to recent events, Gan Chongji harbored resentment towards those with official positions. Du Mingyue sighed lightly, believe me, I tried. But I'm just a civilian, I was trembling in that quagmire, and he was involved in such sensitive matters. All I could do was help him avoid labor reform. But you're a major general. Brigadier general is just a fart, Du Mingyue sneered. I can't even count the number of powerful figures above my head. I don't even have the qualifications to listen to discussions at this level. Gan Chongji had to admit that what Du Mingyue said was a fact. He rubbed his eyes, temporarily skipping the topic. After knowing that the upper city prison collapsed, I thought Su Chen would escape and come here. Did he not escape? Du Mingyue asked. No, I asked him if he wanted to leave, but he chose to stay. After a brief thought, Du Mingyue's eyes lit up, I see, the prison is the most solid fortress. And there's a warden safe house that can withstand even a nuclear blast. It's all part of his plan. Gan Chongji finally understood why Su Chen chose to stay. As long as he is safe, that's all that matters. I will send someone to the prison to inquire. Du Mingyue nodded, so, Gan Lao, do you have any new discoveries now? What are you planning to do? Communication is cut off now, even military radios are being interfered with. Everyone is fighting on their own, so I want to form my own team. Forgive me for being blunt. The military is useless against those monsters. Don Chongji stated coldly. So I'm not planning to directly confront those monsters. What we need to do is to anticipate danger in advance and save as many people as possible. For example, will that thing bring any disaster? Du Mingyue pointed to the huge white line in the sky, the crack in the sky. It won't, but its appearance signifies another disaster, a magnetic pole shift. The Earth's magnetic pole will shift and the lunar orbit will also adjust accordingly, causing abnormal tidal levels along the coast. Before the moon returns to its orbit, the new equator will experience the largest tidal waves and ebbs in human history. The tidal height can reach over 10 meters, enough to submerge coastal houses. Tidal waves? Du Mingyue's face changed, immediately opening the maritime tide table to check the tide times. No need to check, that's no longer accurate. If you want to save people, you still have time. Get in the car. Nia Haiyang outside the door decisively called out. Don Chongji hesitated for a moment. He didn't know if he should trust the person in front of him again. 
Get in the car, you are gone Shangji, the discoverer of the asteroid. There are many unscrupulous people outside who want to use your reputation for their own purposes. Gao Xingyi reassured Gan Shangji, Nye Yao is my student, I know her family situation. It should be relatively safe to follow her, she won't deceive you. And, this is also your opportunity, isn't it? Don Shangji gritted his teeth. What about you? I don't have such great ambitions to save the world like you. I just want to protect my family. I should go to Zero Yuan shopping. Gao Zhengyi smiled. Watch over Xiao Tian and the others for me. Don't worry, I will take care of your wife and daughter. Gao Zhengyi patted his chest with a mischievous smile. Hearing that Gao Zhengyi was joking, Gan Shangji scolded him with a smile and got into the jeep outside the door. Looking at the infernal scenes on both sides of the road, his gaze gradually became more focused. Perhaps, I can really get it back. In the future, the current stage is called the Headless Fly Era. No one knows what to do, or what will happen in the future. Everyone can only act randomly based on their own understanding, trying to ensure their own safety. But to Su Chen, this is the best time for improvement. The monsters are not very strong, and they all have weaknesses to deal with. Animals and plants are just beginning to awaken, not yet extinct due to climate change, and humans are gradually mastering the special powers of the new era. It's like a newbie village. It's the best place to hone skills and focus on cultivation. After the headless fly era ends, it will be the Great Migration Era, which is the truly dangerous era. Everyone is forced to migrate eastward, facing a lack of fresh water on the way, and having to cross saltwater marshes with extremely high salt content after the seawater recedes, where underground ghouls lurk. On the 1st and 15th of every month, there were no houses to shelter from the wind and rain to escape the cold. It is not an exaggeration to say that 90% of humanity died on the road of the Great Migration. Su Chen locked himself in a safe house, making serious preparations for the arrival of the Great Migration. It was a dangerous era, but also an era full of opportunities. For someone who was so afraid, Su Chen did not want to miss any opportunity to improve himself. Function download complete, new program update successful. Oh, Su Chen stared at the prompt box in front of him. Detected excessive regret points obtained recently through the same source, unlocking additional new rewards. 1. Optimized display UI. After the update, regret points obtained through Apocalypse Prophecy will now accumulate regret values, strength, agility, spiritual awareness, and currency rewards used in the current era, and this reward will no longer pop up as a prompt. You can check the background information by yourself to avoid obstructing your view. 2. After the update, Regret points obtained through means other than Apocalypse Prophecy will receive additional rewards of Regret Crystals, which can be used to exchange for special items and participate in limited prize pool draws. 3. This week's limited prize pool, Appraisal Technique Tier 2, can appraise awakened objects, display object quality, characteristics. 4. Please discover more update content by yourself. Discover more by yourself? Su Chin pursed his lips, finding this a bit inhumane. Could it be that by silently reciting up up down down left right left right baba in my mind, I can unlock 30 extra lives? Cheat code successfully used. Up up down down left right left right baba, hidden shop unlocked. Su Chen, ah? Amazing, just casually reciting it actually unlocked the function. Su Chen opened the newly unlocked hidden shop to check the goods. There was only one item available for now iron, priced at 2. 74 regret points per kilogram. This item seemed to have no immediate use, so Su Chen didn't pay much attention to it. So he silently recited again. Who's your daddy? Similar to up up down down left right left right baba, this was a cheat code from a game many years ago. Second column of hidden shop unlocked. Su Chen quickly opened the shop to check. The second column item was called oxygen. It was slightly more expensive than iron, priced at 3. 39 regret points per kilogram. Why do these two elements have such precise decimal points in their prices? Su Chen frowned in thought. What was the pricing reference for these? Intrigued, Su Chen continued to study, thinking about other ancient cheat codes that might reveal his age. He went through all the cheat codes in his mind. Third column of hidden shop unlocked. The third column had a product named Silicon. Priced at 6. 58 points per kilogram. The fourth column item was Magnesium. Priced at 7. 87 per kilogram. The fifth column was Nickel. Priced at 41. 67 per kilogram. Su Chen wanted to continue searching his memory for codes, but it seemed not all codes were useful. After unlocking only 5, he was almost pulling his hair out. I'm afraid that after fully unlocking, I could create the entire periodic table. What happens after reaching the end of the periodic table? Su Chen was a bit curious. 
He believed that the knowledge stored in this shop must surpass current human science, so could unlocking the shop reveal a mysterious world beyond the periodic table? Damn, who would have thought that the unlocking method would involve using those game cheat codes? How could a normal person know all of them? Looks like I need to find a lucky game streamer to interrogate. He sighed. For now, he decided to give up on further researching the mysterious shop and look towards the newly opened limited prize pool. The reward was a level 2 appraisal technique, which was very useful for him now. Honestly, Su Chen himself was not very clear about the specific effects and usage methods of the many medicinal materials he had purchased in advance in the warehouse, he only knew that they would be valuable in the future. In the previous life, these things were not even within reach, just imagining them would make oneself feel inflated, thinking about peaches. So, it really needs an identification technique to provide a drug guide. With it, you can further enhance your drug-taking work, the earlier you get it, the earlier you can start improving, and the earlier you improve, the more secure you will feel. Therefore, level 2 identification technique is crucial for the current self. But, this identification technique extraction requires regret crystals. Received 500 regret points from Zhao Meng Yan, also received 1 regret crystal, and 500 free currency, can be freely exchanged for currency in various regions of the new era according to a certain ratio, with each purchasing power equivalent to 10,000 before the arrival. Free currency? The system really thinks of everything. And Zhao Mengyan's big monthly card is really worth it. It's been two months. She's still in C. I've never seen such a high cost effective continuous rebate. Thanks to Miss Zhao for the regret crystal reward, I can try my luck with the new pool. Open the brand new limited pool, click to draw. A cold blue light flashed across the field of vision. Received an agility breakthrough crystal, well, didn't draw it, but this pool even has a guaranteed physical breakthrough crystal, not bad. The reserve values of my agility and strength have already burst out of the attribute bar, and I lack a large number of these crystals to convert them into combat power. It's just right. It's just a pity I didn't draw the identification technique. Received 500 regret points from Dog Mom Li Jiao. One regret crystal, 500 free currency. Received from Dog Dad Zhao Yu. Crystal. Currency. Received from Zhou Shaodong. Crystal. Currency. Fun. This big monthly card is more than just one. Your whole family is our lucky star. Thanks to my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and old classmates for the New Year red envelopes, I won't be polite to myself. Draw again. Received a strength breakthrough crystal. Again. Received level 2 identification technique. Again. Wait, what was that just now? Did I win? Ha! Huh? As a perennial non-whale, how could? Su Chen opened the prize pool details in disbelief. The base draw rate of this pool is 1%, with a 1% increase in the hit rate of limited rewards after each failure. It's really only 1%. Could it be that I've moved from non-whale to European whale? Su Chen looked at himself in the mirror in disbelief. Hmm, I feel particularly fair today. We're rich. Su Chen excitedly lifted the little fox high. A puzzled question mark appeared above the little guy's head. Su Chen didn't expect it to understand, so he clicked to use it directly transferring the vast knowledge stored in the level 2 identification technique to his mind. As his gaze fell on the room in front of him, more information suddenly appeared. With a thought, he took out the star map fragment that he hadn't been able to study thoroughly before. Focusing his gaze on the star map fragment, a previously unseen beam of light suddenly appeared in his field of vision. Su Chen felt a sharp pain in his eyes because of this. Ouch! He tried to endure the pain and quickly looked at the star map situation through the light. Through the strong light's cover, he was surprised to find that the beam of light was actually heading towards the sky. The intense central light beam was aimed at the sky, and the mere aftermath had almost burned his retina. Walking to the window, he could clearly see that the strong light was firmly locked onto the sky, shooting towards the pristine ring formed by the tearing of the asteroid. Reflected by the ring of stars, it pointed towards a certain location in the east. No way. His heartbeat suddenly accelerated. Could it be that the treasure is right there? Currently, it's impossible to judge what the beam of light is pointing to, but compared to the previous lack of clues, at least there is now a clear direction. Judging from the angle at which the light beam is projected, the location where the light is projected should be in the southwest Pacific Ocean. Su Chen couldn't wait to go and take a look, but exploring there now was a bit difficult, after all, it was still a vast expanse of water, and the current climate was unusual, making it somewhat dangerous to set sail. However, once the tides were locked in, the seawater receded, turning the expanse into a salt marsh. He could walk eastward along the edge where the seawater receded, then dive in advance to search for the coordinates when the seawater had not fully receded. This way, he could ensure his safety and ensure that the coordinates were hidden by the seawater, 
avoiding being overtaken by other migrants. Xiao AI, set a reminder for me to check the star map on the 15th day of the first lunar month this year. Alright, master, I have set a reminder for you, and will remind you to check the star map in 14 days. Although the network is down, some basic functions of certain artificial intelligence home appliances are still working. It's just that little fox was startled by the sudden sound from the speaker, its tail fluffed up like a club, and it started growling at the speaker aggressively, it felt like there was something dirty living there. So, next, let's start to enhance. Focusing on the Snow Lotus Flower. Item Name, Awakening Snow Lotus, Item Attribute, Gentle, Function, Repair the Telomere's Damage During Self-Replication, Restoring Genetic Perfect Plasticity, Current Quantity Consumed, Percentage of Repaired Genes, Estimated Perfect Repair of All Genes with Another 18 Kilograms Consumption, Diminishing Returns, Detailed and Transparent. This Level 2 Appraisal Technique is Valuable. Previously, Su Chin only knew that the Snow Lotus Flower could enhance the foundation of abilities, but he didn't know that this enhancement was achieved through repairing genes. Humans are products of continuous gene replication, and genes will continuously lose telomeres during replication. Shortened telomeres make it difficult for genes to continue replicating, which is why humans have a limited lifespan. As long as the problem of shortened telomeres can be solved, humans can achieve true immortality. So, the snow lotus flower is not just for enhancing the foundation of abilities. Its true function is to rejuvenate people, as long as there is enough, one can live forever. Everyone underestimated its effects. Su Chen took a deep breath to calm himself. If it weren't for the appraisal technique, I wouldn't have known about this insane effect. Hint, to appraise the genetic sequence of this organism and write replacements to restore its reproductive ability in the coming era, the appraisal technique needs to be raised to level 4, planting technique to level 4, and genetic programming ability to level 4. This is too far-fetched, let alone the appraisal technique, he hasn't even heard of the other two skills behind it. Ha! Huh? Wait. Su Chen glanced at his attribute bar, slightly stunned. When was this unlocked? The planting technique had already reached level 3. There were also some miscellaneous new attributes, like elemental resistance, with 20% fire resistance, 21% cold resistance, 18% lightning resistance, 15% radiation resistance, and 20% mental confusion resistance. Glancing at the still frantically jumping reserve strength and reserve agility, he understood. By the way, when obtaining regret points, if a large amount is obtained at once, there is a chance to replace the rewards for strength and agility with special items. It seems that some fellows regretted a lot, so they provided these miscellaneous rewards. These rewards were all hidden from prompts, so he didn't even know he had received such awesome stuff. Now there's work to be done. It would take quite some time just to organize the spoils. Forget it, I'll organize them later. He just briefly glanced at the explanations for the level 3 planting technique and resistances. Level 3 planting technique, level 1 ability, plants can be placed directly in the personal mini universe to allow the year to affect the plants, enabling them to awaken. Level 2 ability, understand the planting characteristics of most awakened plants, can keep them vibrant in the personal cosmos, and continue to grow. Level 3 ability, accelerate plant transformation, can quickly increase the plant's growth years, the current growth rate is 110. Resistance? For every 1% resistance, the resistance to damage slash abnormal status of that species can be increased by 1%, 100% can be completely immune. Such a crazy attribute. This doomsday prophecy is really making a fortune. Retracting his gaze, Su Chen took out 18 kilograms of snow lotus flowers in front of him, and buried the little fox with another 18 kilograms of snow lotus flowers. Eat it all, Su Chen ordered. The little fox struggled to stick its head out from the snow lotus mountain, its pupils shaking. All. Eat it all? All? Can't fit it all. No matter how you think about it, it won't fit. It will spoil. Oh, right, you don't necessarily need so much. Thinking of the other party's innate talent, Su Chen appraised the other party. Already full? It makes sense, the telomeres of the newborn little guy are basically not consumed, so they don't really need snow lotus flowers. Well, you don't have to eat it. Su Chen waved his hand and took back the snow lotus flowers. The little guy finally breathed a sigh of relief. You can eat this. Su Chen took out an ancient tree about 10 meters high and as thick as three people hugging it. The little fox looked dazed. What about the snow lotus flowers from earlier? Can I still go back to the previous step? Eat it all, don't waste it. Su Chen instructed. While the little fox was busy gnawing on the dry snow lotus, Su Chen was not idle either. His spiritual awareness extended outward, diverting his attention to check the situation outside the prison. Lu Gu. How did you get injured like this? 
Recently, the Courageous Alliance launched a major strike on the telecommunications fraud industrial park, capturing over 10,000 suspects in one go. Most of the lower-level ones were detained in the Tianan province prison. The middle and high-level ones were transported to the upper city's high-security prison for further interrogation. There are also more than 200 of these middle and high-level individuals. Lu Kochang originally planned to bring only seven trusted followers to hide in the warden's room, as there were too many people and the supplies inside probably wouldn't last long. But he didn't expect Su Chen to arrive first and shoot him back. He had no choice but to seek help from his companions in a half-dead state. Save me. There's a lunatic. While we were looking for guns, he killed the seven of us. Lu Kochan was shot in the abdomen, which is not directly fatal, but if the intestines rupture and the dirt inside leaks out, it will cause a very serious abdominal infection. If the intestines are not immediately sutured and the abdominal cavity cleaned, the infection spreads to sepsis, which is basically fatal under current conditions. Boss, lie down quickly. Second in command Lu Mingcheng quickly supported Lu Kochan, gunshot. Doctor. Prison doctor, come over. While Lu Kochan was heading to the shelter, second in command Lu Mingcheng was not idle either. He was the first to realize the importance of guns in this era and ordered all his subordinates to search the prison guards for firearms and arm themselves. Now, except for the highly cohesive new century cult members, their faction is the strongest in the prison. Stop dilly-dallying. Come over here for surgery. Lu Mingcheng held a gun to the prison doctor's head. The prison doctor was at a loss, he had wanted to escape at the crack of dawn this morning, but he didn't expect to be stopped by Lu Mingcheng on the spot. This Lu Mingcheng probably started thinking about survival strategies since last night, and kidnapping the doctor was part of his plan. People who have tasted blood on the blade always react the fastest. While most of the scattered sand were still in panic, he had already set his target, directly seized the most firearms in the prison, making it impossible for the remaining prison guards to resist his power. Where did the boss get injured? Who did it? Lu Mingcheng gritted his teeth and held Lu Kochang's hand. Lu Kochang naturally couldn't tell the truth, so he lied to Lu Mingcheng that he had intended to abandon the main force and hide secretly. He said, in the West Tower, the person who attacked me. I don't know him. He didn't want to reveal Su Chen's name, but Zhou Shaodong might. That person is called Su Chen. Zhou Shaodong's eyes were full of hatred, he has hidden in the warden's safe house. Not letting us in. Oh? Lu Mingcheng instantly understood the huge amount of information hidden in it, a cold light flashed in his eyes. There is actually a safe house in this prison? Big brother knew about this good thing and didn't tell his brothers. Lu Kochang suddenly felt a chill. The situation was urgent at the time, we had just discovered it, so we had to find a way to control the safe house first, Lu Kochang tried to explain, after controlling it, then. Click. Before Lu Kochang could finish his words, a cold gun barrel was already shoved into his mouth. Lu Mingcheng released the safety catch on the gun. A safe house can't accommodate 200 people, big brother, are you planning to abandon us? Wu, no. Wu Wu Wu, I'm not. Wu Wu Wu, I didn't. Lu Kochan couldn't speak with the gun barrel in his mouth, combined with the pain and fear, he couldn't say a word. Stop explaining, big brother, take a deep breath and close your eyes. Lu Kochan trembled all over. Yes, that's it, take deep breaths, let your blood pressure stabilize, don't worry, it won't hurt, it definitely won't hurt in time. Bang! Blood splattered. No need to treat him, Lu Mingqing pulled out the gun barrel, stood up, indicating to the prison doctor not to bother with the body of the former brave king, go treat that young man, he is a hero. Zhou Shaodong was staring blankly at this moment, trembling all over. He didn't expect that his words would end Lu Kochan's life. Perhaps relying on his tender body had allowed him to receive Lu Kochan's protection before without realizing the cruelty of the new era. But at this moment, he truly realized it. The sticky mess on the square was not the smell of tomato sauce, but real blood, just like what was flowing out of the back of this guy's head. Sinful. Not far away, the black-robed priest of the new century sighed with regret and walked to Lu Kochan's body. What? Do you feel sorry for him? Lu Mingqing coldly wiped the gun. The black-robed priest shook his head. Can you give him to me? He pointed to Lu Kochan's body. Do you want to help him transcend after death, this thing that will surely go to hell? No, it's just that he looks. The priest licked his lips, swallowed hard, very delicious. Even Lu Mingchen was disgusted this time. Isn't it too early to eat human flesh? Wasn't last night's dinner not to your liking? This is our practice, it's a test from God for us, not for shallow survival. The priest smiled, give it a try, sir, I assure you, you will have an unforgettable dining experience. The flesh of humans is the most perfect among all animals. No one can resist this exquisite delicacy. Shall we all try it together? I just found kitchen utensils in the kitchen. 
In the meantime, without realizing it, a whole circle of new century disciples had surrounded them. They drooled like addicts in withdrawal, their eyes filled with green light, full of desire. Give it a try. Sir, give it a try. The priest's smile was warm, making people feel like they were bathed in winter wind. Even Lu Mingcheng, who was accustomed to the methods of the Burmese, was disgusted enough by the priest, holding his nose to signal him to quickly take Lu Kochang away. I'm not interested, get lost. The priest was not angry, just smiling as he tied on an apron, holding a pot and a spatula, you will eventually come to like this taste, both your and my souls have this desire, our DNA records the achievements of our ancestors' practice, you must accept it to open the door to the divine. Get lost. There were many new century disciples, and they also had guns. If it weren't for the fact that he couldn't afford to provoke him, LV Mingcheng would definitely have killed this disgusting priest. Then we'll just have to enjoy it ourselves. The believers dragged LV Kochan's body away, not forgetting to clean up the remains of the prison guards from last night before leaving. Frugality was a virtue they revered, so they didn't want to waste a single bit. After cleaning up, the believers joyfully sucked on their blood-stained fingers, their faces filled with delight. Only they were truly enjoying this new year here. After all, no one could stop their practice in the future. The prison doctor endured the urge to vomit on Zhou Xiaodong's wound and reluctantly completed the surgery. I've temporarily stopped the bleeding for you and disinfected the wound a bit, but you need to guard against infection in the future. That will require some antibiotics. But, there can't be none, right? In such a big prison, how is it possible that there's none? You're lying. Zhou Xiaodong gritted his teeth and glared at the prison doctor. His wound was on the femoral artery. Without anesthesia, the screams he just let out were beyond miserable. Watching his thigh being cut open, the pain made him faint several times and wake up in agony. If there were no antibiotics, then this suffering would be in vain. And there would be even more suffering to come. The battle was intense last night, and most of the prison guards died. The little medicine stored in the prison was used for the injured guards. But I know where the nearest pharmacy is, I can drive there to get. The prison doctor's gaze shifted. LV Mingcheng chuckled. I heard your plan in Goran. Trying to escape from the prison? Fine. LV Mingcheng raised his gun. But you have to leave horizontally. But there are no antibiotics. I have to go get them. Tell me the address. I'll send someone. The prison doctor slumped down, finally giving up resistance. No need, there are antibiotics in the prison. He led everyone to the medical room. It was empty, with no injured persons at all. No one can make it to the medical room alive, so whatever you need is here. The prison doctor wanted to make a final struggle. If you need a doctor, I can find another one for you. Please let me go. I must go home to see my family. I am the pillar of the family, I must go back at this time. Stop talking nonsense, no one cares who you are here. LV Mingcheng had heard similar words many times. Those piglets who regretted their hardships in northern Myanmar all said the same thing, about having elders and young ones to take care of. It's cute, they actually thought someone here would sympathize with them. And you, LV Mingcheng slapped Zhou Xiaodong, who was drowsy from blood loss, awake. Where is the warden safe house you mentioned? It's over there. Then turn left. Go to the end. LV Mingcheng decisively led a large group of people to Su Chen's safe house. About 200 people stood aggressively in front of the safe house. Open the door. No response. Damn it, open the door. If you don't open it, I'll chop you up and feed you to those lunatics. Still no response. LV Mingcheng glanced at the sky, feeling more anxious. The daytime in February was very short, although it was slightly extended due to changes in latitude and tilt, it still wouldn't last past 6.30, and the sun was already in the west now. After this time, who knew how they would get through the night? Yesterday was the first day of the Lunar New Year, with the elders who had been cremated for a long time coming to knock on the door to pay New Year's respects. What about the second day of the Lunar New Year? Who knows what surprises there might be? Thinking of this, fear deepened LV Mingqing's determination. Only the safe house could provide him with enough security. He had to find a way to get the safe house. Stop knocking. It won't open. Zhou Xiaodong had suffered this loss before and quickly reminded, that guy is very cunning, he will come out and shoot you when you're tired of knocking. He will come out? Yes. LV Mingqing narrowed his eyes, suddenly coming up with a plan. Damn bastard. There will be a day when you come out. Watch me catch you. He pretended to be a defeated dog, cursing and kicking the body on the ground before turning and leaving. It looked like he had given up. But there are still a few henchmen who seem to have not given up. They are still trying to persist. Like the previous dead fools, they are taking turns smashing the door, smashing the wall. Until exhausted, panting. Why hasn't he opened the door yet? Lu Mingcheng, hiding in the blind spot behind the corner, 
felt a bit annoyed. Are you trying to deceive me, kid? How is that possible? Lu Kochang's men died like that before. Zhou Xiaodong quickly defended. After knocking for a while, finally, there was movement at the door. Get ready. He's opening the door. The heavy door moved slowly, if not forcibly dragged with great force, it could only open slowly. Lu Mingcheng held his breath, gripping the gun in his hand. He was ready, as soon as Su Qin showed his head, he would shoot him dead. However, the opening door stopped, leaving only a 5 centimeter gap. Opened, but not completely. Just as it opened, a hand reached out through the 5 centimeter gap. Lu Mingcheng didn't rush to shoot because he was waiting for Su Qin to expose a fatal part. However, Su Qin didn't continue to open the door at all. Just then, the hand gently waved forward, tossing the smoky dark green grenade towards the corner where everyone was hiding. The faces of the crowd changed drastically. Unfair play. It's over, grenade. Received 800 points of regret from Lu Mingcheng, one regret crystal, and 800 currency. Seeing the grenade flying over, Lu Mingcheng unhesitatingly threw Zhou Xiaodong over, letting Zhou Xiaodong's body land on the grenade. He himself awkwardly lay down, his chest slightly off the ground, like an ugly toad. Zhou Xiaodong's eyes widened in anger. Why? I'll. I'll. Lu Mingcheng. I won't let you off even if I become a ghost. Your whole family will die. He tried desperately to run, but his body, just after surgery, was too weak to even get up. He could only shiver, close his eyes, feel the heat of the grenade on his abdomen, and wait for death in despair. However, one second passed. Ten seconds passed. Half a minute passed. The expected explosion did not occur, even the temperature of the grenade kept getting colder. Zhou Xiaodong struggled to turn over and took out the grenade from his abdomen. The grenade had split into four petals, automatically opening with a snap, revealing a note inside. The note read, Boom! A toy? Fooled? Damn it! Being played with like a fool. Received 1000 points of regret from Zhou Xiaodong, 1% increase in flame resistance, and currency. Zhou Xiaodong was now regretting it so much that his intestines were tied in knots because he had just maliciously cursed Lu Mingcheng, knowing that Lu Mingcheng would never let him go by any means. It would have been better to be blown up by the grenade directly, rather than falling into the hands of this bastard. It would be much more miserable than being blown up. Lu Mingcheng played with the grenade toy in front of him, his face darkening. No one had ever dared to play with him like this before. The cold killing intent in his eyes made his familiar henchman shiver, knowing that there was no way this matter could end without casualties. As he was planning, the door opened a crack again. Another grenade was thrown over. Everyone's hearts tightened. Lu Mingcheng did not take it lightly, once again throwing Zhou Xiaodong over to cover the grenade. He hurriedly laid down again. This time, Zhou Xiaodong didn't say a word, with a look of self-abandonment from being played with. However, it didn't explode again. Opening the toy, there was another note inside. Fooled again, idiot. Lu Mingcheng was so angry that the veins on his forehead bulged. How could someone be so despicable? Why does it feel like he's playing with livestock, treating himself and others as a source of joy? Waving his sickle to reap a wave of joy whenever he feels like it? Lu Mingcheng decided that if Su Qin dared to open the door and throw a grenade again this time, he would directly blow up Su Qin's hand. Previously, he had planned to shoot Su Qin dead with one shot, but now, in a fit of rage, he no longer expected to finish him off with one shot, he just wanted Su Qin to suffer the pain of amputation. Just then, the door opened a bit more. Still just a little bit. LV Mingcheng held his breath and waited for Su Qin to reach out his hand. However, one second passed. One minute passed. Half an hour passed. The crowd gradually lost patience. What is he doing? Should we go over and pull the door open? Forget it, we can't pull it open, the door is made of nickel chromium alloy, weighing several tons, even if we all try, we can't pull it open. We must use the electric switch inside to open it. If you dare to reach out, your fingers will be crushed in seconds. Zhou Xiaodong tried to speak to make up for his previous offensive words. If only we had real grenades, we could throw them in through the gap. Someone suggested. We didn't find any grenades, for safety reasons, the prison guards wouldn't carry grenades on them to prevent them from being seized and used. He knows we don't have grenades, that's why he's playing like this. LV Mingcheng gritted his teeth, but we don't know if he has any. Who knows how many weapons that warden has hidden in his safe room. Another half hour passed. Still no sign of Su Chan reaching out. At that moment, the light in the sky suddenly dimmed. The crowd realized in horror. Damn. He's stalling for time. It's getting dark. Quick, retreat. Several people hurried back to the prison dormitory, sealing the doors and windows in the last few seconds before dark. LV Mingcheng was getting more and more angry as he thought about it. He was so young, he was almost having a stroke. This guy doesn't kill people, but he's so annoying. 
If he had thrown a grenade, it would have just been a big fight, at worst, a death. But what he threw was a toy. This is an insult to his dignity and intelligence. It made him look like an idiot in front of his subordinates. This kind of anger always needs an outlet, so he remembered Zhou Xiaodong's vicious curse from before. What did you say before? You want to wipe out my whole family? Receive 1300 regret points from Zhou Xiaodong. Triggered super lucky drop. Also received super agile breakthrough crystal, 1300 free currency. Seeing the strong men surrounding him from all sides, Zhou Xiaodong looked hopeless. He could only pray that his rectal prolapse wouldn't be too severe tomorrow, and that his intestines wouldn't all spill out. Super Agile Breakthrough Crystal? Closing the door tightly, Su Chen gleefully examined his spoils. Super Agile Breakthrough Crystal, breakthrough of 10,000 agility limit in one go. I'm super. The previous ordinary breakthrough crystal could only break through a limit of 500 at a time, it would take forever to reach several billion? This is awesome. The extra rewards after the arrival are no joke. Su Chen decisively used the Super Breakthrough Crystal, and his agility instantly reached 15,000. It was 300 times that of an ordinary person. Agility affects nerve reflex speed and muscle mobilization ability. Based on the average running speed of 7 km per hour for ordinary people, that means, theoretically, his maximum running speed could reach 2,100 km per hour. Of course, this would require sufficient muscle strength to support it. This speed is much faster than a commercial airplane. However, for safety reasons, Su Chen didn't dare to run at full speed in the confined space. He just tried to throw a punch at full speed. Bang! A terrifying sonic boom suddenly exploded in the room, a sharp pain followed, accompanied by a crackling sound. The strong wind blew the furnishings in the room into disarray, but the worst part was, his arm almost flew out. Dislocated. Luckily I didn't try to run at full speed just now. Su Chen shuddered in fear. This agility value was a bit too exaggerated, his strength and physical fitness couldn't keep up, and if he accidentally hit a wall, he would turn himself into mush. But as long as his strength and physique caught up, he would become the flash. It's just around the corner. I didn't expect to get hurt so badly. Su Chen gloomily used his appraisal technique to examine his arm. A detailed holographic arm dissection diagram immediately appeared before his eyes, showing that his arm was not just dislocated. The muscles on the outer side of the forearm, along with the biceps and triceps, had all suffered severe ruptures, and there was heavy bleeding in the blood vessels. Although it was expected early on, so the non-dominant left arm was used, but I didn't expect it to be so badly injured. Fortunately, tonight is the second day of the Lunar New Year. After temporarily treating the injured left arm, Su Chen began to prepare for tonight. First, clean up the messy room, then take out a huge round table for the feast. Fill the table with sumptuous dishes, including vinegar fish, braised prawns, for happiness meatballs, makai cow roe, spring rolls, braised spare ribs, and sweetened sour pork. The little fox puzzledly looked at the table, wondering why the couple prepared so much food. After setting up the dishes on the table, Su Chin also took out two pet food bowls, one filled with cat food and the other with dog food, stacked like small mountains, and four bowls. Three bowls filled with goat milk, and one bowl with a roasted chicken. After everything was done, he sat quietly at the table, closed his eyes, and said nothing. The atmosphere in the room was very eerie. The little fox was frightened, not daring to breathe. The events of last night had left a huge psychological shadow on its young heart, and it couldn't help but wonder what would happen tonight. As the sun set and the chill set in, it shivered more and more violently. Bang! Suddenly, a banging sound came from the iron door of the safe house, scaring the little guy into a ball of fur. It was dark, and those things were coming out again. Frost formed on the doors and windows, but Su Chen had already sealed all the cracks in advance, so the things outside were helpless, safe but not sound. Bang bang bang, as time passed, the banging outside became more and more intense. Su Chen glanced at the time, 11.45. Just 15 more minutes. The closer it got to midnight, the more anxious these guys became, because once it passed midnight, they wouldn't come back for another 14 days. Click. At the last moment, there was a sudden sound of glass breaking from the window. The extremely strong bulletproof glass seemed to crack under the rapid cooling and shrinking. But Su Chen didn't even turn his head, let alone make any remedial efforts. He just closed his eyes and slowly traced his fingertips on the back of the little fox. Click click click, the sound of glass breaking became more and more frequent. At a certain extreme moment. Bang! Crackle, the sound of glass shards falling to the ground came from behind. The cold wind rushed into the room, covering all surfaces with a layer of frost. What was even more terrifying was that an invisible hand had unknowingly pressed the door button. The alloy door was slowly opening, gradually widening the gap. The cold wind rushed into the room at high speed. 
thud, thud, thud. At that moment, a bell rang from outside. The bell, accompanied by a twinkling of the stars in the sky, caused a crack to appear in the world before their eyes. The entire world was filled with cracks with each chime of the bell, and when all the cracks in front of them connected, the whole world shattered. The hour and minute hands overlapped, it was midnight. The little fox looked up but there was no cold wind blowing in its face, the windows and doors were closed properly. So, was it an illusion? Was the crisis averted? Xiaowan, you've grown so big. Whose voice was that? The little fox's fur stood on end again, it was certain that the voice just now did not belong to Su Chen. Looking around. At some point, the huge round table was already filled with people. Su Chen looked at the speaking person, wiped the corner of his eye without a word, and smiled, after all, we haven't seen each other in over a decade. What's wrong with this arm? Why are you so careless? Let your mom take a look. Two people sat on either side of Su Chen, the woman frowned and lifted Su Chen's arm, gently stroking and kneading it. Does it still hurt? Yes. Su Chen stubbornly told the truth. You're so grown up, why are you still so careless? The man grumbled discontentedly, your arm is almost broken into pieces. Why use so much force? Enough. Xiaowan has been injured like this and you still want to criticize him. Can you say a few less words? The woman glared at the man. The man pursed his lips and changed the subject. How have you been these years? Have you grown up? Pretty good. I have a kind girlfriend and we are engaged, Su Chen said, knowing that his parents would be most pleased to hear this. Oh, not bad, Su Chen retracted his arm. The muscle damage had been perfectly repaired, blood vessels reconnected, not a trace of bruising left. No matter how many times he went through it, he would always marvel at the miracle. Unfortunately, it could only treat physical injuries. Woof woof. A small white dog frolicked at Su Chen's feet. Not far away, a black cat glanced at it disdainfully, then elegantly jumped onto Su Chen's knee, claiming the spot in advance. It then provocatively meowed at the small white dog, can you handle it? The dog barked in frustration. Equally angry was a small fox. It was about to drive away the cat that didn't know any better and reclaim its territory when its gaze suddenly froze. Yip! A large fox sat not far away, accompanied by three unweaned young foxes. It couldn't believe its eyes. It rubbed them with its paws. The fox was still there. Yip! Without caring about the danger, it excitedly pounced into the arms of the large fox. Meanwhile, in the darkened time zone, all surviving creatures stared blankly at the lives that should no longer exist before them. Is this a trap? They couldn't believe their eyes, nor could they believe that in this cruel apocalypse, there was a willingness to show a shred of mercy. The surrounding severed limbs, blood, and entrails all served as reminders of the asteroid's cruelty, which must have come to destroy humanity and everything else. How could there be mercy? The past 24 hours had been the most despairing day of their lives. The survivors seemed lucky to have made it through. But their loved ones were dead, their families were gone, the ideals and careers they had fought for half their lives had lost all value, and everything they believed in had collapsed on that day. They could only survive instinctively, not knowing how to face tomorrow, or why they were still alive. A sense of despair enveloped the entire blue planet. Sitting paralyzed amidst the ruins, people had never felt as powerless and insignificant as they did today. The most terrifying thing was not death. It was that after the collapse of civilization, all the values bestowed by civilization were stripped away. Humanity was no longer noble, they had to struggle like beasts, at any cost, just to ensure the survival of their genes. Students who had spent a decade studying could no longer hope for an imperial examination, laborers who had saved for 20 years for a down payment would never move into a new home, the other half of a wedding was now forever separated, and dreams of traveling the world in retirement were shattered as the world had turned into a wasteland. The emptiness of the spirit was like countless long hands reaching out from the abyss, dragging each person towards the void. When faced with this moment, most people didn't immediately think about how to survive in the apocalypse. Instead, they wondered whether they should continue living at all. Holding onto the decaying bodies of their loved ones, they curled up in the narrow, dark temporary shelter, numbly waiting for the night to end. And perhaps it would be another similar night. They had thought that the rest of their lives would be a cycle of such repetition, no different from livestock. Until this moment, they stared blankly at the body in their arms, then at the figure approaching them. Both had the same face. Fool, are you going to give up and die like this? Tears could no longer be held back, falling like rain. Why are you crying? Okay, don't hold me so tightly, you're squeezing me too hard. Anyway, have a happy second day of the Lunar New Year. Thank you for mourning me. Today is the second day of the Lunar New Year in the year of Jia Chen. Avoid, napping, debt collection, laundry, sweeping. Recommended, visiting mother's home, eating wontons, ancestral worship. Outside the window, the cold wind howled, 
and the fireplace flames danced. A big fox and four little foxes were curiously roasting by the fireplace, one of them curiously reached out its tail tip, then cried out in pain as it caught on fire. The cat sneered coldly, while the dog ran over and got into a scuffle with the foxes. Su Chen calmly inquired about the well-being of the people, with everyone tacitly avoiding discussing the current situation, whether they had seen a ghost or it was all a dream. They just cherished this rare moment, until the rooster crowed at dawn. Upon hearing the rooster's call, Su Chen closed his eyes for three seconds, then got up to tidy up the dining table. Yelp! The little fox looked desolate as it gazed at the empty room in front of it. It couldn't understand this sudden reunion and parting, so it anxiously sniffed around, searching every nook and cranny where they might be hiding. Stop looking, they're gone. Yelp yelp yelp. The little one, unwilling to accept reality, continued to gnaw on Su Chen's pants leg, hoping he could work a miracle. Su Chen picked it up and said sternly, I don't have that ability, it's just you and me here. The little one drooped its ears, weakly crawled back into the pocket, curling up into a ball. We'll meet again next year. Yelp. Yes, every year, as long as we're both alive. So you need to work hard to finish gnawing on this tree. The little one, frightened, covered its face with both paws, striking a pose reminiscent of a famous painting. After a brief recharge, they still had to face the harsh reality. But for most people who had lost their will to survive, at least this time there was a glimmer of hope. It's really strange. What happened last night? Did you all see it too? Du Mingyue asked Gan Chongji and the others. Gan Chongji pondered, I have heard of a theory that life is not just composed of flesh and blood, but also leaves traces of its existence in the quantum field. When the material life dies, the traces left in the quantum field still exist, and with quantum entanglement, they can affect people and things with deep connections from their past lives, even being observed by loved ones as ghost-like shadows. That sounds more like metaphysics, do even big scientists believe in this? Du Mingyue chuckled. If you understand quantum mechanics, you'll find a lot of counter-logical metaphysical events in it, such as the famous double-slit interference in quantum entanglement communication devices that can surpass the speed of light. Compared to metaphysics, I believe more in metaphysical phenomena that have been observed but cannot be explained, waiting for science to explore the next uncharted territory. So, what about last night? Don Chongji remembered Su Chen's words and repeated them verbatim. Just take it as it is, at least it gives you something to think about. However, this ambiguous answer did not satisfy Du Mingyue's curiosity. What is the cause of this phenomenon? Do you have any clues? I have some speculations, but I'm not certain, Gan Chengji said, firstly, the lunar year is based on the lunar phase algorithm. In our lunar year, it represents the time it takes for the moon to orbit the sun. The lunar month represents the time it takes for the moon to orbit the earth. On the first day of each month, the sun-moon-earth align in a straight line. Due to the viewing angle, the moon blocks the sunlight from the sun, and the earth can only observe the backlit side of the moon, so the moon appears as a thin crescent. On the 15th day of each month, the three align in the order of sun-earth-moon, with the sunlight illuminating the moon's surface facing the earth to the maximum extent, allowing us to observe the full moon. The only common point between these two events is the alignment of the sun, earth, and moon in a straight line. When in this aligned state, the earth experiences the greatest tidal forces from the two celestial bodies. Those living by the sea know, the tides are highest on the first and fifteenth days, known as the new moon and full moon tides, caused by this special positional relationship. So, you think the key to the problem lies in tidal forces? Yes, gravity is a significant variable in the quantum field. And according to the situation predicted by Su Chen, if the moon accelerates its motion and synchronizes with the Earth's rotation period, the interval between the new moon and full moon will become shorter and shorter, and in the future, we may have to experience the terrifying nights of the 1st and 15th every day, because we have to go through two lunar cycles every day. That's really too much. But why does the killer on the first day have a completely different attitude on the second day? Maybe he had his fill the day before. Gan Chongji shrugged, he hadn't figured out this question, including the previous theory was just a preliminary speculation, he was not responsible for any of the words above. If you want to know the specific truth, you still have to ask Su Chen. The radio station is fixed. At this time, good news came from not far away. Du Mingyue also gave up on further questioning, quickly stepping over the stiff bodies in the broadcast station, picking up the microphone. Living for a long time, there are countless things that break one's cognition, but fortunately Su Chen never worries about those things. His spiritual awareness extended, continuing to appreciate Lu Mingqing's plan to conspire against him with others. Shen Gu, that kid is especially cunning, no matter what method we use, he will never open the door. Zhou Xiaodong was in pain and couldn't even speak clearly. Last night, he had not been serving the master. How do you know? Do you know him? Yes. 
My girlfriend is his girlfriend's sister. Lu Mingcheng raised his hand, signaling the prison doctor to give him medication. He has a girlfriend? Yes, he is extremely devoted to that girlfriend. Everyone in the world knows his deep affection for his girlfriend moves heaven and earth. Lu Mingcheng grinned. He wasn't afraid of Su Chen's firepower. He was afraid that Su Chen had no weaknesses. As long as there was a weakness, could he watch his beloved girlfriend die outside the door? As long as he could bring his girlfriend here, torture her with all kinds of methods in front of the safe house, it was only a matter of time before he opened the door. What is his girlfriend's name? Zhao Mengyin. In the dim basement, the faint light of the phone screen illuminated Zhao Mengyin's face. She looked at the messages Su Chen had sent her before. Baozi, happy birthday. And she replied, it's my birthday today, and you only gave me a lipstick that costs a few hundred yuan? How dare you message me like this? What do you want then? At least a bag. It's not that I don't want to buy, but we have to consider our future life. Houses are so expensive these days, you still want children, and their education costs a lot. Enough. Stop explaining. You're just making excuses for your lack of ambition. She had never realized before how caring Su Chen's concern was. She always turned a deaf ear, and had never even read through a conversation completely. Now, as she opened the chat history again, every past word of concern turned into countless sharp knives, piercing Zhao Mingyin's heart at this moment. It made her remember, there was once someone who cared so much about her, not like now, where calls to the heavens and earth went unanswered, and life only consisted of scalpels, military dogs, and AK-47s. Regret? Regret, regretting how she used to express herself so openly. If only she had been a bit more discreet, if her level had been a bit higher, let Su Chen taste a bit of sweetness, implement the strategy of boiling a frog in warm water. If only she had been a bit smarter, recognized Su Chen's true savings earlier. At this moment, Su Chen would have definitely revealed the 60 million savings, let her move into a luxurious villa, and live a life of luxury. She would have become the most prestigious rich lady in her circle. It was all Su Chen's fault for being so good at hiding, and her own fault for being so careless, letting him see the chat records. If she had created a new WeChat account, tied to another phone number, even if Su Chen found out, he would never have seen her chat records with Li Gu. As long as he hasn't seen the chat records between himself and Li Gu, he will definitely still be his obedient little treasure, treating himself as if he were a deity. Even if she had been a little more ruthless at the beginning, poisoned him earlier, sent him straight to the afterlife, Maybe she would have found that bank card with tens of millions when sorting out his estate. Why bother being trapped in the basement like this, being treated like a plaything like a dog? She hasn't eaten for two days, and the day before yesterday was supposed to be the day for family reunion on New Year's Eve. But after a blast on the surface, there was no more sound, and no one came down to deliver food for the next two days. Zhao Mengyan could sometimes hear footsteps and cursing from above, confirming that there were still people guarding above, but somehow, she seemed to have been forgotten here. Last night, she even hallucinated from hunger, dreaming that long-dead elders came to comfort her. She was so scared that she beat those elders on the spot. In the end, her grandmother flipped her off. She turned into a wisp of smoke and left. Someone come. I'm starving to death. She is now so hungry that her front chest is sticking to her back, and seeing others in the dungeon with their arms cut off for days makes her feel very delicious. Unfortunately, no one outside responded to her. Where is Su Chen's girlfriend? Take us there. LV Mingcheng ordered. Ah, uh, Zhou Xiaodong looked embarrassed, in northern Myanmar. Are you kidding me? No. Really. She really went to northern Myanmar. Before I went to jail, I heard that Zhao Mengyin took a plane to the Wa State in northern Myanmar to meet a person named Li Gu to discuss financial software, and she never came back. Hmm. LV Mingcheng is very familiar with this rhythm. First, send someone disguised as a handsome and wealthy man, then specifically target those naive and self-absorbed piglets, wait for them to be addicted and unable to extricate themselves, and then introduce their financial software. If the other party voluntarily invests all their assets, that would be a perfect ending. If the other party is willing to fly over to cash out, that would be even more perfect. Before the Alliance Army started cutting, there were over a million people from Dong Hanga living in northern Myanmar, with tens of thousands just working under LV Kochang, not to mention that there were more warlords in northern Myanmar than just LV Kochang's family. How did these people come here? To be honest, some were deceived, but most of those who have risen to the top voluntarily, including LV Mingcheng and LV Kochang themselves, they were once Dong Hangu people. The management of the industrial park are also Dong Hangu people. After all, they understand their compatriots the best. Dong Hangu people scam Dong Hangu people. It's just that, I wonder what position Zhao Mengyan has reached now. There have been precedents of piglets entering the management level. 
But according to Zhou Xiaodong's account, that woman was deceived to northern Myanmar in such a low intelligence scam, she probably didn't have the ability to climb up. The flight from the city to northern Myanmar takes over four hours, if everything goes smoothly, you can come back in a day. I know the boss of a private airport in the city, take people there and see if you can bring her back. LV Mingcheng signaled for his second in command to set off. Boss, if we can take a plane, why don't we just fly back to northern Myanmar directly? The third in command couldn't help but ask. Are you stupid? Who dares to take a plane at this time? What if it crashes? The second in command. Then why did you ask me to go back? Second, you take the risk and go back. If you capture the safe house, you will have priority in food and drink in the future. LV Mingcheng promised. And there's another reason I'm not going back. The piglets here are docile and easy to deal with. If we go back to northern Myanmar, we might not be as comfortable here. If I make it big here in the future and have my share to eat, then you will definitely have yours. The second in command gritted his teeth. Got it. I trust you, boss. Go. Go to the Wa state and find that woman. Bring her back. Definitely. After making arrangements, LV Mingcheng immediately swaggered to the front of the warden's safe house. Su Chen, listen. I have sent someone to find your girlfriend. The voice of Su Chen's astonishment immediately came through the intercom at the door. What? What? You. Hearing Su Chen's terrified voice, LV Mingcheng burst into laughter. I'm telling you, if you obediently open the door now, we won't harm you, we can share the safe house together. But if you selfishly try to monopolize the safe house, then don't blame me for being ruthless. What are you going to do? Su Chen roared in despair, don't involve my family. You despicable scoundrel with no sense of morality. Hee <laughs> hee, I'll bring your girlfriend to the door in a moment. If you don't open the door, just wait to see her fingers, toes, arms, legs, and head being cut off one by one by me. Beast. You beast. Ah you scoundrel. Hee <laughs> hee, so are you going to open the door? No. LV Mingqing's blood pressure surged again. Looks like you won't shed a tear until you see the coffin. Just wait. When your girlfriend arrives, it will be too late for regrets. LV Mingcheng left a harsh word and temporarily retreated with his men. LV Mingcheng was not an unknown figure in the future. Su Chen remembered very clearly that these guys had done well by being ruthless and cunning, along with the firearms in the prison, during the Headless Fly era and the Great Migration era. The leaders, brothers LV Kochang and LV Mingcheng, rose in the prison, specifically recruiting ruthless criminals as their subordinates, forming a powerful army. It wasn't until the end of the Great Migration Era that the criminal organization led by these two brothers was absorbed and incorporated by a larger organization. And that organization was called ARC. ARC, as the name suggests. According to the Bible, when the Great Flood came, only a very small elite group approved by Noah had the qualification to board the ARC for refuge. Second day of the second month, if I remember correctly, today is the first appearance of the ARC in front of the world, creating the first death scam after the arrival day. With this in mind, Su Chen, with a historical witness mentality, turned on the radio and tuned into the channel of the upper city broadcasting station. But as soon as he turned it on, he heard a familiar voice. Who are you people? Ah, uh, why does this voice sound so much like Gan Changji's? Stay still and don't move. Yang, go turn off the radio. The radio was then manually turned off, leaving only a sizzling sound. Don't cut off halfway. Damn, who turned off the radio, I hope you get constipated and have your butt torn. Why is Gan Changji at the radio station? What is he doing there? This shouldn't be the case, in the previous life, there should only be people from the ARC at the radio station, and there was no mention of anyone else being there. Although Su Chen didn't care about the butterfly effect, he already had enough confidence to face any future danger. Whether it was hoarded medicinal herbs or the massive points he hadn't used yet, they were his confidence in facing the future. But out of human nature's curiosity, he was very curious about what was happening on the radio. It was unbearable. Right. I wonder if I can draw reconnaissance items from the lottery. This random prize pool always seemed to respond correctly to his needs, providing him with somewhat useful but not too much stuff like Doryman. Su Chen decided to give it another try. He opened the regret points lottery pool. Current regret points balance, it is close to nearly 13 billion, the last four digits are jumping wildly so it's hard to see clearly. Su Chen planned to use a quarter of the points tonight to enhance himself, leaving the remaining three quarters of the points for later when the mysterious shop unlocks. Otherwise, in case the shop reveals something with super high cost effectiveness, and he can't afford it, that would be a tragedy, right? Besides, a quarter is also tens of billions, enough to make him invincible at his current stage. So he didn't develop a sudden nouveau riche mentality just because he suddenly gained a massive amount of points and spent it all, after all, he had seen the era of four sons, 
and a hundred billion was pitifully small on the stellar scale. He decided to maximize the use of every single point. He had a hunch that the elements in the mysterious shop would be of great use. Perhaps it could allow him to live comfortably in the four-body era. Well, let's draw a few and see. After drawing about 50 or 60 times, he finally got a reward. It turned out to be a golden reward. At the moment he saw the brilliant golden light, Su Chen felt that everything was worth it. You have obtained, Dark Crow Vision, Su Chen looked at the Dark Crow in his hand and used the identification technique to bring up the instructions. Can inject spiritual knowledge to make it fly, each injection can fly for 24 hours, current maximum contact distance is 50 kilometers. While the Dark Crow is present, you can switch to the Dark Crow's perspective at any time. Good stuff. If having absolute control within the range of divine consciousness means that every movement cannot escape one's notice, then the Dark Crow supplements the shortcomings of one's external vision of divine consciousness, allowing oneself to foresee dangers in a larger range in advance. Hiss, the consumption of divine consciousness is really huge. After injecting the divine consciousness, Su Chen felt a little dizzy, and quickly chewed on a ginseng beard for half a second to recover. Now I can release the Dark Crow to give it a try. The feathers of the Dark Crow displayed a colorful black under the sunlight. Truly a colorful black. From different angles, the pitch black feathers revealed a dreamy layered metallic luster, which was roughly due to the observation defect caused by humans having only three types of cone cells, so they could not identify its true color. If it were a bird with a fourth type of cone cell, it would definitely think that this crow was incredibly beautiful. Alright, take off. Don Chongji looked incredulously at the group of black clothed people in front of him. They were armed to the teeth, equipped with professional gear from special forces all over their bodies, holding guns in their arms, standing in formation, with cold eyes. In the land of Dong Huan, Gan Chongji absolutely did not believe that such a group of professional forces could suddenly emerge from the ground. Which unit are you from? Du Mingyue stepped forward, protecting Gan Chongji and her husband and daughter behind her, I am Major General Du Mingyue of the Air Force 140th Brigade. Where is your leader? What is the mission objective? Du Mingyue's shoulder insignia seemed to have no deterrent effect at all. These black-clothed people did not even move their guns, still pointing them firmly at Du Mingyue and the others. Seeing no response, Du Mingyue stated her purpose, Shanqing is a coastal city, and half of the city will be flooded in the next few days. I came here to notify the coastal residents to evacuate via radio. Seek refuge at Shihu Camp. What are you here for? The dark muzzles continued to target the hearts of Du Mingyue and the people around her. Nya Haiyang and Nya Yao were so nervous that they dared not even breathe. Suddenly, Gan Chongji's gaze changed, and an unpleasant memory flashed through his mind. He suddenly burst into a mocking laughter, laughing madly. Ah, I understand now. Ark. Ark plan. So that's it. You guys actually believed me, you fucking believed me long ago. Upon hearing the words Ark plan, these black clothed people finally showed some reaction. One of the black clothed men who looked like a captain picked up a walkie-talkie, communicated with the outside world for a few moments, and then the door to the radio studio opened. A man in a suit walked in. Gan Lao, we just consulted Noah, and Noah believes that you are qualified to board the Ark. You can now come with us. Enough! Gan Chongji angrily interrupted, is this the first phase of the Ark plan? Corresponding to the sentence in the Bible, take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every kind of bird. You are selecting the creatures to bring on board the ark and eliminating all the commoners who are not qualified to board the ark. Gan Lao. The man frowned, you can't always be so idealistic. The reality is that most people are destined to die without a doubt. As a member of the think tank, didn't you also participate in the simulation in the sandbox? You know that food will become scarcer and scarcer, that is an inevitable result. He he. The think tank, are they all on the ship already? Of course, you can come too, mister. Gone, your reputation is outstanding, we will always reserve a place for you on the ark. The man paused, then changed the subject. Of course, we know that for scholars like you, what you seek is not just survival. So we will continue to provide you with a research environment, allowing you to utilize your knowledge and truly save this world. You know, only the Ark can provide you with such an environment. Don Chongji calmed down, seemingly persuaded. So, why did you come to the radio station? He asked in a deep voice. We need to clear the area, the upper city is a resource-rich large city. Don't you have enough prepared resources in advance? Still eyeing the resources of the upper city? Not just the upper city, we plan to reclaim all the resources of every city first, and then redistribute them in the future, which is the most beneficial decision for the survival of the races. All. Reclaimed? Du Mingyue and others gasped. 
This is a wartime strategy, the man explained, all the ARC Alliance countries will work together to advance these plans, achieve resource sharing and commonality, and ultimately overcome this disaster together. Isn't it great? This is a grand feat of all humanity united. Ha ha, ha 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 ha. Don Chongji laughed angrily, his eyes turning red. You are united now? What were you doing earlier? Mr. Gone, please understand, this is the only way for humanity. I'll be damned. Don Chongji rushed towards the man like a madman, but unfortunately was knocked down by a soldier's heavy punch to the cheek. He was then held against the wall by two soldiers, struggling weakly like a chicken being lifted up. The man pushed his glasses up, Mr. Gone, idealism is a good thing, but your perspective is too narrow. If you remain obstinate, I'm afraid I can't let you board the Ark. The Ark doesn't need a saint. Perspective? Ha ha. Do you have the face to talk about perspective? Du Mingyue took a step forward, agile and swift, delivering two beautiful uppercuts followed by a back throw, temporarily helping Gan Chongji out of the encirclement. Gan Chongji wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, his suppressed voice almost a growl. It took us tens of thousands of years of evolution to climb to the top of the food chain on Earth. Protecting the weak is evidence of civilization progress, a necessary means to maintain genetic diversity of the races. Do you have the face to talk about perspective with this strategy? Do you believe what you're saying? Major Du Mingyue, obeying orders is your duty, you should listen to my orders now. The man in a suit was displeased with Du Mingyue's interference. Pa! Du Mingyue spat, I swore allegiance to the people, not to you. It seems you prefer punishment over a toast. The man in the suit sighed lightly, raising his hand. The dark gun barrels once again pointed at the group. Ha ha ha, are you going to kill us? Come on. Gan Chongji mockingly pointed at his own head, shoot here. Let the world remember that you killed the discoverer of the asteroid, killed the one who warned you. Again and again. The man in the suit was clearly enraged, he ordered his men to surround them. Tie them up, gag them, let them calm down. Then we'll turn on the radio. The soldiers officially tied up Gan Chongji, Du Mingyue, and their family, covering their mouths. Then, in front of them, the man in the suit walked to the microphone of the radio station. With a gentle smile, he said, Attention all citizens, attention all citizens, this is the Special Disaster Response Center, codenamed ARC. He deliberately revealed the codename, so those in the know would understand the true message the radio was trying to convey. Now, all citizens please leave your homes immediately and head to the Coastal Bridge Shelter. Coastal Bridge? Don Chongji and Du Ming Yue's eyes were almost spitting fire, and several people struggled in anger. That was the opposite direction of the real refuge. If there is a big tide today, the first thing to be submerged will be the coastal bridge. Shangqing, a city with a population of tens of millions. He not only did not allow people to evacuate to the west, but instead called on all citizens to rush to the lowest lying areas by the sea. If the citizens believed his nonsense, the consequences are unimaginable. At this time, the man in the suit added, the refuge at the coastal bridge will close in three hours, please citizens arrive as soon as possible. It's over. Everyone's heart sank to the bottom of the valley. Just like those clever scams, they often set a time limit to compress the victims thinking time to the extreme. The man in the suit is proficient in this. So he set a three-hour time limit, which is not enough for people to distinguish the truth of the news, and the real news will definitely not have time to spread to the ears of the citizens. This is already a deadly situation. As for you, after completing the radio broadcast, the man in the suit turned off the radio and squatted in front of Gan Changji mockingly. You have one last choice, take your ticket and board the Ark. Or, stay here forever. The gun barrel pressed against the back of everyone's head, and the man in the suit tore off the tape from Gan Changji's mouth with his own hands. He didn't care about the others, he just wanted to hear Gan Changji's answer. Ha to a. Gan Changji answered him with action. Just as his mouth regained freedom, a sticky old phlegm spat on the man in the suit's face. I will not believe you anymore. Working with people like you is just aiding and abetting. Okay. The man in the suit wiped off the old phlegm on his face, took out a pistol, and loaded it. He didn't want to waste any more words and was ready to send these stubborn fools on their way directly. Boom. I f asterisk king dare you to sh asterisk t on my head again. A familiar angry roar suddenly appeared in the broadcasting building, and a terrifying force suddenly smashed open the door of the radio station. The flying door even knocked out two masked soldiers on the spot. A strange bird flapped its colorful black feathers, cunningly avoiding all attacks, and landed on the head of the man in the suit. The newcomer seemed completely unaware of the situation indoors, still stupidly punching towards the strange bird, or rather the man in the suit's head. Bang! The man in the suit was almost punched into his brain by this fist, his nasal bone and cheekbone shattered on the spot, and he fainted instantly.
The newcomer then picked up the man in the suit's pistol and aimed it at the man in the suit's head. Don't move. The scene immediately became tense. Gan Changji looked incredulously at the newcomer. I'll be damned. Lao Gao? When did you become a superhero? Thanks to Tosu Chen. Gao Jingyi shook his head in annoyance, shaking off the ice cream like bird droppings on his head. At this point, his arms were showing a faint silver sheen, and his muscles were bulging. F asterisk King Bird, for some reason, aimed its ass at my head and kept dropping bombs. I chased it all the way, didn't expect to meet you guys here. Just now, he saw the bound people at the door, so he took advantage of the situation and launched a direct assault. It seems it deliberately led me here. Strange, whose bird is this? Everyone looked at each other. And the dark crow had already elegantly landed on the windowsill, grooming its feathers with its beak, as if everything that had just happened had nothing to do with it. Regardless, thanks to it. At this point, the guns were all pointed at Gao Zheni. Obviously, Gao Zheni's displayed strength had far exceeded their understanding of humans, comparable to those monsters that ravage at night. The fear of unknown creatures made even battle-hardened elite soldiers find it difficult to remain absolutely calm. I advise you not to think about shooting, let's exchange hostages obediently. Otherwise, you will all stay here today. Gao Jingyi's tone was very polite, sounding willing to cooperate in the exchange. The soldier captain nodded, slowly stepped back, and chose to release two hostages first. They released Nye Yao first, followed by Nye Haiyang. Then they signaled for Gao Jingyi to release the man in the suit. No, you have to release one more, and then we exchange the last one together. The soldier captain assessed the danger of the remaining two hostages and chose to release Gan Changji first to prevent the stronger combatant Du Mingyue from retaliating. Okay, the last one. Both sides followed the agreement and released the hostages at the same time, pushing them towards each other's camp. After the exchange was completed, the soldiers slowly withdrew while carrying the unconscious man in the suit. Lao Gao, lend me the gun. Ha! Gan Changji borrowed a handgun from Gao Zhengi. Bang! 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 Without hesitation, Gan Chongji chose to shoot at the retreating soldiers. No one expected that this seemingly weak scientist would turn into a killer at this moment. In the cold silence, he emptied all the bullets in the gun. His aim was off, but there were enough bullets, and the man in the suit's head burst open on the spot. Beasts! Why do you beasts play with the world? Why do you live so comfortably? Why? He kept shooting until the magazine was empty without realizing it. The remaining soldiers quickly retreated to counterattack, but at that moment, a crow flew in front of them and used its agile advantage to peck out the eyes of two of them. Sorry, I can't let you go back and report. Gao Xingyi took the opportunity to close the distance, using his incredibly strong metal arm, combined with Du Mingyue's precise marksmanship, to free this small team. After a fierce battle, the air was filled with the smell of blood and gunpowder. Several people gasped for air and collapsed on the ground. Nia Haiyang wanted to cover his daughter's eyes, but after some thought, he let go, as scenes like this might become a Norman life, and it's better to accept it sooner. He reminded, now is probably not the time to rest. The radio can still be used, and we need to remind the citizens now. But how do we make the citizens believe us? Believe our words and not the so-called disaster response center? The group looked troubled. Indeed, convincing the citizens was a serious challenge. The other side's preconceptions might lead them to dismiss any warnings as a conspiracy. In the midst of silence, Gao Jingyi had a sudden inspiration. Su Qin. Suddenly, everyone's eyes lit up. Right. Lao Gao, you are a genius. If there were symbols that could make people feel trust and safety, it would undoubtedly be that name, the doomsday prophet who sacrificed himself to save humanity but was betrayed by all mankind. Su Qin. Let's say that Su Qin told us this news. This way, everyone will choose to believe us and not head towards their doom at the Binhai Bridge. Yes. That's it. Quick, turn on the radio. Let's get to work. Dark Crow, Ka, how did this bystander get involved in this mess? All citizens heading to the upper city, please stop immediately. We have received accurate information that the Binhai shelter will be submerged by the tide today. Please turn around and gather at the West Lake shelter away from the coast. Our information comes from Su Chen. He had previously predicted the disaster caused by the asteroid. All citizens are urged to stop heading to the Binhai shelter immediately. If you are already at the shelter, please move to the top floor of the highest building within sight for refuge. The Binhai shelter is located in a coastal depression, buried deep underground, not waterproof, only for defense against air raids. Once a tidal flooding event occurs, the consequences will be unimaginable. If you don't believe us, just look up at the star ring above, the star ring only appears in the equatorial zone of a planet, which means there has been a significant shift in latitude in the upper city. 
a massive tsunami in human history could be imminent. The coastline receded by over 10 kilometers last night. Correspondingly, a high-altitude radio on the west coast of the Americas has already broadcasted a distress signal globally. The coastal cities stretching for over a dozen kilometers there have already been submerged by seawater, and they didn't have time to make any preparations. But we can. Please believe this message. I, along with everyone at the radio station, can take responsibility for these words. My name is Du Mingyue, standing next to me is the discoverer of the small asteroid, Gan Shangji, as well as my husband and daughter. We will meet everyone at the West Lake Camp. The Ark is adept at human nature, knowing what means to use to make people anxious, to make them lose time to think and blindly follow orders. Du Mingyue is not like that, so her only way is honesty. She has honestly told all the citizens in the upper city who can hear the broadcast everything she knows. Whether to make judgments based on reason or to rush into the coastal shelter in anxiety is not something she can control. Gone Lao, how long until the high tide? Don't ask me, I miscalculated yesterday. Gan Chongji was embarrassed, there was no high tide all day yesterday, the water kept receding. It must have been brewing a super move. It could come at any time. Since we haven't seen the water yet, I'll stay here and broadcast a few more times. Gan Lao, you guys go to the shelter first. Just then, the crow at the window started squawking. Ka, ka. Before the few people could understand the crow's meaning, there was a whoosh boom. The building suddenly shook violently, and debris fell from the ceiling. In the chaos, the explosion rang in their ears, and it took a while for them to get up. Rocket? But it doesn't seem like the studio was bombed. Damn. It's the radio signal transmission tower. There's no need to think about who did it. It must be the Ark, who received the broadcast message and realized that the plan was exposed. They didn't hesitate to block the channels of the people's voices, trying to salvage the situation through other means. Soon, new messages kept coming from other frequencies of the radio station. Don't believe Du Mingyue. She has joined the new century cult. She is a traitor against humanity. All citizens, please evacuate to the coastal shelter in an orderly manner according to the original plan. The West Lake shelter is already overcrowded. Nowhere to stay overnight. When darkness falls, you will undoubtedly die. The crowd fell silent. Congratulations to you, Gan Shangji, who had gradually become accustomed to the magical unfolding of the world, patted Du Mingyue on the shoulder with a smile. Welcome to the ranks of traitors. Su Chen sat cross-legged, gnawing on a 600,000 color giant radish, enjoying the various states of beings on the radio. After the network was cut off, the most powerful means of communication was the radio station. In addition to the central broadcasting stations in the city, there were many civilian and military radio stations that could send and receive radio signals, but their range was not as wide as the city's broadcasting stations. However, after the city's broadcasting station was bombed, these private small radio stations became the biggest voice. And the caliber of these voices was unexpectedly unified at this moment. Don't believe Du Mingyue. She is deceiving people under the guise of that prophet. Your ark is still your ark. Su Chen couldn't help but sigh. As the most powerful force in each era before, during, and after, the influence of the Ark was within his expectations. However, the early confrontation between Du Mingyue and the Ark was quite different from the previous life. In the previous life, at this time, Du Mingyue and Ye Haiyang were still disabled in bed, collapsed because of their daughter's death, and naturally couldn't come to the radio station to uncover the Ark's conspiracy. It was even more impossible to have such a candid speech just now. Still under their own banner. But overall, it could be considered a good change. The Ark and the Fire established by Du Mingyue would sooner or later have a showdown, and those citizens saved by this speech might be the future fire. As one of the refugees saved by the fire in the previous life, Su Chen naturally wanted to see the fire triumph over the Ark. Not to mention the Ark, which is the root of all the hardships of the refugees, a bunch of bastards among bastards. In terms of disgust, the Ark can be ranked alongside Zhao Mengyan's family in Su Chen's heart. Received 500 points of regret from the dog mom, one regret crystal, currency yoho? It seems that the name on the radio triggered the receiving switch of the big moon card, allowing a familiar thing to jump in front of Su Chen. The dog mom is currently in a dilemma. Where should I go? West Lake Camp or Seaside Shelter? I don't know where that white-eyed wolf Su Chen has hidden, it would be good to ask him. If I hadn't fallen out with that white-eyed wolf in the first place. Thinking of this, the dog mom felt a sudden stomach ache. He is the doomsday prophet. I don't know what evil he has fallen into, he actually predicted the coming of the doomsday. With so much savings, he must have made thorough preparations in advance, right? The safest place in the world must be by his side, no doubt. However, just two months ago, she personally buried the chance to follow him. 
Especially when she thinks of Su Chen's filial appearance in the past, she regrets it so much that she almost collapses. You know, the son-in-law's parents passed away early, and he had always been filial to them like his own parents. If both sides hadn't fallen out, how happy would the old couple be now? She dare not think about it. It's all that useless thing Zhao Mingyan's fault. Clearly having such an excellent boyfriend, she still goes out to forage. And she eats so unattractively. If she could see Zhao Mengyan again, she would definitely beat this useless thing to death. Mom, what should we do? Where should we go? Zhao Yuancha was as anxious as a spinning top. How would I know? Who do you want me to ask? The dog mom replied impatiently. Let's go to the seaside shelter. Zhao Yuancha suggested, I have several sisters waiting for us downstairs. They are ready to go to the seaside shelter together. The dog mom hesitated. Yuancha, do your good sisters have any sources of information? Our eldest sister's name is Ouyang Baidian, she said she knows a powerful young master, joined a mysterious organization called the Ark, where all the world's top elites are. Ark? The dog mom remembered, right, the first broadcast said their operation code name is Ark. Baidian's sister won't lie to us, she is our spiritual leader, we have done many great things together. Although our sisters have had bad luck recently, always failing due to inexplicable and bizarre reasons. But Sister Badian has always encouraged us, leading us to continue our actions, never discouraged. The dog mom fell into contemplation. She knew what that actions in Zhao Yuancha's mouth meant. In her opinion, her second daughter had no independent thinking ability at all, just a fool who could be brainwashed in a few words and used as a gun by others. She could be so devoted to that Ouyang Badian, indicating that Ouyang Badian was very capable. Your eldest sister, Ouyang Badian, is she going to the seaside shelter with you? No. She just took the Ark's car and left a while ago, saying to meet us at the seaside shelter later. Didn't go? The dog mom made a decision instantly. Yuancha, you go to the seaside shelter first and meet your good sisters. You must build a good relationship with her and keep in touch, so that our family will have a chance to live a decent life in the future. What about you, mom? Can't let you work alone. Mom will go to the West Lake shelter first to reserve a spot for you. There is a former lover of mom's when she was young, very capable. Mom will go and make that connection then the two of us will have a double support in the future. But the West Lake shelter is very dangerous. It's okay, for our future, what's a little danger? The dog mom's eyes were firm as she gave Zhao Yuancha a hug. Zhao Yuancha was moved to tears, mom, but the dog mother quickly broke free, feeling like she was hugging a Michelin tire logo, nauseating to the extreme. Time is running out, so let's part ways here. Mom, you must survive. We still need to avenge that bastard. Don't worry, you take care too. The mother and daughter parted ways. One headed west, the other east. When Zhao Yuancha arrived at the seaside shelter, it was already crowded with waiting citizens. Please do not push. Place your luggage and supplies in an orderly manner at the storage area. Someone was directing the scene on site. Some citizens protested discontentedly. We worked so hard to bring these supplies. Why should we hand them over to you for safekeeping? It's just temporary storage. The underground shelter has limited space and cannot accommodate luggage. Let's get through tonight first, and we'll return the supplies to everyone tomorrow. Zhao Yuancha and her sisters obediently handed over their supplies. After all, those maintaining order were armed, and they had no choice but to comply. After handing over the supplies, Zhao Yuancha saw her suitcase being loaded onto a truck, which then drove off to the northwest. Where is that truck going? Don't worry. Those trucks are heading to the warehouse. It's too dangerous at night. The supplies must be stored in a sturdy warehouse to ensure they are safe until tomorrow, right? Makes sense. It did make some sense, but Zhao Yuancha noticed that many of the luggage tags were damaged during transport, and the workers seemed indifferent. Each person received a numbered tag when handing over their luggage, similar to baggage claim tags at the airport. But if the tag was damaged, how would they reclaim their luggage tomorrow? Alright, stop looking. Hurry inside. Zhao Yuancha was pushed into the air raid shelter. The coastal air raid shelter was one of the largest civil defense projects in the upper city, built during the Cold War. Initially established to prepare for a possible nuclear war during the Cold War, it was abandoned when the Soviet Union collapsed after a few years, ushering in a period of peace worldwide. The air raid shelter could accommodate up to 300,000 people, and it was already very crowded, with the smell of sweat and mildew mixing together, making people extremely uncomfortable. Mom, I need to pee. In the depths of the air raid shelter, a young boy looked pained. Hold on a bit longer, there are still thousands of people ahead of you in line for the toilet. Zhao Yuancha was one of the later arrivals. Where is sister Ouyang Baidian? She couldn't help but ask. With so many people here, who knows where she is? That's true. 
Several people pinched their noses and waited at the door. Bang! Suddenly, the gatekeeper picked up a walkie-talkie, exchanged a few words with others, and closed the iron gate of the air raid shelter, locking it from the outside. Due to the distance, Zhao Yuancha only heard intermittent phrases like drone surveillance, coming soon, and evacuate. What's happening? Zhao Yuancha anxiously pounded on the door. No one answered her from outside. The gatekeeper hurriedly climbed the stairs and left, then the sound of car engines starting outside the air raid shelter. The room amidst the urgent revving of engines, cars outside started up one by one, driving away, until it was completely quiet outside. At this point, even a pig could sense that something was wrong. Unfortunately, a trickle of water had already begun to flow down the stairs into the air raid shelter. Someone bravely tasted it. The water is salty. It was salty, indicating it wasn't a burst water pipe or a leak from a roadside watering truck. Even a mischievous child wouldn't have such a large bladder. Zhao Yuancha's body and voice began to tremble intensely. It's the sea. You lose. Upper City Maximum Security Prison, Warden's Safe Room. The little fox furrowed her brow in frustration, unable to understand how Su Chen had once again completed the layout of the five-in-a-row game. She struggled to lift the chess pieces with her two front paws, running around the board in circles, but couldn't find a move to reverse the losing situation. In the end, she had to reluctantly give up, panting heavily as she lay on the board, kicking away the surrounding pieces in frustration. Let's call it quits. Su Chen handed her a small twig. The little one reluctantly nibbled on the twig. It was a special Huagai twig, known for its strong nourishing effects on wild animals. How nourishing it was, Su Chen didn't know, as he had never been a wild animal. It was only after reading an autobiography written by an awakened lord in later generations that he learned about the effects of the Huagai twig. Ing. The little fox angrily pointed at the cat litter box. The litter box was clean. It seemed to be saying, I haven't vomited since I started nibbling on wood, do you know that? Su Chen poked the fox's belly, feeling it soft and flat without any signs of bloating, shaking his head, it should have been fully digested, no big issue, keep eating. The fox was filled with despair and anger, eat, it's good for your body, I'm also repeating boring tasks like you. Su Chen looked despairingly at the regret points on the lottery interface. When will this drawing end? It was the first time he realized that being a whale in the card pool also came with such annoyances. He had been drawing cards all day long, can't this damn card drawing animation be skipped? So annoying. Damn it, stupid planet, stop hitting me. Every draw hits me, and even a shiny star flies out after a big draw, almost blinding my eyes. Watching the dazzling lottery animation over and over again would make anyone feel nauseous. Su Chun used to think that the lottery animation of this system was quite imposing. Stars. I swallowed a star with every draw. And now, every time he saw a round object, he felt like throwing up. Fortunately, the system knew very well that the items he needed most at the moment were strength and agility breakthrough crystals. So the rewards in the pool were basically these two types, with an average of one appearing in every 10 draws. Can you give me a reward called 10 million consecutive draws? No response. The cold pool continued to produce breakthrough crystals in an assembly line manner. Su Chen, filled with despair and anger, rubbed his sore arms and continued to frantically press the lottery button with his other arm. Sigh, draw, draw, all these power-ups will be useful tonight, draw. Su Chen used to worry about using up his points recklessly, but now he found that it was not easy to spend all the money cleanly. Why do I get more points the more I draw? Su Chen felt both despair and joy as he saw the points increase significantly while drawing. A prompt box popped up in front of him. Incident of indirect regret among groups, small, we have started accumulating regret points for you, and additional rare rewards will be dropped at the end of the event. A small-scale indirect group regret event? Oh, it must be thanks to Gan Chongji and the others. Only they could indirectly make a group of people regret. Now the regret points are starting to rise, which means, the surge has begun. In the past life, there was no Du Mingyue and others risking their lives to capture the radio station. Everyone only heard one voice from start to finish head to the seaside. Su Chen remembered that not only was the seaside shelter overcrowded, but even the citizens outside the shelter were piled up, with ten blocks around crowded with people. When the surging seawater flooded into the city, it quickly turned into extremely rapid currents. Due to the street's narrow effect, the speed of the water even exceeded 160 kilometers per hour. No matter how hard the seaside residents struggled, they could not escape this terrifying flow. They were engulfed by the seawater, then mercilessly swept away by the offshore current into the deep sea. The lucky ones drown on the spot, while the unlucky ones have to turn into a feast for ghouls. Ark, you've done so many bad things. Fortunately, in this life, 
By taking over the radio station, a seed of doubt was planted in the hearts of the seaside residents. Once the seed of doubt is planted, people will start to think. And once people start to think, the tricks of the deceivers are not as effective. The setting sun is like blood, with tall buildings blocking the last ray of light on the horizon. Night is approaching. The unusually calm air is like every evening when people finish work and head home. But the stone in people's hearts did not fall to the ground with the end of work, instead it hung even higher. On the first day of the new year, the tranquility of the world is shattered. On the second day, a bowl of dreamlike hot soup gives people the strength to catch their breath in this cold world. And what about the third day? In traditional Eastern culture, the third day of the new year is considered the most taboo day of great calamity. Or it can even be called the most calamitous day. This day is known as the Day of the Red Dog, where it is taboo to pay New Year visits, light lamps, show affection, or speak too much. Everything is forbidden. Perhaps after the asteroid has adapted to local customs, these taboos will all manifest in the same form, the taboo of being alive. Eat well, we're going out tonight, it's safer to eat more. The third day of the new year, the day of the red dog, although not as eerie as the first day, is definitely the day with the highest death rate during the new year. This can be considered the final major disaster of the new year. Once you get through this, the next wave of danger will come after the 15th day. However, for those with sufficient strength, the day of the red dog is not a danger. It's an opportunity. Ha! Huh? The little guy looked curiously at Su Chen as he took out a map, studying it carefully and drawing lines on it. The day of the red dog only comes once a year, so we must make the most of it tonight and efficiently utilize the special output of the day of the red dog. He was mapping out the most profitable monster spawning route. The day of the red dog produces a rare material called red dog stone, which can be mixed with drugs to enhance spiritual abilities. This is very useful for Su Chen. After spending the afternoon drawing cards and researching, Su Chen finally understood the three attributes of strength, agility, and spirit. Firstly, the agility, strength, and spirit provided by the system are complementary. Having agility without the muscle strength provided by strength will result in situations where one moves too fast and ends up killing themselves. At the same time, spirit is also crucial. Spirit determines one's ability to control their body. When both strength and agility are raised to over 10,000, Su Chen clearly realizes that his brain can no longer keep up with this advanced hardware. If the body is likened to a computer, then agility is the graphics card, strength is the power supply, and spirit is the CPU. These three must work together, complement each other, and must advance together, none can be lacking. Otherwise, no matter how high one of them is, the shortcomings of the other two will drag down the true effectiveness that can be exerted. Due to the system's drop rate issue, Su Chen's spirit drops far lower than his strength and agility. So he needs to find ways to improve his spirit from outside the system, hence the importance of hoarding those drugs. And the red dog stone becomes very useful. We'll start from the prison, move through the residential area, all the way to the southwest, keep going until we reach West Lake Camp. Then head north, make a loop, and return to the prison. With West Lake Camp as the endpoint, the route is 80 kilometers long in total. Including the time to fight monsters, with his current pace, he should have more than enough time. In the previous live broadcasts, Su Chen did not mention the day of the red dog. Firstly, because time was tight, the amount of information that could be revealed in the live broadcast was limited, so he could only focus on the key points. Secondly, because, it wouldn't be of much use to say it, the red dogs indeed have no weaknesses. Unlike the subterranean ghouls, due to their living environment, they are extremely afraid of fresh water. The red dogs are not afraid of fresh water, so the only way to deal with them is to confront them head on. Only the power of the awakened can break through their defensive components on the surface, causing harm to them. Any other physical attacks are ineffective, at most causing a repel. And today is only the third day of the descent, basically few people have awakened abilities, and even if they have awakened, they will not use them. Tonight is destined to be restless. SOS. This is the Upper City Seaside Shelter. SOS. This is the Upper City Seaside Shelter. We are trapped. The exit gate of the shelter is locked, and water is flooding into the shelter. Currently, the water depth has already submerged the ankles. Please nearby organizations come to rescue immediately. We have no tools to open the iron gate. Please bring electric cutting tools. Please bring electric cutting tools. SOS. This is the Upper City Seaside Shelter. SOS. Dumingue turned off the radio, leading the crowd westward with a heavy heart. Think positively, at least we are almost at the West Lake Shelter, Nya Haiyang forced a smile. Several people staggered forward, with a crowd ahead. Although the Ark is a bastard, at least they didn't lie about one thing. The West Lake Shelter is indeed overcrowded. 
Considering the fact that subterranean ghouls fear fresh water, most of the surrounding citizens have chosen to seek refuge at the West Lake Camp. The West Lake Camp consists of boats floating on the lake, connected by wooden planks. This inevitably limits the number of people it can accommodate. No more boarding. It's full, it's full. Can't you hear me saying it's full? Get lost. The boatman retracted the boarding planks, cutting off contact with the shore. Please, it's getting dark soon, let us board, at least let our children board. Many people jumped into the water, struggling to swim towards the boat. But the people on the boat had long been accustomed to this scene, the boatmen raised their oars without hesitation, and fiercely struck the people in the water with a bang, bang, showing no mercy. Blood spread in the lake, with the refugees hit floating face down, motionless on the water. Get lost. Why don't you go to Lake Tai? Lake Tai is so big. It's too far. There's no time to go there. Go now, maybe we can make it before midnight. How could we make it in time? Can't you see how congested the roads are? I just asked the radio at Lake Tai. It's also like a dumpling feast, not enough boats. Going there is useless. The February lake water was icy cold, but this did not stop more and more people from jumping into the lake. Those lucky enough sneaked onto the boat, or stuffed infants under a year old onto the boat, while those unlucky ones drifted on the lake. Du Mingyue, Gan Shangji, and others stood by the lake, numbly watching everything in front of them. Nia Yao squatted down, not knowing what to do, so she just helped salvage the floating bodies on the river. What should we do tonight? Nia Haiyang asked, we don't know what will happen tonight, we need to find a sealed shelter, right? Otherwise, if it's like the 1st and 15th. Su Chen only said to seal the doors and windows on the 1st and 15th, not at other times, there are two possibilities. One possibility, it's not necessary to seal at other times. The second possibility, even if sealed, it's useless, Gan Chongji analyzed. He didn't say what would happen on the third, is the third very safe? No, it's still those two possibilities. Either very safe, or can't be defended against. Judging from the customs of the Red Dog Day, it's probably the latter. It's getting dark, should we go to Lake Tai? Nya Haiyang asked. Watching the chaotic situation in front of them, Du Mingyue remained silent for a full half minute. In the end, she shook her head, no, many people came here because of our broadcast, we have to take responsibility. On the horizon, the last trace of red glow also dissipated. Night fell. It was late at night. Su Chen paused the lottery, using all the breakthrough crystals drawn today. Your strength has surpassed 330,000, total reserve, 704423XXXX, your agility has surpassed 330,000, total reserve, 706624XXXX, Current spiritual perception, 64,000, total reserve, 7114514x, remaining regret points, 14, 088 billion remember when you just started drawing today, the balance was 13 billion. After drawing wildly for 12 hours, the balance became over 14 billion. It even increased by 1 billion. Difficult. A strength of 330,000 is 6,600 times that of an ordinary person's physique equivalent to about 330 tons of force in a single arm. Agility needs to consider air resistance. The calculation is more complex. It's better to test it in battle later. With only 64,000 spiritual perception, it's a weakness, indicating that if a high-intensity battle occurs, one can only exert less than one-fifth of their strength. However, it should be more than enough to deal with tonight. Having a rough understanding of his own strength, Su Chen began to change his outfit. First, he tied up his rapidly growing hair due to excessive nutrition. Then he put on a dark cloak and wore a hood. He put the little fox into the pocket of the cloak. The door opened. Outside the door, the prison corridor was silent. A tall shadow was cast on the corridor floor by the light. At the end of the shadow in the darkness, a pair of crimson eyes slowly opened. They locked eyes with Su Chen. Had hey, better early than late. He pressed the door close button. The door slowly closed behind him blocking the light from the room, isolating Su Chen and those crimson eyes in the darkness together. Roar! It moved. The agile shadow tore through the night, its sharp claws deeply embedded in the corridor wall. Jumping back and forth in the narrow corridor, its trajectory resembling a zigzagging crimson lightning bolt. In an instant, it was already close to Su Chen. The crimson giant mouth opened, aiming for Su Chen's throat with a bite. Bang! Blood splattered. The body of the red dog flew as high as ten floors. It crashed through the ceiling, then thudded onto the prison playground, twitching unable to get up. Sorry, used too much force by accident. Su Chen shook his blood-stained fist. He walked up to the bewildered red dog, a red beast resembling a wild wolf, and stomped down. Boom! The cement ground cracked as if hit by a meteorite, the red dog's head deeply buried in the pit, with spiderweb-like cracks spreading 10 meters around. 
Su Chen felt a bit troubled. Seems like I went a bit overboard, couldn't control the force, turned the red dog stone into red dog sand. With the head smashed like this, how am I supposed to extract materials? Forget it, let's put the body into the personal universe for now. We'll slowly peel it off during the day. Su Chen threw the red dog's body into the preservation area. He continued forward, the hem of his cloak fluttering slightly in the wind, gradually disappearing into the night. Without the interference of city neon lights, in the cloudless sky, the Milky Way shone brightly. The star ring was twinkling, and at this moment, some red spots were visible falling from the star ring, landing on the earth along the midnight zone. These spots were different from the previous subterranean ghouls, they descended silently, lightly touching the ground without causing any fire or explosion. They just disappeared in an instant into the darkness, waiting for the opportunity to hunt. However, tonight, those who went out hunting were not just them. Mom! Ugh, the girl wanted to speak, but her mouth was quickly covered. The father made a gesture of silence and panic, holding tightly to the mineral water bottle in his hand. The mother typed on the phone screen, Shook, don't make a sound. The family of three is currently huddled in the dilapidated security booth. In the cramped security booth, besides the family of three, there were also two security guards' bodies. The girl just wanted to say, those two bodies are too smelly. Be good, go to sleep, Nini. Mom and dad are here to guard, no monsters will harm you. The mother typed to comfort her. The family of three had come here from the upper city. They did not believe the lie of the Ark and planned to meet up with the main force at Shihu camp. But they went the wrong way. The main road was too congested to pass through, so the father decided to take a shortcut with his wife and daughter, crossing through a small road. However, they ended up getting lost. As night fell, the surrounding residential buildings had their doors locked and refused to accommodate them. They had no choice but to take shelter in a security booth for the night. Time passed by second by second, and the daughter's eyelids began to droop. The family had not slept much in three days, and everyone's nerves were on edge, exhausted. But the father and mother dared not sleep. They did not have the carefree attitude of children, they were afraid of not waking up. Suddenly, the father's expression changed drastically, his muscles tensed in an instant. There was movement. Through the crack in the security booth's door, he clearly saw something passing by from a distance, silently approaching this residential area. The thing was moving too fast, and the father could only see a rough outline, resembling a crimson earth wolf. Sizzle, sizzle, the streetlights outside the security booth flickered on and off. It seemed to attract the attention of that creature. The earth wolf paused for a long time, its gaze fixed in the direction of the security booth. It was unclear whether it was staring at the streetlights or at the family inside the security booth. The father, holding a bottle of mineral water, felt his heart rise to his throat. The appearance of this creature was different from what everyone had described as the subterranean corpse eater. Wasn't it said that the subterranean corpse eater had six sharp legs, two pairs of sickles, resembling a fusion of a mantis and a bobbit worm? What was this red dog? Did it fear fresh water? They only had fresh water on hand. Oh, whoa. The red earth wolf outside suddenly raised its neck and let out a sharp howl. The father looked in the direction of the sound and was instantly horrified. The howl brought forth a dense array of red eyes in the nearby woods. Who knew how many earth wolves were hiding in the woods, summoned by this one? They leaped out one by one from the woods, jumping into the light of the street. Huff, huff. The pack of earth wolves quickly surrounded the flickering streetlight at the entrance of the security booth, trapping the family of three inside. The circle of encirclement gradually tightened. Fear made the father weak all over, unable to hear any external sounds in his ears, only the blood flowing with his heartbeat buzzing in his mind. Roar! The leader of the earth wolves made a move. With a powerful push of its hind legs, it leaped high and bit towards the flickering light bulb. Bang! The light bulb burst in the wolf's mouth. Fortunately, it was only the light bulb that was attacked. The family inside the security booth breathed a sigh of relief. But they forgot that the light bulb was right above the entrance of the security booth. After biting the light bulb, the leader of the earth wolves fell freely and heavily onto the roof of the security booth. Bang, crackle. The security booth was just a simple iron sheet house, and this hit directly pierced through the roof of the security booth. The entire body of the wolf leader fell into the interior of the security booth, landing on the sleeping daughter and in the mother's arms. Eyes met. Oh no, this was very awkward. In the silent security booth, the mother looked at the crimson earth wolf lying on her daughter in her arms, subconsciously wanting to scream, but no sound came out of her throat. She might be the first human to observe a red dog at such close range. It was like a wolf without skin. Or rather, its skin was too transparent, composed of a substance invisible to the naked eye, showing the muscles and blood inside clearly. She could even see the beating heart under the red dog's ribs. 
And at that moment, the red dog grinned, its playful and eerie muscle face seemed to say, have you seen enough? Ugh, ugh. The four-sided shield of the security booth was torn open by the red dog outside, completely exposing the family of three to the view of the pack of red dogs. Father was able to see that the red dogs were dragging out one mutilated body after another from the building holes in the neighborhood. The blood of those bodies had not yet congealed, spurting out like fountains from the arteries in their necks, splashing onto the streets. It was obviously the spoils of the red dog's recent hunt. Screams rang out one after another along the house numbers, and the lights in each household were gradually dyed red. More and more bodies were then dragged out, gathering in the square and arranged in a strange symmetrical pattern. And now, it was the turn of a family of three. The red dog slowly and lightly stood up from the mother's arms, its bloody mouth slowly reaching towards the bewildered daughter's throat. Get away! The father futilely splashed the bottled water he held. But it wasn't an underground ghoul, it wasn't afraid of water. It just felt a strong displeasure from being doused with cold water. It slowly turned its head, its blood-like gaze in its pupils becoming exceptionally intense. The muscles at the corners of its fanged lips twitched, revealing the sharp teeth inside. Roar! The father's eyes couldn't even catch the red dog's movements before it had already pinned him to the ground. Aiming at his throat, it bit down. Bang! Click! The red dog was sent flying. A figure wrapped in a black cloak, blending into the night, silently approached the red dog pack. So many? Be careful! The father didn't know what was happening, he didn't know why the red dog had been sent flying. He just instinctively warned, they're not afraid of water. The prophet. Su Chen didn't say how to deal with them. Of course, I know. Su Chen smiled slightly, the breeze lifting the brim of his cloak, revealing a half-dusty and indifferent profile. The family of three was stunned, the father and mother seemed to have seen this face somewhere, but couldn't place it at the moment. But the daughter remembered. Just a month ago, the three of them had watched the astronomical summit on TV. It was him. Let's go together, don't waste my time. The family of three had never imagined that in this desperate and bizarre apocalypse, the insignificant humans could rely solely on themselves and stand up to these unbeatable monsters. In him, the roles of hunter and prey were completely reversed to an absurd extent. The cloak fluttered. With fists that broke the sound barrier, the red dog's head was effortlessly shattered. It was an incredibly satisfying battle, with each punch smashing a head, each elbow breaking bones, and each move causing severe damage. The once arrogant crimson earth wolves couldn't even last a round under this man's hands. The family of three even had the absurd idea that those monsters were like moths to a flame, throwing themselves into their own demise. Thinking of running? The remaining red dogs wanted to escape, but Su Chen lightly stepped forward, causing the ground to crack instantly. In the next moment, he appeared above the monster, raised his leg, and struck with immense force. Boom! Some red dogs had thought of taking away the spoils on the ground, but they quickly realized that if they lingered over the spoils, they would never be able to leave this neighborhood. So they disappeared, hiding their forms, attempting to use their stealth abilities to escape. They were clever, knowing that as long as they evaded Su Chen's slaughter, once he left, as long as one of them remained, it would be enough to devour the entire neighborhood. So, hide, just hide. Ha, huh, do you think my spiritual sense is just for show? Bang. It was futile. His spiritual sense of 64,000 covered an area of up to 6,400 meters. Within this range, every movement couldn't escape his perception. Not to mention such a large red dog, even a mosquito flapping its wings in a nearby house would be accurately locked on. Go back to your Kepler-186. Boom! With the final earthquake, the last red dog within the 6,400 meters lost its vital signs. Su Chen, as usual, threw all these dozens of red dogs into the preservation space and then hurried to the next residential area for the dog extermination point. Th. Thank you. The family of three behind stood up and trembled, thanking Su Chen's back. Thank you. Thank you so much. The family of three knelt down, continuously kowtowing in the direction Su Chen had left, like paying respects to a deity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not speaking up for you back then. I'm sorry. When the three raised their heads, the shadow had already disappeared into the darkness, leaving no trace. He seemed indifferent, whether to thanks or apologies. Su Chen glanced at the hundreds of naked dog corpses in the cold storage room, and the thought of having to strip each one by hand tomorrow made his head spin. Looking at the 11-digit regret points, he covered his face in despair. He never imagined that one day he would be troubled by having too many resources, and the exhaustion of drawing cards and stripping them one by one. What a happy trouble. Well, luckily it's only once a year. Walking to the crossroads, looking at the signpost on the map, confirming the route, he continued on. After the arrival of the naked dogs, 
they would immediately divide territories, and in most cases, different groups of naked dogs would not cross territories. So after clearing an area, no other naked dogs would come to this area tonight. Naked dogs have highly developed social skills, which is their strength and weakness. In the later period of the Great Migration Era, people learned to concentrate their efforts, clear out naked dogs in an area, hide in blank territories, and deal with the annual disaster on the third day of the first month. However, because they only appeared once a year, research materials were scarce, and most witnesses could not survive. So even in later generations, scientists have not fully understood the behavior motives of naked dogs. They only know that they like to arrange their spoils neatly, forming symmetrical patterns, as if summoning some evil deity. Next stop. Hungtian New Village, hmm, then it's off to West Lake Camp. Speaking of which, the newly arrived naked dogs are a bit weak. Su Chen also did not expect that tonight's monster clearing operation would go so smoothly. He remembered that in the later period of the era, the strength of the naked dogs kept increasing, with some powerful individuals even able to stand up against awakened lords. And now, their strength compared to the later period of the era was like night and day. Take advantage of their weakness and take their lives. Tonight, let's hunt with gusto. From ancient times to the present, West Lake has always been a top place for literati to write poetry and flirt. Since the Song Dynasty, it has been a feng shui treasure land for romantic poets in Jiangnan to express their emotions. The poems are inseparable from lotus flowers, sunset glow, and the beauty of West Lake. However, as a witness to the rise and fall of civilization for 2000 years, there was no sunset glow here today, only a lake surface dyed red with blood emitting a strong stench. Without lotus flowers, only pairs of hands reaching out to the boat's edge, already wrinkled from being soaked in water. Please let me on board. The boatman had heard this plea a thousand times. There was no longer a trace of pity in his heart. For hours before the naked dogs arrived, Dominguez once again helped drag the unconscious drowning person to the shore. The water in February was too cold. Jumping in would quickly cause muscle spasms or hypothermic fainting. Nevertheless, the sound of splashing water continued incessantly. Don Chongji watched the scenes before him and recalled bits and pieces of history, feeling a sense of absurdity and magic. Don't jump. Everyone, stop jumping. Let's set up camp ourselves. We can still set up camp now. The headless flies needed a leader, and Du Mingyue decided to temporarily become that leader. I am Du Mingyue. This is Gan Shangji. We were the ones who exposed the conspiracy of the Ark on the upper city radio station. Listen to me. We don't necessarily have to board the ship. Not board the ship? What about the ghouls? The water pipes of the water company burst the night before last. There's a major water outage nearby, we have nowhere to hide. Only the lake. Someone raised a question. We can use water pumps. As long as we organize ourselves and use water pumps to pump out the lake water to deal with the ghouls. Not jumping into the lake is also fine, Du Ming U.S. said. But where are so many water pumps here? At this moment, a young man stepped forward. I am a student from the mechanical engineering department of Shangqing University. I can help modify the car engine into a water pump. There are also classmates and teachers from our entire department here. We can all help. We are from Xiqing Technical School, and we can help too. Great. Du Ming Yue clenched his fists. What do you need? We need car engines, water pipes for pumping, gasoline or car batteries. We brought tools like wrenches ourselves. Understood. Du Ming Yue climbed onto a truck, cupped his hands like a horn. Everyone, quiet. We need a team now to dismantle the cars around us. Get gasoline, batteries, and engines. Anyone who can help, please come here. I'll go. I work at an auto repair shop. My family's auto repair shop is by the lake. I can help too. Watching the raised arms one by one, Du Ming Yue took a deep breath to calm his emotions and calmly began to organize the personnel. Team 1, go dismantle the cars in the east of the lake. Team 2, go dismantle the cars in the west of the lake. Team 3 is responsible for transportation. Quickly bring over the materials needed so that teams 4 and 5 can start assembling immediately. Do you all understand? Understood. Let's go. In addition, Team 6, go search for nearby fire pumps to see if they can still pump water. Team 7, do we have any firefighter comrades here? Yes. We are from Xiqing Fire Brigade. Can you bring the fire truck here? It's too congested here, a bit tricky. Understood. Team 1, send some people to forcibly start the cars. Team 7, please invite friends who can drive to join Team 7 to help clear the road outside the lake. Make way for the fire truck. I'll do it. For survival, it was no longer a time to worry about personal gains and losses. Everyone must act together, without any mistakes in any link, to have a chance of surviving this long night. As for tomorrow, that's a problem for tomorrow. 
For a moment, the lakeside seemed to have a heartbeat. With the beating of the heart, this massive organism began to operate in an orderly manner. However, in the face of the red dogs, this effort was likely in vain. For hours later, the lakeside was finally set up, ready for anything. Using the dismantled car doors and the fire truck body as shields, the survivors on the lakeside formed a crescent shape with their backs against West Lake. Between the shields, water gunners tightly held the water pipes, their bodies tense, ready, like soldiers waiting for the enemy to charge in ancient times. The soldiers were extremely nervous, but in their throbbing chests, there was an unprecedented strength. The close cooperation of the past four hours had shown them hope. It seemed that as long as everyone's strength could be mobilized, even if they couldn't board the refuge boat on the lake, they still had the power to deal with the subterranean ghouls. Freshwater. As long as there was enough fresh water as ammunition, the monsters were not invincible. Ready. There was a commotion in the distance, sometimes accompanied by a scream or two, and the sound of inferior paper-paste anti-theft doors being torn apart. The experience from the previous night proved that if it wasn't for the poor quality anti-theft doors made of paper, but real alloy doors, they could at least hold off the monsters outside for a long time. And as long as they held them off for a while, the monsters outside would lose interest and leave. After leaving, they would seek out the next target. Be careful. His taking advantage of the distraction caused by the commotion in the distance, a red shadow sneakily attacked the crowd. Fortunately, the high-pressure water gun on the fire truck hit accurately, using its immense impact to push the shadow back several meters. Sneaky trash. Go to hell. Several water guns instantly focused on the red shadow. Wait. Stop. Dumingyua quickly called out, with this amount of water, it should be dead by now. Based on the experience of dealing with the underground ghouls the day before yesterday, this ghoul should have already burst and lost its ability to move. The crowd erupted into cheers all day long. Haha, <laughs> that's it. Ha <laughs> ha laughter suddenly froze. They saw the crimson figure effortlessly climbing up from the ground, shaking off the water from its body. People finally saw clearly. This was completely different from the underground ghouls the day before yesterday. Oh oh oh. It let out a long, mournful cry, and then dozens of crimson figures appeared in the distance, walking into the light, revealing their forms. Most of them were dragging a corpse in their mouths. The mood of the crowd sank to the bottom. What? What is this? Damn it. Not ghouls. It's not afraid of water. It's over. Everyone fell into an icy silence in an instant. Their efforts just now, the so-called united cooperation, the flicker of hope in their hearts. It was all a joke. Ah. Help, the crimson shadow leaped up and carried a firefighter from the roof to a distance. Blood splattered under the car, on Du Mingyue and others' faces, and no one could make a sound anymore. Bang bang. The bullets from the pistol hit the crimson dog's skin, as if hitting metal, sparks flying. Completely ineffective. Ah. Help. Du Mingyue. Command. Sister Du. Think of a way. Starting from the periphery, one after another, bodies without any resistance were carried away by the crimson dog. Dooming Yue's mind went blank. Just then, the radio next to her still transmitted a voice. SOS. This is the coastal shelter. SOS. The voice of the communicator was already weak. The water has risen to the neck. We tried to block the water inlet to slow down the influx of seawater. But we can't completely stop it. The oxygen is thinning. The water is very cold. So cold. We can't breathe. Our hands are numb. I'm holding the radio but the radio will soon be swallowed by the water. Gurgle. Drowned. Save us. Please, anyone. Save us. The futile calls for help repeated over and over in the radio. The voice grew weaker and weaker. Everyone knew that when they entered that air raid shelter, death was already their destined outcome. It seemed that, just like them struggling in vain on the lakeshore at this moment. Why? Dominguez collapsed and sat on the ground, questioning the world like everyone else. Why? Why were they so cruel to their compatriots? Why were humans powerless in the face of this disaster? Only able to evade, flee, and devour each other. Thousands of years of civilization. Tens of thousands of years of evolution. Only then did we have the magnificent skyscrapers and civilization's wonders. But overnight, do we have to regress into beasts? Do we have to be as cruel, cold-blooded, selfish, and exploit our kind to the fullest extent just to survive this calamity? Is the Ark right? Are they really the only answer of this era? The only solution? Dominguez was lost in confusion. She thought her faith was firm enough, correct enough, but at this moment, she began to doubt her entire value system. Perhaps, only that cold, rational calculation of interests is the only choice for the reproduction of the race. Perhaps, the Ark is right, in the end times, 
Only by being cold-blooded and selfish can one survive, can one preserve the seeds of humanity. But we were not born just to survive. Gan Shangji stood up, opened his arms, and embraced the beautiful starry sky and galaxy. Reproduction is the task given to us by genes, but we have thoughts, we can pursue all possibilities beyond reproduction, and at the right time, not making leaving offspring the primary goal. This is why humans can stand here. Reproduction is the purpose of genes, they need to find ways to replicate themselves to be ubiquitous. The evolution of civilization is the process of gradually breaking free from genetic control. It transforms to be guided by consciousness rather than genes. If you truly need a perfect correct answer to anchor your direction, then your correct answer is what you desire in your heart, not some bullshit arc. The wails echoed across the camp, the massacre by the red dog was gradually closing in on the center of the crowd. A pair of crimson eyes scanned through the crowd, targeting the panicked Nye Yao. The red dog's mouth curved in a mocking smile typical of humans. With a powerful push from its hind legs, it lunged like lightning, aiming to bite Nye Yao's throat. Nye Haiyang noticed the red dog's intent, but it seemed too late. No! He desperately threw himself in front of his daughter, trying to shield her. The red dog's hunting was incredibly precise, never missing a target in this camp tonight, each strike taking a life on the spot. Its speed was so fast that Nye Haiyang, an ordinary human, was absolutely unable to stop it. But this time, it miscalculated. A sharp wooden spike suddenly thrust out from an angle, blocking between it and Nye Yao. The red dog, airborne, couldn't break, only watching as its throat collided straight into the wooden spike. However, it didn't care, after all, if it was just ordinary wood, it couldn't pierce its skin. Only a force originating from the same source as their skin barrier could. Puff. The crimson figure came to a sudden halt. It weakly hung on the wooden branch, struggling to pull its neck out. Go away. Almost simultaneously, a scorching heat that made its soul tremble came from the other side. The vast flames instantly engulfed its entire body. Roar. Roar. The terrified red dog hung on the wood, being skewered, unable to believe what was happening. This was no ordinary wood, nor ordinary flames. They carried a power originating from the same source as their skin. Enough to cause fatal harm to them. Congratulations. Gao Zhengyi just repelled a red dog, took a moment to congratulate Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang. Welcome to the freak family. Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang looked at each other in surprise. At the moment when the red dog targeted Nye Yao, extreme fear awakened the power in the couple simultaneously. Nye Haiyang learned to control wood, while Du Mingyue controlled fire. Wood, fire. And this fire seems to be able to kill monsters. At this moment, the two exchanged a glance, a bold idea tacitly emerged in their minds. Everyone, come closer to us. Nye Haiyang roared, slamming his hands heavily on the ground. A rumbling sound came from the earth. The entire lakeside began to shake violently, as if some monster was awakening from beneath the earth. Ah! Uh, Nye Haiyang, sweating profusely, roared as he raised his hands up. Thick roots surged out of the ground, intertwining and rising, forming a sturdy wooden wall over 10 meters high around them. Phew! This is the best I can do for now. The summoned volume is too large, I can't control the growth shape meticulously. It would be great if it could be covered with thorns. Nye Haiyang gritted his teeth. He felt ashamed of his weakness, not realizing that he already possessed such terrifying potential when he just awakened. How many times can you summon such a wall? I don't know. If it's just growth without considering the shape, I can summon many more. Hold on. Du Mingyue walked to the edge of the wooden wall, flames dancing in her palms. By now, the red dog had started tearing down the wooden wall. It was difficult to maintain a sufficiently strong wooden wall over such a large area, most of it was likely hollow, as fragile as rotten wood under pressure. Like a poor quality security door, they could quickly tear open a hole. Du Mingyue closed her eyes. Thank you, Elder Gon, your words make me understand. Our journey here is not without meaning. In a world of limited resources, we cannot escape zero-sum games. Perhaps in the end of the world, we truly need to do whatever it takes to preserve the smallest spark of life. But what the Ark needs, is not just survival. Du Mingyue's hands pressed against the wooden wall, roaring flames surged like a wildfire, spreading in all directions from her palms. Even if in the end we have to struggle like beasts, lose empathy to survive. At least before that, we will carry the torch. The torch of civilization. Asterisk boom. Asterisk a strong wind rose, the raging flames turning half the sky into red. The red dogs retreated in fear, their paws burned by the sudden flames, the smell of roasted flesh filling the air. The heat mixed with spiritual energy was unbearable even for them, leaving them gritting their teeth and standing helplessly at a distance, unable to find a way in. They wanted to wait for the flames to die out, but the wooden wall kept growing, 
providing endless fuel to the flames, maintaining their intensity. They could only find another way around, trying to find another breakthrough. Ow or Red Dog looked towards the lake. They found many delicious feasts still in the water. The firewall only enclosed the people on the shore, not those in the lake. Although the Red Dogs could swim, they were somewhat hindered in the water, so they did not attack the people floating in the lake, but instead leaped directly from the shore onto the boat. No! Help! Ah! Get away! The big boat was in chaos, those who reacted quickly jumped into the lake, swimming towards the direction of the firewall, while those who reacted slowly perished on the spot. Please open the firewall. Please let me in. There are monsters outside. The situation had turned completely opposite to before nightfall. Before nightfall, they desperately tried to prevent people from boarding the ship, but now they cried and begged the people inside the wall to let them in. However, this was beyond Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang's control. If they opened up, the red dogs would definitely rush in first. The two were busy controlling the firewall and could not handle the situation. If they were injured up close, the defense line would collapse completely. So, for what was happening outside, they were powerless. They are all in the lake. Don't get on the boat. Don't go ashore. The red dogs were like war gods on flat ground, but in the water, they couldn't escape the dog paddle, slowing down both their killing and movement speeds. Seeing the prey jumping into the water one by one, these red dogs lost interest and turned their gaze back to behind the firewall. Those two powerful individuals were their most desired prey. Soon, they found a way. A red dog climbed to the top of the building and howled down from above. From this position, they could easily jump into the ring of fire from above, directly land and kill. It smirked and leaped down first. Trouble. Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang could only watch helplessly as the red dog descended from the sky. The two of them were now in a dilemma. If they withdrew, the firewall might be breached, but if they didn't, they would be slaughtered up close by the red dogs. Gao Zhengyi took a deep breath, his arms turning metallic. I don't know if I can hold them back. He might be able to hold off one, but there was no way he could handle the dozens that would follow from the rooftop. Everyone watched in despair as the red dogs jumped down from the rooftop like raindrops, all precisely aiming for the ring of fire. Heh, this rain is not romantic at all. A light laughter drifted from somewhere. Asterisk snap. Asterisk in the silent wind, a snapping sound was heard. In that moment, time seemed to freeze. The earth suddenly split open. Amidst the terrifying sonic boom, a dark figure rose against the rain. Just the vortex stirred up by his jump was enough to swirl the firewall, leaving behind a dazzling trail of flames. In midair, the figure passed by continuously emitted loud bang 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 noises, and then the raindrops that should have fallen down flew horizontally in all directions. All the raindrops were knocked away, none of them could fall intact. The cloak rustled, and the figure jumped straight from the first floor to the top of the seventh floor. Half-bent, he gracefully landed on the eaves, the cloak slowly falling behind him, enveloping his entire figure in moonlight. Looking down from the ground, he happened to be standing along the edge of the massive new moon, the unusually bright moonlight making his figure appear even darker and more profound. Muttering to himself, the 1207th one. Then he grabbed his head in frustration. Damn! When will this be peeled off? That is. The people on the ground stared blankly at the figure on the moon. The man had his back to them, and all they could see was the silhouette of the cloak. It doesn't seem to be an enemy. Gan Chong swallowed hard, if it's an enemy, that would be too terrifying. Jumping to the seventh floor, not even the red dog showed such a high jumping ability. They were still climbing the stairs to the rooftop. If this was an enemy, they would have no resistance. Ugh! Ugh! Looking down from the high-rise building, one could clearly see each remaining red dog howling. Also, one could clearly see the formation of their bodies. This complete and large number of arranged bodies was very rare, after all, in most cases, if there were so many dead, the witnesses would not have survived. In the later stages, it was even more so, either the territory was breached by powerful individual red dogs, leaving no survivors, or it was the collective effort of humans that cleared the area of red dogs, with most surviving. Shrill cries rang out from all directions. The continuous cries quickly unified and completed resonance within a few seconds. Bang! The glass all around shattered. A stream formed by blood shone at that moment. Like dense roots, connecting all the bodies of the dead, ultimately converging towards a severely injured red dog at the center. Transporting nutrients, blooming and bearing fruit. As expected. Although no one had survived witnessing the evolution of red dogs in the past. Based on the habit of red dogs liking to arrange bodies, it was not difficult to judge that their growth was probably related to slaughter and arrangement. During the countless light years of the journey through the asteroid, Su Chen would not be surprised by the birth of any form of life. 
Second class red dogs, the red dog stones produced are much more precious than the first class ones, it was not in vain to come tonight. The speed at which that red dog evolved was too fast, there was no time to stop it, in just the blink of an eye, it had transformed into a stronger second class red dog. Its size had directly increased five times. It was now comparable to a small elephant. The fierce light in its eyes was even more intense, the second class red dog lifted its chin slightly, its gaze greedily locking onto Su Chen on the rooftop. It liked powerful prey. It was time to end this foolish upright prey. Roar! The red dog accelerated and leaped, heading straight for the rooftop. This time the attack was reversed. It was the turn of the second class red dog to launch an attack from bottom to top. And Su Chen was above. The dog is too big, so it's not cute. Su Chen calmly stood up, opened his arms, and leaned back. Facing away from the building and the red dog, he free fell. The red dog grinned, opening its bloody mouth, ready to catch the falling Su Chen and tear him apart. But the cloak supported his body, Su Chen rotated 360 degrees in midair, slightly bent his knees, and stomped heavily downwards. Bang boom! A terrifying impact erupted at the point of their clash, releasing a dazzling shockwave. The compressed air burst, and the shockwave spread out in a disc shape in all directions, turning into a deafening roar. The red dog seemed to have taken a heavy blow, almost having its head burst by this stump. It smashed back to the ground faster than before. And Su Chen rose again with the help of the reaction force. He faced down, his feet on the upper edge of the seventh floor window frame. With a push, hands held high, muscles all over his body engaged, resembling the beating of a drum on the ground. Boom! Both fists came down with full force. Just as the red dog had just pulled its head out of the ground, it was hit hard again. Crack! Even its hardest skull was cracked like a spider web by this blow, visible through its transparent skin. A strong fear that the dog had never experienced before rushed into its mind. How could it not win even after evolving? Wasn't it supposed to be the hero of a comeback? A carousel of memories started to appear before its eyes. It saw its long-gone father dog, saying to it, You can do it. Son, I believe in you, stand up. You can definitely defeat this monster. Stand up. Stand. Boom. 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 Three heavy blows, and the red dog's spine was instantly shattered into more than a dozen sections. In the illusion, the father dog covered his face in disbelief, forget it, don't stand up, come over and accompany your old man. Can't win. Completely unable to win. Perhaps evolving into the third class would give it a fighting chance against this monster. Unfortunately, the bodies in time here were not enough for it to continue evolving. The consciousness of the second class red dog gradually fell silent. Xia thought it was a boss. Su Chen was quite disappointed. He wanted to find a master to test his current strength, to push himself to the limit, but unfortunately, this guy was not tough enough to handle. Although I used my full strength to defeat this guy with a combo, I still exerted my maximum effort. Hiss. So tough. Su Chen shook his aching hand. It seemed that his current strength was far superior to that of the second class red dog. As long as he didn't act recklessly to provoke the big guns and the guys in the star ring, this level of intensity was enough for self-preservation. Besides, he still had 14 billion regret points. Damn, now it's 15 billion. The only downside was that this fighting style was really painful. Sigh, can't there be a stronger guy to awaken me? Why haven't I awakened any special abilities even after spending so much on Snow Lotus? Am I a muggle? Only capable of physical attacks? Su Chen felt a bit depressed. Even after spending on Snow Lotus, strong emotional fluctuations were needed to awaken one's unique abilities. Gao Zhengyi and Nia Haiyang Du Mingyue both awakened under extreme fear. Fear was the most likely emotion to trigger awakening, but he really didn't understand what fear meant with his current attribute points. Forget it, being a physical player is fine. I'll slowly practice magic attacks, I'll eventually draw enough points. He casually threw the body of the second class red dog into the refrigerator, and Su Chen continued to clean up the scattered first class red dogs. The people inside the firewall were completely shocked. What was that thing that flew by just now? Although it was difficult for them to see the details outside under the cover of the raging fire, they did see the cloaked figure colliding with an unusually large red dog. Just as everyone was worried about the cloaked figure, a slight earthquake suddenly occurred along the lakeside. After four boom sounds, the world fell silent. What does it look like outside now? Why do I seem to hear those monsters screaming in pain? Am I hearing things? Since the night fell, all they had heard were the screams of humans. The screams of humans were very distinctive, unsettling, often accompanied by a few helpless and angry curses. But now, these screams, why do they sound like a dog getting its tail stepped on? Whimper. It's really miserable. Su Chen didn't stay long. 
After cleaning up the Westlake camp, he continued on to the next monster spawning point without stopping, not caring about what the people in the camp thought. It wasn't until the dawn broke on the horizon, a halo of light spread from the star ring, covering the red dogs on the ground with a thin layer of gray-black film, that he finally stopped. Before being exposed to sunlight, those red dogs gathered into a group. Within the halo of light, their skin grew roots, wrapping around each other, eventually overlapping into a lump of round ball-like substance resembling a cocoon. Their skin became dry and hard, and the calluses became extremely tough. At the same time, thick roots grew from the calluses, deeply piercing into the ground, anchoring the entire callus ball in place. Each group of red dog tribes huddled together, forming spectacular callus towers reaching up to 30 meters high. These callus towers stood still in various parts of the human city, waiting in ambush for the arrival of the third day of the new year. 2223, this was Su Chen's busy night's harvest. A total of 2,222 first-class red dogs, and one second-class red dog. Phew! On the way back, Su Chen found a place on top of a residential building, collapsed on the ground, panting heavily. This night was more exhausting than the previous few months combined. And his hands hurt. It's almost like the plan, 80 kilometers, all perfectly cleared, and also got an extra harvest of a second-class red dog's red dog stone. The newly risen sun shone on his face, he took off his hat, only to find that his whole body was soaked in sweat, and the morning breeze made him feel refreshingly cold. Are you only good at acting cute? He pulled the little fox out of his pocket, feeling a bit annoyed. The little guy was terrified last night, trembling all night, clinging tightly in the pocket and not daring to come out, showing no courage that matched its talent. Now, being dragged into the cold wind, it shivered even more, holding onto Su Chen's nose tightly. What are you afraid of? Don't you know how to act tough like a fox in front of a tiger? Didn't you see me beat them up? The little guy held on even tighter. All right, are you worried about the tiger getting into trouble? Let it be, Su Chen lay on the rooftop, letting the little fox hold onto his nose, breathing heavily. Tonight witnessed history. The third day of the new year, the day with the highest mortality rate during the festive season. It was also the day when the fire was established. From this day on, the freezing era had a shelter to keep warm where survivors could gather around the fire pit for some warmth. Although it seemed ridiculous in the apocalypse, they were destined to freeze to death in the blizzard like every other overly idealistic fool, at least. Those lives that survived because of the fire didn't find it ridiculous. Su Chen was once one of them, but he had already repaid his debt to the fire. Tonight was just a detour for monster hunting. Completion of the Seaside Shelter Small Scale Indirect Group Regret Event, Settlement Rewards, Synthesis, Level 1 Gold Reward, X1, Decomposition, Level 1 Gold Reward. Perhaps due to the Indirect Regret Event, there were no additional reward points, but direct skills were given. However, these skills were really good. A golden skill was extremely rare. Unless in special circumstances, like the Dark Crow needing it, so it was directly drawn as a special skill. Usually, in daily card draws, Without special needs, one wouldn't see it even after thousands of draws. I wonder if I should praise your human touch or stinginess. Su Chen sighed lightly as he checked the two skills he had just obtained. Synthesis, level 1 can perform simple mixing of some materials, and added a synthesis recipe guide, level 1, in the appraisal interface, can perform synthesis according to the guide. Decomposition, level 1 can quickly break down some low-grade materials, and added a decomposition result estimation, level 1, in the appraisal interface, can decompose according to the estimation. Oh, decomposition? I don't have to manually skin the red dogs anymore? Thank goodness. Solved one of his most annoying troubles. He set his sights on the red dog corpse from his portable universe. Name, red dog, first class, introduction, from Kepler-186F a planet orbiting the red dwarf star Kepler-186, social animals, civilization energy source, spirit source, level 3 intelligence, structure, relying on the spirit source attached to the body surface to build defensive power, the spirit source inside their bodies is the fuel for their powerful movement abilities, level 3 intelligence. Due to first-hand witnessing, unlocking additional intelligence across levels, evolution can be completed by arranging the corpses of other intelligent beings to enhance spiritual power, with the formation patterns potentially worth referencing. Level 5 Intelligence. Current status, deceased, level 0 intelligence, upon disassembling this individual, you can obtain, 1 red dog stone, success rate 100%, 45. 3 kilograms of red dog flesh without spiritual power, success rate 100%. Estimated disassembly result level 1. Comfortable. Activating the disassembly technique, a huge mechanical furnace instantly appears in the preservation room. Directly tossing the red dog corpse into the furnace, 
it emits a clattering buzzing sound of mechanical operation, finally spitting out red dog stones and the disassembled red dog corpse in sequence from the lower exit. This is much easier than manually peeling. Ha! I'm leaving, going home. After resting briefly on the rooftop, Su Chen heads back towards the prison, glancing at the prison dormitory that he still hasn't dared to open. If he wanted, he could clean up the prison dormitory now. But, why bother? That guy Lu Mingcheng, he swore to help renew his big moon card. Such a good person, of course, should be fully exploited before making him regret it. Opening the door, returning to the safe house, closing the door, and collapsing onto the bed. He was so exhausted that he was almost delirious. Even in a half-dream state, he seemed to feel a warm stream entering his body, where it felt like a pair of boneless hands were gently massaging, allowing all tense muscles to relax to the fullest extent, dispelling all fatigue and soreness. But upon opening his eyes, he saw nothing, only the little fox innocently wagging its tail at the bedside. Forget it, whatever. Closing his eyes, he continues to return to that incredibly pleasant dream. Unfortunately, the sweet dream did not last. After falling asleep, some memories from his past uncontrollably surfaced. Su Chen take your medicine. Get lost. Su Chen instantly woke up, breaking out in a cold sweat. Why am I thinking about that damn guy again? It seems that spending on the moon card is not enough to compensate for the psychological shadow from his past life. Those bastards who caused his death seem to regret lightly. E looking down, the little one was sitting on his stomach, gently patting with its small paws as if comforting him. Su Chen couldn't help but be slightly healed by its appearance, calming his emotions. The warm stream surged again, nerves slightly relaxed, and this time he didn't have a nightmare. But why did something feel heavy, and why was there a sense of pressure on him? Bah! Coward! Lu Mingcheng outside the door was still raging in incompetence. In his eyes, Su Chen was just a coward hiding in the safe house. He had no ability at all, just hiding. If he came out for a one-on-one, -on -one, he could beat him to a pulp. The second one hasn't come back. I wonder how it's going. The second one was sent to find Zhao Mengyan, and obviously things weren't going smoothly, as he didn't return promptly yesterday. Judging from the frequency of planes crashing on the roadside these past two days, if he didn't return today, he was probably done for. It seems that the air route isn't that easy to take, fortunately, he didn't take a plane back. Lu Mingqing secretly rejoiced. But this also left him temporarily helpless. He intended to turn the prison into a strong fortress, but if he didn't deal with the bastard in the safe house, he felt like he was the other party's security guard. Who was his fortress really built for? Come out. The more he thought about it, the angrier Lu Mingqing became, so he dragged out Zhou Xiaodong. Does he only have this one weakness? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Zhou Xiaodong racked his brains. Right. You and he are classmates. Doesn't he care about any bit of classmate friendship? I. I don't know. Zhou Xiaodong fell into contemplation. He should. Have concerns, right? I remember he wanted to buy ginseng to share with us back then, and he was the first to predict the end of the world, informing us. As soon as LV Mingcheng's expression changed, Zhou Xiaodong hurriedly added, but 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 he definitely won't care about me. I personally burned down his warehouse. I burned all the supplies he prepared for the doomsday to ashes. Only then did LV Mingcheng give up the idea of using him to lure Su Chen directly. I almost forgot earlier, this kid predicted the doomsday. If I can point a gun at his head, I will definitely be able to get a lot of useful information. He grabbed Zhou Xiaodong's collar again, can you contact that kid's classmates? Can't contact them, there's no signal on the phone. Damn it. The situation once again reached a stalemate, and he was at a loss. This coward. Come out and fight me if you dare. What kind of hero hides behind an iron gate? Just as LV Mingcheng was cursing loudly, there was a commotion at the prison gate. Who's causing trouble on my turf? So brave, afraid those lunatics won't have meat to eat? LV Mingcheng angrily walked into the prison yard. But he found a stream of water rushing in from the prison gate, spreading along the ground. Tide. The tide has reached here. LV Mingcheng frowned, climbed up the watchtower and looked around. Goodness. A muddy yellow flood was surging from the east, rising visibly at a rapid speed. Looking up, the sun and moon shone together. It seemed that the tide from the radio last night had not receded yet. What the hell? Isn't there sandbags in the prison? Just block the door and it'll be fine. Go, everyone get to work. LV Mingchun lit a cigarette and directed the other inmates in the prison to move things. The prison walls were particularly high and solidly built, as long as the door was blocked, they would have more than enough resistance against the tide. But the thought of Su Chen sleeping soundly in the safe house while he was outside working hard to control the water. That feeling of dissatisfaction grew stronger. Help! Help! A group of people were running desperately on the crest of the tide. Seeing the prison stacking sandbags, 
They saw Hope and quickly ran towards the prison. Oh, fun times ahead. Lao San, come and play. LV Mingcheng raised his gun and aimed at the approaching survivors. Zhou Xiaodong took a closer look and exclaimed with joy, Wait, Shang Gu, Shang Gu, those people are useful. What's the matter? They have a classmate. My old classmate. Xue Ran. LV Mingcheng's eyes lit up, so, he's also Su Chen's classmate? Yes, yes, let him in quickly. Before the words were finished, a sickle foot pierced through Xue Ran's chest, dragging him into the muddy water, disappearing without a trace. Zhou Xiaodong. LV Mingcheng. What are you waiting for? Close the door tightly. Block it with sandbags at the back. The prison gate immediately closed tightly. It seemed they would have to wait for Lao Air's message if they wanted to force Su Chen out. Speaking of which, Lao Air had really returned to Myanmar at this time. Despite the bumpy journey, the small plane almost fell off several times. Perhaps because the plane was too old and small, it was a nearly scrapped biplane with few electronic components, which eventually brought him back home. After landing, he couldn't help but sigh, LV Mingcheng understood Myanmar. It was already in chaos, with various factions fighting for territory and resources, the sound of war and explosions everywhere, and the mountains echoing with the sound of firearms. They finally found a highway to land on, but almost got captured by the enemy on the spot. After a hard escape to the city, he was ready to rob a convenience store for a piece of bread, but the store owner almost shot him on the spot. He suddenly missed the journey back, as long as he pulled out his gun, the store owner would be willing to offer even his ancestors' tablets with both hands. The boss was right, it's too chaotic here. If we could start developing a base from that side, it would definitely be easier than here. With this in mind, he quickly set out to find Zhao Mengyan, asking around and finally finding someone who knew something. Li Zhong, do you know a pig named Zhao Mengyan? She came over about two months ago. Li Zhong was stunned, I remember it clearly. Where is she? Is she still alive? I bought that pig. Have her relatives paid up? Seriously, at a time like this, you're still worried about money? The banks have all collapsed. What good is money anyway? The banks haven't collapsed. The second brother chuckled, on my way back, I saw that the disaster mainly affected coastal cities, many inland cities are still fine. There were long lines of people outside the banks still paying off their mortgages. Who pays off their mortgages at a time like this? The banks hired outsourcing companies to go door to door demanding repayment, threatening to take back the properties if the loans weren't repaid immediately. No way, are people that gullible? It's the end of the world, who falls for that? Hey, don't underestimate it. People are easily scared. And those inland folks have no idea about the situation in the coastal areas since the communication lines are down. Some still think this disaster is like any other natural calamity, as long as they hide, lock their doors on the 1st and 15th of the month, they can restore order at any time. The lines of people paying off their mortgages at the banks are getting longer. And the banks are taking that money before it becomes worthless and investing in gold, oil, weapons, and food. They are buying from those optimistic inlanders who are happy to sell at higher prices, thinking things will get better. Li Zhong covered his face, I thought we were already immoral enough. We're far from it, the second brother shook his head, by the way, is that pig still alive? Maybe, probably, perhaps, still alive. The long lost light shone into the basement, Zhao Mengyan put down the half-eaten hand she was gnawing on, ecstatically pounced towards the light source. Then she was kicked to the ground. But she was not discouraged, Li Gu, Li Gu, I understand now, I can do anything for you. From today on, I'll be your dog. Woof woof woof. Li Zhong frowned, covering his nose, the stench was unbearable. Su Chen that bastard is not worthy of being my boyfriend. Only under your command can I unleash my full potential. Li Gu, give me a chance. Li Zhong sneered, your so-called bastard boyfriend predicted doomsday. What? It's the end of the world. You idiot. Come out and see for yourself. Li Zhong dragged Zhao Mengyan to the surface. Blood, limbs, and the mangled remains of an unknown giant monster drenched in freshwater. Everything in sight shattered Zhao Mengyan's worldview. See for yourself. Li Zhong continued to drag Zhao Mengyan forward, the TV nearby was still broadcasting the previous news. The terrifying rising tide had submerged 10% of the land and was spreading further inland. Unfathomable monsters roamed the night and sea. Looking up, the massive white star hovered in the sky, enveloping the entire world, with no end in sight. He predicted it. Your bastard boyfriend foresaw everything that has happened in the past few days. Now who knows where he is, carefree. While you and I are struggling here, at any moment we could be eaten by monsters. Use your brain. Li Zhong vented all his fear and helplessness of the past few days on Zhao Mengyan. Zhao Mengyan looked around in confusion. She was truly dumbfounded. With her intelligence, even if she tried, she couldn't have imagined that Su Chen could predict doomsday. 
she thought she had only missed the opportunity to become a wealthy wife at most. Life is long, as long as she's alive, there might still be a chance to be noticed by a wealthy second generation and achieve a comeback. She just missed out on Su Chen's tens of millions in savings, but if she behaved well, she might rise again in the mountains of Myanmar. But how could he predict doomsday? Am I still dreaming? She slapped herself several times, but Li Zhong also gave her a few more, and she still didn't wake up. Until this moment, she finally collapsed in realization. Damn, it's not a dream, it's real. Received 1500 points of regret from Zhao Mengyan, three regret crystals, public currency Chao Air, you tell me, what does Lu Mingcheng want with this woman? Has he found Su Chen? Li Zhong's question made Chao Air pause, well, I guess I can't hide it from you. Su Chen is now hiding in a safe house that is as secure as Fort Knox. Not to mention monsters, even a nuclear blast could be survived inside. And there's an abundance of supplies in there, enough for him to hide for several years. Received 1500 points of regret from Zhao Mengyan, three regret crystals, public currency stop talking, stop talking, the more you talk, the more it hurts. Zhao Mengyan covered her chest, her vision darkening. Do you want to go in? Yes, the boss asked me to find his girlfriend. I heard he loves his girlfriend very much. Li Zhong was a bit speechless, you should be talking about the past. If he can still hold a grudge after reading the chat records, then he must have something wrong with his head. Regardless, we can give it a try. How could years of feelings just be cut off like that? Makes sense. Name your price, I'll take her with me. Li Zhong smiled, without hesitation, grabbed Zhao Mengyan by the back of her neck, give me a spot in the safe house, that's the price. Deal. Su Chen hadn't slept so soundly in a long time. Before his rebirth, he was tormented by hunger and poverty, consumed by hatred and anger every day, unable to sleep as his mind was filled with thoughts of revenge. Looking back, he was once a passionate young member of the scouting team, crossing the salt marsh alone to help the team find a safe path through it. The result was a successful exploration, but he himself was seriously injured. Drink this bowl of medicine, and you will definitely get better. Cough, thank you. It's what I should do. Zhao Mengyan smiled sweetly, slowly lifting the bowl of medicine. You saved all of us, so we must do our best to take care of you. You are our hero now. Even though poison was mixed into that bowl of medicine. Since then, Su Chen no longer wanted to be a hero. I've contacted Brotherly, he said he's willing to reserve a spot for me in the shelter. Rest in peace, there's only one spot, and it's not for you. Besides, you are seriously injured now, you are useless, we can't keep a burden like you. Didn't you say you love me? Being able to die for me, your life is complete. Goodbye. See you in the next life. In that moment, whether it was the effect of the medicine or something else, Su Chen couldn't even feel the pain from his wounds. The last bit of survival instinct made him call out to the team members around him for help. Please, take me. To see. A doctor. No one paid any attention. I just. Saved you all. I scouted the path. If it weren't for scouting. If it weren't for scouting, I wouldn't have been injured and lost my value. But the team members just stepped back in disgust. We could have made it without your scouting. It's your own fault for getting injured. How could an awakener like you get hurt? Don't think we owe you just because you scouted, idiot, who asked you to volunteer. Doctors are expensive, who will pay for you to see a doctor? Your gold was taken by that woman. If it weren't for the passing stranger extending my life, perhaps the journey would have ended at that moment. Although now, it seems that the extended life behind is of no use. He ultimately failed to avenge himself. Su Chen chuckled self-deprecatingly, closing his eyes. Remembering Zhao Mingyan's words see you in the next life. Now, it's the next life, hello. Getting up from the bed, his gaze became determined. Our account is not settled yet, Zhao Mengyan, and my dear teammates. It is said that when ordinary people suddenly gain powerful abilities, they seek revenge, act recklessly, a mindset that mainstream values do not approve of unless one is a superhero. But Su Chin openly admitted that he was such an ordinary person. And even worse, all grudges must be repaid tenfold, not even one less. Today is another day when the total spending reaches 700 million. By the way, does it feel like something is missing around you? Where did the little fox go? Su Chen got off the bed and heard the sound of running water coming from the bathroom. A shadow was swaying gently under the shower head. Su Chen's face changed drastically. Oh no, the safe house has been invaded. There are enemies. Without saying a word, he clenched his fist and heavily punched the bathroom door. The wooden door of the bathroom shattered with a sound. The warm steam was stirred by the wind, and a cry came from the white mist. Ing? Long eyelashes fell like snow, eyes closed with a hint of light. The thief who broke into the safe house bit her rosy lower lip, standing frozen in place. Her perfect silhouette half hidden in the mist, 
She only had time to hug her shoulders and turn her back, using the mist to cover her lower body, presenting her flawless back to the intruder. The appearance of the intruder caught her off guard, and she slipped and sat on the ground, her delicate feet peeking out from the edge of the white mist, her bony ankles trembling slightly. The water from the shower poured over her trembling animal ears and waist-length pure white hair, her tail spreading out in the pooled water on the ground, swaying gently like a waterfall. Sorry for the disturbance. Su Chin silently picked up the door from the ground and hung it back at the doorway without saying a word. Thud. Exciting. He had long heard of the notorious name of that person, but he didn't expect that just a back view could be so captivating. Su Chen raised his face sternly, my heart and actions are as clear as a mirror. Evil creature. Don't even think about disturbing my mind. Ing disturb if you want, I'm not a cultivator anyway. About half an hour later, the bathroom door was cautiously pushed open. Su Chen's gaze slowly moved down from where he was expecting, and a cute little face appeared. Why did you shrink? Where's your mother? Unlike the enchanting figure in the shower room, at this moment, a petite girl of just over a meter walked out of the bathroom. Su Chen's loose-fitting clothes were barely hanging on her, revealing half of her fair shoulder. Her hair and tail had just been blow-dried, and now they hung nervously behind her buttocks, like a small animal being scolded for making a mistake, lowering her head with flushed cheeks, not daring to look directly into Su Chen's eyes. Her hands were tucked in the wide sleeves, and the tip of her tail lightly swayed on her smooth calves. Su Chen confirmed that the girl in front of him was definitely not the one he saw in the mist just now. Why did you turn into a lowly? Su Chen unwillingly opened the bathroom door and searched carefully. Nothing. Really nothing. Ying Shi made a sound in grievance. Well, even though he didn't know the specific situation, this little one must have taken over his clothes pockets, right? He sighed. But why did you shrink? Or... Can you freely adjust your age? Truly versatile. The little one had just transformed and couldn't speak yet. After she learned to speak, she should be able to find out the reason. Can I draw a method to make her learn to speak directly? Su Chen tried a few draws. Unfortunately, he only got crystal breakthroughs. Well, can you understand what I'm saying? Su Chen bent down and looked into the girl's eyes. The girl tilted her head, and a question mark seemed to appear above her head. Go to the bathroom. Su Chen tentatively gave an instruction. This time the girl understood and immediately ran to the litter box. Stop stop stop. You don't need that anymore. Use this. And. The clothes. This set doesn't fit you. The little one nodded as if she understood. Su Chen roughly figured it out. She was now in a state of half understanding about the world in front of her, and her previous bathing and dressing behaviors were based on instinctive imitation of Su Chen. As for her avoidance in the bathroom just now, she was probably not out of shyness, but a kind of instinctive fear in the face of sudden changes. The body underwent drastic changes, leaving her feeling confused and cautious. Let's discuss. Can you change back to how you were just now? Forget it, pretend I didn't say anything. It was normal to not have full control over one's powers right after transformation. I, Su Chen pointed to herself, starting to introduce herself, Su Chen. Fu. Yun. Un. The little one struggled to speak. Not Fu, it's Su. Who? Su. Gu. Su. Um. Fu. Alright, back to square one. Why can't you straighten out your tongue? Su Chen gave up correcting in frustration. Never mind, and as for you, Su Chen pointed to the little one, you'll be called. Um. Su Xianua, since you'll be making cute noises. The girl nodded seriously, Su Xianua. How come your tongue is cooperating now? Fu. Yun. En. Su. Xiao. Nua. The girl happily repeated, hugging Su Chen's leg tightly, Fu Su Chen. Su Xianua. Call whatever you want. In the future, you'll need to learn to speak and write. I'll teach you when I have time, but most of the time I'll be busy. Busy with drawing lots and organizing the red dog stones in the warehouse. Don't make trouble usually. If you go out, it's best to maintain your previous animal form to avoid trouble, got it? Nodding vigorously. Alright, go play by yourself. Su Chen breathed a sigh of relief his consciousness entering the portable preservation room. The little one's transformation was expected, just not in this awkward way. Moreover, there was little information about the Lord from the previous life, and he didn't know about her magical talent to adjust her transformation age. A promising comrade. Bright future ahead. Okay, calm down, Su Chin calmed down and returned to work, there are still 2,222 red dogs left to decompose. I can decompose with my left hand and draw cards with my right hand. These are tasks that don't require much brain power. Of course, the brain can't be idle either. While drawing on both sides, I can use appraisal to browse through the accumulated medicinal materials and check their synthesis formulas. Let's begin. Soon, Su Chen immersed himself fully in his work. 
Outside, Su Xiaonua subconsciously wanted to crawl back into Su Chen's pocket. Unfortunately, after trying, she found she couldn't fit in, so she could only climb onto Su Chen's lap and curl up. The familiar scent gradually calmed her down, easing the anxiety caused by unfamiliar changes. Her tense nerves relaxed, and she couldn't help but feel drowsy. Yawning, she snuggled into Su Chen's arms and gradually fell asleep. Unaware of her dreams, a smile unconsciously appeared on her lips as she murmured in her sleep, Fu Su Chen. Koku, Su Xianuwa. After the third day of the first lunar month, there was a 12-day break. During this time, only the vulnerable ghouls harassed the coastal areas, and the tranquility made people think the end of the world had passed. On the third day of the first lunar month, during the day, people began to bury the bodies, and the crematoriums were overcrowded, with cemetery plots in high demand. By the fourth day of the first lunar month, most of the bodies had been cremated, eliminating potential hazards before triggering a secondary disaster, the Great Plague. At the same time, people began to repair public facilities and replan settlement points on a community basis. On the fifth day of the first lunar month, the mobile signals in inland cities were partially restored, allowing people to finally contact their missing relatives, although the range was still limited. On the sixth day of the first lunar month, the tides in coastal cities showed no signs of receding, but some charitable organizations dropped food for the stranded on rooftops and worked to transport the wounded to inland cities for treatment. One of the helicopter pilots involved in the rescue was named Du Mingyue. On the seventh day of the first lunar month, the city's water pipes were gradually repaired and fitted with anti-freeze jackets, ensuring that each residential area had at least two high-pressure fire hydrants with a water pressure of zero. For MPA. Meanwhile, the excavation work of the freshwater moat in each community has been completed, and freshwater is being poured in. On the seventh day of the first lunar month, people take to the streets, light paper money, and place floral wreaths. River lanterns are placed in the newly excavated moat. The seventh day of the first lunar month marks the seventh day since the first group of victims passed away. Amidst the cries that echo through the entire street, survivors hope to reunite with their departed loved ones, to say the words left unsaid during their last hurried encounter on the second day of the new year. Unfortunately, miracles do not happen at will, they only occur when they are meant to. Take care. Gan Chongji silently watches as the river lantern drifts away in the wind. That day, he entrusted Gao Jingyi to take care of his family. However, when Gao Jingyi arrives at the residential building, he only sees a huge hole smashed open by a meteor. At the center of the hole is Gan Chongji's room. In the ruins, a hand emerges from between the rocks, already cold and stiff. Throughout the journey ahead, Gao Jingyi cannot bring himself to tell him the harsh reality. But when he sees Gao Jingyi return empty-handed, accompanied only by his own wife and child, he already knows the outcome. It may sound harsh, but leaving early might bring peace of mind. Nowadays, being alive doesn't necessarily mean being lucky. Gao Zhengyi squats beside him, lighting a cigarette. You lost someone? Gan Chongji couldn't help but ask as he watches Gao Zhengyi release a river lantern. A peaceful life, basic needs, a peaceful mindset, career, future, Gao Zhengyi answers solemnly. Gan Chongji chuckles bitterly, that's worth commemorating. Sigh. If only this peace could last these days. If we could go back to the past, as if nothing had happened. Gao Zhengyi stands up, and from a nearby radio, a rustling sound is heard. Tianmen Space Station calling ground for the 1206th time. Tianmen Space Station calling ground for the 1206th time. This call is for all frequency bands. Please respond. Earth, please respond. The two lock eyes. Gao rushes to the radio. The Tianmen Space Station didn't crash? Right. The satellite's crash was caused by lunar magnetic ash. The fine, dense impacts caused by lunar magnetic ash are like winds in space, slowly pushing the satellite out of orbit. But the space station is designed in segments. Inside, personnel can make timely adjustments. If the commanding personnel on the space station are decisive enough, they can detonate part of the structure to create a thrust force to resist the storm of lunar magnetic ash. In that moment, Gan Chongji felt like his scalp was about to explode. Both of them look up at the sky, and beside the massive ring of stars, there seems to be a small inconspicuous light, blinking diligently like a firefly next to the sun and moon. To the observatory. As long as we find a large enough electromagnetic signal transmitter, we can communicate with the space station. They can observe the composition of the star ring up close, as well as the panoramic view of the Earth, and inform us of the specific situation of the star ring. This significance is too significant. This is Li Chigua, stationed at the Tianmen Space Station. We noticed that a small asteroid turned into the Earth's star ring seven days ago, causing changes in the moon's orbit and abnormal shifts in the land-sea boundary. There is no atmospheric obstruction here, the view is clear. 
From the optical cabin, we can roughly see objects in the star ring. Those objects are hard to describe. Most of them are enveloped in deep blue ice, in a state of stillness. A few can move within the ice, emitting various colors of light. The size difference of these ice blocks is significant. The largest ice block we have observed is comparable in size to the continent of Australia. The smaller ones are less than a centimeter. There are also some extremely small ice crystal particles that are difficult to identify with the naked eye. Just now, a huge ice block with a diameter of about 30 meters moved. According to our previous observations, these abnormally moving ice blocks will eventually fall to the ground. According to calculations, this 30 meter diameter ice block will fall in the sea near the Yangtze River Delta. If people on the ground can hear, please prepare as best as possible. We will continue to call until the oxygen runs out. Tianmen Space Station's 1207th call to the ground. Tianmen Space Station's 1207th call to the ground. Do Mingyue. Evacuate the crowd quickly. Let the residents near the Yangtze River Delta evacuate as soon as possible. What's going on? Du Mingyue, who had just stepped off the helicopter, hadn't caught her breath yet. Peace is over, we just received a warning from Tianmen Space Station. Listen for yourself. Here, Gao Zheni directly played the radio to Du Mingyue. The faces of the people around became serious. All pilots, crew members, stand up. Immediately check the fuel tanks, cargo racks, and ensure that we can fly continuously for the next six hours. Mechanical team, help reinforce the bottom of the cargo rack, raise the guardrail, we may need to transport refugees from the Yangtze River Delta in overload. Don Lao, Gao Gu, go find a high-power space communication station, make sure to contact Tianmen Space Station as soon as possible. We really need the information they provide. Understood. It must be fast, don't let them feel lonely. And, be careful of the ark, they must have received the message too. Hmm. Several people tensed their nerves again and boarded the helicopter one by one. But no one noticed that not far away, on a telecommunication pole, a dark crow with feathers shimmering with strange rainbow light, holding two mother crows in its arms, was quietly watching everything. Seeing the helicopter fly away, it quietly flapped its wings and landed on the landing gear of the helicopter. This melon is really sweet. Su Chen sat cross-legged, gnawing on the melon, while Xiaonua sat cross-legged on her lap gnawing on the melon, looking like a big and small pair of nested dolls finally got rid of those two mother crows. Damn, these feathers are too conspicuous, afraid it's at the level of a playboy in the bird world. Not just crows, it can even charm across species. The reward rating of the dark crow is gold, most of the gold rating must be based on appearance. It's out of tune. Su Chen threw away the melon peel and continued to browse the synthetic formula in front of him. Awakening Centennial Ginseng a tribute, fierce, contains a large amount of anticoagulant components, will greatly accelerate the movement speed of blood and spiritual source in the body, making it fuse with cells faster. Usage precautions, direct consumption, excessive medicinal effect may cause cell overload and rupture. Short-term strength enhancement, but after a large number of cell ruptures, half of the spiritual source reserves will be wasted. If overdosed at once, organ failure and death will occur directly. The above side effects can be avoided through auxiliary medicine synthesis. Synthetic formula, 5 grams of centennial ginseng plus a type of red dog stone, can obtain explosive potion, which greatly enhances strength in a short period of time. Spiritual knowledge plus 100, drops to plus 25 after 3 days, while cell damage doubles, strength minus 50, agility minus 50. 5 grams of centennial ginseng plus 5 grams of snow lotus plus 20 grams of huagai wood tender leaves plus a type of red dog stone, can obtain type 1 spiritual source enhancement elixir, no cell damage, each dose can permanently increase spiritual knowledge by 50 points. These days, Su Chen has been taking the type 1 spiritual source enhancement elixir, almost vomiting. The effect is also significant, his spiritual knowledge has increased to 300,000 levels, although agility and strength are still several times ahead. Looking at the Hua Gai wood that has almost been plucked by himself, Su Chen silently added some nutrient solution to the plantation. It has been hard on it these days. By appraising my arm last time, I can basically confirm that the system is based on normal adult single arm lifting force of 50 kilograms for calculation. So, every one point of strength can be converted into 1000 kilograms of single arm lifting force, and I am now at 1. 5 million. That is 1500 tons. Still can't lift an aircraft carrier, I'm really bad. Let's pause the lottery for now. The strength and agility attributes of 1. 5 million are already more than enough. The urgent matter is to improve spiritual perception. Spiritual perception cannot be increased through drawing, but through personal growth. Spiritual perception obtained through growth can ignore limits and increase directly. 
During this period, the automatic cultivation method that Su Chen drew before has come in handy. Since the arrival of the Descent Day, it has been automatically providing a large number of spiritual perception points for himself. I should be considered a freak in terms of attributes now. The only drawback is that I have a bit of a lack of control over my body, making it easy to go off track when using full force. Oh, right, I haven't awakened my skills yet, but it should be enough to deal with that guy. Su Chen looked towards the sky. In the distant star ring, a huge block of ice was shaking and trembling. It seems that something inside has awakened and is impatiently trying to break free from the ice to fill its hungry stomach due to hibernating for too long. But on the ground, Su Chen also licked his lips eagerly. 006, come quickly, I've been waiting for you for a long time, the synthesis formula can't do without you. 006 is its sequence number. According to the order of disaster occurrences, there have been six types of disaster flash events so far. Disaster flash number 000, year disaster flash number 001, subterranean ghoul, source, titan 2, weakness, freshwater, with kill records. Disaster flash number 002, quantum ghost, source, unknown, weakness, unknown, no kill records. Disaster flash number 003, geomagnetic shift, source, unknown, weakness, unknown, cannot be corrected. Disaster flash number 004, quantum ghost, friendly, source unknown disaster flash number 005, red dog, source, Kepler 186b, weakness, spirit source, only active on the third day of each year, with kill records. And then there's this 006, codename, awakening speaking of which, this time should be able to unlock the hidden shop with the game cheats. It's time to catch a game blogger and torture them severely. The upper city is a densely populated metropolis, so there are no large high-altitude communication stations nearby, nor rocket launch bases. This design is to ensure that even if a rocket launch fails, it will not harm the city. It also reduces urban signal interference with communication stations. Don Changji and Gao Jingyi had to fly for several hours to reach the nearest space communication station, the Northland Spaceport. Unfortunately, when the two arrived at the Northland Spaceport, they couldn't help but feel a sense of powerlessness. The Northland Spaceport is a seaside rocket launch and production base, and due to a high tide, most of it has been submerged by seawater. It's unknown if the equipment can still be used in such deep water. Looking on the bright side, at least there won't be any ARC people here. Gao Zheni optimistically jumped off the plane first and landed on the rooftop. This place was built by the sea, so it must have had waterproofing measures in place from the beginning. The equipment probably can still be used. Don Chengji analyzed. Then what are we waiting for? Let's hurry up. Don't let our brothers in the sky wait too long. The situation at the Northland spaceport didn't look optimistic, but when Gan Chongji reached the control room on the top floor and pressed the button, everything went smoothly, making him somewhat incredulous. The lights came on, and the huge lid-shaped communicator outside the window began to rotate slowly. He had worked here before and quickly adjusted the communication channel with ease. Heaven's Gate Space Station. This is Earth, how are you? The radio fell silent. In the silence, there seemed to be a faint sobbing, an uncontrollable joy that no amount of training could contain. There are still people on the ground. We haven't been wiped out. That's great. Both sides found it difficult to contain their excitement. You've been through a lot, losing contact with the ground for so many days, it must have been tough, right? Don Chongji first expressed his human concern. It's okay, it's just that the thought of possibly being the last few humans left in the world, it's unbearable. Are the others okay? Pause, they're okay. Although I know it's not the right time to talk about these things now, the ground really needs your help at the moment, I want to ask you some questions. All right. Can you tell us more specific information? What is inside that trembling 30 meter ice block? Any details? It looks like a coiled giant snake with ink black scales. The head is not visible because it is bunched up inside the ice block. I can only see the trunk part. How thick is it? The thickest diameter observed from the optical cabin is 3 meters, but most places are not that thick. All right. Thank you very much. Are you sure its falling location is in the Yangtze River Delta? How did you determine that? I am sure because these ice blocks do not have autonomous movement capabilities, and the falling trajectory can be calculated according to meteorite calculation methods. And from the perspective of the space station, everything can be seen very clearly. Understood, thank you very much, but there are some things that need to be dealt with now. Please wait a moment, we will continue to contact you. Don Chongji sighed, temporarily closed the communicator, and looked at a group of people not far away. These unexpected guests aimed their guns at the helicopter pilot's head and slowly walked into the command room. Hold on, we are not here to cause trouble. The leader of the Ark this time looked very kind. But Gan Shangji would not be fooled again. 
I don't even want to hear a bark from the Ark's dog, bah. Gao Zhengyi blocked Gan Chongji behind him, his arm turned into metal. But the other party didn't care at all, showing no sense of crisis when encountering an awakened. This time we are here to cooperate, believe me, we are not interested in the communication rights of the space station. Hee <laughs> hee, the space station is the best place to observe the star ring at close range, and predict the arrival of disasters. You don't care? Do you think I'm a fool? In that case, let me tell you a fact. The man in a suit sat down at the desk in the command room. He crossed his hands under his chin. We stopped supplying the space station three months ago. Don Chongji was stunned. The man in the suit side, to be precise, the last supply rocket arrived half a year ago, which was enough to sustain life for three months because our supply cycle is three months. If everything went smoothly, another supply rocket should have arrived at the space station three months ago. But you know, three months ago, the new year was approaching. Don Chongji swallowed. The man in the suit continued in a low voice, our last successful rocket launch was the one that launched the probe. Since then, no rocket has been able to successfully launch into space. Naturally, the space station has long run out of supplies. Yes, three months ago, there were no more supplies. In addition to the interference of lunar magnetic ash, we also lost contact with Li Qigui two months ago. Don Chongji lowered his head, clutching his head in horror. What did he just hear? How could Li Qigui continue to survive for three months without any supplies? This is their last recording two months ago. The man in the suit took out a recorder. Li Qigui's voice came from inside. The reserve supplies have been depleted, oxygen is becoming thin, please organize a supply rocket on the ground immediately. I am Li Qigui, with three other team members beside me. We landed on the space station during the last supply mission, completed the handover with the previous team members, and carried out the installation and observation tasks of the optical cabin. We are in great need of food and water, one team member has fainted due to lack of water. The remaining oxygen is hard to support four people for too long. Our bodies have already shown signs of oxygen deficiency. When will the supply rocket arrive? Can the headquarters reply as soon as possible, so we can make resource planning? Headquarters, please respond. Headquarters. A weak female voice, another team member forget it, Captain, we have been abandoned. Command center. I don't want to die, sobbing. Command center, please respond. Cough cough command center, please respond. At this moment, the command center on the top floor was eerily silent. Perhaps just like two months ago, when the command center was the same. Don Chongji couldn't imagine the feelings of the four people on the space station at that time. Nor could he imagine the feelings on the ground. He grabbed the collar of the man in the suit and roared, Have you contacted them? We wanted to, but the lunar magnetic interference suddenly became stronger, and the radio communication was interrupted. So, in the following two months, you never contacted them again? We tried, but they were lost. What? Yes, the space station lost contact two months ago. It is located in space, so it was affected much earlier than the ground. It wasn't until just now that they appeared, and they directly opened full-channel communication without attempting to contact the command center on an encrypted channel first. The man in the suit patted Gan Chongji's shoulder, so, now you can think about what you just heard? And, whether you should believe the information from that thing. After recounting the history of the space station, the soldiers of the Ark put down their guns. The leader just smiled calmly, seemingly not afraid of Gan Chongji and others' thoughts and resistance. The Noahs have heard of the deeds of the Phoenix, although our ideologies are different we admire the phoenix's choice. So we don't want you to be manipulated and destroyed by that thing. Don Chongji's head was about to explode. He had thought this was a journey full of hope. He could contact the defenders of the space station and get crucial life and death information from them. But now he couldn't determine whether this information was for salvation or for revenge. The outcomes represented by these were vastly different. Let's go, stop believing its words. Wait. Don Chongji suddenly woke up. If you knew the information was false, why did you come here? We were curious about the appearance of this voice, the man in the suit said calmly, it's because we knew Li Qigua had died long ago, so we wanted to analyze the intentions of that thing. Did it say anything to you? It didn't say anything, we hadn't even gotten to the point, and you arrived. The man in the suit didn't mind Gan Chongji's clumsy lie, but instead said more frankly, we are preparing to return the space station to the ground. It will soon crash into the Pacific Ocean, providing us with more detailed research materials, which may become a milestone for humanity to reverse the situation. Is this your real purpose for coming here? Yes, this is the command center, with the highest command to remotely control the space station. But what if? What if there are really people alive up there? You know that's not possible, face reality. You know we haven't launched a rocket in three months. Don Chongji fell silent. 
He can only watch as the man in the suit stood up and walked to the console. Gao Jingyi's eyes asked, do we stop him? What if there is something dangerous on the space station? Gan Chongji asked, aren't you afraid it might fall and kill more people? The space station is only 500 kilometers from the ground. If that thing is hard enough, it can leap and cross that 500 kilometers at any time. Like those ghouls and the crimson dog. But it hasn't come. This either means its defense is weak and cannot withstand the burning of the atmosphere. Or it means it is weak itself, with little ability to act. If it's the former, we can use thermal weapons against it. If it's the latter, we can easily capture it. After a comprehensive assessment, we believe that the guy in the space station is excellent research material, and we must seize the opportunity. Even if unwilling in his heart, Gan Changji must admit that Fanjo's approach seems to be without fault. From an absolute rational perspective, although it may be a bit risky, it cannot be considered evil. All right, the man in the suit had finished entering the command as he spoke, everyone please leave, you need to quickly inform Du Mingyue to reassess whether to continue the rescue mission. After all, if this is a trap, the road of the fire may end here. The people of Fanzhou put down their firearms and chose to leave without any hesitation. They seemed to trust Gan Changji very much, understanding that he would not revoke the command and would not contact the space station again. Let's go. Do you believe their words? Gao Jingyi asked. I don't know. But I do know that the rocket hasn't launched in three months, there is no possibility of survival for them. Allow the space station to fall? Yes. In any case, we need to inform Du Mingyue, you go back first, I will stay here to contact them again and confirm. I'll stay with you, it's too dangerous here. Xiao Wang, you go back by yourself and inform the camp. Okay. Gan Changji and Gao Zhengyi stayed behind, sitting together under the command platform. Unaware, the handsome crow had already flown up to the command platform unnoticed. Hopping around, it used its claws to step on the buttons of the command platform. Xianua, let's go. Su Chen put on the pitch black hooded cloak. After checking the oxygen tanks and wingsuit in the storage room, and confirming that there was enough open space on the floating island, he pressed the door open button. Whom? Where? The little one asked unclearly why they were going out. To have a fight, and then take you on a trip. Trip? The little one didn't know the specific content of the word trip, but she knew it was a good word, representing happiness in the right circumstances, as long as it wasn't to a tourist spot. We're going to the most awesome treasure viewing platform in the world, guaranteed that fewer than 10 people have been there. Yay! She said these words fluently, even jumping up with her hands raised high. Not because she fully understood Su Chen's words, but because she heard the word awesome. She knew this word meant powerful and praise, and once Su Chen said it, it meant she had done something well. For example, waking up in the middle of the night to find herself gnawing on her foot, or eating the bowl clean during a meal, or dispersing the evil spirit named Xiao Ai Tongshua by biting through the wires. Then, we're going to save someone. Su Chen looked up at the sky, the damp sea breeze brushing his face, the corner of his cloak fluttering. Save. Someone? Yes, his name is Li Qigua. We're going to bring him. Back home. Du Mingyue received the message passed on by Gan Lao, which made her hesitate whether to replan the operation. What do you think? She asked Nya Haiyang. Nya Haiyang, do I look like Qin Shi Huang? No. You don't even believe I am Qin Shi Huang, yet you believe the nonsense from Fanjo? Makes sense. Alright, seriously speaking, this matter is easy to judge, Nya Haiyang said. I don't care about that voice or whose goal it is, but I can be 100% sure that we commoners will never have the qualification to board Fanjo in our lifetime. I see, Du Mingyue nodded, their goal is, let a few people survive first, concentrate all resources in their own hands. So in this era of limited resources, we are the relentless enemies. Yes, we are enemies, I don't believe they would kindly remind us to leave. Any information they provide us must have a hidden agenda. You're right, Du Mingyue continued, putting on the pilot's headset, everyone, continue the mission. Make sure to transfer all survivors to the camp before nightfall. The message from the space station is broadcasting on all frequencies, so it's not just Xinhua who knows that a falling event is about to happen in the Yangtze River Delta. Most people are trying to stay away from this area, but strangely, there are also quite a few figures who are moving quietly towards the falling site. The aura of these people is familiar to Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang. It seems that they are like the two of them. Awakeners. These awakeners come from all directions, divided into groups of three or two. Du Mingyue can recognize some of them, wearing the robes of the new century cultists. The others are scattered. All kinds of them. It seems they are all heading for that guy. That guy's corpse might bring some opportunities, they don't want to miss out. They are really bold, worthy of admiration. 
By evening, most of the survivors in the Yangtze River Delta have been evacuated, allowing everyone to look up and wait for the arrival of the big ice block. Before the big ice block arrives, the subterranean ghouls in this water area unexpectedly react first. The sea surface suddenly boiled. These ghouls let out a miserable scream, then leaped out of the water one after another, fleeing towards the open sea. Are they afraid? Watching the boiling sea surface, everyone couldn't help but swallow their saliva. But they didn't feel too much fear, after all, those who dared to come here must have enough confidence in their own strength. Or they are idiots who always believe that they will be lucky. At least this proves that the space station didn't lie, Nya Haiyang took a deep breath, tense, ready to summon wood at any moment, it seems that the landing point is here. Damn Ark, almost fell for it again. The crimson light dots in the sky are already visible. That is the flame produced by the friction of the falling object with the atmosphere, the ice enveloping that thing will probably melt due to the friction, freeing what is sealed inside. Let's go. Since there is no longer a threat from the subterranean ghouls in this sea area, someone decides to boldly move forward. They ride speedboats and gather in the direction of the falling light spot in advance. Finally, they stop on the rooftop protruding from the sea surface, vigilantly watching the people around them. It seems like they are not dealing with any danger, but competing for a treasure. Su Chen didn't push too far forward, just overlooking the battlefield from a higher rooftop. Don't. Like. Xiaonua grabbed Su Chen's sleeve tightly, frowning. She keenly sensed the approaching danger and didn't like the oppressive feeling. You go back to the living area. Hmm. This time the little one didn't protest, and obediently entered the living area. Su Chen sat down on the edge of the roof, burying his face in the shadow of his cloak, dangling his feet, and took out a bag of potato chips to crunch on. Boom! The ice layer had already burned away in mid-air, and the thing inside woke up in the flames, stretching its body. Li Chigua's intelligence was very accurate, this was a snake-like creature. After waking up, it quickly adjusted its body shape and plunged its triangular head into the sea. But some people didn't want it to succeed. Cast the net. Four awakeners quickly arrived at the area where the big snake fell. They stood on the rooftops of four buildings, one of them waved his arms, and a white net nearly a hundred meters wide spewed out from his hands, expanding in the wind. The other three immediately grabbed the three corners of the net as if they had practiced countless times, hanging each corner of the net on the building to secure it. The person who cast the net then clasped his hands together. Give it strength. The net that was soft just now suddenly solidified in an instant, turning into a steel-like rigid net cage. So strong. Su Chen looked enviously at this awakener, it's great to awaken, to have such strong power on the seventh day, the talent is definitely top-notch. It's a pity. You belong to the Ark. Boom. A giant snake crashed into the net cage, the massive impact from space falling directly onto the sea in the net cage. The large net deformed under the force, and the four buildings used to secure the giant net emitted unbearable sounds of strain, and then collapsed under the pressure. Before the net holders could react, the four buildings were simultaneously pulled down by the immense force. The four people on the rooftop hadn't even had time to react before they were pulled into the sea by the net beneath their feet. Ah ah ah. One person surfaced screaming. Ripple spread out, a crimson burst erupted beneath him, and his voice abruptly stopped. The other three desperately swam towards other rooftops. A dark shadow silently approached. One was dragged below the surface, never to resurface. Another was entangled by the dragging net in the water, tightening more and more until they split open. The last one was almost swimming to the rooftop when a deep, gaping moss silently appeared beneath him. He looked down and seemed to see the other's intestines at a glance. Whoosh! The snake's head soared into the air, effortlessly grabbing the fourth person in its mouth, its fangs easily piercing through the person's chest. It landed back in the water, and silence returned to the surroundings. The giant snake momentarily disappeared. The wave swayed, and all the onlookers could see was a terrifying long shadow moving silently beneath the sea's surface, waiting for an opportunity. One person looked up with a mournful face, is it still possible to go back now? He regretted it. Since awakening his power, he had been in a daze, with a mentality of I must be the protagonist and I will be the best sooner or later. He thought that he had always turned bad situations into good ones many times, even completing a counterattack with his awakened power at the most critical moments. If he wasn't the protagonist, then who was? So he naively believed that this time he could surely resolve the situation safely. Drawing from his extensive experience of reading novels, he decided to actively participate in this crisis. Besides, with so many comrades, could they not handle one crisis together? Last time with the red dog, he could have solved it on his own. How much stronger could this one be? But this was not even on the same level. Stay calm, since you've chosen to fight the boss, 
be mentally prepared to be cannon fodder. A bespectacled young man pushed his glasses up, inadvertently revealing his top 10 game blogger of the year shirt. As a game blogger who had cleared hundreds of horror games, his nerves had long been hardened to the point of numbness. Even if zombies appeared in front of him, he wouldn't be afraid, only quickly thinking of counterattack strategies. Facing this giant snake was no different. But at this moment, he suddenly felt a chill down his spine. Turning around, he saw a figure in a black cloak staring at him from a distance, their fiery gaze as if they had seen the most desired ideal beauty. The giant snake didn't make him feel scared, but this guy genuinely startled him. To make matters worse, the weirdo even licked the potato chip residue off his fingers, grinned at him, and mouthed, hey 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 hello. Obtained 500 regret points from Joe Dongmu, one regret crystal, etc. He began to regret coming to fight the boss. Be careful. Don't get close to the eaves. The white noise of the waves hitting the stairs was fine and comforting, but no one could feel at ease. Under the sea, the submerged building occasionally flashed a brief light, mostly indicating some electrical equipment being damaged, emitting the last remnants of light. That light illuminated a corner of the underwater behemoth. Who has water combat abilities? Du Mingyue asked. No one responded to him. Only she and Nia Haiyang, who came to fight with the fire awakening, were awakening. The others were not affiliated with the fire, so they did not follow her commands. Whoosh. A splash erupted at Du Mingyue's feet, and a foul-smelling giant mouth emerged from the seafloor. It lunged towards Du Mingyue on the rooftop. She quickly summoned flames. But this giant snake was exceptionally cunning, launching a diversionary attack. Taking advantage of everyone being attracted by the heads, the snake tail flashed like lightning across the roof of another building, sweeping another group of ARC members on top into the water. Then, it was a feast. Falling into the water is equal to death. Stop hiding your clumsiness. Nia Haiyang took the lead, his veins bulging like twisted tree roots. If we don't act now, we will all die here. I'll control it, you all focus on output. The seawater violently shook, hundreds of red trees rapidly grew in an instant, deeply rooted into the seabed, spreading out their branches to seal off the entire area. The rapidly spreading mangrove forest almost blocked the water area into a solid mass. Even the great snake, agile as it was, slowed down in the thousands of soft and flexible roots and was eventually tied up, lifted out of the water. Amidst the reversal of the situation, curses kept coming from the rooftop. What intensity is this? Am I worthy of being called an awakener in front of him? In his previous life, Nye Haiyang was blind in both eyes, lost an arm, and with severe damage to his spiritual source circuit, he could still stand up with Du Mingyue, who was half paralyzed, and once stood against the Ark. In this life, thanks to Su Chen resolving the crisis, they were physically intact and had awakened their powers early at the West Lake camp. Much stronger than in the previous life. Definitely in the top two in the current stage of the world. The first place is Su Chen. Get up. The entire body of the snake was wrapped up and supported by densely packed red tree roots. Those roots penetrated everywhere, rooting deeply into its scales, trying to draw nutrients from its body. The great snake desperately twisted and struggled. It can't hold on for long. Help quickly. The other awakeners rushed up, peeling scales, hammering seven inches. Oops. You shocked me. Get away. I'll smash you to death. Su Chen was almost out of patience. At this moment, the awakeners had no sense of cooperation at all, and their control over their abilities was very limited. They had barely outputted anything, but they ended up injuring many teammates. After all, before awakening, these awakeners were probably just ordinary office workers or students, who didn't even have time for exercise in their daily lives let alone practicing fighting, let alone group fights. Don't hurt the wood. Nia Haiyang couldn't bear it any longer and roared, if you keep fighting like this, I won't be able to hold on. Hold on a little longer. It's about to break through the armor. I really can't hold on. You bunch of useless teammates. Even Nia Haiyang, who had a good temper, couldn't help but curse loudly. The opportunity for output that he had created with all his might was ruined by a few troublemakers. Once the enraged snake broke free, it immediately began a killing spree. Nia Haiyang destroyed its habitat with the mangrove forest, so it began to destroy the buildings one by one, leaving the surrounding combatants with no foothold. The footholds of the people became fewer and fewer, and in the end, they could only gather on the rooftops of the last three buildings. Reluctantly, Zhou Dongmu, who was known as the top 10 game blogger of the year, had to come to the building where the weird black cloak man was. The weird black cloak man picked up a potato chip and asked him, Want some? At a time like this, you still have the mood to eat potato chips? Zhou Dongmu roared in frustration, we're all going to die. Don't, if we all die in the first stage, how will we fight in the second stage? What? There's a second stage to this thing? 
Zhou Dong moves back when cold. He was about to ask how the other party knew about it when he suddenly recognized the distinctive handsome face. Damn! Prophet? Shu! Su Chen tilted his head back and poured the remaining crumbs of potato chips from the bag into his mouth. This was the most wonderful moment of each bag of potato chips, the rich seasoning accompanied by the crispy and delicious crumbs, sweeping away the monotonous taste of the previous chips. Hmm. Su Chen chewed with a full mouth and said, You stay here and watch the show. Protect your little life. Let the ark go. Ark? They have a lot of people. Sacrificing a bit more would be useful. As he spoke, Su Chen took out a pack of spicy strips and a Snickers bar. Zhou Dongmu was speechless. Are you here for a spring outing? No. While the kids are not at home, I quickly eat some junk food. Otherwise, she will protest why can't I eat it? When she sees it. You already have kids? Adopted, a beastier mother, quite powerful. Zhou Dongmu also began to feel that the prophet in front of him might have some mental issues. This carefree guy is a prophet? It's really hard to believe. Looking at the battlefield, the situation suddenly reversed. As it was already a matter of life and death, a disciple of the new century suddenly clasped his hands together and recited a eulogy. With the blood of the worshipper. Flesh. Bones. Nerves. Fresh skin. The prayer of the cannibal. Resurrect. The eulogy carried a strange magic, and the several pieces of corpses that were initially killed quickly reassembled with the eulogy, forming a body again. Two upper bodies and one lower body pieced together. One summoned a spider web, the other controlled ice. The vast net was once again sprinkled over the sea. At the same time, the ice controller immediately froze the giant net and the serpent within it. The reassembled body after the prayer was obviously stronger. A strand of crimson light filled the eyes of the fused monster, they were no longer bound by life, directly exerting all their physical strength. Hiss hiss. In the unwilling hissing sound, the sea within a hundred meters was quickly frozen, turning into a cold ice coffin. Although the body of the fused monster disintegrated into ashes afterwards, the giant serpent could no longer move. With the reinforcement of the net and red roots, the ice with a fibrous structure, like frozen ice blocks mixed with pulp, had extremely high strength. Did we win? Is that it? The ending was too sudden, giving a feeling of thunder roaring but raindrops being small. Except for a few sudden attacks, once a method was found, this giant snake was continuously controlled to death by a powerful combination of abilities. Next, as long as a small hole was drilled before the ice lump completely melted, drilling down bit by bit from the hole, the defense of the giant snake could be slowly broken. Then, by continuously outputting from the drilled hole, the flesh and blood inside the giant snake's body could be disintegrated from the inside. Human wisdom is truly great. The combination of abilities can produce more than 10 times the effect. Ha ha ha. Human beings are amazing. Ha. The tip of the knife pierced through the chest of the laughing man. Like him, the disciple who could create the fused monster also lowered his head, staring blankly at the knife tip protruding from his chest. He could create a powerful fused monster corpse, but he couldn't fuse himself. Thud. Thud. One after another figure knelt down. Be careful. A wooden board rose up just in time to block all the flying knives, enveloping the awakened ones near Nya Haiyang. A man and a woman landed on the ice, saying coldly, the ark is in charge, bystanders retreat. You can avoid death. A deafening roar came from the distant sky. A squadron of bright combat aircraft pierced through the clouds, trailing white streaks as they circled over the battlefield. The mounted missiles and ground machine guns were already aimed at the rooftop. Heat weapons couldn't deal with the disaster flash, but they could deal with people. Danger can unite different forces, but once the danger is over, no one wants the spoils of war to fall into the hands of others. So shameless. Zhou Dongmu cursed loudly. As expected, Su Chen calmly sipped his milk tea, stood up, it's almost time to join the battle. You turn around first, facing away from me. Zhou Dongmu turned around in confusion. Yes, just like that, tilt your head up. Good. Su Chen reached his arm around Zhou Dongmu's neck. A naked chokehold. He also pressed the anesthetic synthesized last night on Zhou Dongmu's mouth and nose. Zhou Dongmu's brain shut down. MMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMM
Metal shaping can even be used to manipulate machinery barehanded. It's not a big deal to build rockets in the future. Fortunately, they are not the only ones who have awakened these abilities, so they can rest assured to die. I'm here to kindly remind you. Su Chen smiled, his eyes narrowed into slits. What do you want to say? The battle is not over yet. Don't be complacent too early, or you'll reap what you sow. Huh, it's obvious the battle is already over. The woman sneered, I can give you the last 10 minutes to retreat. Those who are still on the ice in 10 minutes, one will be killed. TCH. Despite their reluctance, facing the aerial threat of firepower, everyone had to leave as soon as possible. Really, I'm not joking. The battle really isn't over. Su Chen lowered his voice, using a tone different from usual to continue advising. You hide your true face and cover up. Why should anyone believe you? Su Chen didn't explain, just lamented, you have to trust me. I really am helping you. Trust you my foot. Get lost. If you don't leave, it's your life. Su Chen shrugged, raised his hands, backed away a bit, and waited for the show to begin. Soon, Du Mingyue and others had all retreated far away. The roar of the fighter jets was so loud that no one could hear it. Under the ice, there were faint rustling sounds. The people on the ark were unaware, still transporting a large number of personnel to the ice, preparing for research. It's really dangerous. Su Chen shouted. Get lost. The other party couldn't bear it anymore. The sniper aimed at Su Chen. Su Chen grinned and fell silent. Soon, something crawled out from under the ice. A gunman vigorously shook his pant legs. What is that? Insects? Where did the insects come from? It was a six-legged, round-bellied beetle, about the size of a thumb, with sharp needle-like mouthparts. Ah! Suddenly, a soldier let out a scream. At some point, many insects had crawled into their collars. They stabbed deeply, burying their heads into the flesh. They sucked until their bellies swelled round like balloons, expanding to several times their original size. They were then swatted down. Then they dug through the ice, returning underground. Damn! Such big ticks! Why are there so many? When did this happen? At some point, the ice surface was already covered with creepy holes. Some had crawled up from the water in the distance, densely covering the once white ice surface in black. Ah! More and more ticks began to crawl all over the soldiers' bodies. Shoot! Use flamethrowers! Do something! Why are you standing there? For self-preservation, the ARC members began to fire fiercely at the ice. But how could bullets be used against insects? Only flamethrowers could effectively repel these ticks. Flames began to burn on the ice. The heat spread through the holes drilled by the beetles to the depths of the ice coffin. The ice coffin began to visibly shrink and melt at a rapid pace. It wasn't until then that Su Chen stood up, took off his mask, and started warming up. I told you before, didn't I? The leader of the Ark, who had just been telling Su Chen to get lost, was dumbfounded. They immediately recognized the face under the mask. You are. Su Chen? Prophet. So, they just rejected the prophet's advice again? Ja. Mentally collapsed. Why are you covering your face? Why are you deliberately lowering your voice? The two were filled with sorrow and indignation. Of course, I hope you die. But, didn't I tell you before? If you weren't so bad-tempered and talked to me nicely. Well, I wouldn't save you either. Ugh. The screams became louder and louder. The flamethrower could only repel these ticks, but couldn't kill them. Until the flames ran out, they could only watch as the ticks swarmed in crawling all over their bodies, inserting their mouthparts into their blood vessels. In the end, turning them into dried corpses. Su Chen shrank his neck, society, you dragon ticks, luckily they only suck blood once in their lifetime, otherwise this situation would be really hard to deal with. Punching one would get your hand covered in bugs, it was disgusting. The members of the Ark happened to be able to fill the bellies of these dragon ticks. And witness, its birth with their own eyes. The ice coffin was already half melted, even revealing the back of a giant snake. The vast army of dragon ticks crawled all over the giant snake's body. They re-entered the gaps in the snake's scales, refining the blood they had just sucked and feeding it back to the host. Crack, a scale cracked open. Then, the dark scales of the snake, amidst bursts of explosions, more and more, one after another, cracked open. The cracked scales shed their black horny outer skin, revealing the emerald green jade scales inside. The snake's belly quickly bulged, tearing apart its old flesh and blood, revealing two sharp eagle claws. A triangular head split open in the middle, the skin on the entire face of the snake fell off, and a brand new head was finally liberated. Its ten meter long whiskers fluttered in the wind, the wet mane was quickly dried by the strong wind, and dark purple lightning leaped around. An invisible pressure crushed the entire world. People in the distance were instantly scared to the ground. I, I didn't see wrong, did I? Mumble. 
It can't really be. Roar, the hidden dragon soared into the abyss, the roar shook the heavens and the earth. Even the tide retreated at the speed of light at this moment, revealing the desolate land. Dark clouds covered the sky. An endless black storm cloud obscured the entire sky, with vortex-like clouds rolling thunderously, as if welcoming the arrival of a king. Boom, a red lightning bolt pierced the sky and earth. It struck the towering horns of the young dragon, burning away its last remnants of old skin, infusing a completely new energy into this unmatched and powerful body. It struggled, shaking off the last bit of ice that bound it, and rose from the ground. Rumble, countless thunderbolts struck the ruins of the most prosperous city in the Yangtze River Delta. It opened its huge sharp five-fingered claws, grasping the sphere on the Oriental Pearl. The claw tip contracted, easily piercing into the tower of the Oriental Pearl, standing tall, with golden eyes overlooking the earth. Disaster Flash No. 006, codenamed Awakening. Disaster Flash Habitat, Enceladus, and Kletos, near Earth Core Introduction, in its juvenile stage, it is a mid-level creature in the food chain of Enceladus, a snake-like organism that mainly feeds on subterranean ghouls. After awakening into adulthood, it ascends to the top of the food chain on Enceladus, suspected to transform into the mythical Jade Dragon, undergoing metamorphosis and gaining the ability to control electric charges. It can forcibly magnetize surrounding objects and form magnetic levitation to maintain its flight status. If the air is magnetized, it can trigger gales, storms, and lightning phenomena. Threat, carnivorous, with a huge appetite in its juvenile stage, which decreases to one-tenth in adulthood. Abilities, 1. Blood conversion to spiritual source, possessing the unique ability to convert blood into absorbable spiritual sources, thus establishing a wonderful symbiotic relationship with dragon ticks. During childhood, they will actively be parasitized by dragon ticks and raise the dragon ticks to adulthood. During this period, they have a huge appetite. Upon awakening, they rely on adult dragon ticks for blood-sucking metamorphosis. Be sure to stay away from the molting 006. After awakening, they shed both the dragon ticks and their outer skin, and the shed outer skin secretes components that stimulate the development of the dragon tick's sex glands, allowing the dragon tick to mate and lay eggs, completing the life cycle. 2. Do not use metal objects to deal with 006 in a strong magnetic field, or you will definitely regret it. What the F asterisk CK. On the distant coast, the surviving participants trembled with fear, their scalps tingling. Everyone recognized this thing. Holy SH asterisk T. Even this thing appeared? And it's going to fight us? How could we possibly defeat such a legendary deity? Its body was only a handful on the oriental pearl, but it was enough to make all witnesses shudder. The body, over a hundred meters long, swayed like a flag in the wind, with lightning flashing around it continuously. The lightning struck the lightning rod on the oriental pearl, which had already been burned red. It carried storm clouds on its back, as if the harbinger of doomsday was passing judgment on this world. Why aren't we running yet? Sandwall, can we escape? It can fly, if it wants to kill us. Ha ha, Du Mingyue and Nye Haiyang smiled bitterly. They never expected that the ice block falling from the sky would turn out to be the legendary creature. Although it looked somewhat different from the legend, the sense of impending death it brought was no less intense. It wouldn't be in vain to die by its hands in this lifetime. After all, this is it. The crowd looked excited and desperate as they gazed at the figure, but their faces gradually became calm. If the enemy is unbeatable and death is inevitable, it is better to accept death openly. But some people refuse to believe in this evil. That is. At some point, in the wild roaring thunderclouds, a figure quietly stood in the center of the sky-piercing light columns. In the dazzling lightning, he stood motionless in front of the evil dragon, slightly raised his head, and stared directly into the evil dragon's eyes. The full of killing intent gaze collided. Unable to tolerate the provocation of the inferior, the superior curled its body in mid-air and struck down with its tail. The figure was instantly smashed into a building, splitting the entire building in half with unmatched force, turning into ruins and dust. People in the distance covered their faces and couldn't bear to look. Brave warrior. Why provoke it if there's nothing wrong? Rest in peace. No one could survive such an attack. Didn't they see the building being split in half? However, gradually, someone noticed something was wrong. Why didn't the dragon retract its tail? It seemed to be in a tug of war with something. Stuck? No. Holy sh asterisk t. People's eyes were about to pop out of their sockets. As the dust cleared, in the ruins, the figure in a black cloak raised one hand high, tightly gripping the tip of the evil dragon's tail. I can't hold it anywhere else, but the thickness here is just right, Su Chen said with a gentle smile, thank you, your dragon is really good. Before the words fell, he swung his raised hands heavily. Boom boom boom. It was as if an old man in the park was cracking a whip, 
With a crackling sound from the deft force, 006 felt like it was about to vomit its guts out. It was being swung around like a spinning top by one hand, smashing around, drawing one deep abyss after another on the ground, completely dazed. Even the thunderclouds in the sky watched silently at this moment, not daring to make a sound. The world suddenly became unusually quiet, except for the booming sounds of the giant being beating on the ground. Who is the real monster after all? Is that thing, really an earthly creature? He's getting fierce again. Do Mingyue and Nia Haiyang recognize that cloak? It's a big show off. At this moment, the evil dragon, who had been stunned by the blow to his head, finally came to his senses and remembered that he was no longer a snake, but could fly. So he quickly tried to take off. A tingling static sensation spread around, sparks crackling from the buildings. 006 fired an electromagnetic blast, transforming into an electromagnetic cannonball and frantically fleeing towards the sky. Don't go, leave some parts behind. Su Chen grabbed 006's tail and ascended with it. Foolish. 006 sneered inwardly. These two-legged creatures' bodies were full of flaws, unable to withstand high-altitude environments. As long as he brought him up high, if he let go, he would plummet to his death. If he didn't let go, he would freeze to death or suffocate. Watching the earth shrink into a miniature version of itself, Su Chen still showed no intention of letting go, and 006 continued to ascend merrily. Flying with this lightweight two-legged creature, it had no burden at all, flying as high as it pleased. Ha! Foolish two-legged creature, I will watch you endure the most painful suffocating death. Slowly, bit by bit, succumb to ultimate despair. You dare hit me. Even my mother never hit me like this. Ascending higher and higher. Suddenly, a sharp pain shot from 006 back. He turned his head and saw Su Chen holding onto his body with one hand, and pulling off his scales with the other. He pulled off one after another, each piece disappearing somewhere, muttering to himself. Today I pull off one layer, in a few days it will grow back, then I'll pull off another layer. How can this damn two-legged sheep still have time to pull off its own scales? Trying to make himself suffer, forcing himself to land, right? Ha! Dream on! Let's see who can hold out longer. 006 continued to fly higher into the sky. It had passed through several layers of clouds, reaching above the sea of clouds, with the earth nowhere in sight. Su Chen began to feel suffocated, so he took out an oxygen mask and put it on his face, the other end of the mask connected to an oxygen tank in the storage room. What kind of black technology is this? 006 was a bit stunned. Not afraid of suffocation, ha, huh? keep going up, let's see if you can withstand the temperature. Regardless of whether Su Chen could hold on, he had already plucked off most of 006 scales and was climbing towards its head. Finally, Su Chen reached his destination grabbing onto its prominent bone horn. Now, fly in the direction I point. 006, of course, didn't understand, it didn't understand human language, but soon it understood. Thud. A heavy punch landed on its head, causing it to change its flight direction involuntarily. You're veering off. Thud. Another punch, forcefully adjusting its flight angle. In this way, amidst a barrage of left and right punches, it staggered towards higher altitudes. Higher and higher. The curvature of the earth became apparent, no longer a flat plane, but gradually shrinking into a blue sphere. Su Chen looked into the distance. A lonely steel island was floating in the endless darkness. His lips curled slightly, raising his fist once again. Flying so slowly, who do you think you are looking down on? Thud, hurry up. Tianmen Space Station Mission Log, 6th Handover, Current Station Crew, Li Qigua, Lin Xiaowai, Zhao Don, Sunshine. Handover Time, 18th Month of Station Establishment. Mission Objective, complete the installation and debugging of the optical cabin, observe and study the asteroid Nian in near-Earth orbit. Day 1, handover completed smoothly, we brought 3 months worth of mission supplies. The previous station crew safely returned to the ground in the return capsule, and the new optical cabin successfully docked with the Tianmen space station. Day 2, we checked the stability of the new optical cabin connection, confirmed it was normal, and conducted preliminary testing of the experimental instruments in the new optical cabin. Day 3, the experiment begins, and we start observing the sun in space and recording data. As two team members are on their first space mission, the actual operations are a bit inexperienced, but everyone progresses quickly, and the experiment proceeds smoothly. Day 7, emergency. The solar panel collides with space debris, causing severe damage. We must quickly go out of the cabin to perform repair tasks, otherwise the space station's power system will not be sufficient for daily operations. The EVA task has been requested, waiting for ground response on environmental information to facilitate the crew to determine the EVA time. Day 8 EVA task postponed, as the Shiha satellite captures abnormal solar activity, 
with the solar eruption of a 470,000 km long flame and the release of a large amount of high-energy radiation, Earth will soon face a large-scale geomagnetic storm, making it too dangerous to go out of the cabin at this time. We will wait for the geomagnetic storm to end before continuing with the task. Geomagnetic storm? Does that mean we can go to the Arctic to see the aurora? Shout AI. Don't make a sound when the captain is making voice recordings. Oh, I forgot, sorry. Day 12, geomagnetic storm weakens, EVA time tentatively set for 1400 hours. Personnel for this EVA, Li Qigua, Zhao Don, Lin Xiao AI. Remaining personnel, Sun Chang. Everything was normal during the EVA task, but suddenly an unknown communication failure occurred, causing the crew outside the cabin to not receive timely danger warnings. Zhao Dong was hit by a small piece of space debris, causing a fracture in his left arm, fortunately, the spacesuit was not punctured. He completed the task. We performed simple fixation and anti-inflammatory treatment on him inside the cabin, but the medical environment inside the cabin was poor, preventing further surgical treatment. Sun Cheng, what were you eating? You didn't warn about such a large piece of debris. I did warn. Didn't you listen to the communication recording? How could there be a communication failure over such a short distance? There was no interference just now, but it did fail. Stop arguing. Captain Lee is recording. Ouch. It doesn't hurt, phew, it doesn't hurt, it'll be fine in a while. Maybe I'll even get a second class merit when I get home, ha? Huh? Day 37, the experiment is going smoothly, Zhao Dong's arm has recovered significantly. However, Sun Ching has been brooding over that day's incident, spending his time outside of tasks in the communication room and optical cabin searching for the cause of the failure. Lin Xiao AI has set a wedding date, and these days she has been wandering around with photos, asking everyone, how did you know I would go and register with this handsome guy in the photo on the seventh day of next year? Like a matchmaker. Captain, how could you mention this in the mission log? Ha, huh, deserved public humiliation. Comprehensive recording of team members' status is also the captain's responsibility, since you are no longer single. Captain, I'm not seeking revenge, hee <laughs> hee, spit, spit, spit. Day 45, Sun Ching seems to have made a discovery. He reported to me today about something. A bit absurd. He said he monitored changes in the magnetic field, combined with observations of the aurora at the North Pole, and found that there seems to be an invisible strong magnetic celestial body in the solar system. This is somewhat unbelievable. Invisible? That means the gravity is so strong that even light cannot escape, at least on the level of a black hole. But if there were such a black hole in the solar system, we would have been spaghettified long ago. However, he is very firm in his judgment and invited me to look at the experimental data. This celestial body has been emitting magnetic fields in a pulsating manner, irregularly releasing magnetic fields, Oregon. Its gravity is in a changing state, between infinitesimal and infinite. This is impossible. I also don't want to believe it, but the influence of these magnetic fields is getting stronger. And if this trend continues to strengthen, even the communication between us and the ground command center will be disrupted, or even lost. Summarize and compile the experimental data and send it to the ground. Well, it has been sent, just don't know if the ground can see it. After all, we transmit a large amount of data every day, and the ground has recently been more concerned about the minerals that may be stored on the year. Trust the command center, there are many scholars below, if you prioritize the data, they will take notice. Or they may think that I am trying to absolve myself of previous negligence by sending out a bizarre set of fake data. Day 55, communication has been interrupted again, this time our communication with the ground was interrupted for a full 14 hours. This is the fourth communication issue this month. Shiha did not give a solar activity warning, it's not the sun, it must be the communication device, or. The ground keeps asking me to check the communication equipment over and over again, but we have confirmed that the communication equipment is absolutely fine. The command center said it might be the aftermath of the impact on the solar wing, asking us to double check. But we can guarantee with the training we have received over the years that there is absolutely, absolutely no malfunction during this period. Forget it, the ground doesn't believe us. You can't say that, it's just that the command center has been busy lately, and the asteroid probe is about to launch. Day 65, the first batch of asteroid probes was successfully launched, watching those dots rise from the clouds and pass by not far from us, which reassured us a lot. There have been no communication interruptions recently, and we will be able to go home in a month. But Sun Cheng is not optimistic about this. Captain, I suggest. We enter emergency mode. Why? Based on the electromagnetic pulse cycle I calculated before, the recent calm is just a prelude to a bigger storm. Perhaps when the next pulse arrives, 
we will completely lose contact with the ground. Can you take responsibility for what you just said? I guarantee it with my life. How long approximately? Two months. We only have a month left to leave. Captain, I suggest. Let's not be too optimistic. Several satellites have been observed falling for unknown reasons recently. The ground also needs to reassess the launch intervals for resupply rockets. Phew. What do you suggest we do? Starting today, we should try to minimize physical exertion to reduce the rate of food and oxygen consumption. What if there are extravehicular activities? That requires a strong physique, can't go hungry. Three people can go hungry, one person can eat their fill, and they can carry out the extravehicular activities alone. This is not in line with regulations. As the first outpost for human safety, we have an obligation to make the right decisions at critical moments and rely on our own judgment. Give me your experimental data, Zhao Dong, Lin Xiaoyi, come and find the problem with this data for me. Day 66, the experimental data is fine, starting the frugal plan. Mission objective changed at all costs. Survive the next storm. Until communication is restored. We must find the culprit. Day 124, Tianmen Space Station routine call to the command center. I am Li Qigua. Just now, Comrade Lin Xiaoyi passed away. Zhao Dong couldn't hold on a month ago. Only Sun Qing and I are left. Sun Qing just handed me his last supplies, and my supplies haven't been touched at all. Ha, huh, I really feel like a parasite, ha ha ha. Just started the next round of storms, Sun Qing said it will last for two months this time. If he stops breathing now, the remaining oxygen and supplies will be enough for me to last until the next communication is restored. Then, I can send back the first-hand information I have observed to the ground. Communication should be restored on the seventh day of the Lunar New Year, I just need to hold on until that day. By the way, that day is also Shoei's wedding day. Why is it me? Clearly. Choking up. Clearly, it should have been her to hold on until that day. You guys, you are. Too cruel. Leaving me to face these two months alone. I'm just a captain, just a bit more experienced, not a god. Are there gods in this world? If there is, take a look here. Look at this island floating in the endless darkness. Look at us, look at the people on the ground. Are they okay? Day. I don't know how many days, unfortunately, the table is broken. I don't know how much longer until the seventh day of the new year, most of the instruments on the space station are already broken. Without enough manpower to repair them, I can only ensure the normal operation of the optical cabin and the communicator. But the seventh day of the new year should be coming soon, right? Damn it, where did that small asteroid come from? It's heading towards Earth. I must inform the ground as soon as possible. That's the reason for me to stay alive. Although I don't know if the ground can receive the message. Gateway Space Station calling the ground for the first time. Gateway Space Station calling the ground for the first time. At this moment, Li Chigua's eyes were blankly floating in the optical room. This is the space station's largest window, where you can clearly see the ground and the magnificent ring of stars. His throat can no longer make a sound, and the oxygen has become so thin that it makes it difficult for him to stay awake. This made him realize one thing, today is most likely the seventh day of the new year. If Sunshine didn't miscalculate, he will also stop breathing today. The strong desire to fall asleep made his eyelids uncontrollably heavy, but he forced himself to keep staring at that blue planet. If he is really going to die, he wants to imprint it on his retina so he won't forget it even in the afterlife. He stared blankly, his consciousness becoming more and more blurred. Exhaustion finally closed his eyelids. The darkness was engulfing his vision, like a gradually closing stage curtain. Until the curtain was completely closed. Thud, thud. The close knocking sound awakened Li Chigua's fading consciousness, and he opened his eyes in confusion. Then, his mouth involuntarily opened wide. Li Chigua would never forget that scene in his life. A man riding on the majestic dragon head, the extreme cold of space condensing a layer of frost on his body, lightning jumping and flickering on the dragon's mane around him, but he didn't care, just grinned broadly and said, Hey Miss Home? Looking at the dragon knight outside the window, Li Chigua's first reaction was not joy. He thought he was already crazy. In the past two months, he had experienced hallucinations more than once, and six days ago he even witnessed three deceased teammates coming back to life. The three encouraged him to persevere, saying they were not regretful of death, just sorry for leaving him alone. They said when he came down, they would treat him to a good meal. Li Chigua cried with the three, and after venting, his spirit on the verge of collapse recovered slightly, allowing him to hold on until today. And now, another even more absurd hallucination appeared before him. Riding a dragon into space? That's ridiculous. Are you here, to take me? Li Chigua smiled resignedly, I didn't expect. 
Black and white impermanence to be so handsome, are you black impermanence or white impermanence? Oh, black clothes, so black impermanence? In space, the black impermanence gritted his teeth and once again said, stop dawdling, open the door, I'm freezing to death. Just as black impermanence snapped off the dragon horn, the dragon, battered and bruised, suddenly lost its dragon form, and turned back into a snake. Its scales had already been stripped off, but were now regrowing, growing out black scales. Li Chigua finally recognized it. Black snake. Wasn't that the big chunk of ice that fell before? I'm not hallucinating, am I? That's even more absurd. With his last strength, Li Chigua pressed the airlock open button. By now, the black snake had lost its ability to fly and was plummeting towards the center of the Pacific. Its main diet was subterranean ghouls, and in fact, if the bipeds hadn't attacked it first, it wouldn't have bothered hunting such small animals. Not even enough to get stuck in its teeth. We will meet again. Su Chen made a gesture to the black snake. The black snake didn't understand, but suddenly felt a chill down its spine. Woo woo woo, bipeds are so scary. It will never approach the land again. Su Chen tied a locator inside the black snake's scales, a simple positioning device used to protect endangered animals, which can operate without satellites. This creature has a large appetite and I definitely can't afford to raise it myself, so it's better to release it directly and harvest it regularly. It can also help eliminate some ghouls, killing two birds with one stone. Kicking the black snake away, Su Chen grabbed the outer handrail of the space station. For the convenience of executing extravehicular tasks, most of the outer handrails of the space station can be moved directly to the airlock chamber via the handrail. The difficulty lies in the freezing hands. So cold. A strong physique can suppress blood boiling and lung explosions. But this cold is real and can slow down bodily functions. The cold resistance of 25 came in handy at this moment. Fortunately, he had the Dark Crow operate in advance, cancelling the crash command and placing it in a relatively comfortable area. Otherwise, facing the sun, it would be 121 degrees Celsius, and facing away from the sun, it would be minus 157 degrees Celsius, which he couldn't bear. Phew. Let's not talk for now. Su Chen entered the airlock chamber. The first thing was to put an oxygen mask on Li Chigua. You. You are. Li Chigua gradually regained consciousness, his voice hoarse. The ground received the flash disaster report you sent, Su Chen said solemnly, and evacuated all the refugees in the Yangtze River Delta area at the fastest speed. Your information saved at least more than 30,000 people. I salute you on their behalf, as well as the other three station personnel on the space station. Li Chigua listened blankly, then pursed his lips after a while. Wow. He didn't know where he got the strength, he hugged Su Chen and started crying loudly, crying like a child. He hadn't seen anything alive for too long and had long lost any hope for the future. But precisely at this moment of despair, the man in front of him appeared miraculously. Riding a dragon, he brought hope for life and the most comforting news. But, why does this oxygen mask smell like chives? Su Chen took out a new mask for himself. He gently patted Li Chigua's back to comfort him. You rest first, I still have food and water here. Su Chen handed him a bag of apple puree and a bottle of glucose drink, then floated to the window and called out Nuo. Oh, Nuo was shocked by the scene before her. See, I told you, this is the most awesome sight in the world. Su Chen proudly rubbed the little one's head. The little one also put on an oxygen mask and gazed down at the huge blue planet in a daze. At this moment, the space station was at the boundary between light and darkness, with half of the earth below in daylight and the other half in darkness. In the daytime half, you could see the blue oceans and slowly moving storm clouds, showing the most primitive appearance of the planet, without any signs of human influence. In the dark half, after several days of rest and recuperation since the 13th, you could once again see the sparkling city lights. It was as if the entire starry sky was condensed on that small darkened land, shining brightly. In her small understanding, she deeply realized the magnificence of the world for the first time and was profoundly impacted by this scene. Whenever we see this scene, ghouling, we feel that everything is worth it, Li Chikwa said as he swallowed and choked up, a few days ago when I couldn't see the lights, I thought we had. Don't worry, we didn't. How is the ground? He asked anxiously. There have been significant changes, everyone is no longer pretending. Luckily, there are still many fools like you, you will definitely get along well with them. Li Chigua ate the apple puree in his hand, took a few bites, and then choked up again. Su Chen looked at the three bags in the cryogenic chamber, patted Li Chigui on the shoulder, take care. No, I'm happy for them. Li Chigua wiped his eyes and nose with his sleeve, their mission is complete. You have also succeeded. I am just their carrier, I. I am nothing at all. Don't underestimate yourself. Without you, they would have truly died in vain. Woo woo, 
This guy was almost crying convulsively. When Li Qigua's physical condition recovered slightly, it was time to return. Su Chen took several photos of the big blue ball before reluctantly preparing for the return journey. Although I don't know why you were able to come up here, unfortunately, you are now stuck here with me. Li Qigua sighed apologetically. If I can come up, of course I can go down. Using that dragon? No need for it, I'll just jump down. Ah, although Li Qigua didn't understand, he thought that the man was able to stand in near-earth orbit without any precautions before, so he probably had a way. It seemed that the earth had indeed changed a lot, and he was having trouble keeping up. Take this back with you, make sure to bring it back to the surface. Li Qigua took out a hard drive. Without Su Chen asking, he solemnly explained, inside is the star ring intelligence captured by the space station at close range, precise down to every centimeter of ice particle. It is of great importance for research. You keep it for now. How can that be? I am definitely not able to go back, but you still have a chance to return to the surface. You can hand it over to the scientists on the ground. This. I mean, you go give it to them yourself. Ah, Li Qigua was getting more and more dumbfounded. He was not Superman, how could he possibly break through the atmosphere like the other person? As they spoke, Su Chen was gesturing around, roughly measuring the size of the space station with his hands. He muttered, this thing is already quite damaged, there's no use keeping it. Hmm, the size is not a problem, in the future, when encountering something unbeatable, just throw it out to hit someone. The engine explosion should be quite exciting. Alright, let's go. Tianmen Space Station is 89 meters long, 62 meters wide, 20 meters high, with a total weight of 180 tons, a weight that Su Chen could lift. Anything that could be lifted could be loaded onto the floating island, and the size of the floating island was more than enough to accommodate it. Fortunately, a new large isolation stasis area was recently opened, otherwise, we would have to worry about explosions elsewhere. First, a special drug to soothe the mind was synthesized and given to Li Qigua. After he fell asleep, he and Xianhua were temporarily placed in the living area. Three station residence remains were also taken care of. Su Chen opened the airlock and went outside the space station. Items in the stasis area were in a suspended state, so there was no need to worry about the angular structures being crushed. He raised his hand. Let's go! The huge object disappeared in the blink of an eye, as if it had never been in this void. But Su Chen knew. It would come back sooner or later, and the next time. It would no longer be a pair of lonely eyes that could only watch, but a more magnificent posture. Unless he smashed it himself. On the ground, Du Mingyue and Nia Haiyang returned to the West Lake camp with a restless mind. Don Changji and Gao Zhengyi also returned, bringing with them a particularly bad news, the space station has completely lost contact. In other words, the hero who informed us, who called the ground over a thousand times, may have. Don Changji closed his eyes, sighed, and nodded. His intelligence is true. We have indeed encountered a powerful threat in the Yangtze River Delta. That guy's strength far exceeds our understanding, with our current strength, we simply cannot win. Du Mingyue's clenched fists were trembling. Just now, they had almost been completely wiped out. And, if it weren't for his timely report and evacuation of refugees, the consequences would have been unimaginable. He is a hero, the hope of the surface. We have lost another hero. The atmosphere became heavy for a moment. The group of people squatted down and silently added another river lantern to West Lake. The dragon from before disappeared with the man in black cloak, and then the storm dispersed, leaving a clear sky. The lake reflected the starry sky. Gao Jingyi stared at the lake, as if he had discovered something terrifying. He rubbed his eyes, suddenly raised his head, and his expression became extremely serious. There's a meteor. Be on guard. Below the starry sky, a fireball was rapidly falling from the sky. The light was particularly bright in the night. It was just like the light produced every time a disaster flashed through the atmosphere. And the direction of the fall was right towards the West Lake campsite. Ah, is it never-ending? After a whole day of rescue activities, everyone was exhausted and had no energy to face another crisis. Hold on a bit more. Everyone, spread out. Lao Gao, we will quickly form a triangular position to surround the landing point. Whoever the monster attacks, that person will try to restrain it, don't engage directly. Okay. Several people got up wearily. The fireball was getting closer. Gao Xingyi took out his binoculars to look at the sky, wanting to confirm the appearance of the enemy first. But he was stunned. This expression instantly made everyone around feel even heavier, and Nia Haiyang asked, What did you see? Ah, uh, Gao Xingyi thought for a moment, and finally said with a strange expression, A naked man. What? A naked man, really, and quite fair-skinned. Everyone? Let me see. The others tried to take away the binoculars. Unfortunately, they were too slow, 
and in the blink of an eye, the meteor in the sky had put on a wingsuit and gradually adjusted its body, slowing down. Without the flames produced by friction with the atmosphere, it lost its light source, and the binoculars could no longer capture the target. Be on alert! Not knowing where the other party was, this made everyone even more nervous. They could faintly hear the whistling sound from above, which should be circling and decelerating in the sky, sometimes to the west and sometimes to the east, making it hard to determine its position. The sound was getting closer. Splash! Suddenly, violent splashes erupted in the center of the lake. The water splashed even onto the shore. Nia Haiyang immediately erected a wooden wall, Du Minghui held flames in her hands, and Gao Jingyi's fists creaked. Prepare to face the enemy. The intense ripples gradually subsided, and the object that had deeply sunk into the water also revealed its appearance. Ha! Huh? A tree? It was just a tree, and it was even a red tree, most likely directly pulled from the red mangrove by the sea. Thud dash another light falling sound came from the rooftop, and the faces of several people changed drastically. Divide and conquer. Such a cunning monster. Gao Jingyi directly climbed the eaves with both arms to the rooftop, while the other two took the elevator. Ping the elevator door opened, and the three quickly gathered on the rooftop. But they did not find the naked man. They only saw three body bags and a middle-aged man sleeping. The middle-aged man was wearing a spacesuit, with a disc and a work permit on his chest. His name and position were written on it. Resident of Tianmen Space Station, Li Chigua, is it him? The one who called us. He's not dead? How did he come down? This is unbelievable. Anyway, let's rescue him first. Be careful when taking him downstairs. Gao Zhengyi quickly carried the person downstairs. At that moment, Du Minghua had a feeling. She looked into the distance and in the night wind, she heard a familiar sound, the sound of clothes being fluttered by the wind. Every time the man in the cloak appeared, he would inadvertently make this sound. Following the sound, she saw a figure hidden in the shadows, about to leave. Wait. The figure did not stop. Wait. We haven't had a chance to thank you for last time. And this time. Who are you? Flapdash a crow flew past the moon and landed on the shoulder of that figure. He picked up a few transparent balls between his fingers to feed the crow, then raised his hand to let the crow fly away. In the moment the crow flew up, he leaped down, his toes pointed on the window frame, and shot out like an arrow leaving the bowstring. He quickly disappeared at the end of the block. On the way back, Su Chen called out Xionua to breathe in the fresh air. Hoo hoo, the little guy joyfully lay on Su Chen's back, hugging tightly and stuttering. Su Chen, save that poor uncle just for the space station, Su Chen said expressionlessly, the equipment on the space station is very useful to us, all good things that money can't buy. But uncle, he was saved. Just a coincidence, Su Chen took a step forward, the wind whistling in his ears, I will never save someone out of pity. But I will cooperate with him out of respect, he deserves our investment. Anyway, Su Chen, you're a good person. No, I'm not listening reciting scriptures. You're so good at talking nonsense. Can't you learn something serious? Um, there's a book that says, foxes will repay kindness, how should they repay? You better keep talking nonsense, that book is off limits. The casual cross-server chat echoed over the ruins, the figures of a big and a small gradually disappearing into the night. In the living area of the floating island, a poor guy with his face covered in graffiti was still sound asleep, heavily drugged, muttering in his dreams. Prophet, no. Prophet, you can't go there. Ah uh, Joe Dongmu is a blogger in the game history zone, passionate about uncovering gaming easter eggs and hidden histories from the last century. Su Chen had seen his videos before and could confirm that this kid was definitely a professional. But it would still take him a few hours to wake up, so Su Chen decided not to return to the prison immediately instead finding an empty house to study materials. He had just pulled out a lot of treasures from 006, scales, horns, and whiskers. These synthetic materials had various uses, horns could be used as auxiliary materials for enhancing spiritual awareness, scales could be used as the main material for crafting tools, and whiskers were excellent ropes. The scales couldn't even be destroyed by brute force, they had to be pulled off, and the edges were very sharp. So Su Chin planned to make some equipment out of them. If these scales could be smaller, they could be made into armor. But now they are bigger than my face, making armor out of them would make me look like a fool. If it can't be made into armor, just use it directly as a chest protector. After some thought, Su Chen made a decision. He tied the whiskers around two large scales, placing them in the front and back of his clothes to protect his vital organs. Then he took out some scales, synthesized them with red dog stones, and connected them together. A very simple and oversized, serrated demon-breaking horse-cutting knife was born. The blade was 5 meters too long, the handle 2 meters 6, weighing 4 and a half tons, it looked like a terrifying oversized chainsaw at first glance, 
specifically designed to deal with big guys. The dragon scales shimmered with a green light under the moonlight. By the way, if the dragon scales could move on their own, chains and power could be added to the back, turning it into a real chainsaw, greatly increasing its cutting ability. The only problem is that the current red dog stone strength is not enough, turning it into a chain is easy to break. What monster material with high strength is suitable for welding? Su Chen thought for a moment but couldn't come up with an answer, so he decided to take it step by step. The synthesis took a lot of time, and by the time Su Chen put away the long knife, it was almost dawn. Zhou Dongmu was awakened by the morning breeze. He hadn't noticed that his face was covered with turtles, and Xiao Nua was hiding behind Su Chen, giggling. Who am I? Where am I? What am I supposed to do? Zhou Dongmu looked confused. Do you need a major memory restoration technique? A voice of inquiry came from beside him. Do I need? Oh wait. No. He refused a step too late. Received 100 regret points from Zhou Dongmu. A piece of ice was thrown into the back of Zhou Dongmu's collar, he shivered frantically, and quickly remembered everything. Prophet, what have you done to me? Even if you are a prophet, at least let me prepare. What nonsense are you thinking? I need your brain. Ah, Zhou Dongmu became even more frightened. Humans, have they evolved to this extent? He found it a bit difficult to understand this hobby. Su Chen handed him a pen. Write down all the game cheats you know on this, all of them. What cheats? Cheat codes. Oh, Zhou Dongmu looked strange. Which level can't you pass in the game? I can help you pass. Hurry up and write. Zhou Dongmu angrily picked up the pen. What kind of thing is this? He just wanted to sneak a peek at the boss battle, see what was inside that 30 meter ice lump, but ended up being forced to do homework. If he had known that boys could also be. He racked his brains to write down everything he knew. But even after racking his brains, there were only about a hundred. Many of them overlapped with Su Chen's memories. Su Chen picked up Zhou Dongmu's homework and went through it in his mind one by one. As a result, he unlocked five elements. Compared to the full 118 elements on the periodic table, it was still far from enough. Is that all? I can only remember these. If it's not a game I often play, who would remember this? I definitely look it up while playing. The internet is down. A bit unfortunate. I am a game archaeologist, I have a lot of data stored in my computer, comparable to an encyclopedia. Some friends in the industry can also help. Shall we go, Prophet? Let's go, and feel free to play tricks. For example, setting traps in the room, ambushing the awakened in advance, or keeping a ghoul in the room. I don't have. You can have, let me try my skills. Unfortunately, Zhou Dongmu really didn't have any bad intentions. After all, the moment he knew the other party's identity, he had no intention of resisting at all. Even if the prophet really wanted to do something to him, he would consider it an honor. After all, if it weren't for Su Chen's reminder, he and those companions wouldn't have survived to this day. Prophet, really, thanks to your prophecy. Isn't it 404? I was live streaming that day, and when I was taking a break, I happened to point to your room. Because I usually record my screen, I also recorded what you said. You're lucky, Su Chen nodded, very insightful. The prophet was really not modest at all, making Zhou Dongmu embarrassed. But this prophet really didn't need to be modest. Our team compiled a collection of your quotes, compiled into the survival guide for the end times, so a few of us survived. A few? Who else? Su Chen became alert. They are some like-minded colleagues. We were having a New Year's Eve party together before suddenly the end of the world came. Some people stubbornly ran out to go home, and the next day they all turned into ice sculptures. What's the use of tens of millions of fans, Sai? Monsters don't watch live streams. Condolences? No sorrow, hee hee, one brother was squeezed into tomato juice, more fans than me died, from now on, I am the leader of the gaming area. Su Chen took Zhou Dongmu downstairs, threw him into the car, and let him drive. After a night of tossing around, he was too tired to walk now, and he needed to conserve energy to deal with possible dangers later. No matter how harmless the other party appeared, it was never wrong to keep a few tricks up one sleeve in this era. Zhou Dongmu was good at driving, swerving through several blocks, and finally stopped in an ordinary residential area. He swiped the card to open the unit door, glanced at the elevator that was powered on but showed no intention of approaching. The elevator doors were nailed shut with thick iron plates, and a pile of debris was stacked outside to block it. Forget it, let's take the stairs honestly. It's said that there's a monster locked inside. It's said? I don't know either, it was sealed by the building's caretaker. She said no matter what we hear, we must not open it. Otherwise, we'll all die. Su Chen raised an eyebrow and used his spiritual sense to explore through the wall. Inside, there were bloodstains everywhere, but there seemed to be no living creatures to speak of. 
The spiritual awareness continued to scan in detail, thoroughly scanning the entire building. For a moment, all kinds of living beings flooded into Su Chen's mind, even he couldn't help but be shocked. Goodness, there are ghosts in this building. Big ghosts. It seems like the place to test the blade has been found. 